Welcome to the audiobook, The CEO's Wife, written by Yolo LOL, narrated by Nick. Chapter 1 Mia was trying on her white lace ball gown wedding dress with long sleeves and was looking at herself in the mirror. She looked beautiful, even though her makeup was bad and her hair was in a messy bun. While she was thinking about her perfect wedding, the decorations, and her good-looking fiancé, her phone beeped. She received a message from her fiancé, Scott. Scott Turner was her fiancé, the man she loved, was in a relationship for three years, and was planning to spend her life with. She read the message. Baby, I cannot wait to see you in that gown of yours. Please, come downstairs. Mia knew that it is bad luck for the groom to see the bride wearing the wedding dress before the wedding, but she decided to go against her instinct and went downstairs. She could not find Scott anywhere and asked the store clerk, Excuse me, have you seen my fiancé? He wrote me a message that he was here, but I can't find him. Yes, miss. He was here with your sister, but they went outside a few minutes ago. When she heard that her sister is there, she was surprised but did not pay any attention to it. Thank you. Miss, you cannot go out dressed like that. Oh, please, I just want him to see me. She opened the door, saw Scott's car, and she was devastated at the view. Scott and her sister Anna were sitting in the back seat, kissing. Anna could see Mia's face, and a smirk appeared. Tears started falling. Mia could not stop crying. She wanted to get out of there. Miss, are you okay? Please, return inside. She could not talk. She only nodded and went inside, undressed slowly with the help of the shop assistant, and went outside. There, she saw Scott and Anna. They were talking. She did not know what to do, but decided not to tell or show them that she knows the truth. She was going to act as nothing happened, and she decided that she will get revenge on them. Hey, baby, Scott said. He kissed her on her cheek. Hey, baby. Sorry that I did not come downstairs, but you know it is bad luck for the groom to see the bride in a wedding dress before the wedding, Mia said. No need to say sorry. I understand, but that will not happen between us. We will be very happy, Scott said. Mia turned toward her stepsister. Anna, what are you doing here? Mia asked. Oh, I just wanted to see the dress. So when Scott told me he is coming here, I had to come to see you, Anna said. Oh, you have never before wanted to come with me. It is strange. Baby, can you take me home? Mia asked. Of course, baby. Are you okay? Scott asked. Yes, baby. I am a little tired. On the other side of New York, a letter arrived at Carter's residence. It said that the King's family is asking one of their daughters to marry their only son. The Carter family had already heard about Christian King. They knew he was an ugly, crippled, and bad man. He had a temper as well. When Victoria read the letter, she had a plan in mind. She knew what she will do. She will marry her ugly stepdaughter, Mia, to King's only son, and will make a path for them to a better life, and maybe a suitable husband to her real daughter. She had already advised Anna to try and catch Scott Turner, her stepdaughter's boyfriend, but this opportunity was even better. They arrived in front of the house. Scott, do you want to come in? Anna asked with a seductive voice. No, he will not come in. She turned towards him and said, Baby, you must be tired. You do not have to come. I will talk to you tonight, Mia said. I am not tired. Baby, if you want, I can come, Scott said. I understand, but baby, I am tired. Talk tonight, please, Mia said. Of course, baby. Go and rest, and I will call you later, Scott said. Bye, Mia said. Bye. He blew her a kiss and left. Mia and Anna entered the house, and they could see Victoria sitting in the living room and talking something with Michael, her husband, and Mia's father. Hello, Mia greeted them. Hello, honey, Victoria said. At the moment, Victoria was nice to her. Mia knew that something was going on. Anna, can you please leave us alone with your sister? Victoria said. What is going on? Mia asked. Mia, we received a letter today in which it says that the King family wants to marry their son with you. We were discussing with your father, 
We know that you have a boyfriend and you are planning to get married, but there is something you should know. Scott is courting your... Victoria was interrupted. At that moment, Mia spoke. I will do it. I will get married. When is the wedding? I want it to be as soon as possible. Mia, honey, are you sure? Why would you do that? You are already engaged. Is everything okay? Father, I do not know how to tell you this. I do not love Scott anymore. He has been terrible and broke my heart. I have seen Christian. He is not bad, and I would like to marry him. Mia lied. Yes, baby, I understand, and I will give a piece of my mind to Scott. But you do not have to do this, Michael said. I know, Father, but I want to do it. She thought that this will be a great opportunity to get revenge on the man she has devoted her life to. Christian King and his family are one of the richest people in America, and she hoped that he will do everything he can to make his wife happy. At least she hoped that. Baby, are you sure? Michael asked. At that moment, his phone rang, and he did not even pay any more attention to his daughter. Yes, father, I would like to do it, she said, but he was so deep into the phone conversation that he did not even hear her. Then it is settled. The wedding will be in five days in the Royal Garden in downtown New York. You have already picked a wedding dress, and there is no need to invite a lot of people, Victoria said. I will marry him, but only under one condition. Victoria frowned. What do you want? Victoria asked. I do not want anyone to know, especially not Scott. And after this wedding, I do not want to hear from you or your daughter. Victoria had a smirk on her face. Why would you say that? She asked. Please, Victoria, I know what your daughter did, and I am sure that you knew all along about it. So don't play innocent with me. What are you talking about? She pretended an innocent look on her face. I am done talking. Do we have a deal or not? Mia asked. Of course, we have a deal. They shook hands. Victoria was satisfied, and Mia was glad that after this wedding she will not have to deal with her family. She was only sorry about her father, but she knew she will do everything in her power to protect him and save him from the grasp of Victoria and Anna. Three days passed quickly. Mia was waiting for the makeup artist to finish her makeup. Suddenly, the door opened, and Victoria walked in. Everything is ready. Can you please hurry up? The King family will be here any minute, Victoria said. Yes, stepmother. There was a knock on the door. Mia's father came in and said, The King family has arrived. He looked at his beautiful and gentle daughter and said, Mia, are you sure you want to get married to Christian King? Is this your final decision? Mia looked at her father. Yes, father, I want to. I am sure of it. The King family is the wealthiest and most valued family in New York. The heir, Christian, was disfigured when he was kidnapped 15 years ago. Since then, Christian has not appeared in front of others. He was rumored to be cruel, ugly, and terrible. At the altar, she saw a man in a wheelchair, an ugly man. She thought, grief is greater than death. Even if Christian is the devil, I do not care. And so it began. They were married. Chapter 2 At the wedding party, Mia was wearing a lace bodice with an off-the-shoulder neckline and a sweetheart neckline on the lining, scalloped along the neckline and dropped around the waist. Christian was wearing an Armani black suit and a nice shirt. He was in a wheelchair and his face was covered so no one could see him. The few guests that they invited were excited. They danced and drank the whole night. Only the bride and groom sat. Aaron King raised his glass and toasted in the newlywed's honor. He was happy that his son finally was wed to a nice and beautiful girl, a girl of a decent family. When the wedding was done and all the guests left, Christian turned to Mia and with an angry tone in his voice said, I will go to my apartment. I'm tired. You will be taken to the mansion I bought for you. What about you? Aren't you coming there? Mia asked. It is none of your business. When I have the time, I will come and visit you. But as I said, tonight I am tired and I want to rest. He told his bodyguard to take him away. She was surprised by the way he spoke to her, but at the same time, relieved. She did not have to be with or to see him. She could finally be alone and try to relax. Her father came near her and spoke. Mia, we will leave now. 
Where is my son-in-law? I want to say goodbye. Daddy, he left. Why? Her father asked her. He was tired and did not feel okay. But I will pass your regards to him, Mia said. All right, her father said with a surprised tone in his voice and continued. I understand if he was tired, he should rest. You should go to him. I will. I just wanted to say goodbye to all the guests. It is not polite for both of us to leave, Mia answered very quickly. Of course, honey, her father said, kissed her on the cheek, and left. After arriving at the mansion, the maid opened the door, greeted her, and took her to her room. It was not until it was dark outside that the door was opened. Mia turned and saw a tall man walking in. He closed the door and turned on the light in the room. She was stunned. He was handsome. He had black hair and green eyes. His face was perfect. He looked at Mia for a few seconds and twisted his brow slightly. You are nice, he said. In a calm tone, no extra emotions could be distinguished. Mia didn't care much about him. She just looked at him. Who are you? she asked. His voice was deep. You don't know your husband's family? As he got closer, Mia shuddered. The powerful aura oppressed her slightly, but she still straightened herself. Of course I do. They were at the wedding, she said. When Christian heard the words, the sharpness in his eyes gradually converged, and then a trace of clarity flashed. It seemed that she was another woman who believed the rumors, married to a man who was ugly in a wheelchair. Her expression seemed too calm, and her calmness made him interested. He curled his lips and smiled. It turned out he is my cousin. I am Leonardo Christian's cousin. On the wedding night, I guess you don't want to guard a crippled man, he said. He deliberately pronounced the word crippled man with a low ending. The man approached her, and the bitter breath became stronger. Mia moved aside uncomfortably, and after a short period of doubt, she believed him. After all, the mansion was not something ordinary people can come in. He is your cousin. Please, don't say that about him, she pleaded. Mia felt a sense of sympathy in her heart. Even if the king's family is a top-notch giant, he must have had a hard time in these years. A flash of surprise flashed across Christian's green eyes. He had no idea that this woman would say that. He couldn't help but look at her again. A dark light flashed in Christian's eyes, and he violently reached out and pushed Mia onto the bed. His look was malicious. There is no one else here. You don't have to pretend. If you have grown like this, you must be a virgin. I will take it as a good thing to satisfy you, he said. After speaking, he directly reached into her clothes. The delicate touch is almost addictive. Slap. Mia slapped his face. Do not think that others are as bad as you. Before your cousin comes, get out, and I will agree that nothing happened. Although she tried to stay calm, her trembling hands betrayed her. He stood up, trimmed his shirt, and gave her a cold glance. You continue to wait for that crippled person here, but he will never come he said. It wasn't until the door was closed that Mia's nerves relaxed. Outside of the room, the bodyguards and Tom saw the red mark on Christian's face and said, Sir, your face. Christian touched his face and said blankly, It is nothing. If it is nothing, why is it red? Tom asked with a smile on his face. Christian looked at him with a deadly glare and did not say a word. At that moment, Tom knew that his boss found himself a good match. Tom handed him a document. It said Mia on it. Is this all? Christian asked. Yes, sir. All the information about your wife, Tom said. Is there something interesting I should know? He asked him. She was engaged with Scott Marshall from Chicago, but she left him for you. I cannot know if she found out that he was cheating her with her stepsister, and that is why she left him. Tom said. With her stepsister? Christian was surprised. Yes, sir. There are a few photos of them, of her family, Tom spoke. Good job, Tom. Christian thanked him. Thank you, sir, Tom said. Early the next morning, Mia woke up suddenly, only to realize that it was already dawn. Christian did not come home last night. She felt a little loose and a little heavy. 
This feeling was like having a knife hanging on her head, which could not be cut off, which always made her fearful. After Mia washed and went downstairs, a maid came over to take her to the dining room. The dining room and the kitchen are close, and as soon as she entered, she just saw a tall figure coming out of the kitchen, carrying breakfast. After seeing that the man was Leonardo, Christian was pretending to be someone else to see her true self. She turned around and wanted to leave, but unexpectedly, the man had already spoken. Cousin, good morning. His voice is magnetic, but it's very light. Mia was disgusted when she saw him and really didn't know what this cousin was doing every day at his cousin's house. Morning, she said. Mia turned toward the maid and asked, Is Christian here? No, madam, he did not come home last night, the maid said. She nodded her head to express her understanding. Is there a phone that I can use? She asked the maid. Why do you need it? Christian, Leonardo, asked. I want you to give me his phone so I can call him. Mia answered him. What? You don't have his number? That is strange. He is your husband after all, he said. I did not have the time to ask him yesterday, she replied. Well, I will tell his assistant, Tom, to give it to you when I see him, Christian said. Don't you have it? Mia asked. No, sorry, I do not. I do not need it. Why? Mia asked. I did not need it until now. He was always home when I needed to talk to him, or I would tell Tom and he would transfer. He said and continued. Now eat. When they finished breakfast, she wanted to go and visit her family, so she asked him, Can you please take me to see my family, or can you tell some bodyguard to do so? Why? he asked her. I want to go back to my house to get something. I did not bring a lot of clothes, Mia said. I will take you. No problem, Christian said. Christian took Mia to her home. While they were driving, he leaned against her ear and said, This feeling I have for my cousin is pretty good. She was afraid that he would do something, so she had to get herself out of the car. In the quiet car, Mia buckled on the seatbelt and looked ahead without giving Leonardo an extra look. When Christian saw her like this, interest flashed in his green eyes. This wife of his is interesting and decent. In the beginning, he just wanted to tease her and see if she married him for his money, but now he wanted to continue to play the game and find out more about her. Chapter 3 The black car stopped in front of her house. Mia was about to unfasten the seatbelt when Christian leaned over, pressed the buckle of the seatbelt, and the seatbelt was released. His handsome face was near her. Her heart started beating faster, and her cheeks started blush. This man's face alone is enough to make all women fall in love. But thinking about his bad behavior yesterday, Mia's expression returned to its nature. It was just a rich dude who has bad taste and hates his cousin. She raised her head. The expression on her face was a bit dull. I'm going to get off the car, she said. Christian's eyes shrank slightly, and his aura disappeared. Mia was aware of his changes, and she was about to get out of the car when she opened the door. But one arm quickly grabbed her hand, and he spoke. I brought my cousin to her home. Where is my thanks? He said with a smirk on his face. She lowered her head and whispered in a low voice. Thank you. Christian looked at her slightly pursed pink lips, his expression deepening. It is so insincere, I have to give thanks to myself. He thought. She is his wife. Why would he be patient? He can kiss her whenever he wants, and she cannot do anything about it. Why should he be patient? He can kiss her whenever he wants, and she cannot do anything about it. Thinking so, he leaned over and pressed his lips and kissed her. Mia felt him covering her lips. She stared at his face in front of her, eyes dumbfounded, reaching out to push him away, but found that her hands had been tightly held by him. Christian was very satisfied with her reaction. He freed a hand and took off a strand of hair and put it behind her ear. Mia's cheeks were burning. This man was so presumptuous that he dared to assault her in front of her house. He said, It's warm and sweet. I want to try it again when I have a chance. In the second half of the sentence, he deliberately lowered the volume but increased his tone again, and his eyes patrolled her unscrupulously. 
It was like a fierce beast patrolling its own territory, full of excitement. Just as Mia was about to scold him for being shameless, a female voice broke the silence in the car. Hey? Victoria said. Hearing the words, Mia turned her head and looked out the half-open car window. Victoria's eyes widened in shock, half astonished and half as angry. Why are you here? she asked her. Mia clenched her hand tightly. A trace of panic flashed quickly in her eyes. On the second day after the wedding, she was seen by her stepmother in front of the house. Victoria cared about her family reputation and looked around the car. She found no one, so she said, Come, let's go inside. We have a lot to talk about, Victoria said. Mia got down of the car and started walking inside. Right in front of the door, Christian poked his head out of the window, rubbing his lips with his fingers wickedly, and said, Cousin, I'm waiting for you. Please, hurry up. When Victoria heard the word cousin, her expression became severe, and she gave Mia a cold and angry look. Mia bit her lip. Is this Leonardo trying to kill her? She thought. Victoria pulled Mia into the hallway of the house, and then coldly shook her hand away. She looked at Mia with a bad expression and said, That man called you cousin just now. Is it Christian's cousin? Yes, he is, Mia answered. Slap. Victoria slapped her, making Mia's ears buzz. If you plan to be shameless and be alone with a man in a car, after the second day of your wedding, do not dare to come here. You will not be permitted to enter, Victoria yelled. Mia lowered her eyes, touched her painful face, and coldly raised her head to Victoria. Why don't you ask me if I was doing it voluntarily, Mia said. This is the case every time. Whenever something happens, she will scold her and teach her first and never ask the reason. It was like she did not love her, respect her, or even thought of her as her daughter, or a normal human being. One is a disfigured and impotent crippled person, and the other is a normal and healthy man. Normal people know how to choose. Didn't you also spend time with this cousin last night? Anna spoke. As soon as Victoria saw Anna coming down, she hurriedly greeted her and asked concerned. Anna, are you getting better? Victoria asked with a worried voice. Mom, I'm much better. Anna smiled softly. While Anna was upstairs, she saw Mia and an unknown man kissing inside of the black car. She never thought that Mia, who usually looks innocent and decent, would do that to her husband. People who don't know Anna would say she is beautiful and warm, but the ones that do know her like Mia would say she is a bad person that has always wanted everything that Mia had, and that she did not choose the means to take it from Mia. Mia went upstairs and packed a suitcase and a few books in a bag, and decided to leave and go to the mansion by herself. She did not need anyone, especially not Leonardo, who only got her in trouble. Christian waited for her for a long time at the front door of Carter's house, but Mia did not come out. He was getting nervous. Thinking of the information from the materials he saw yesterday, his handsome eyebrows frowned. Is that woman being bullied by her family? He wondered. As soon as this thought came up, he couldn't help but stretched out his hand to touch his face that had been slapped by her. She didn't seem to be easily bullied. Sir, do you want to come in and sit down? Anna asked. A soft female voice came and Christian turned his head and looked out the window and saw a delicate-faced woman standing by the car. When Anna saw his face, she couldn't help being stunned. She saw Mia and a man kissing, but she didn't expect this man to be so good-looking and so temperamental. How could such an outstanding man fall in love with that stupid girl? Anna thought. It seemed that she was right in her decision to try her luck. Christian sneered. No, thank you. I will wait for Mia here, he said. He didn't have the patience to talk to her anymore and asked blankly, Where is Mia? What is she doing? She... she should be packing in her room. She told me to come out and ask you if you want to come in and join us for a cup of tea, Anna said. No, thank you. He didn't even bother to give Anna an extra look, lowered the window, and drove away directly. Anna had never been so coldly treated by a man before. 
and her face turned blue with anger for a while. She hated her stepsister and was sure that she will do everything she can to take this man away as well. Chapter 4 When Mia returned home, she took her suitcase to her room and decided to go and ask for her husband. She wanted to know if he is home, or maybe just to know his location. She was thinking about him and why he did not want to be in her presence. She saw a man she had never seen before. Excuse me, who are you? she asked. Hello, madam. My name is Tom, and I'm your husband's assistant. It is nice to meet you. Can you tell me where my husband is? He just came in, madam. He's in the study. Thank you. I will go and see him. The study door was closed. Mia looked around, raised her hand, and knocked on the door. A man's hoarse voice came from inside. Come in, a deep voice said. Mia opened the door and saw the person sitting behind the desk. She could not see his face because of the dim light in the study, but she could see the wheelchair so she knew it was her husband. Christian was the first to ask her aloud. What's the matter? he asked. Nothing. I just wanted to ask you. Do you know what happened recently? With what? he asked her. With my family. Yes. Leonardo told me. He took you to your house to get your things. There's no need to mention things that have passed. As the king's daughter-in-law, it is better for you to be safe. Mia breathed a sigh of relief. All right. I will leave you alone now. Excuse me. Mia, are you all right? Yes, thank you. I feel much better now that you know. She turned toward the door when he stopped her. Before you leave, I wanted to apologize. What for? Well, I acted like a fool on our wedding night. I'm sorry. There's no need for you to be sorry. I understand. Do you? Yes. This was a very fast wedding for both of us, and you were tired, so you acted the way you did. That's not an excuse to act or to speak to you like that. Look, Christian, I told you I understand, and maybe if you did not spoke or acted like that, maybe I would have done that. That is why I said I understand. He nodded. She went to her room started thinking about what he said, how he has apologized. She did not know what to think or how to feel, so she decided to try to fall asleep. She turned off the light and slowly fell asleep. Early the next morning, Mia changed into slightly formal clothes and went out. She wanted to find a job. She graduated as an English author and screenwriter. During her time at school, she had good grades and a beautiful resume. After being interviewed by two companies, they directly expressed their willingness to hire her. She was a little excited. Because of Victoria, she didn't have a professional carrier and any experience after graduating. Now, she finally did not have to hesitate. Now she could do whatever she wanted. She found a restaurant for lunch while researching the company information for the interview she had in the afternoon. Not long after sitting down, there was a sudden flash in front of her eyes. A woman wearing a mask and a peaked cap came up to her. The woman gritted her teeth and called her name. Mia! Mia looked at the person coming. She realized that the fully armed woman in front of her was actually Anna. If you have something to say, say it. What are you doing? Mia looked up at her, her expression extremely calm. Anna's eyes were full of anger. She lowered her voice and said viciously, Mia, how are you? I'm waiting for Scott. We are having lunch here. Just as Mia was about to avoid her, she saw a familiar figure walking in. Her eyes flashed and she steadily got up and slapped Anna. When Scott saw Anna being slapped, he walked quickly, stepped forward, and grabbed Mia's wrist. When he saw that the person who slapped Anna was Mia, his brows frowned fiercely. Mia? Scott! Mia's eyes were filled with anger, and her voice became louder. What are you doing here? Scott asked. Why haven't you answered my calls? Well, my sister was quite busy, Anna said. She got married. Excuse me? He was stunned. Yes, I got married. Now I will have to go. Excuse me, Mia said. He grabbed her hand and turned her around. You cannot leave. You have so many things to explain. 
Let go of me. Didn't you hear her? She said to let her go. A calm, manly voice said. When they turned around, she saw those amazing green eyes again. It was Leonardo. He was calm, but he had anger in his eyes, and he was about to give his opinion on this matter. Who the hell are you? Scott asked. I'm the man she will go home with. She told her she has to go. Leonardo took her hand and continued toward the exit. Scott wanted to grab him, but the bodyguard intervened and stopped him. He was holding her, and she could feel his strength. When they got out of the restaurant, she withdrew her hand and only said, Thank you. No need to thank me like that. He grabbed her chin and kissed her. They returned home. She went right away into her room, and he went to the study. Christian processed a few documents in the study and was about to go downstairs to drink some water. Mia's room was not far from Christian's study. As soon as he came out, he subconsciously glanced at Mia's room and found that Mia's door was half open. Christian strode towards her room and opened the door to look, and found that the light in the room was on and the bed was empty. He frowned and raised his wrist to check the time. It was almost eleven. Then he heard the shower. She was having a bath. He could imagine her and was aroused. He wanted to have her right here and now, but he knew that if he did, that he will fall in love with her. So he decided to get out of the room, close the door, and go downstairs. At that moment, the bathroom door opened and she got out. He saw her in the bathrobe and was dazzled by her. When she saw him, got scared. What are you doing here? she asked. He did not answer her. He just came next to her in two steps and kissed her. Her lips were gentle, and her face was wet. He sensed that he likes the kiss so much, and she could feel him. She tried to push him. Slap. She slapped him. Get out, or I will scream, and I will tell Christian everything. What will you say? That you seduced me? What? Listen here. Get out, or I will scream. He realized that she was scared. He saw the fear in her eyes. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Do not be scared. I will never hurt you. I swear. She was trembling. He tried to touch her, but she couldn't allow him to touch her, so she moved. He understood what was wrong and silently got out of the room. Chapter 5 During the whole night, Mia could not sleep. It was around 4 a.m. when she finally closed her eyes and fell asleep. The morning came, but she did not feel like going out or doing something. She received a message from an unknown number. She wondered who sent her a message. It said, Hey, sweetie. How are you? I landed last night. The movie was a success. I want to see you today. Get ready, and let's go out. I will be at Manhattan Mall in two hours. XOXO. S. Reading this message, Mia was excited. She knew who sent it. It was her best friend, Sarah, and she knew she had to see her. She got up and went to the bathroom. She washed her face and teeth, got dressed, put on a little bit of makeup, and was ready. She went downstairs and saw Leonardo. She did not want to greet him, but when he noticed her, he spoke. Good morning, cousin. She nodded. Where are you going? he asked. Is my husband here? No, he is not. He went out. I wanted to tell him I am going out, shopping. Can you please tell him? Can I come with you? No, I have already made an appointment. See you. Bye. She got outside of the mansion and saw a man in a dark suit. She knew it was the chauffeur and told him, Good morning. Good morning, madam. How may I help you? Can you take me to Manhattan Mall, please? Of course, madam. He opened the car door for her, and she got inside. She called the number from which she got the message, and Sarah answered. Hey, baby, where are you? Mia asked. I'm in Starbucks at the corner. What do you want to drink? Frappuccino. Okay, I will buy it for you. Hurry up. I will be there in 15 minutes. After a few minutes, they were there. She got out of the car. Thank you for the ride. No need to wait for me. I will come home later. Yes, madam. She went inside, looked for Sarah, and in the far corner of the coffee shop, she could see her. Sarah wore a mask, her long hair tied into a ponytail, 
and she was wearing a very ordinary white-down jacket. Sarah has been like this since she was in school. She always became the focus wherever she goes, and she can easily attract the attention of others. Mia hugged her, sat down opposite her, and said, Sorry for being late. Sarah hugged her arms and leaned on the sofa, glanced at her, and then slowly said, You are the king's young lady. A small person like me should wait for you. Mia smirked and said, Don't be silly. I am happy you are here. How did the shooting go? Did you have fun? I really did. I met Robert Evans. Oh my god, he is so handsome. We had a nice time and agreed to meet each other when I get back to L.A. Oh, nice. I am glad. Enough about me. Now you. What happened? Why did you get married to Christian King? What happened to Scott? Well, I saw him make it out with Anna, so I decided to continue my wedding, but I only changed the groom. Wait, what? She asked. Sarah was stunned. What did you say? Sarah asked again. I told you. He cheated me with Anna. Anna? As your stepsister, Anna? Aham. Oh, I will kill them both. Sarah was very angry. Her eyes were full of anger, and Mia knew that if they came in at this moment, she could kill them. She tried to calm her down. Please, it was not a big deal. So he cheated. I got my revenge. Can we please drink our coffee and talk about something else? Sarah did not want to change the topic. She wanted her friend to feel good and to take out all the frustration she has piled up in herself. Oh, baby, you married Christian because of that? Yes, I did. But now I feel okay. I met him two times and he is not at home most of the time, so I have time for myself. He does not bother me and I can go out whenever I like. Anyway, the only thing I hate now in the mansion is not my husband, but his annoying cousin. Why? He is very annoying, and... At that moment, they were interrupted by someone. Anyone I know? He asked. Mia turned her head and saw him. Leonardo. What are you doing here? She asked. Well, I wanted to drink a cup of coffee, so I came in. May I sit? Of course. Sarah answered. Mia was furious, but she did not want to show that in front of him. So, what were you guys talking about? Who was annoying? he asked. Oh, a mouse I have at my home. He is very annoying, but I will get rid of him soon. I think I just need to tell my husband about it, Mia answered. You can always tell B. I can try and help you, Christian suggested. Mia smiled politely and continued drinking her coffee. So, Leonardo, what are your plans for today? Sarah asked. I plan to take my cousin home. Why? What are your plans? Well, we wanted to go shopping. You can come with us if you want. No, he cannot. This is our time. I would love to, he said. They finished their coffee and went inside the mall. They shopped for a few hours, and when they were exhausted, Christian said, I'm tired. Please, cousin, let's go home. Mia agreed with a nod. She was also tired and wanted to rest. She could not stand him anymore. He got out his cell phone and called Douglas. Sarah, we have to go. I will call you later. Okay, baby. Call me, and we will talk, Sarah said. Douglas arrived. He got out took the bags, and opened the car door so they can get in. He opened the trunk, put the bags, and entered the car, looked at the rearview mirror, and asked, Where to? Douglas asked. Before Mia could say anything, Christian answered, Take us home, Douglas. And that was it. Silence, finally. Mia could not stand him speaking any more. She wanted silence, so he gave her that peace and quiet, or at least until they arrive home. Chapter 6 They entered the big and amazing mansion. Everything was nice and quiet until they heard a voice. Mia opened the door of the living room and she saw them, both mother and daughter, sitting, drinking, and acting spoilt. She did not want to make a scene in front of Leonardo, so she greeted them with a low voice. Hello, she said. Oh, Mia, my darling, how are you? 
Victoria asked. I am great, Victoria. What are you doing here? We came to visit you, dear sister. Where is my brother-in-law? With a smirk on her face, Anna asked. Christian entered the room and wanted to see the scene that was happening in his house. Mia could not stand them and abruptly said, Why do you need to see Christian? I wanted to ask him something. Is he here? Anna asked. What did you want to ask him? Well, she smirked. At that moment, Mia was furious. She wanted to slap her, but she controlled her anger and asked her, Do you want to make out with him as well? She did not care anymore. She could not keep quiet. It was enough. They have done this on purpose. Mia, how dare you? Victoria said with a loud voice. How I dare? Ask your daughter what she did with my ex fiance and his car in front of the wedding dresses shop. No matter what she did, that is now in the past. She did not mean to hurt. At that moment, she was interrupted by Christian. No matter what she had wanted or not, I think Mia does not want any of you in her house, so I would like to ask you to leave now, or I will call the guards to throw you out. Sir, this is a misunderstanding between sisters. Please. Now! Christian yelled. They were furious, but did not say a word. They got their bags and left. After they left, he turned towards Mia and said, Are you okay? She was angry, but she answered, No, I am not. I am mad. This was not in the deal. They should have left me alone to live my life without them. I hate them so much. Please do not cry. I will always protect you. Tears started falling from her eyes. He did not know what else to say, so he only hugged her. In this hug, she felt the calmness and the protection that he offered. At that moment, she knew no matter what, he will help her, protect her, and she felt safe. For the first time in a long time, she felt safe. She wanted her husband to do the same thing, to protect her. But how could he? In her mind, he was an ill man, who could not help himself and not her. But she pushed away the sad thoughts and remembered that Leonardo will be here. When she was calmer, he asked her, What kind of deal did you do with her? Nothing special. Oh, please. I want to help you, but you must tell me. You know you can trust me. Okay, but promise me you will not tell anyone. Of course, I promise. Look, Leo, before getting married to your cousin, I had a life. I was engaged to a man called Scott Turner. He comes from a good family. We were together for three years, and I loved him a lot. All right. Every and each one of us has a past. That is true. She smiled shyly. Go on. Christian said. Well, one day, while I was trying on my wedding dress, he wrote that he was in the store, that he wanted to see me. I went downstairs, and to my surprise, he was in his car, in front of the store with my cousin. They were kissing. Christian was not surprised. He did not see me, but I wanted to get revenge, so when I got home, Victoria told me about your cousin's proposal, and I accepted it. The deal for me to accept it was for them to not tell Scott and not to see them anymore. She agreed. So you married my cousin because of revenge? He was annoyed. No, not really. Maybe at the beginning, but now he saved my life. I do not have to stand them. I found my salvation in him even though he is not here right now and does not want to treat me like his wife. I am grateful for my marriage with him. What about me? He asked with a slow voice. You are my friend and cousin. I will always care about you. I do not want you to care about me. He hesitated to tell her the truth. But at that moment her phone rang. It was her father. Sorry, it is my dad. She answered the phone. Hello, daddy? Mia, what is going on? Her mother told me you threw her out. She wanted to see you. Daddy, I did not throw her out technically. Leo did. I think we had a deal, and I do not want her to come here. Mia, she loves you and wanted to spend some time with you and your sister, too. Daddy, she has never cared about me. Yes, she does. She was very sad and even cried. I want you to apologize to them. Excuse me? You heard me. 
Dad, please, I cannot do that. She almost cried out. You will. At that moment, Christian took the phone from her hand and hung up. What did you do? I hang up the phone. If you get angry, you should tell him, but I am here to help you. If you do not want to do anything, you should not do it. He will never speak to me again if I do not apologize to my stepmother. Why is this happening? She started crying, and at that moment, Leonardo spoke. You will not do that. If you do it, I will tell Christian about everything. You cannot do that. You would not do that. Mia said with a pleading voice, Try me. Christian threatened with an angry voice. Mia was divided in two. She did not know what to do at that moment, so she decided not to call them and to try and survive everything without saying sorry. Fine, just do not tell him. Christian was proud of his wife. She finally had enough courage to stand her family. Now the only thing that was important was for her to fall in love with him and for him to tell her the truth, that he is her husband and that the wheelchair was just the disguise he uses to see who is real friend and who is using him. He was in love with her, and he knew that she was too important for him to lose her. Chapter 7 The afternoon came, and Mia decided to take a bath in the pool. She wanted to relax. She was wearing a black bikini, and her body was amazing, not too slim, just right. Christian came out to the yard to look for his wife or cousin, to tell her that tonight a few friends will join him. When he saw her, he felt an insane urge to touch her. Mia paused when she saw him. Leo! I am sorry, did you need me? But Christian knew every time he looked into those dark blue eyes that there was something special about this girl. And so, he took the teasing in good fun. He gathered Mia's large fluffy towel and used it to cover his growing cock as he walked over to her and extended it to her. No, nothing like that. Christian cleared his throat of the huskiness, and he continued. Some guys are coming by tonight. It is my Thursday night poker group. You know Tom. My best friend Derek will be there as well, as Zach from accounting. Mia wrapped the large towel around her body, feeling ashamed in front of him. The way his dark hair stood in sexy disarray, she knew he had been running his fingers through it. Um, poker night sounds fun. Can I do anything to prepare for it? What does Christian think about you bringing people here? He has agreed with it. Christian smiled. And Mia's heart skipped a beat. He said, We have everything covered. The guys will bring some cases of beer. I just didn't want you to be alarmed. They should be here within the hour. She realized that she was in a bikini, so she grabbed his arm and slid into her flip-flops. We need to go inside and hurry up. I cannot be seen like this. All right. They entered the house. I will go take a shower and get ready. If you want, I can stay out of the way. There isn't any reason for me to leave my room. I mean, I can get dinner before they arrive, and I have a bathroom already. Not that I want to talk about using the bathroom. That would be gross, she said. I will come and get you when they come. By the way, I usually order something in. What would you like to eat? He asked her. Mia immediately perked up and answered. Cheeseburgers! The big, greasy ones with so many toppings that it gets all over the place. Oh, and fries. Spicy fries. Christian smiled and said, Definitely spicy. I am sorry. You probably don't want burgers. We can get whatever you want. I can cook if you would like. There was no way he would allow her to cook dinner after the long day they had just had and her swim. I love burgers, he grinned. The bigger, the better. Okay. I will go to my room now, Mia said. When she went upstairs a few minutes later, the guests arrived and Christian went upstairs to call her. Mia was in the bathroom. She turned on the water to shower and then brushed her teeth before getting in. It felt amazing, and she moaned aloud. Her breasts were heavy. They had always been sensitive, but now they almost hurt. 
All she could see was Christian's face as he smiled at her. Mia could hear the silky caress in his words every time he spoke to her. This was madness. She needed to get away. She was married. Even though she had seen her husband twice so far, she had to respect him. She only thought just this once. Her fingers slipped down her body and sank between her shaved pussy lips. She was indeed wet, and it had nothing to do with her swim. She stroked her pussy softly, imagining it was his fingers playing in her folds. But he had to leave, now, before she realized what he had done. With a harsh grunt, he tucked himself back into his pants, and then carefully left, shutting the door behind him. She got dressed and went downstairs. There were only two guys in the room. Hello, madam, Tom said. Hello, my name is Mia. How are you? She introduced herself and was feeling nice to finally know someone new. Mia, you can take a seat, Christian said. My name is Derek. Please, take a seat. Do you know how to play poker? He asked her. Yes, I do. She answered and smiled. Good, said Christian. Zack canceled. He could not come. So you can play with us if you want. She agreed, but she was still thinking. Who was in her room and did not know how to find out? A few hours later, they finished the game and the guests said their goodbyes. And she decided not to ask Christian about it. She did not want to make it uncomfortable, so she decided to let it go. Chapter 8 The next morning, Mia was awakened with a knock on the door. It was Maria, her maid. Sorry to wake you up, madam, but Mr. Christian is waiting for you in the dining room. He wants to have breakfast with you. Breakfast? With me? Yes, madam. He told me to wake you up and invite you. Of course. Tell him I will be down in a few minutes. She got up really fast, washed her teeth and had a quick shower, got dressed in a beautiful knee-length white dress and went downstairs. Christian was impressed by the woman before him. She looked more beautiful than last night. He noticed that she got ready just for him. She was wearing a casual, off-shoulder, floral dress, which fitted perfectly on her body. He was falling madly in love with her and he did not mind that. Good morning, she said, looking at him. Good morning. How did you sleep? He asked with a very polite and gentle voice. She was surprised by his reaction toward her. He was very nice and polite. Very well, thank you. Sorry that you had to wait for me. No problem. How are you? I am fine. And you? Great. I had a conversation with Leonardo this morning. You did? She asked, her voice a little bit shaking. She was scared that he might have told him about the deal she made with Victoria. She did not want to hurt his feelings. Yes, he told me your family came to visit you. They are not my family. She is my father's wife and stepdaughter. She was a little bit angry. All right. He told me he had to throw them out at the end. Christian, I am so sorry, but Leonardo saw that I did not want them here. You were not home, and he did that to help me. I hope it is all right with you. Please, do not apologize. I understand. I just wanted you to tell me. Inform me. Christian, I do not have your number. At that moment, he realized that he had never given her his number. So he asked for her cell phone and wrote it down. Even though he knew that as Leonardo, he was always in the house, and no matter what she needed, he would have helped her. You have my number now. You can call me any time. Thank you. They ate breakfast. Christian went to the company. He could not stop thinking about her. He had a lot of work, and he had to stay an extra one hour at the office to complete his task for the day. At a few minutes past 7 p.m., he was done with everything he had to do. Christian was sorting the documents on his desk to see the ones he will take home to continue working on and the ones he will leave in the office when his phone rang. He let out a silent groan because he knew it was Alex who had called again. He promised to give her a call in 20 minutes. It wasn't even up to 20 minutes, and his younger cousin had called again. 
Without looking at the caller ID, he picked up the call. Alex, I told you I was going to call you back in 20 minutes. It's barely nine minutes since you last called. It's not Alex. It's me, Mia. I'll call back if you're busy. That sweet, familiar voice said. Christian's heartbeat increased, finding it hard to believe he was on the phone with Mia. No, no, you can. Sorry, I mean, I thought it was Alex, my cousin. No need to cut the call, Mia. I'm all ears. What can I do for you? I just wanted to ask you, will you come home for dinner, or... I will come home, but I want to take you out for dinner. He knew he had to put a little bit of makeup and get in the wheelchair, but he knew that will take him about twenty minutes, so he said, Please get ready. I will be home in an hour. Okay, I will see you in an hour. But before we hang up, what should I wear? Where will we go? Put some formal dress on you. I will take you to La Grenouille. She did not know what she felt, but it was like butterflies in her stomach. She was attracted to her husband, but at the same time, she was attracted to his cousin. She decided that he is her husband, and she will do everything in her power to make this marriage work. She will act with Leonardo as what he really is, her husband's cousin and a friend. They hang up and she went to her room. She did not know what to wear. She opened her closet and saw the dress she had bought for her rehearsal dinner, so she decided to wear it. She put on the midi below the knee length dress and looked at herself in the mirror. The curve hugging fit with the beautiful off the shoulder design allowed her to show some skin all the same time looking elegant and classy. This beautiful red dress gave the perfect image of a diva in an off shoulder neckline style. She put on a little bit of makeup and put her hair in a bun. She went downstairs and waited for him. He came, and when he saw her, he was mesmerized. Are you ready? he asked. Yes, we can go whenever you want. They were ushered to a private table for two. The waiter came with the menu, they went through it, and both ordered what they wanted. Soon enough, their orders came, and they dug in. Christian spent the first few minutes admiring Mia as she ate. He liked the fact that she was herself around him. How was your day? He tried to start a conversation. Fine, and that is something I want to discuss with you. I would like to find a job. I cannot stay at home anymore. All right. What do you want to work? I finished literature and screenwriting, so I will look for a job at some entertaining companies. You know that I own Entertainment King. You can apply for a job there. I know. But I do not want to get the job because I am your wife. I want to start from zero. Let's make a deal. You apply, and I will not do anything to help you. You can start from zero there. Is that okay? All right. What about you? How was your day? I had a few meetings and a lot of documents to sign. But it was good in the end. They continued talking and eating. When they were done, they went home. You will come in, right? She asked him. I cannot. I have to go to my apartment. My things are there. But I will come first thing in the morning. He did not disappoint her. He was there in the morning. Good morning. How did you sleep? Great. Thank you. So, I took the liberty. Today, I am taking you to a nice place. What kind of place? Well, I have a yacht. I want for us to go and sail a little bit, if that is okay with you. Yes, of course. Thank you. I have to get ready. I will be here in half an hour. I will wait for you. She got ready and went. Chapter 9 The yacht was amazing. It was enormous and spacious. It had three decks, including a sun deck. On the lower deck were the bedrooms, in which she was taken to change her clothes and put a bikini on. She changed and came out. On the main deck was the living room, cockpit, and an RPH, raised pilot house, an upper deck with an enclosed and comfortable area. She went to the sun deck on the top 
and she saw Christian sitting in the spa. When he noticed her, he felt the pressure in his cock. Come in, the water is amazing, he said. Are you sure? She asked and continued. I do not want to bother you. I can sunbathe. It is not a problem. Don't be silly. You do not bother me. You are my wife, and I want to spend some time bathing with you. He raised his hand and helped her to get in. Thank you. Wow, the water is amazing and very warm, she said. He looked at her with eyes full of love and lust. At that moment, he spoke. What do you want to drink? There are champagne and wine. What are you drinking? she asked him. Champagne, he answered. May I try it? she asked him with a gentle voice. Of course. He passed her the glass. She tried a sip of the glass and said, I would like a glass of champagne, too. He nodded to the crew, and they brought her a glass of champagne. She could feel bubbles in her throat, and they made her feel amazing. The champagne smelled of crushed raspberries, cherries, and black currants. Everything was excellent. There are macaroons if you want to eat something like a dessert. Later, we will have lunch. Ahem, she nodded. I would like to try a few macaroons if that is okay. She tried and the macaroons were very delicious. She realized that she wants to ask him a few questions. Why is he so nice after everything? Christian, may I ask you something? Everything you want. What is going on? What do you mean? On the day of our wedding, you were very cold and distant, and now you are sweet and nice. Is everything okay? Yes, I realized that you are my wife, and I will spend the rest of my life with you, so I wanted to make our marriage work. I would like for you to fall in love with me, and we can start a family. Christian, our marriage was because of convenience. I understood why you were angry. Oh? No, wait, I did not mean it like that. I wanted to tell you something about me. I do not know if you knew this, but I was engaged and I broke it off because he was cheating me with my stepsister. After that, I decided to marry you so I will get my revenge on him. I am sorry, and if you do not like me anymore and if you want to get a divorce now, I will understand. I do not want to divorce you. I already told you. I want to make you fall in love with me. I know I am in a wheelchair, but... I will try. I promise. He had a satisfied look on his face. He realized that even though he was lying that he cannot walk, she was willing to fall in love with him. The only thing he needed was to be nice and good toward her. They had a nice lunch. The night came very fast, and she could see that they were both happy. They went home. Will you come in? I have some business to take care of. But when I am done, I will. She was disappointed, but she nodded her head. She went inside, and he left. She could not sleep. She was thinking about both cousins and their effect on her. She heard a small noise. It was like a squeaking sound. She looked toward the door, and she saw Christian. He was in his wheelchair and was coming towards her. What are you doing here? I thought you went to your apartment, she said. I wanted to be here with you. I wanted to see you fall asleep in my arms. She felt her cheeks burning. He slowly transferred to her bed, which she helped him. I hope you don't mind me sleeping here. She was surprised, he asked. He was her husband. He had every right to be here, and she did not mind it at all. No, you are my husband, and you can stay here with me. He wrapped his arm around her, and they fell asleep. When the morning came, Mia woke up and Christian was not there. She felt relaxed. She spent the night with her husband, and even though she did not love him yet, she felt protected and she liked him a lot. Even though the first time they met, he was not nice toward her. Last night, he was a wonderful man who cared about her. She went downstairs, and there she saw Leo having breakfast. Good morning, my cousin. How did you sleep? Very well, thank you. I saw Christian this morning. Were you two together last night? Her cheeks were red, 
but she did not answer him. Instead, she changed the subject. What are your plans for today? Nothing much. Why, do you want to spend the day together? No, I just asked. I will go to King Entertainment to apply for a job. I can come with you if you want. No, thank you. I want to start from the beginning, and I know if I go with you, they will treat me differently. At that moment, he was so proud of his wife. She was the real deal, and he decided to make her happy no matter what, and he decided to tell her the truth in the near future. She went to the company and applied, got an interview scheduled, and she was planning to call and tell him everything. His phone rang, and he answered. Hello? Hey, I just called to tell you that I got an interview, and I think that I might get the job. I am sure you will. Christian, don't you dare to help me. I will not, I promise. I just know you will get the job. What will you do now? I wanted to call Sarah and drink a cup of coffee, buy some things I need, and after that, I will go home. Okay, see you home. She hung her phone and called Sarah. They made an appointment to see each other in the Starbucks coffee shop in Manhattan. They drank coffee, talked, and went shopping. But she wanted to go home. She wanted to see her husband. She started missing him. They were done shopping when she headed home. Chapter 10 The evening came. Christian had already told his staff to go home. He wanted to eat dinner with his wife alone. He wanted to surprise her, and maybe if there is a way, he wanted to make her his and make love all night long. She was the most beautiful and gentle woman that he had ever met. Even while he was thinking those things, he was wondering why he was feeling that but did not take it into consideration. Tonight was about her, about them. She came near the mansion. It was dark, and she could see a few pale lights. She opened the door, and she was very surprised. The floor was full of candles, and there was only a path covered with red rose petals. She continued following the petals, and they took her to the dining room. On the dining room table were two big candles, two wine glasses, and two plates. She came close to the table and saw beautiful and delicious types of dishes. There was steak with mushrooms and potatoes on the side, chocolate-dipped strawberries, pink strawberry cheesecake, Merlot wine, and a salad. She did not know what to say or do. Christian was sitting from one side and was waiting for her. She sat and asked him, Christian, did you do all this? Yes, I wanted to surprise you, and I wanted to celebrate your new job. How did you know I got the job? Did anybody call you? Did you call anybody? Leo told me you went to apply, and I knew you will get it. She nodded and added, Swear to me that you did not call anybody, and did not tell anybody to employ me. I swear, baby, you did this on your own. Thank you. She smiled gently. He raised his glass and toasted in her health and for them. She drank two glasses of wine and already felt a little bit tipsy. He looked at her and she looked amazing. They finished dinner and even though she was already drunk, she decided to go upstairs. I will go to my room. Will you join me? You can go. I will come in a few minutes, he answered. She was getting ready for bed when he entered. It was dark and she was drunk. She laid on the bed and could not see him, but sensed him when he got on the bed. She could feel his naked chest. She gasped. Christian didn't hesitate before smashing his lips against this infuriating woman. The way she gasped when his lips met hers gave him access to those plump, juicy lips, and he plundered inside, not waiting for an invitation. Mia clung to his naked chest, her fingers reveling in the heat of his body and the hard curves of his muscles. Her breasts tightened, and her nipples puckered, as he drew her closer against that rock-hard chest. She had never been kissed like this, and hadn't known it existed, outside of the pages of a steamy romance novel. Her hands explored his back, loving how he reacted to every light touch of her fingertips. 
His mouth, which had started out insistent and even a little demanding, had mellowed a fraction so that he tasted her, drank from her lips as if she were the finest wine he had ever consumed. His hand slipped down to her ass. Mia's backside had been haunting him for days, and he couldn't help molding the globes, wishing that it were her skin he was touching and not the material of her pajamas. She whimpered in her throat, and Christian felt like a king. Mia wanted him, and he knew it as much as he knew he had to have her. But Christian didn't want to rush it. He wasn't interested in a quick fuck. With his face and body, he could get that anywhere. His hands came up, one hand cradling the back of her neck, to tip her head, giving him further access to the regions of her mouth. The other slipped into her hair, feeling the silky strands that curled around his finger, much like he wanted to be curled around her. Chapter 11 When she woke up, there was not a single trace of him next to her, and she did not know if something really happened or if she dreamt it. The only thing she thought was why did she drink so much? She got up, had a terrible headache, got washed up, dressed, and went downstairs. She looked for Maria. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, madam. Where's Christian? He went to work, Leonardo said. Maria, can you give me a pill? I have a terrible headache. Wow, cousin, what did you do last night? Did you drink too much? What if I did? Leo, do you need anything? Yes, I want to take you to lunch. I cannot. I will go to the company. I want to see my husband. Why do you want to see him? Here you go, madam. Maria came and passed her the pill and a glass of water. At that moment, the door rang. Maria opened it, and there was a delivery man with a big bouquet of red roses. Maria took the bouquet and turned around. This is for you, madam. Wow, nice flowers. Who is it from? Mia took the card and read it. It said, Thank you for giving me the best night in my life. X-O-X-O-C. She smiled, and at that moment she knew that last night happened, and that she had the most amazing sex in her life as well. She thought, what is happening? Could she be falling in love? Hell, was she in love with him? She decided to call him. The phone was ringing, but nobody answered. She turned around and spoke to Leo. No one is answering. Do you know what is going on? No, he is probably at a meeting. When he is done, he will probably call you. Yeah, you are right. Look, Mia, I have some business to take care of. I will see you later. All right, have a nice day. Thank you, you too. A few moments after Leo left, her mobile phone rang. Hey, baby. A man with a deep husky voice said, Hey. Mia answered, What are you doing? Nothing. I just wanted to say thank you for the flowers. They are amazing. I'm glad you like them. I thought it would be a nice gesture after the most amazing night I had in my life. Mia was glad he could not see her right now because she was smiling and had her cheeks turn red. Baby, are you there? He asked, because he could not hear her. Yes, I am still here. What are your plans? I plan to stay and wait for you home today. I will swim in the pool or something. Okay. I have a few more meetings, but I will try to come home to you as soon as I can. Okay. He sent her a kiss and hang up. She was excited. She wanted her marriage to work, and she planned to take care of that. At that moment, her phone rang again. Mia was surprised when she saw the caller ID. She answered, Hello. Hello, Mia. How are you? I am fine, Father. What is going on? Nothing, darling. I wanted to hear your voice. After the fight we had, I was angry at you, but with the help of Victoria, I realized that you are my daughter and I love you. There is no need for us to be angry at each other. Mia was surprised at her father's words, but she decided to accept his words and try to make amends with him. It is all right, father. I am sorry that I reacted like that, but I did not do anything wrong, and I did not think that I had to say sorry to my stepmother. Baby, 
All I want is for you three to get along. Yes, father. Maybe one day that will happen. So, what are your plans for today? I wanted to read a book and take a swim in the pool. Why? I wanted to see you. Do you want to go to lunch? Sure, father. Where? What do you say about Luigi? I will see you there in an hour. She hung up with her father, got ready, and went there. She saw him. He was not the same man as she remembered. He had black circles under his eyes, and his face was pale. She kissed him on the cheek and asked him, Father, are you all right? Hello, my sweet girl. I am fine. I missed you so much. I missed you too. Why do you look like this? You are pale. Are you sure that you are all right? Yes, baby. We had some problems in the company, but I will take care of them. Are you sure? Do you need any help? No, baby. I can ask Chris if you want. Maybe he can help you. No, baby. Do not worry. I can handle it. I do not want you to ask your husband anything. I do not want him to think that you married him because of his status or money. Dad, it is okay. She knew that something is not okay, but she was sure that her father will take care of it. If he needed help, he would have asked, or at least told her to ask her husband. They ate, said their goodbyes, and she went home. When she arrived home, she saw Leo. Hello, cousin. Where have you been? I was worried about you, he said with an angry tone in his voice. I was not alone, Leo. I was with my father. We had lunch. Did you tell your husband? No, I did not, if you must know. Wow, even now, at the beginning of your marriage, you have secrets he said with a provocative tone. I do not have secrets. My dad called me and wanted to see me. I would have told Chris, but he said he had meetings all day, so I did not want to bother him. And by the way, why do you care? My marriage and what I do with it is my business and not yours. He looked at her, but did not say a word, just turned around and left. She decided she will not call her husband but that when he comes home, she will tell him everything. The night came, and Christian came home. She was waiting for him in the living room. Hello. Hello, babe. How was your day? What did you do? Chris asked. I had a nice day. I went to lunch with my dad. We were at Luigi. Did you have a good time? Yes, although... What, baby? I am worried about my dad. He was pale, and I asked him if he is all right. He said he was fine, but that he had some problems with the company. Do you want me to look into it? No, baby. If he needed help, he would have told me, or asked me to talk to you. He said he did not need help. Okay. Baby, did you eat dinner? No, baby. I waited for you. Let's eat. I am famished. She smiled and took him to the dining room. They ate dinner and went to bed. For the first time, she was happy. Really happy. Chapter 12 Eleven Weeks Later Mia was excited. She went to her interview and got the job, but as an intern. She was excited either way. At that moment, she decided to call Christian. The phone rang, and a deep and husky voice answered. It made her shiver. Guess what? You got the job? Yes! She screamed on the phone. He smiled on the phone and said, Wow, baby, that is great. I told you, you will get it. Congrats. Thanks, baby. This means we can celebrate. I will make dinner. What time are you coming home? Baby, I have two more meetings, but I will try to be home in two to three hours. Okay, baby. See you home. She went to their house told Maria to go home, that she wants to cook dinner for her husband, and she gave her the night off. Mia cooked, and the dinner looked amazing, but she was sure that it tasted amazing as well. She got to her room, took a shower, got dressed, and then heard a car arrive. She was excited. Went downstairs and saw Chris with a bouquet of roses in his hands. He was the most handsome man she had seen, even though he was in a wheelchair. 
He passed her the roses. Wow, Chris. They smell amazing. They are for you. Roses for my beautiful rose. She kissed him and took him to the dining room. The next day, Mia goes to work. Her day started nice. She had a few writings to check and to correct. While she was coming back from lunch, she sees Scott, her ex-fiancé. He comes near her and speaks. Scott, what are you doing here? What do you care? Who do you think you are to ask me such questions? Excuse me. She wanted to leave, but he grabbed her hand and started pulling her. Scott, please let me go. Oh, no, you owe me an explanation. How could you leave me? Look, Scott, we were not meant to be. How can you say that? She could not stand him anymore, especially him making himself a victim, so she spoke. Are you playing, or are you dumb? You cheated on me with my sister. She could notice the people starting to stare at them, but she did not care. Mia, that is a misunderstanding. I love you. I saw you with my own eyes, and you do not love me, Scott. You love my position in society or my father's money. You know that is not true. I have always loved you, not your stepsister, not anyone else but you. Are you lying to me? Or to yourself. You have never loved me. You cheated on me so many times. Please, leave me alone. I do not want to talk to you. Let me go. She could see herself yelling. At that moment, someone interrupted him. You heard my wife. Let her go and leave. He turned around and Christian was there. Scott smiled. For this? You left me for a man in a wheelchair? As I told you, I left you because you cheated on me with my stepsister. And don't you dare say anything about him. He is 100 times a better man than you will ever be. Scott laughed. I can see that. At that moment, Christian looked at Benjamin. Scott was manhandled and thrown out. Baby, are you okay? Mia hugged him. Now that you are here, I am great. Take your things. We will go home. Chris, I cannot. I have two more hours to work. It is my work time. Baby, I am the owner. If I say go, we will go. Or do you want me to fire you? With a smirk on his face, he said that. She smiled and nodded. What should I tell my boss? Who are you working under? His name is Bob Clark. One second, baby. He took out his phone and dialed John, the CEO of the company. Yes, sir. How may I help you? Jack said. Hello, Jack. I'm calling to ask you to call Bob Clark and tell him that I'm taking his new employee home and that she won't come to work tomorrow as well. She has some work to do. May I know the name of the employee? Of course. My wife, Mia. Your wife, sir? He asked with a strange voice. Yes, my wife. She is working at the company, and she is a low-position screenwriter, and no, we are not allowed to help her in any way. Mia heard him, and her eyes were sparkling, and she could see that he really listened to her and respected her decisions. Of course, sir, Jack responded. Thank you, Jack. Mia grabbed his wheelchair and went toward the exit. They sat in the car, and at that moment, he decided to kiss her. Chris, please. What, baby? I am embarrassed. It is not polite. Baby, please. I was waiting for this moment all day. I can't wait anymore. It is so nice to feel your lips and to be able to touch you. I wanted to kiss you as well, but... He interrupted her with another kiss. Then do not say that and just do it. But anyhow, let's stop because I will not be able to keep my hand off you, and I do not want that. They went home. They were in their bedroom. He caught her hand and pulled her in his arms. He wanted to hold her and hug her. Oh, baby, you have no idea how much I wanted to hold you like this. She could see his naughty smirk, and she knew he had some naughty plans. So she started to tease him. Oh, really? And is it that the only thing you wanted to do? baby? 
I want to make love to you as no other man has before. I do not know what did you do to me, but I want to tell you that I think I am starting to fall in love with you. Not falling, I think I love you. She could see the love in his eyes. She knew at that moment that she was safe in his hands, and that no matter what, she can say the same words as him. She knew that he will keep her and her heart safe. So she said the three magic words herself as well. I love you too. He hugged her and kissed her on her forehead. I cannot tell you how much I wanted to hear those words from you. You are my sun and my moon. I love you so much, he said. He took her in his arms and felt like the happiest and loved man in the world. The woman he loved loves him back. Chapter 13 He made love to her slowly, drawing her to the bed and laying her down, and starting all over again, head to toe, with plenty of stops in between. When he moved into her, with her, and pushed them both to the point where passion met the stars, they fell asleep, tired but satisfied. The next morning, when she woke up, he pulled her towards him, kissed, tasted, and made all thoughts of morning breath float away. She sighed and let him lead. He held her hostage with his tongue, took his time worshipping her mouth. When he was tired of her lips, or maybe he simply needed to breathe, he pushed her onto her back and started a slow dance down her neck, his free hand playing on her leg, her hip, bringing every nerve ending awake with his touch. Waking up with you has its perks, she smiled and told him. He pushed her nightgown low and nibbled at the top of her breast. Her nipples tightened and offered themselves to him. His full hand rounded on her, brushed against her offering. So does going to bed with me, he smiled. He nibbled her tip through her clothing. Showering with me, he said with a husky tone. How could he suck through fabric? Everything tingled, and she pushed her hips closer for some kind of contact. Hot tubs, she managed to say. I like hot tubs. A low laugh escaped his lips as he lifted her enough to drag her nightgown over her head. Estás hermosa, he said before he dipped his head for a solid taste. The scrape of the stubble on his chin added to the torment his tongue was delivering to her breasts. The slow, torturous movements of her body raised her pulse and had her breathing heavier. So far, the tightness in her chest had yet to make itself known. Even with her entire being winding like a child's toy, ready to spring, the weight of Chris's erection pressed against her stomach and brought a bolt of lust low between her thighs. Mia dragged her nails down his back and met with the elastic of his boxers while she pressed her knee closer. Chris murmured something in Spanish before taking her lips again. His kiss lingered as he took his time. In the past, Mia would push forward, attempt to move a lover along to the finish line. Not with Christian. Kissing half-naked like two young kids in the back of a car brought on its own pleasure she had forgotten existed. They kissed, tasted, touched, and learned the places that brought the largest response from the other. He found her soft folds with a string of sensual Spanish words. You're killing me, she said when he didn't hurry his touch. Then we will die together, amor, he said. Using her foot, she helped his boxers make their way to the floor and teased Chris as he teased her. He was hot, ready, and she scraped her nails over, under, around, but didn't touch fully until Christian offered her relief. The first stroke of his fingers against her most sensitive parts brought her off the bed, her heart thundering in her chest. Easy, baby. Take your time. Slowly. He said in a husky voice. Slow was good. Her breath caught and she forced a deep breath. He swirled, stroked, brought her to the very edge of release, and backed off. Instead of pounding his chest in frustration, she returned his tease, took hold, and squeezed. He pushed into her hand, lost control as she heard him suck in a tight breath. 
One minute she was beside him, the next, above him. Perfect. You're so perfect, he told her. Then she began to move. Just like his kiss, she built slow waves of pleasure until sensibility gave way to greedy need. He gripped her hips and started to move her slowly, to find her rhythm. And she found another place of pleasure deep inside her own body that Mia didn't know was there. Mia felt the moment Christian lost it. The control he held so close was gone. In that minute, he pulled her near his mouth and whispered something to her ear. Te amo, he said. They were both tired, but she had to go to work. Got up and went to the bathroom. He leaned his head on the board of the bed and heard a nice gentle voice. She was singing under the shower. He smiled and shook his head. She was amazing, and he knew that. He knew that she was the love of his life, and that he did not want to lose her. He had to tell her the truth and fast. Before he could think of anything else, she came out of the bathroom, looking amazing in a towel and nothing under it. She started getting dressed when he spoke. Baby, we have to talk. I have something to tell you. Baby, I have to go to work. I will be late, but I will call you later and we can talk, she said. We cannot talk on the phone, he answered. She looked at him, and he had a worried look on his face. Is it urgent? I can be late if the boss lets me. She smirked, stopped getting ready, and came to the bed. I thought you will not go to work. You have a day off, he said with a sad face. I know, baby, but I want to go. I do not want that me being your wife to get in the way of my job. I do not want to be treated differently because I am your wife. Baby, I understand. I agree with you, and I am very proud of you for not wanting to use my name to better your position. But if there are some perks that you can use, feel free to use my name. He smiled, and she gently caressed his face. What did you want to talk to me about? It is not urgent. Go. I do not want you to be late. We can talk later. Baby, tell me. He thought and said, Well, you know that it will be Christmas in a few weeks, and I want us to have a party here. A party? Yes, well, I never loved Christmas ever since I was a child, but now that I am with you, I want to celebrate everything. So maybe we can have a small party. Invite some people here if you want. Yes, baby. If that is what you want, I would like it as well. Then it's settled. You will organize everything, and if you need help, you can ask Tom. I will call Tom. He can help me with the invitations. She nodded, kissed him, and left the room. Chapter 14 The weeks passed too fast. One of the brightest signs of the holiday season has come to light the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Mia was occupied with the preparations. She still had to send the invitations because there were only ten days before Christmas, and she wanted to know who will attend her party. She looked at the invitations and saw her father and stepmother's names. She thought, should I invite her? Leo came from behind her and said, a penny for your thoughts? He said and smiled. She turned around and saw him. I haven't seen you in a while. Where have you been? Mia asked him. I was on a business trip, but what were you thinking about? I am sure it was not about me. He saw the invitations in her hands. Are those the invitations? Who are you inviting? A few friends, Christian's family, and a few of his relatives. My family, and a few of my friends, and a few business partners of Chris. Business partners? Which ones? Well, Ford Pierce with his girlfriend, Robbie Banner and his wife, Steve and Melinda Potter, Arnold Bain and his girlfriend, and Nicholas Archibald and Lucy Johnson. Ahem, do not forget to invite Jack Robertson. Who is he? I have never heard about him. He is a business partner from New Jersey, and I know he will be disappointed if you do not send him an invite. Okay, thank you for telling me. Mia thanked Leonardo. Will you invite me to your party? He asked her. She smiled. You are invited. 
I will leave the invitation in your room, and you have a plus one. Thank you, but I will come alone. Maybe I will meet a beautiful woman like you at the party. He smiled with a smirk on his face. She gave the invitations to Tom to send them. The days passed, and it was the day of the Christmas party. She was watching her reception hall being decorated from the stairs, the fireplace, the windows, to the tables and chairs. There was a big Christmas tree decorated with the most amazing Christmas lights and ornaments. There was a big shining star on the top of the tree. She was excited everything was the way it was supposed to be. She turned around and went to her room to get ready. She was planning to wear a glamorous formal fit dark red satin dress with V neckline and leg split design. Her hair was put in a bun, and her makeup was very gentle. She did not want to use a lot of makeup. She had not seen Christian all day, and she decided to call him. The phone rang, and he answered. Hello? Baby, where are you? I haven't seen you all day. Baby, I am at the apartment, getting ready. What about you? Are you ready? Yes, baby, I am. We have only one hour for you to come home. The guests will start arriving. I will come, baby. In half an hour, tops. They were about to hang up when he said, Baby? Yes? Do not forget I love you, and I always will. I love you too, baby, she said. The night came, and the guests started to arrive. Christian was ready and was holding her hand while meeting the guests. Mia had an expression full of love for her husband. She did not know why did she love him so much in the small amount of time they had spent together. The only thing she knew was the enormous love she felt for him. At that moment, her family came in. Her father was wearing an Armani suit and was very handsome, with his gray hair and his face. Victoria was wearing a nice dress, and behind them was Anna. But that was not the biggest surprise. Anna was holding her hand in Scott's. She had a big smile on her face, and Anna was hoping that will ruin this party for Mia and her husband. Good evening, Mia. Her father greeted her and kissed her on her cheek. Good evening, father. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mia. These decorations are amazing. Thank you, Victoria. I hope you will have a good time here. Scott approached with Anna under his arm. Mia, how are you? She asked with a smirk on her face. Anna, I am great, thank you. I did not know that your invitation had a plus one. It did not, but I asked Dad, and he said that he knows you will not be mad, so I decided to bring Scott with me. You should not have. But now that he is here, welcome. Have a great time, and Merry Christmas. Now everything was different than before. She had an expression on her face that her husband noticed and wanted to see if everything was okay. Hey, baby, are you okay? Yes, baby, I am fine. I just saw Scott with Anna. She brought him here because of my father, who gave her permission without asking me. Does that hurt you, baby? No, baby, I am just scared about the party. I do not want something to happen that will ruin our time together. Do not worry, baby. I will tell Tom to watch out for any inconvenience. Thank you, baby. What would I do without you? She kissed him. Even though Anna was in the element to do something, Scott told her not to do anything, that he is a plan, that they can do together, that will destroy her forever. She had an evil look on her face, and was watching at her stepsister with great hate. Her mother approached her. Anna, stop looking at Mia like that. Someone might notice something. Your father might notice something. He is not my father. He is only the man you married for his money. Yes, I know, but for now, he is your father. And please do not ruin the thing we have worked so hard to achieve. Yes, mother. Mia approached her father. She wanted to spend some time with him. Father, how are you? She asked. I am fine, baby girl. I want you to come tomorrow by the house. Why? I want to give you your present. How are you? I will, daddy. I am great. I just miss you and mom. Mia. Your mom would have been very proud of you. She loved you a lot. We both love you a lot. I will, Daddy. I know, Dad. I love you a lot, too. Daddy, may I ask you a question? Yes, baby girl. 
What is it? Are you sure you are okay? Are you happy? Baby girl, those were two questions. I told you before I have some work-related problems, but I will do everything better and we will all be happy. He looked at her with a sincere look on his face and asked her, Are you happy with Christian? She was in love and she had that look on her face and answered, Yes, Daddy, I am finally happy and in love. He is the man of my life, and I see myself spending the rest of my life with him. At that moment, Christian approached his wife and his father-in-law. They shook hands, and Christian asked him, Sir, how are you? Christian, I am fine. And you? I am doing great, sir. I just wanted to tell you if there is anything you need, do not hesitate to call me. Thank you, son. My daughter is very happy to have you in her life, Mia's father said. Thank you, sir. Now, if you excuse me, I will go and find my wife. She got up and went to search for Victoria. They stayed behind and were enjoying themselves. The party was a success, and they were too tired. He looked at her, and she kissed him and said, Merry Christmas, baby. Merry Christmas, my love. He took out a small box from his pocket. This is for you. He gave her the gift, and she opened the box. It was a beautiful diamond ring. Wow, Christian, it is beautiful. She put the ring on her finger and looked at it. After that, she looked at Tom, and he brought her a box as well. She said, It's not as expensive as yours, but it was bought with love, and I hope you will like it. He opened the box, and there was a black leather wallet. He said with love in his eyes, Thank you, baby. It is amazing. They kiss. The night and the party ended as a big success. Chapter 15 It was New Year's Day, and it was the most amazing time in New York. Everything was decorated and beautiful. There was snow on the streets, snowmen in the yards. The Christmas lights were still on the houses, and the Christmas spirit could be felt. She felt amazing. It was one of her favorite times of the year. As the years passed, she was alone or with her friends for New Year's Eve, and they would go to Times Square, watch the live concerts of the famous musicians or music group, would drink wine, and would see the firework. This year was supposed to be different. She had a husband and a family. She knew that this year she will not feel alone, and she will celebrate it with him. Christian came home and called for his wife. She came down and asked him, Yes, baby. What is going on? Is everything okay? Yes, baby. Get ready. I am taking you on vacation. I want us to have the best honeymoon we ever had. On vacation? Where? In Hawaii, baby. I want us to have the honeymoon we never had because of me. Baby, are you sure? We can stay home together. Baby, get ready. Please, the plane leaves in four hours. She was very excited. She had never been to Hawaii, and plus with the love of her life, for her honeymoon. She got ready very fast. She put in some dresses, some bikinis, and a lot of t-shirts and jeans. She came downstairs and looked for Christian. There was a voice in the office. She opened the door slowly, not to bother him. But the next thing she saw was something that made her angry and sad at the same time. She spoke. Christian? He turned around. He had fear in his eyes. But he could not move. He was standing in front of the window. He panicked and ran towards her. She saw her husband standing. But not only that, she could recognize the disguise. It was Leo and Christian at the same time. She did not know what to do. She could only feel the panic and the light head. She passed out and fell in his arms. He did not know what to do. He called his private doctor and family friend. She was all right, only the stress from the sight she saw. When she woke up, she did not want to believe what she had just seen. Christian was walking. She saw him. He was sitting on the armchair near her bed with his head in his hands. When he saw that she woke up, he came to her bed and slowly spoke. Baby, how are you feeling? Christian? Yes, baby, it is me. 
You can walk? She asked the question, but it was more like a confirmation. Yes, baby, I can. She nodded. You lied to me about everything. She started crying. No, baby, I did not lie about everything. I love you so much. You do not love me. If you had loved me, you would not have lied to me like this. Baby, listen to me. I will tell you everything. I do not want to listen to you. Please, get out. Baby, listen to me. I beg you. She could hear the pain mixed with fear in his voice. She nodded, and at that he felt relief and started speaking. Baby, my father spoke to me, and he said I have to get married soon, and that he wanted to have a grandchild. I did not want to get married because I was satisfied with my life. I had everything, and I did not want to fall in love because I know what that love did to him when he lost my mom. So when he could not find me a wife, I felt relieved. But then a letter from your stepmom came, and my heart hardened. He stopped to look into her eyes. She was listening to him carefully. She said that you wanted to get married, and that it would be an honor. I told my father I would marry you, only if I'd do it my way. So I bought a wheelchair, put on a wig, and was ready. The wedding came, and I acted the way I did. But when I came home and met you as Leo, I knew that you did not want to marry me as well. But I did not know why. Then I started to know you, and I liked what I saw. A gentle young woman, who even though she was married to a man in a wheelchair, she respected that man and her marriage, and did not want to do anything to jeopardize it. So, I decided to come back to you as Christian, and I tried to tell you, but I was afraid that you would leave me. Baby, I fell in love. I love you so much. Christian, I understand that our marriage was too soon. But I felt really bad when you acted like that. I know, baby. I'm sorry. She tried to get up. Baby, please, you have to stay in bed. I cannot. Look, Christian, I have to go. I will go to my friend Sarah's place. I have to think about everything. Baby, you cannot leave me. Christian, I cannot stand you right now. I am very furious, and I might say something that I will regret later. Please, tell someone to take me to Sarah. I will take you. He was determined. She nodded because she knew if she did not allow him to take her and see where Sarah lives, he will not allow her to go anywhere, and she wanted to get away from him. Where is my phone? On the bedside table, baby. She took her mobile phone from the bedside table and called Sarah. She answered almost immediately. Hello? Hey, what are you doing? Mia asked. Mia, are you okay? Sarah asked. I am fine. Are you home? No, but I will be home in ten minutes. I am in Starbucks at the end of my block. Why? Is everything okay? Can I come? Mia asked with a cry in her voice. Come right away. I will wait for you home. Are you okay? I will be fine. I just need to talk to you. Of course. I will cancel everything. You can come. Cancel everything? She asked. Yes, baby. The New Year's Eve. We plan to go to Times Square like every year, but I can skip this one. Oh, you do not have to cancel anything. I do not need to come. Mia, please. I am waiting for you. I want to see you right away, so come. I will buy a caramel frappuccino for you, and I will be waiting. With extra cream and sprinkles, please? Of course, baby. And I will tell him to put rum and ice cream in it. Yes, I will come in a while. And Sarah? Yes, baby? Thank you. You are my best friend. She went downstairs. She looked at Christian and said, Can you please tell the driver to take me to Sarah? Baby, you need to rest. I want to see Sarah. I want to talk to her. Please, Christian. She pleaded. All right. I will take you there. Are you sure? 
Aren't you busy? No, I am not. I said I will take you there. How long will you stay? Maybe I will stay a few days. Christian, understand me. I have to think about everything, about us, about our marriage, and I want to be alone. I understand. I'll leave you alone if that is what you wish. She nodded, and he was driving her to Sarah's house when he touched her hand. He took her hand into his, and that was a very gentle touch. She did not try to pull it back. She looked at him, this perfect man, who had lied about everything, but she loved him still. Baby, I want you to forgive me. With a loving voice, he tried again. Look, Christian, I do not know if I can do that. I have to think about it. Baby, please. I will do everything. Look, this was a great shock for me, and I do not know if I can pass it. I will try, but for the next few days, I do not want to see you. Baby, he agreed with a nod. He stopped in front of Sarah's building. It was an old, ten-story building, but he could see that it had some sort of security and a doorman. He moved toward her, kissed her on her cheek, and told her, No matter what you decided, I want you to know that I love you very much, and I will always love you. I will never give up on you, on us. I know, I love you, but I have to think about it. She got down, and when she closed the door, she just looked at him and waved. He started the car and dialed his assistant. Tom answered after the second ring. Yes, sir. Tom, I want you to send some man to 123 Memory Lane, in the old building. All right, sir. Thank you. I'm coming to the company in a few minutes. All right, sir. He continued driving and thinking about her. What will be her decision? Is it possible for this to end? He felt a sudden fear and an urge to call her. He did not. He decided to give her time. She will call him. He had faith in her, in their love, and in the happiness they had. He will prove that his love was, and it is, still strong. Chapter 16 Mia knocked on Sarah's door. Sarah opened it, and when she saw the tears in Mia's eyes, she hugged her. At that moment, Mia felt like she was breaking, and everything she held in her was coming out now. She started crying. Mia, baby, what is going on? She asked her. He lied to me. Who? Who lied to you? Christian. What did he do? Did he cheat it on you? What did he lie? He can walk. He was Leo and Christian at the same time. He had a double identity. What? She had a surprised look on her face. It became an angry one in a few seconds. She spoke. I will kill him. I swear to God I will. No, please. Sarah, listen to me. She pleaded her. Tell me everything. Mia explained everything to her, and she realized what she was saying. She hugged her and said, Mia, he loves you. I could see the love in his eyes every time he looked at you at the Christmas party. I cannot tell you to leave or to stay. The only thing I can say is that you love him and that you shine. He has made you smile and be happy like no one else has. I know, but I am afraid. What are you so afraid of? Of everything. He lied to me about this. He might be lying to me about something else as well. I doubt everything now. I know, baby. But if you loved him, you will have to prove it to yourself and to find the strength in your heart to forgive and trust him. She nodded and continued. I canceled all my plans for tonight, so we will order pizza and watch a movie. We can go out on the balcony and watch the fireworks. Mia smiled gently and said, I want a cup of tea with rum. I want to get drunk. Sarah smiled and went to the kitchen. While the water was boiling, she called her favorite pizzeria, Joe's Pizza, and ordered a mozzarella pizza. They had an amazing New Year's Eve and had fun. 
Mia was not feeling festive, but was okay. She did not want to let Sarah down, so she smiled. They watched movies all night, and at dawn fell asleep. Two days had passed. He did not have any news from his wife. He did not know what to do. He was devastated. But he decided to get out of bed, have a shower, wash his teeth, get dressed, have breakfast, and go to work. He decided when he finished work, he will go to Sarah's apartment and talk to his wife and take her home. He came to work, and a few minutes later, Tom entered his office. He was nervous. Tom, what is going on? When he spoke, he told him the devastating news. He took out his phone and called Mia. He wanted to tell her the news himself. He did not want her to find out from anyone else. She answered her phone. Hello? Baby, are you with Sarah? He asked her. Yes, I am here. Why? She asked. Please, stay with her. I will come there in twenty minutes. Chris, I think we have already agreed. You have to give me some time and space. Baby, I know, but it is urgent. Please, do not go anywhere, and do not answer any phone calls, no matter who is calling. Why, Chris, what is going on? Baby, I want to tell you some news, but I want to tell you in person. What kind of news? You are making me worried. Baby, I cannot talk on the phone, please. Do not answer anyone. I will be there in a short period of time. He drove as fast as he could. He rang the doorbell and Mia opened the door. She saw fear and tears in his eyes. Christian? He hugged her. Baby, come. Let's seat. I have to tell you something. They sat. He did not know how to tell her. He spoke. Baby, there had been an accident. Your father's car was one of the participants in the accident. She could feel tears falling down her cheeks. My father? She spoke. There were no survivors. I am sorry, baby. She hugged him, and she started crying. She could not stop, and he knew he had to hold her. A few moments later, she took her phone and called Victoria. She answered. Hello, Victoria? Yes. What do you want? Is it true? Is my father dead? Please, tell me. Apparently so, she answered. Victoria, what happened? He had an accident. He ran out the road. I have no other information. How did that happen? I do not know. Please, stop asking me stupid things. When is the funeral? What time? Where? With a crying voice, she asked. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. on the city graveyard. Is everything ready? The lawyer took care of everything, and he said that he will come on Monday, and he will read us his will. He will contact you. How can you say that? Is that the most important thing? With sadness in her voice, she asked. Mia, there is nothing I can do now. He is dead. We must continue living. If the lawyer does not call you, don't even bother coming. The real hairs are here. She hung the phone. Mia could not believe her ears, what she had heard right now. She was crying. What did she say? Christian asked. She wasn't even sad. She said the lawyer will go there tomorrow, and I did not need to go. How can she be so cruel? Baby, she probably did not love him. She wanted his money. I know that, Christian, but not even a little bit? Not even maybe a tear or two? She's so selfish. Christian hugged her, and Sarah brought her a cup of tea. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. is the funeral. Can you both come with me? She asked. Of course, Sarah said. She looked at Christian. You know I will be there. Baby, you have to come home. I want you there next to me. You do not have to be in the same room or even to talk or look at me. I just want you there so I know you are safe. Mia, I will do anything that is in my power for you to forgive me. She did not say a word. She was thinking. 
At that moment, Sarah spoke. Mia, you should go with him. I want you here, but he is right. You will be safer with him. She looked at Sarah and saw the decisive look on her face. She knew Sarah was right, but she was afraid if she goes home, she will want to forgive him. And she did not want that. She spoke. I will go home, but under one condition. Anything, he said. I want you to promise me that you will not talk to me. I want you to give me space and time, because I am not ready to forgive you. Baby, I promise. But I want you to know, I will never give up, and I will always try to make you realize that you are my one and only love. She nodded, took her bag, and went with him. He took her home. She went upstairs, took a shower, washed her teeth, dressed her nightgown, and got in bed. She could not sleep. She turned on the lamp and started thinking. Christian was passing near her door when he noticed the light and knocked at the door. Come in, she said. Mia, I saw the light. Are you all right? he asked. I am fine. I am just thinking, she said. He came near the bed and sat on it. Do you want to talk about it? he asked. I do not. I cannot talk to you. You are responsible for my thoughts. Baby, I am sorry. I know what I did was wrong, but at that moment, that was the only thing I knew to do. At least until I knew you better. I thought you were after my money. I had made a thorough check, and it said you had a fiancé. And I thought that you broke off with him because you wanted my money and my social status. Later, I discovered the truth, he started explaining. Why did you not tell me then? What stopped you? What were you afraid of? She asked so many questions. Then I already fell in love with you, and I did not want to lose you. And I knew if I told you the truth, you will get angry and you will leave. He explained. I understand. But can you please leave me alone? I want to go to bed. We will have a long day tomorrow. I do not want to talk to anyone. I just want to sleep and not feel this pain. She pleaded him with tears in her eyes. I know, baby, it hurts, but you have to be strong. He would not like for you to feel this way. He loved you very much. Please, baby, he said. I know that, Christian but I have to take this pain out of my chest, and I think if you leave me alone and I cry it out, I will feel better. Okay, baby, but I want you to know, I love you, he said. I know that, she said to him with a sad look in her eyes. He kissed her on her cheek and got out. She continued crying, and eventually she fell asleep. Chapter 17 Mia had nightmares all night and could not sleep very well. It was dawn when she felt so tired and felt her eyes closing, she fell asleep. When Mia woke up, she felt a sudden pain in her chest. This was a very sad day for her. She lost the only parent she had left, and she knew that she lost a part of her heart. She had lost her mother a few years ago, but she had her father that is always taking care of her. Even when he got married to Victoria, he would leave her alone. But he would always call her and ask her if she was all right. He would pay for everything, from schools, clothes, apartments, vacation, and everything that she wanted. That was not love, but she knew he loved her in his own way. She was preoccupied with her thoughts when there was a knock on her door. Come in she said. Hey, I just wanted to wake you up, and to see how did you sleep. It was okay. I did not get a lot of sleep, but I guess that is normal. He nodded, turned around, and was slowly leaving her room when she said, Christian. She looked at him. Yes? He asked. I will get dressed, and I was wondering if you would like to have breakfast together. I have to talk to you, and we have to agree on some things. Of course. I will tell Maria to set the table, and I will wait for you downstairs in the dining room. She nodded and got out of bed. 
She got dressed and went downstairs. He was sitting in the dining room and reading something on his tablet. The food was served. He raised his head and looked at her. She was dressed in a black dress, and even though she did not wear any makeup, in his eyes, she was the most beautiful creature that ever walked the earth. She sat next to him. Everything looks so delicious. With a sad voice, she said, I told Maria to make your favorite dishes. She nodded. What do you want to talk about with me? He asked with a worry in his voice. Christian, I understand why you did what you did. I want to forgive you, but... He took her small hands into his and said, Baby, I will do anything that is necessary so you will forgive me. I want you not to pressure me. For now, we will stay under the same roof, but in separate rooms. We will eat dinner and breakfast together. We will discuss everything, but we will not kiss, make love, or stay in the same room. Baby, I want to feel you, to make love to you. These are my conditions, and when I see that you have finally proven your love towards me, I will change them. All right, baby. We will not tell anyone about your lies. We will say that you had an operation or that you had therapy, and you can walk now. I do not want anyone to find out that you have lied to me. In front of everyone, we are a normal couple, and everything is okay between us. He nodded. It is almost time to go, he said. She got up, and they went out. As she walked into the funeral home, all Mia could notice was tear-stained faces, the costumes of black on the people, which symbolizes the somber time ahead and how hushed everyone was being. Victoria was wearing a black dress and a widow hat with a veil, while Anna was not even there. It was the funeral of her father, who had passed in a horrific car accident. The funeral home was getting ready to be only standing room, because Michael was acquainted with so many people, and had affected many lives in unique ways. Michael had passed at an age of forty-eight with so much life ahead of him. Mia stood back and watched the events of the funeral as they unfolded before her eyes. The funeral was arranged to start at one, and the clock read 12.50, so the rest of the people coming to the service had ten minutes, until the memorial was to start. The funeral home was filling up rapidly, and there were only about twenty seats left, and many more people expected to arrive. As soon as the clock struck 12.55, about 100 additional people walked in, looking sullen, somber, and gloomy, because their friend or family member was going to be laid to rest. The casket was made out of a beautiful, sparkly, and black marble material. When they were finished, laying the casket down into the earth, the priest said, Please all join us at the reception hall for some lunch. The reception hall owned by the church was a scenic mansion on the other side of town. But even though the hall was on the other side of town, it was not difficult to get to. When the people that attended the burial site arrived at the mansion, servers served the sandwiches and drinks for lunch. Mia was shaken. She was tired. But she continued to listen to the people giving condolences to her. The only good thing there was that she had the support of her friend and her husband, who was hugging her and saying her nice words. Baby, please calm down. It is not good for you. She could not stop crying. Her father's lawyer approached them. Mia, my condolences. It is a great loss for us all. Thank you. He respected you a lot. So did I. We will read his will on Monday at 7 p.m. at your stepmother's house. You should join us. Why so soon? Christian asked. That was the wish of her father. If anything happened to him, we should not wait any longer and carry on with his wishes. Can my husband come with me? The lawyer nodded and added, Yes, he can. He can be with you all the time. She thanked him, and he left. The lunch was done, and then they saw them. Mia, we are going home. Victoria said. She nodded. 
I suggest you, if you can, you should come home so I can give you some of the things your father kept. What kind of things? Mia asked. Well, photos. Photo albums of you and your mom, their wedding tapes, and memories like that. I want to throw out some things, and maybe you will want to keep them. Excuse me? She looked at her face with an angry look and continued. You cannot do that. Victoria, don't you dare. That was my father's house. And his things. Baby, calm down, Christian said. That is why I said you should come home and take them as soon as possible. Otherwise, I will throw them away. Victoria smiled, turned around, and left. Did you see her? She asked and continued watching at her with a furious look. Baby, you have to calm down. I cannot, Christian. She wants to throw away everything that belonged to my father and mother. She has no respect. My father is not even buried, and she wants to pretend that he never existed in that house. I am so angry. Baby, I understand, but you have to calm down. We will go later there, pick everything. But you know that on Monday, we will have to see them again, and after that, never again. Please be strong. For me. She nodded. She knew she will not be able to be strong as she thought, but she also knew that no matter what, she has him, and he will be her unconditional support. They went home. She went to the kitchen and poured herself a glass of water. Christian followed her there. She saw him and said, this was a horrible day. I miss my dad. Yes, baby, it was. But baby, you have to be strong. He would not have wanted for you to suffer for him. He would want for you to carry on with your life and to do whatever is in your power to protect yourself and the company. We have to go to the house on Monday. I know, baby. We have to hear the reading of the will, he said. Do you think he left me anything? She asked him. I do not care about anything. I just want him here next to me. I do not know. Victoria was very confident. She probably did everything in her power to get what she wants. We have to be ready. I agree. I do not know what is on her mind. She has always been an evil person. But I think now that my father is not with us anymore, she does not have to pretend. She can do whatever she wants. And I am sure she has a plan, as you said. Do not worry. I am here, and I will always protect you. I love you. She nodded, looked at him, and said, I am tired. I want to go to bed. Can you please help me? Of course. He held her tightly and could smell her beautiful lavender smell. He helped her take off her clothes and took her to the shower, helped her, and then dressed her in her PJ. She was exhausted. She was still very sad, but at least she was not crying anymore. He put her to bed and covered her with her blanket. Please stay with me, she pleaded. He nodded and laid down next to her. He hugged her and she slowly fell asleep. She was exhausted. He caressed her face and kissed her on her head. He wanted to protect her and to be able to take away all of her sorrow. Chapter 18 On a nice Saturday day, Mia was very sad and was crying in her bed. She was disappointed about everything. She missed her father and did not know what to do without him. At that moment, she received a phone call from Victoria. She answered, Hello. Mia, I thought I told you to come to your house to get your stuff, or I will throw them away, Victoria said. Victoria, please. I will come right away. Do not throw them. Hurry. If you are not here in an hour, I am doing just that. She was under a lot of stress and fear. She called her husband and asked him to come with her. She told him the situation, and he agreed right away. They went to the house, and she saw all her mother's pictures and paintings, and hers and her father's boxes in the yard. She knocked on the door, and Victoria came out. Victoria, what is this? She asked. These are your stuff. You can take them or throw them. 
but they are not staying in my house. This is her father's house, and you cannot do this. Christian interrupted her. She looked at him, and with a loud voice, she said, No, this is my house. So will you take your shit, or should I call security? Please, go ahead and call them. But in the meantime, I can call some reporters to see what you are doing to your husband's daughter, to your stepdaughter. She turned around with an angry look on her face and went inside. Mia looked at Christian with tears in her eyes. Everything will be okay, baby girl. Do not worry, he said and hugged her. Thank you. She thanked him and continued to look around for the stuff she wanted, photos and memories that were in this house. He took out his phone and called his friend and asked him to bring a truck and movers. The truck and the movers were here in half an hour, and they moved everything in the truck. They went home. The rest of the weekend passed so fast. It was already Monday. Mia went to Christian's home office and called the office to ask for vacation days because she had some things to take care of, like her father's death. She was stressed, not because she had to go to her father's will reading, but because she could still not believe that her father is not here anymore and Victoria will have the right to do whatever she wants with the house and her father's company. Christian came in and saw Mia sitting in his chair. He was surprised with how much she belonged and how beautiful she was looking. Sitting in his chair, he spoke. Wow, you look so beautiful. She raised her head and looked at him. She smiled. Sorry, I did not want to take your place. But I had to make a phone call, and I started thinking at that moment. So I did not notice you. I will go. No, please stay. I want to ask you a few questions. Yes? What are your plans for tonight? You know I will come with you. I know. I wanted to talk with you about that. I do not care about my father's company and the house in New York. But I want my mother's house in Lake Geneva, near Chicago. My father builds that house for her, and when she died, my father moved us here to New York. I want the memories in that house. Do not worry, baby girl. I will do whatever it takes. I will buy that house for you if it is necessary. She will ask for a lot of money. It does not matter. No matter what, you will have that house. She nodded, and finally after a few days, she felt relaxed. He hugged her and kissed her. It was 6.30 p.m., and they went to Victoria's house. They rang the doorbell, and the maid opened the door. Good evening, the maid said. Good evening, Julie. How are you? Mia asked. I'm sad, miss, about your father. How are you? Bad. I still think that he will call me at any moment now. I miss him so much. I cannot believe that he is gone. Where is Victoria? She, Miss Anna, and a few other people are in the office. They are waiting for the lawyer. Thank you, she said. Christian and she went to the office. When she opened the door, they saw them. What are you doing here? Victoria asked. I am here as my father's daughter, and I am here for the reading of his will, she answered. And what is he doing here? Anna asked. He is my husband and my support, so stay out of this, Anna. The lawyer entered, and he said, Good evening. He went behind the desk, left his briefcase on the desk, and took out a big envelope. He opened the envelope and took out a few papers. He spoke. We are gathered here to read the last will of my client. This is his wish, and you are obliged to fulfill it. He started reading it. My family, my friends, if you are listening to this will, it means that I am dead. I know that some of you wanted my death, but I am sure a few of you really loved me. Not to say anything more to prolong this, this is my last wish, which I wrote with a clear mind and consciousness. Five percent of the company I leave to my friend and long-term employee, David. David, I hope that you will continue working in my company. As so far, and I hope that you will help the next manager in doing the right thing for the company. 
20% of the company, an 80 square meters apartment in Paris, goes to my lovely stepdaughter Anna, whom I dearly love. I really hope that she will be able to travel the world and settle in Paris at the end as she always wanted and said. 20% of the company and a 100 square meters apartment in Manhattan will be inherited by my wife, Victoria, whom I dearly love. She always said she did not need anything from me except my heart. But I wanted to keep her safe for the rest of her life. And last, but not least, 55% of the company, the house in New York, the house in Lake Geneva, the three 100 square meters of apartments in London, Miami, and Tokyo, I leave to my daughter Mia. My darling girl, I love you very much, and I know that you will do everything in your power to save our company, and that you have the support and the help of your husband, who loves you dearly. I know the only thing you wanted was the house that was your mother's, but I wanted you to have something more. All of you, please stay healthy and take care of each other. I will always love you. Your husband, father, friend. Michael. Victoria was surprised, furious, and she spoke with anger in her voice. What is this? Is this a joke? He is dead and he is ruining my life still. Excuse me? What did you say? Mia asked and stood up. I will sue you. This is not his wish. He was insane. For the first time in her life, Mia raised her hand and... Slap. How dare you to speak like that about my father, your husband, who loved you dearly? Loved me? Loved me? She held her cheek and tried to hit her, but she was stopped by Christian. Madam, I suggest you put your hand down. I do not want to hurt you, Christian said. You have until tomorrow morning to pack your things and leave this house. When Victoria heard Mia's words, with a gentle voice, Victoria asked, Mia, where will I go? You have an apartment. You can stay there. I do not want to see you any more, and for the percentage you have in the company, you will receive a monthly sum. Please, Mia, you cannot do this. I beg you. With a cold look in her eyes, Mia said, No, you did this to me. You threw away my father and mother's stuff in the yard and gave me one hour to leave. Be happy I'm not doing the same thing to you. You cannot do this! Anna yelled with rage in her eyes. Just watch me. She called the butler and the maid and said, Please pack my stepmother's and my stepsister's stuff and call a moving truck. They will leave this house tomorrow morning. Yes, madam the maid said. Also, please tell all the employees that they will keep their job, and I want this house to have the glory once did. My father was very proud of his possessions, and I want to stay like that. The maid nodded. When Mia was finished talking, she exited the room, looked toward Christian, and said, Baby, I want to go home. I am exhausted. This took all my strength. Can we go, please? He nodded. They followed her in the hall. David, the lawyer, and Anna were talking about something that she could not hear. But before they exited the house, she turned around and spoke. Uncle David, I would like to talk to you tomorrow. I will come to the company. I will see you there, Mia. Uncle David, I also want to see the reports of the past few years from the company. Can you also manage to find them for tomorrow's meeting? Of course, Mia. I will have them on the desk for you tomorrow morning. Do not worry. Why are you doing this, Mia? Anna asked and continued. Why do you have to go to the company? Leave it to David. He will take care of it. I am doing it because it is my father's company, and I will always take care of it, and I do not expect you to understand that. They left. Victoria and Anna were furious, but they did not know what to do. They have to get ready and leave this house. Anna had a plan in mind, and she swore that she will have her revenge. She told the plan to her mom, and she was smiling wickedly 
because she knew they will succeed in hurting Mia. Chapter 19 The next morning, Mia woke up, went to the bathroom, showered, washed her teeth, and got dressed. She was wearing a navy blue wool blend woman's suit with peak lapels and beige high heels. She was ready. She looked like the businesswoman she was always meant to be. She went downstairs and she found Christian sitting in the dining room, reading the newspaper and waiting for her. The breakfast was on the table. She approached and spoke. Good morning. He lifted his head and saw the woman he loved so much. She looked amazing. Good morning, baby. How did you sleep? He asked her. I slept all right. I did not have any nightmares and only woke up once. Yes, I could feel you. But I did not want to say anything, so I would not scatter you. She nodded and sat next to him. Wow, this breakfast looks amazing. I ordered my favorite, so you will have good luck today at the meeting. I think I will need all the luck I need today. Christian, I need to ask you something. Of course. Anything you need, baby. Have you heard anything about the company? Something that I need to know? Baby, I do not know the whole story, but from what I have heard is that the company was in bankruptcy. The loan they had was too big, and the company did not make any profit in the past few months. Oh my God! Are you sure? Baby, I cannot be sure. We will find out when you go to the company. David will tell you. Will you come with me? She asked him with a scared look in her eyes. Of course. Baby, you do not even need to ask that. I will accompany you. Do not worry. Christian, what will happen if everything is true? What will happen with my father's company? Baby, if everything is true, do not worry. I will help you. We can ask for a loan from a bank, and if that is not approved, I will give you the money. I just do not want you to worry. Will you really? Even if I do not forgive you? Baby, I love you. There is nothing I would not do for you. And I know at the end you will forgive me. I am sure at that. Our love is too great. She nodded. They are. Stood up and went to the company. They were in front of her father's office when she said to Diana, Please call David and tell him I will wait for him in my father's office, and tell him to bring the financial report. I want to see everything. Yes, madam. The secretary nodded. A few moments later, there was a knock on the office's door. Enter, she said. David opened the door and entered. He looked at both of them and said, Good morning, Mia. Christian? He shook hands with Christian and kissed Mia on her cheek. Please, Uncle David, sit down. He sat on the chair next to Christian and looked at Mia. I brought you the financial statement that you asked for. Why do you need it? I wanted to see the finances that my father made in the past few months. Mia, before you look at them, I want to tell you that this company is close to bankruptcy. It has not made any profit in the past few months, and the money your father should receive from the companies that owe us. He stopped and then continued. Well, they postpone the payment now that your father is dead. How is that possible? Christian asked and continued. They should pay. Mia nodded and continued. What about any loan? She asked. Your father went to the bank on the day he had his accident, but I do not know what they have told him. He wanted to ask for a loan, and I do not know if they have approved it. I called the bank yesterday, but they said the manager was not there. He had a sick leave, but that he will be back at the bank today. I wanted to call, but you came. Let's call the bank now, while we are together. They called the bank. The secretary of the bank manager answered. Hello, Charles Schwab Bank. Barbara speaking. How may I help you? Hello, this is Mia Carter King. I would like to speak with the bank manager, Mr. Charles. May I ask why you are calling? I want to ask about an information about a loan. Of course. I will pass you through. Wait, please. She was transferred to his office. 
Good morning. Charles Grader speaking. How may I help you, Madam King? Good morning, Mr. Charles. I am calling to ask you a few questions, if that is okay? Of course. I know my father came a few days ago, and he asked for a loan. I wanted to ask you if you have approved the loan, because he died before he told us. I am sorry, madam. The loan was not approved. Is there anything else I can help you with? Why did you not approve the loan? Well, madam, his financial statements were very low. He did not make any money in the past few months, and that was not reliable to give a loan to the company. I understand. Thank you. Thank you, madam. I am sorry once again. I hope you will have a nice day. Thank you. She hung up the phone and looked at the both men sitting opposite her. She was devastated. Not only the company was almost bankrupt, but also she did not have a way to save it. There was no chance. Christian looked at her and asked, Baby, what did they say? Why wasn't the loan approved? The finances are not good. Oh my God, what shall I do now? She had tears in her eyes. Mia, I told you. Christian spoke and continued. I will do everything in my power to save the company. Do not worry, I will lend you the money. You will? David looked surprised at him. Yes, I will. The King Empire has enough of funds that can give my wife. We will invest in her company. She looked at him, and with a gentle smile she said, Thank you. Great, now that is all settled, I will leave you two lovebirds alone. Thank you. He stood up and left. Mia stood up as well and went to Christian. She kissed him on the cheek. He was surprised and said, Mia. She stopped him with a kiss on his lips and spoke. I finally realized how much you love me. The only thing I want to ask you is, do you have any more secrets that might hurt me? No, baby. Not even one. This was the only one? Do you promise? Yes, baby. I swear. She nodded. She kissed him. She was finally happy. She had saved her father's company, and she could see a future with her husband. She loved him, and now she was finally convinced he had loved her too. I want to go home, she said. Of course, but first I want to take you to lunch. All right. The stood up and went to a nice restaurant in the city center. They were sat on a nice table, and the waiter came with the menu. They ordered. Mia ordered a steak with potatoes and a Coke. He ordered a steak with grilled eggplant and zucchini and a bottle of water. A few moments later, the waiter arrived with her order. He said, Have a bon appetit. Thank you, Mia said. They ate. The food was delicious and tasty. Do you like the food here? Yes, I have never been here. May I try the grilled zucchini? Of course. He cut a small piece of the zucchini, and she handed the fork to his plate. He gave her the piece of zucchini, and she tasted it, and then commented, Wow, it is amazing. What about the eggplant? Do you want to try it? I've never tried a grilled eggplant, but I would love to. He did the same thing with the grilled eggplant. She tried it and made a low moan. He looked at her and said, Baby, please do not do that. Do what? She was surprised. Moan like that. He smiled and continued. You make me want to take off your clothes and make love with you right here on this table. Her cheeks became red as she felt embarrassed and could not say a word. Baby, you should not be embarrassed. This is a normal thing for a husband to desire his wife. I know, baby. But it is just, you speak about it very openly, and I feel ashamed. He smiled, nodded, and said, From now on, I will only keep my feelings for myself. I will not speak of them, and I will not say anything out loud. She smiled and said, Well, maybe you can say them, but only in the bedroom. He looked at her. She had lust in her eyes and a smirk on her face. He smiled and said, You little devil. She laughed and said, Just a little bit. 
Continue doing this, and you will see what will happen in the car. In the car? She asked. Baby, having you near me, I will not be able to endure myself until home. Well, baby, you will have to, because I want you to make love to me at home. He turned around and called the waiter. Check, please. Right away, sir, the waiter said. Baby, what are you doing? I am paying the bill, and I am taking you home. I will make love to you, and I want to make up for all the missed moments. She smiled. He paid the bill, they stood up, and went home. Chapter 20 They went home to their room. She turned around as he was closing and locking the door, and said, I... He rushed towards her and kissed her. His kiss silenced any protest she may have had. Goosebumps rose on her arms, her neck, her body, and butterflies fluttered in her belly. He reached for the back of her neck, held her like he wasn't going to let her get away. Nothing was further from her mind. Christian's eyes were warm, his thumb traced the side of her neck. Mia opened her mouth and reached for him. Her fingers fanned over his chest, touching him through his shirt, and she closed her eyes. Christian wrapped his arms around her. His lips lifted from her sweet skin and found her mouth. She groaned into their kiss but made no move to rush the moment. It was as if they had an agreement not to hurry, to make love slowly, thoroughly. Her lips were soft, savory. Christian's mouth lingered on hers, exploring first with his lips, learning every curve, every motion that made Mia moan. Then he offered something deeper and matted his tongue to hers. Nails, hers, dug into his back as she pressed closer. Her breasts flattened against him as she gave in to sensation and let him ravish her with his needy mouth. Heat built, and Mia started to melt in his arms. Christian backed her up to the bed and followed her down to the mattress. Mia's hands were free to roam over his flesh, and she did so with bold, long strokes, down his back and over his suit clad ass and thighs. If he wasn't clothed, He'd be inside of her already. Best to keep his pants on as long as he could stand the wicked torture of her touch. Mia was on fire. The weight of Christian pressing her into her bed was just as pleasurable as his hands roaming over her hip, past her panties, and down her thigh. His lips were lethal weapons, his tongue, ammunition that threatened to undo every restraint she possessed. He kissed her until she was breathless, and then left her mouth to kiss her neck, her shoulder. His hands cupped her breasts, and waves of desire shot to her belly and settled between her legs. Mia lifted one leg and laid it over one of his until his knee settled firmly against her core. It was so delicious having him in her arms. Thoughts of stopping didn't penetrate her brain. Only the desire to feel and touch her everywhere ruled her thoughts. When Christian's mouth touched her nipple, she lifted off the bed and pushed her hips up and against his thigh. That tiny motion and friction, that connection, needed repeating. She wanted him so desperately, but wouldn't speed them up any more than he would. Mia slid her hand down his thigh and pulled it up between her legs. Christian laughed over her breast. You laugh now, she said as she shamelessly tilted her hips against his leg and said, I know what you're doing. Do you? He smiled. Holding me off, making me pay for all this time, she said. He pinched her breast, tossing the words from her mouth and brain. Holding you off, but not for payment, for pleasure. Baby, I want us to enjoy this moment as much as we can. I want you to be satisfied in every way, he said. His hand snaked down her taut stomach and teased the edge of her panties. She held her breath, waiting. When he hesitated, Mia opened her eyes and found him staring at her. 
the smoky flux in his eyes glistened in the dim light of the room. He moved his fingers between the lace and her skin, and slowly sought her wet, throbbing core. There was no way to keep her eyes open when he opened her to pleasure. His hand moved with her hips. Her breath grew shallow as her body started to tighten and strain. Mia pushed him off her and leaned over him for a change. Mia took her time undoing a series of buttons holding his pants together. She purposely stayed away from the hottest part of his body when she inched his pants down his hips. Christian lifted and helped him take off his pants. Once they were kicked free of his body, Christian settled back with a grin and wide-open eyes. Leaning in, she set her lips to his and opened for his questioning tongue instantly. Christian's hands returned to her waist and pulled her closer. Her legs settled between his, and now it was Christian's turn to ride her thigh. Moving quicker, Mia smiled under his kiss and reached between their bodies to cup him through the cotton of his boxer shorts. Tearing his lips away, he hissed out, Damn, baby. This is going to be over too fast if you continue that. Mia eased her hand into the fly of his shorts and took him in her firm grip. Good things come to those who wait, she mimicked, teasing him. Something inside Christian snapped, and Mia was pinned beneath him in the space of one breath. Christian had her wrists in his hands as he held her away. He kissed her hard, and Mia had never felt more aware of a man before in her life. Shaking with desire, Christian lifted his hands from hers, leaned down her body, and removed the scrap of material between her legs. Lifting from the bed, he tossed his shorts with her panties. Even that was sexy as hell. Mia opened for him, cradling him amid her thighs. He leaned in and kissed her softly, the tip of his erection sliding against her, intimately, teasing. Neither of them could stand the weight any longer. Mia ran her hand down his torso, his hip, and rounded in front to position him. They stared into each other's wide-open eyes as he took her in slow, satisfying degrees. Her body fluttered awake, dormant for so long. She knew her body gripped him tight. Lord! He gasped once he was fully seated. Full and still hungry, Mia waited for Christian to catch his breath before she rocked up against him. Christian found her lips and kissed her as they began to move and her body tightened around him. Both of them fought to breathe, an effort in their goal of pleasure. Mia gloried in the feel of him sliding against her, bringing her higher with every pass. She lifted her legs around his waist, and he stroked her perfectly over and over. Yes, she said in a rough whisper. So close to exploding, so close. And then she was there, stifling her moan into Christian's shoulder and feeling her body spasm around him, draining every nerve ending that had held back for so long. Christian rode her, prolonging her orgasm until his breath caught and he moved faster. Mia! He cried as he found his release and his strokes became slower, longer, until he collapsed on top of her. Glorious! There was no other way to describe what the two of them were together. She hugged him close and pushed away rational thought. There was only now, the afterglow of their loving. Christian shifted to her side and pulled her back up against him, holding her close. Mia weaved her fingers with his and closed her eyes. She wanted to say something, but words escaped her. So she settled on silence and Christian's warmth as they fell asleep in each other's arms. A few days passed. That morning she went to Christian's office. She knocked on the office's door. Come in, Christian said. Sorry to bother you, baby, but I wanted to ask you about the money that you said you will give to the company. Yes, I was on the phone with the bank a few minutes ago, and the money were transferred to the company bank account. You can use them 
as you please. Oh, baby, thank you. With tears in her eyes, she thanked him and kissed him. You are most welcome, baby. I promise that I will return everything that you gave to me. Baby, that is not necessary. I know, baby, but I want to do it. I do not want you to think that I am with you because of your money. I want you to know that I love you because of you. I know that, baby. I have no doubts about your love anymore. I know that if it was another way around, you would give me the money as well. I am glad that you know that. I love you. I love you too, Christian said and kissed her. She went to their room, got dressed, and went to the company. She wanted to arrange everything and to pay for everything as soon as possible. Chapter 21 there were past only a few days of her father's death. She missed him a lot. She finally paid everything yesterday. The salaries to the employees, the expenses, the material they needed to work. She bought the necessary machines, and she paid the bank. She knew that now, with the help of her husband Christian, she can finally start relaxing. She came home late in the evening, and she was very tired. She took a shower, washed her teeth, and got dressed in her PJ. She laid down next to him and kissed him on his lips. Christian felt her presence and woke up. You came late tonight. Did you have a lot of work? Yes, baby. Sorry if I woke you up. No problem. Do not worry. Are you okay? I am, but I am very tired. There's a lot of work today. But we are finally done. With the money you gave me, I was able to pay for everything. And I do not need to worry about the future. I am glad, baby. You should rest now. I just want to lay in your hands and to sleep like that with you. He spread his hands and took her in. He kissed her in her hair and they fell asleep like that. At sunset, he woke up and wanted to kiss her. He started kissing her. She opened her eyes, and they made love. It was amazing. When they were done making love, he stood up and went to the bathroom. He took a shower, washed her teeth, and got out of the room. She continued sleeping. She was woken up by the smell of fresh-made coffee. She opened her eyes, and Christian was sitting on the sofa with his tablet in his hands and two cups of coffee and breakfast. He looked at her with a smirk on his face smiled, and said, Good morning, sleepyhead. How was your morning? Mia started blushing. She could feel her cheeks burning. It was amazing. And yours? I think you know the answer. He got up and hurried next to her. He kissed her. I don't say it enough, but I love you. I love you too, she smiled. What are your plans for today? He asked her. I have to go to the company. I have to see the reports, and I have to look at what we can change so the company can start making a profit. Then I have to go to your company and quit. Mia, are you sure that you want to quit? You can take paid leave. You don't have to quit. I know, baby, but I think I have. I will have to take care of the company, and I hope that you can help me. Of course, baby. You know you can count on me. Will you come today with me? I have to go to my company, but I will come later. Is that okay? She nodded. I have to get up. He moved, and she got up. She went to the bathroom, in which he followed her. They made love gently. When they were done, they went into the bedroom. She looked at the food. Wow! Everything looks so delicious. Let's eat. I hope you will like it. After the amazing breakfast they had together, she got dressed and went to the company. She arrived at the company. She asked her secretary to look for all the reports, bank and financial statements, forms, statements, everything that could help her solve the company problems. She was reading through the financial statements when she saw something that was not right. 
She saw that every month the financial director was approving an amount of money to Victoria that was never written anywhere. The amount was $100,000. It was a big amount. She was wondering if her father ever noticed. Maybe he did. She called her husband, and she called David into our office. The phone rang. Christian answered. Hi. Hi, baby girl. It is so nice to hear your voice. She smiled. Baby, when are you coming here? I have something to ask you. Ask me, baby. I will be there in an hour. I have to finish this meeting, and I will be right there. Okay, I will wait for you here. Love you. Love you, too. They hang up when there was a knock on her door. Come in, she said. David entered the office. Come in, Uncle David. Please, take a seat. He sat down and looked at her. Mia, what's going on? Did you find anything? I did. I wanted to ask you, why is this amount of money given to Victoria every month? He looked at the report. Wow, that is a lot of money. I thought that too. What should we do? I think you should call your stepmother and tell her to come here. We will ask her. Yes, I will call her right now. She called Victoria. After a few rings, Victoria answered. What? Hello, Victoria. What do you want, Mia? She asked with an angry voice. I wanted to discuss something with you. Can you come to the company? There is nothing we need to discuss. I think there is. Are you coming or not? I cannot come right away. Maybe in an hour or so. Okay, we will wait for you here. They hang up, and Mia had a bad feeling. She looked at David and said, She will come in an hour or so. Uncle David, I have a bad feeling about this. He looked at her with a worried look and nodded. I have that same feeling as well. An hour passed, and while they were waiting for Victoria, in the meanwhile, Christian came to the office. She explained everything to him and he gave her some advice on how to act. An hour and a half later, Victoria and Anna came. They entered the office. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Victoria. Anna, Mia said. Please take a seat. Victoria and Anna sat and looked at Mia with an angry look. What do you want, Mia? Victoria asked. Victoria, we called you here because we wanted an explanation. An explanation? For what? Who do you think you are? Anna asked with a furious voice. Who am I? Who am I? Mia got up from the chair, looked at Anna, and said, I am the majority owner of this company, and if I want an explanation, you will have to give it to me. Otherwise, I will let this company bankrupt, and you can do with your life whatever you want. If you did not know, this company is on the verge of bankruptcy. They were surprised, and fear could be seen on their face. Victoria spoke. Mia, what do you want? What kind of explanation? For what? There is a certain amount of money paid to your bank account. I would like to know what the money is for. Well, for expenses, like a salary. I needed money for my everyday activities. One hundred thousand dollars? Mia was surprised. Yes. Your father understood that we all have expenses. All right. From now on, that amount of money will not be given to you. What? Victoria yelled. What you heard. From now on, you will not get that amount of money. From now on, we will see for the workers to get their paycheck then to invest in new machines, and at the end, the shareholders can have an amount of money. You cannot do that. I can, and if I need money, I am planning for all of us to invest in this company, and if you do not like that, you can sell me your shares, and I will not bother you any more. I do not have any money. Mom, do not worry. She cannot do that. Victoria, 
If you do not have the money, you have an apartment. You can sell the apartment and move to a smaller one. Mia, this is not right, Victoria said. I know, a lot of things are not fair, but this is our situation now. We have to do something to pay the worker's salary. Can't you ask for a loan? Anna asked with a furious voice. Why are you bothering us? We are not approved for a loan. That is why we have to pay the salaries ourselves. We will sue you. Of course you can do that. Or you can sell your shares of the company and live happily. They did not know what to say furthermore, so they got up, and Anna said, You will hear from our lawyer. They stood up and left. Mia was angry. Christian went to her and started massaging her from behind. Baby, please relax. I told you, I will help you. I know, baby. It is just that I am furious because of their attitude. I understand. Do you want us to go home? Yes, please take me home. I want to take a bath and go to bed. They left the office and went home. Mia had a bath, washed her teeth, and went to bed. Christian laid to bed next to her. He hugged her, and they fell asleep. Chapter 22 The next day, Mia woke up very early, washed her teeth, got dressed in a pair of trousers and a t-shirt, and went downstairs. She started preparing breakfast for her husband. She wanted to surprise him. Today was Friday. She wanted to plan a nice weekend for the two of them. She called a nice resort called Mayflower Inn and Spa. It was around three hours driving from New York City so she reserved a room for the both of them. When Christian came downstairs, she said, I reserved a surprise for us. We will leave work early today, and you will have to take a day off on Monday. Really? Where? Christian asked. Well, we never went on our honeymoon, and the previous time you reserved, we could not go. So this time I called, and it was available. So I wanted to surprise you. Of course, baby. Consider it done. What time should I be ready? Well, there are three hours until we get there, so I was planning to leave work around 4 p.m. Ahem. He nodded. I will pack our bags, but first, eat this so you can go to work. He smiled and said, Is all this for me? Yes, baby. This is all for us. I wanted to spoil you. I love you, baby, Christian said. He kissed her, and they started having breakfast. After breakfast, he went to his company, and she went upstairs to their room. She packed everything she thought they will need, got a shower, got dressed, and went to work. It was about 3 p.m. when she received a phone call from Christian. Hey, baby. Hey, are you done with work? Yes, baby, I'm done. Will you pick me up? Yes, I will, in half an hour. We can go home, take our bags, and go. Of course, baby. See you in a little bit. Babe, can we take the rover? I want to drive it. Of course, baby. I will tell Antonio and Benjamin to drive after us. He came, picked her up, and they left. She drove them to the resort and checked them in. They entered their room. He picked her up in his arms and took her to the bed. Baby, it was a long ride, and I'm tired. Can we please rest this night? I will make it up to you tomorrow. He smiled, kissed her, and they fell asleep. The morning came. She could feel him. He was warm and smelled delicious, and utterly confident as he started pressing his body next to hers. The span of his hand wrapped around her waist but didn't move beyond that spot. He kissed her. She slowly woke, closed her eyes, and kissed him back. It felt good to be kissed. She barely tasted his tongue before he backed away. With her eyes closed, she felt his stare. I wanted to do that all night, he confessed. She slowly opened her eyes and kept looking at his chest. You caught me off guard, 
she said. He placed his finger under her chin and forced her to look at him. We are even then. Now we can have a nice day without either of us wondering what that was going to taste like, he said. Someone needs to get naked, she said with a gentle smirk. She leaned over and pushed her hands in the waistband of his PJ and found his erection. He leaned his head against hers and pushed into her hands. Mia kissed her way up his chest, lingered on the throbbing pulse of his neck, before reaching for his lips. Christian lifted her hips and placed her over his erection. She moaned, broke from his kiss. Please, she whispered. He pushed forward, slowly. His guttural sigh told her how much he enjoyed the feeling as he sank into her. She kissed him while they found their pace. With the edge off, she could go farther. When she felt him pushing harder, she shifted position and took him deeper. Christian's palms grasped her breasts as if they controlled everything. Mia clenched every muscle she had and heard Christian respond with an expletive. She wanted to cuss herself. Instead, she tightened and took everything he wanted to give. And when she knew he was close, she could tell from how tight he held his breath, how stern his jaw clenched. She brought her hands to his, which held her breasts and squeezed. He took her hint and pinched her nipples. And Mia found her release. Christian had no choice but to follow. She collapsed on top of him, her breath a rapid fire in his ear. She lifted her head and smiled down at him. He kept one arm around her waist and pushed some of the hair behind her ear. This was amazing, he said with a satisfied voice. It sure was. Mia's smile reminded him of the sweet woman he had been married to. The body squirming on top of him reminded him of every fantasy he'd ever had rolled into one. I was too loud, she said. Never, he said. We are in a hotel. People could have heard me. Who cares? Besides, I liked it. Loved it. Wanted to record it and listen to it repeatedly. Her cheeks started to warm and she said, I don't have a lot of control. I noticed. He traced one of her cheeks with the pad of his thumb. She closed her eyes. He slid one hand over her ass and gripped it until she opened her eyes. What are you doing? She asked with a smirk in her voice. What? Do you think I was done? Her eyes widened. Baby, I enjoy sex. I want to make love with you all day. And I think this is going to work out very well for both of us. He smiled. They didn't get out of the hotel room until late afternoon. Housekeeping would probably weep when they saw the suite, and the guests on either side would probably ask to switch rooms. For the first time in what felt like forever, Mia didn't care. She was sore and relaxed at the same time. They left the hotel in search of food, both of them wearing grins the size of Texas. When they arrived at the nearby McDonald's, they entered and wanted to order. She ordered a double cheeseburger, and he ordered a double bacon smokehouse burger. They were famished. While they were waiting for the food, they sat at a nearby table. Mia sat across him and said, I am hungry. I could eat an elephant. He smiled and said, I am hungry as well. Our last night and this morning's activities made us hungry. He could see the red on her cheeks. She was embarrassed. He smiled and asked her, Baby, don't tell me you are still ashamed of me. She looked at him and nodded. Baby, you should not be ashamed. That is normal. You are not ashamed in the room. It is different there. We are alone and only you can see me. Baby, a lot of people could have heard you. Oh, do not remind me of that. She smiled and continued. They do not know my face, and I think because of that, I am not ashamed as I should. Baby, relax. Nobody knows us here. It is okay. 
The waiter called their names and their orders, and they took the food, ate, paid the bill, and left. He wanted to go to the hotel, but she did not. She turned toward him and spoke. Let's take a walk for a little bit. We can take a little bit of free time, don't we? We can, baby, but I do not want to. I want to lay in the bed next to you and to make love to you all the time. I know, baby, but I want to rest a little bit and to take a walk. He nodded and continued. Fine, we can take a walk if you promise me that after this walk we will go to the hotel and continue with our activities. He had a smirk on his face. All right, I agree, but only if we order room service tonight. I do not want us to leave without food, and only if we give Benjamin and Antonio a night off. We will stay in our room so they can have fun. Maybe Antonio will meet a girl. She smiled while Christian turned toward Benjamin and Antonio. You heard her, guys. You can have the night free. We will stay in our room. Sir, are you sure? Benjamin asked. Trust me, Benjamin. I am sure. You can do whatever you want once we are in our hotel room. We will not go anywhere. We will order room service and relax. You guys go out to dinner and have fun. And you heard the missus, Antonio. You have to find a girl. Antonio smiled and said, Yes, sir, I will try. They laughed, took a walk around the small city, and returned to their hotel room. They stayed there all night, and it was amazing. Chapter 23 Their weekend vacation was amazing. They had a really nice time and enjoyed themselves. They went hiking and walking around the hotel. They ate the most delicious food and drank the best wine. Everything was nice. They laughed and spent all their time together without any worries. The evenings were even more amazing. They would make love, have baths, cuddle, talk, and fall asleep together. The need these three days will end very fast, and very soon, but they wanted to make the best of it. It was Monday morning. They had to go back home. They went downstairs to the reception hall. Antonio and Benjamin were waiting for them there. Hey, guys. Good morning, boss. They took their bags and went to the car to put them there. Christian and Mia stayed behind to pay their bill and maybe have breakfast in the resort. How was your stay? I hope you liked it, the receptionist said. It was amazing. Mia said. She passed them the bill. Christian took out his card and passed it. Thank you very much. By the way, we hoped we can have breakfast on the balcony. Of course, sir. You can put that on the bill. It's on the house, sir. Thank you very much. Have a great breakfast, and we hope you will come and stay in our hotel again. We sure will, Mia said. They went to the balcony. The place was amazing. The view of Shakespeare Gardens was breathtaking. The blooming flowers were dancing on the sun's rays. She loved the greenery, turned to Christian, and spoke. Chris, I want to decorate the backyard in our house. You really like this, don't you? Yes, I do. I love this, and I want to transfer this beauty and this peace to our house. It looks amazing. Of course, baby. When everything gets better with the company, and you have a little bit of free time, you can change it. Thank you, baby. She kissed him. They had breakfast and got up. They entered the car and left. While they were returning home from their amazing three-day vacation, Mia's phone beeped. It was a message from an unknown number. It said, Leave the company or else. She could not believe what she was seeing and read the message once again when Christian asked her, What is it? Is everything okay? Yes, everything is okay, but I got a strange message. From who? I do not know. It is an unknown number. What does it say? 
it says, leave the company or else. What? Mia, let me see. She gave him her phone, and after he read the message, he pressed the call button and dialed the number. The number was unavailable. The person who wrote that message must have turned off the phone. It is turned off, he said. He took out his phone from his pocket and called someone. Hello, Philip. It is me. What can I do for you? My wife got a message from an unknown number. Can you trace it? Give me the number. 330-747-4557. I needed all information that you will find. Call me when you have the information. He hung up the phone, caught her hand, and spoke. I will tell Benjamin to appoint you two bodyguards. Baby, I do not need them. Baby, please, for my sake. I cannot lose you. We do not know if this threat is real. Maybe someone is playing a joke. It is probably Anna. I do not care. You will get two bodyguards, and that is done. And whenever I find out who it was, I will... Baby. She stopped him. I know that this message made you angry, but I am fine, I promise. This is a prank, I am sure. But for your sake... I will accept the bodyguards. Thank you. She kissed him on his cheek and continued holding his hand. Christian's phone rang. Boss. Yes, Philip? This number is untraceable. It was a burned phone. But I can give you their last location from where they sent the message. Give it to me. It is on 3rd Avenue and East 28th, the Starbucks Cafe. Thank you. Can you call Brad and George so they can go check the place out? Maybe get the security video so we can see if someone we know was there. Yes, boss. Thank you. Did he find it? It was a burner phone. But he got an address from where the message was sent and the time. So I told him to send two of my men so they can check it out. Ahem. She closed her eyes and fell asleep. She knew there was more than two hours of driving until getting to New York, so she wanted to be rested and not show that she is all sore and tired and did not have any sleep the night before, before going back. They arrived home. The service took her bags to her room when Christian caught her hand and said, Baby, I want to ask you something. What is it, baby? We are married we are still sleeping in different rooms. I want you to move to my room, please. She nodded with a soft and gentle smile on her face. Of course, baby. I will tell Maria to help me move to your room. He kissed her. She called Maria and they both went upstairs. She moved to Christian's room and was almost done when a message on her phone arrived. The message said, You did not leave. Now you will pay. She did not know what to do. That was her company. But now she was getting scared. Someone was threatening her and wanted to take her company. She was sure that everything will be all right. Now that Christian has given her two of his bodyguards, there was nothing to be afraid of. She took her phone and wrote, You can do whatever you want. I am not afraid of you, whoever you are. In the next few days, everything was okay and calm. Her life was okay. There were no messages or any prank calls. But this was the beginning of it all. It was the calmness before the storm, and she was not aware of it. She did not believe in the bad things, or she refused to believe that anyone would like to hurt her for the company. Not realizing that most people do strange and dangerous things for money, especially for a lot of money. The next day, she woke up feeling amazing. She went downstairs and turned to Christian and said, Hey, baby. She kissed him. Hey, baby. Good morning. How did you sleep? I slept great. How about you? Me too. He smiled gently. Baby, do you have a lot of work today at the company? No. Why? Well, I do not have a lot of work as well. 
and I was thinking if you would like to watch a movie with me. I will make popcorn and we can cuddle and watch Netflix. Yes, we should do that. We have this amazing cinema room, and we do not use it. I will come home early today. We can have dinner, and then movie night. She nodded and smiled. Then, it is a date. They both went to their jobs, and while she was working, she could not wait for the evening to come. She had an amazing romance movie on her mind, and she wanted to watch it with him. The movie's name was Beauty and the Beast with Emma Watson. She had read about it in the movie's review, and she liked it. She finished early. It was around 4 p.m. She left the company. On the way to their home, she told the driver to stop at a local supermarket, and she entered inside. She bought a lot of groceries, fruit, vegetables, meat, and of course candy. She planned that after the romantic movie, she would make the night even more amazing. She smiled at her thoughts. She went home, prepared the popcorns, and he came. Baby. He kissed her. Hey, baby. Baby, I have to take a shower and change clothes, and I will come. Of course, baby. I will take everything upstairs to the cinema room. He nodded and went to their room. He took a shower and changed into some comfortable clothes. He went to the cinema room. She was waiting for him there. He sat on the sofa next to her, and she played the movie. The movie was amazing. It was interesting. While they were watching, she turned toward him and kissed him. He turned around and asked her, What was that for? I just wanted to kiss you. I missed you all day. Mmm, I missed you too. He kissed her as well. They started kissing. Baby, not here. Let's go to our room. He picked her bridal style and took her to their room. He put her down gently on the bed and started kissing her on her neck and on her body. He taunted her, holding his cock in his sweatpants, and was pressing it against her, still clothed with underwear. He drew delicious circles around her lips with the tip of his finger, teasing the hell out of her. She smiled and looked at him. He slowly took down her panties and gently kissed her there. Then he took off his pants and continued kissing her. She moaned. He slowly put his cock inside, and they felt an amazing feeling that they felt whenever they were together. They made love all night, and it was excellent. When they were done, he kissed her slowly and hugged her. She got up, went to the bathroom, and took a shower. After that, she came back in the bed, laid down next to him. He spoon hugged her and they fell asleep. She dreamt a beautiful dream, which was as it was, almost true. She could see themselves living together in a small town, in a nice house with a white fence. They had a pool, small garden in the backyard of the house, and green grass in front of the house. There was a rocking chair on the front deck of the house, and inside everything was well-toned and arranged. She woke up, and saw him sleeping peacefully next to her. She smiled gently, kissed him, turned around, and continued sleeping. Chapter 24 A month passed since their beautiful vacation in the resort. Mia woke up and went to the bathroom. She was sick. She did not feel okay. When Christian heard her, he got up and went to the bathroom as well. Baby, are you okay? I don't feel so good. My head hurts and I feel sick. Baby, I will call the doctor. No, baby, please. It is not anything. It is just that I was working too hard and the stress I had, I did not have the time to eat or sleep properly. Baby, you have to rest. He helped her get up and takes her to their bed. Please do not go to work today. Stay home and I will bring you a healthy breakfast. Baby, I cannot. I have the meeting with Daniels and Co. They want to invest in the company. I have to go to work. Can't you postpone it? Baby, I have been waiting for this meeting for two weeks. He nods as she continues. I promise when the meeting is done, 
I will come right back home. I will call you. You can take the day off, and we can spend the rest of the day in bed. You have a deal, my lady. He kissed her on her lips. She got up and got ready to go to work. Going to work and looking through the car's window, she saw an amazing shop window decorated with red teddy bears on the sides, a big heart in the middle, and a poppy flower at the bottom, and balloon-shaped hearts on the top. She loved the display and then remembered that in a few days will be Valentine's Day. She turned toward the driver and said, Can you please stop the car? Madam, I want to enter the shop. Stop, please. He stopped the car. She went out and went toward the shop. At the door was written, A true love story never ends. She liked that. She thought of Christian and of their love and a gentle smile showed on her face. She opened the door and entered the shop. The shop was amazing. Everything in it was red, white, or pink. She looked at the small cups in the shape of a heart. She looked at the teddy bears that had written I love you on their belly in the shape of a heart. The heart balloons, frames in the shape of a heart, and a lot more. She saw an amazing frame, and she had a plan. She will take a photo of her and Christian and put it in this frame that said, Family is where life begins, and love never ends. She bought the frame and went out. She planned on giving it to Christian in a few days, and she knew where she will hide it until then, in the top drawer of her desk in the office. He will never look in there. She is at the company. She is waiting for the manager at Daniels & Co. When she felt lightheaded, what is happening to her, she was wondering. She got her purse and went out. When she entered her car in the parking lot, a few men attacked her bodyguards and hit them on their heads. She tried to escape, but she was caught. A cloth, stinky and wet, was placed on her mouth and her nose. She could not breathe and lost consciousness. Who was taking her? Why is someone doing this to her? Who is this person that hates her so much? When she woke up, she was tied to a bed and could not move. There were a few people in the room, and when they saw that she was awake, they went to her and threatened her. We told you to leave the company. This happens to the people that do not listen to us. They removed the cloth from her mouth. She could speak now. Who are you? What do you want? We want your company, so either you will leave it forever, or we will take your life. And we know that now you know how easy we can do that. She started crying. One of the people hit her on her face because she was crying and said, Stop crying, or else. She could not stop. She was scared and she did not know if something might happen to her. They were wearing masks so she knew she could not identify them. But she needed to see or to remember something about them so she can tell her husband. She spoke. If money is what you want, I can give you more. If someone is paying you, I can pay you more. Another person hit her again, but this time her lip was split and it did not hurt as much. She could see a ring on this person's hand. It was a female ring so she knew that one of the attackers was a woman. She did not know how to react. She only prayed that Christian will find her. When they saw that she stopped, they put the cloth on her mouth again, and they left the room. She was alone. On the other side of town, when the bodyguards regained consciousness, they informed Christian he did not know what to do. He started ringing her cell phone, but he was sent right to voicemail. Suddenly his phone rang, an unknown, disguised voice said, You can find your wife in Club 265, but I do not know why you would look for her when she will certainly no longer be useful to you as a wife. There was loud music in the background and a lot of undistinguished voice and laughter. He ran to his car. They went to the club with his bodyguards. He was terrified. What had they done to her? To his dear angel, all sorts of thoughts were running through his head. 
he could hardly bear the car to slow down when it jumped off him. His bodyguards followed him. They entered the club, but the scene they saw was disgusting. It was a club where orgies were held. Most customers were drunk and naked. They were kissing and having sex. No one was caring if someone was watching them. He started searching the rooms when he found her. She was tied to the bed. There was a bruise on one eye. One side of her mouth was torn, and tears flowed down her face. He untied her and hugged her. Honey, are you okay? Baby, please don't cry. I am here now. You are safe. I will not allow anything bad to happen to you. Baby, please be calm, he told her. She was just crying. He picked her up and took her out of there. He ordered Benjamin to stay and investigate the situation, and the others went with him to the nearest hospital. He wanted to know what was wrong with his wife. He wanted to be examined by a doctor. He was too worried about her, but most of all she wanted to know who did this to her, and swore that she would take revenge on anyone. They arrived at the hospital. She was taken to the emergency room. After an exam, the doctor came and talked to Christian. Mr. Christian, can you tell me what happened? Doctor, how is my wife? Is she all right? He was stressed. She will be okay. She must relax and not stress. It will not be okay for her and the baby. The baby? Do you want to say that? Yes, sir. Your wife is pregnant. She is five weeks pregnant. He was happy. The worst day in his life has turned into the best one. He will be a father, he asked. Can I see my wife? Yes, but please be quiet. She is resting. Thank you, doctor. They shook hands and he entered the room. She was sleeping like an angel. She was beautiful, even though her face was swollen. Her lip parted and her eye bruised. He loved her so much. He swore that he will make those people pay. He kissed her on her forehead and stayed by her side. There was a knock on the hospital door. He stood up and opened the door. He saw Benjamin talking to an unknown man and left the room, turning back to see if his wife was still sleeping. Benjamin, is everything okay? Yes, sir. This is Detective Milton. They shook hands. Sir, may I ask you a few questions? Of course. What happened to your wife? I am sorry. The only thing I know was that she was kidnapped. I do not know anything more, because she is asleep and she cannot give me any information. Do you have someone in mind? Someone who hates your wife? Any enemies? No. Everyone loves her. She inherited her father's company, but there are still not any known enemies. Sir, you know that whatever she says, you cannot use it to track the criminals by yourself. You have to call us. Of course, detective. Benjamin will call you. But in the meantime, you cannot stop me to hire a private investigator to help you in your investigation and discovering who did that to my wife. The detective nodded. He could understand Christian and his concern, but did not want to admit it. You can do whatever you want, as long as you remember that we are the people you should call before you do something. Christian nodded and continued. If you excuse me, I will enter my wife's room. I do not want her to wake up and see that there is no one near her or to be afraid. You can talk to Benjamin. He can answer any more questions you might have. Of course, sir. Christian entered Mia's room, and the detective and Benjamin continued talking. Chapter 25 She was in the hospital. She woke up and saw her handsome husband sitting on the chair next to her bed. He had his eyes closed, but he was beautiful. She remembered everything. She was thankful to God she was safe and with him again. She was so scared. She was terrified. She touched his hair and spoke gently. Chris, are you okay? 
When he heard her gentle voice, he opened his eyes and smiled. Baby, you are awake. How are you feeling? I am fine. I am hungry and I have an urge to vomit. That is because I have something to tell you. What? She felt sick. I feel sick. Baby, do you need to go to the bathroom? Yes, please help me. He took her to the bathroom. When she got out, he asked, Baby, are you okay? I am fine now. I do not know what is happening to me. I feel sick. What is wrong with me? Nothing, baby. I promise. I have to tell you something. What? I know what is wrong, or, in this case, what is right with you. He smiled gently. Chris, stop joking and tell me. Baby, you're pregnant. What? She screamed. We are expecting. Oh my God! She hugged him, kissed him, and asked, Is the baby okay? Yes, baby. The doctor said it was okay. You just need to rest and not stress about anything. All right, baby. Baby, I know it is not the time, but I have to ask you, do you know who did this to you? Can you remember anything? A tear fell down her cheek. No, baby, don't cry. I did not mean to pressure you. No, baby, it is just that I do not know who could hate me so much. There were more people in that room. It wasn't just one. More? Yes, and the only thing I remember was that one of them is a woman. A woman? How do you know? Well, she was wearing a ring on her hand, and when she hit me, her hit was not very strong. I will find her, baby. I promise. And when I do, she will pay about everything. She nodded and said, Baby, I want to go home. When can I go home? Tomorrow, baby. If everything is okay, you can go home tomorrow. He kissed her and held her hand. A few hours later, when he was sure she was in the mood and a little bit rested, he spoke. Baby, we have to talk about the company. I know you do not want to hear this, but I think that you will have to leave the company to David. No, baby, that is what they want, for me to leave the company. I know, baby, but think of our child. I do not want to happen anything to you or him. I was scared. I know, baby, but please, understand. Baby, I have a suggestion. What? You can work from home. We have the home office. And all the people that will come will have to pass security. And David can be the one in the company who will help you with everything. Baby, that is a great idea. I will tell to David. Can you give me my phone? He smiled and with a soft voice said, Baby, rest first. When you get out tomorrow, you can call David. He was worried about you. He called and asked about you. He is like the uncle I never had. Is he okay? Yes, he was just worried. Baby, thank you. For what, baby? For saving me. For taking care of me and for loving me. Baby. I love you, and there is no need to thank me. I will always love you. The next day, she was released from the hospital, and Christian took her home. David was there and was waiting for her. There was also Victoria and Anna. She was surprised. What were her stepmother and her stepsister doing here when they could not stand her? They had a strange look on their face. When Victoria saw her, she spoke. Oh my God, Mia! What they have done to you? She only looked at them and could not say a word. Christian looked at David and noted a strange smirk on his face. It was strange. He asked them, What are you doing here, and how did you know about this? I called them, David said. I thought they would need to know. After all, they are family. He nodded and said, I will take Mia to our bedroom. Afterwards, I need to talk to you in the office. He looked at Mia and continued, Do not worry, baby. I will tell them what we have discussed. But now you need to rest. Remember. She nodded, and he took her to their bedroom. He came back downstairs and said, We should enter the office. I have to talk to all of you. 
Chris, what do you want to talk to us about? David asked. I will tell you in the office. Please, follow me. They entered the office. He closed the door and spoke. Mia and I have made a decision about the company. What kind of a decision? Victoria asked. Mia is going to run the company from home, and everything at the end of the day will come to her. I want to keep her safe, so this is going to be from now on. Second, David will be Mia's representative inside of the company, but without Mia's signature, he cannot decide about anything. The rest of you will get the paycheck that is said. If the company is at a loss, you will all give from your money to cover the loss. You cannot do that. Mia has a bigger salary. That is true. So Mia will give 55% of the loss, and all of you will give accordingly with the percentage of the shares you own. Of course, David nodded. Anna and Victoria did not say anything, but he could notice the unsatisfied look on all of their faces. He noticed that they had hoped for something else, for another decision. He was not sure, but he thought they might have had something to do with this. The kidnappers did not hurt her, but only scared Mia. So it must have been someone that will not gain if she was dead. They got up and left. After they left the house, Christian called Benjamin and said, I want you to check a man called David Reynolds. He works with Mia and he was her father's best friend. Try to find some dirt. There has to be something that he wants to hide. I have some strange hunch about him. I do not know why I do not like him, and I do not trust him. Have someone to surveil him. Yes, sir. And I want you to put someone to follow Anna and Victoria. I think that they are somehow involved in this kidnapping. Of course, sir. Do you think one of them is the mastermind behind everything? I do not know. I cannot be sure. Do you want me to report this to the police? No, no. It is just a hunch. I do not want to warn anyone if that what I think is true. I do not want to tell Mia anything until we are certain. Can you please take care of it? Yes, sir, Benjamin said. Thank you. Christian thanked him. He hung up the phone and went upstairs. He entered their bedroom and saw Mia sleeping peacefully. He took her in his arms, kissed her on her forehead, and held her tight. He was lucky they were unharmed. His whole life was in this person he was holding in his hands. He did not care about anything else. Only about them two, the two hearts in that lovely woman. He finally relaxed and fell asleep. Chapter 26 the next morning, Christian woke up to the smell of freshly brewed coffee. He opened his eyes and looked at the door. He saw her in her white lace nightgown. She was amazing. He spoke. Why did you get up? You need to rest. How do you feel? Baby, I'm fine, and I know. But I had to get up. I can no longer lie down. I want to take a walk and I thought it would be nice to have breakfast together. Come on, get up. No, first, I want my morning kiss. She went to him and kissed him gently. Come on, get up now. He pulled him towards her. He got up but went to the bathroom. He brushed his teeth and got out. This is for you. She handed him a cup of coffee and a small box. Thank you. What is this? he asked. Open it. I hope you will like it. He opened the nicely wrapped box in the shape of a heart, and he saw a frame with a photo of him and her and an ultrasound photo she had gotten from the hospital. Do you like it? she asked. Do I like it? Baby, I love it. This is the most beautiful gift I have ever received. She smiled gently and he kissed her. Happy Valentine's Day, baby. Oh, it is Valentine's Day. Baby, I forgot. I'm sorry. I was preoccupied with everything. I forgot. Don't worry, baby. It is okay. I have all day. I will buy you a gift as amazing as this one. I am sure you will, baby. 
She smiled and kissed him. They had breakfast, but he kept watching her. Although there was a bruise on her face, she was the most beautiful woman in the world. She spoke to him. What are your plans for today? I have no plans. I took a week off. I want to spend these days with my wife. I want to enjoy her. I have to go to a shop to buy my wife a gift. He smiled. Mia smiled shyly and looked at him. I also want to spend a nice day with you. But please do not forget that tonight David will come to bring me the documents and the report of what happened today at work. I know, my honey. I'm here. I will help you take a look at them. Do not worry. She nodded. After breakfast, they decided they would spend the day together. He went out, went to a jewelry shop, and bought an amazing diamond ring in the shape of a heart. The diamond was pink, and it had small rubens around it in a darker color. He came back home, went to their room, looked at Mia, and said, Baby, get ready. I want to take you somewhere. Where? she asked. It is a secret. Oh, so what should I wear? You can dress casually. All right. What about shoes? Wear sneakers. They drove into Manhattan and parked near Central Park. He rounded the car, took a duffel bag from the trunk, and we went inside of the park. Where are we going? Mia asked as he flung the duffel bag over her shoulder. On a date, he sighed. Huh? I laughed. Babe, we are married. The dating stage is done. No, baby, the dating stage has just begun, he smiled. What's with the duffel bag? We rounded the corner to Central Park West and headed straight to the meadow. Christian stopped at the John Lennon Memorial where the word imagine looked back up at us. He laced his fingers in mine, turned me around to face him, and tapped my nose. His lips tilted up arrogantly. Imagine what our life would be like from now on. The park was swarming with people. Clusters of tourists, couples, cyclists, parents, and children. The way Christian stood, tall and proud, made people stop and stare. Christian put his mouth on hers and kissed her in front of everyone, soft and slow and seductive. Kissed her like no one was around, like they were alone in this city, this park, this planet. He pressed a possessive hand over the small of her back and jerked her to his body. Then he caressed her cheek. His lips dragged from her lips to her ear and he whispered, this is where I went every time my parents fought. This is where I went when the decision to marry you was made. And this is where I went when I knew my father would have his staff driving around looking for me. They never came into Central Park. This was my place, he said. Her heart fluttered inside her ribcage, and she saw Christian, not only as the man he wanted people to see, but also as the person he really was. A good husband, and even a better father. They unpacked the duffel bag under a huge tree. Christian was surprisingly organized for their picnic. They spread a blanket, and he took out grapes, cheese, crackers, wine, and fancy chocolate. She told him there was no way he had done this himself and he admitted he had given their housekeeper Maria pot in exchange for these goodies. She laughed, and he threw a grape at her face. It made her laugh harder. The sun was glorious, and she laid on the blanket and stared back at the sky, munching on almond chocolate that melted between her fingers. He sat next to her, staring at her intently, like he expected her to get up and run away any second like she could evaporate into thin air, like sharing this place with her meant something to him. He smirked at the blue sky like the clouds had cleared up, especially for them. He spoke, I was really scared that something might have happened to you. I was too. I was scared that I will never see you again. Oh, baby, the worst has passed, and from now on, I will never let you out of my sight. 
I love you so much. He gave her the box and smiled. What is this? My Valentine's gift for you. Open it. She opened the box and she saw the amazing pink diamond ring in the shape of a heart and said, Baby, it is amazing. I love you. Put it on your hand, he said. She did. It looked amazing on her finger. He took her hand in his and kissed her. The day was well spent. They went home at sundown. David was waiting for them in the living room. They shook hands and took him to the study. Please sit, Uncle David, she said. Mia, how are you feeling? Are you okay? he asked. I am okay, thank you. How are you? I am fine. How was your day at the company? Were there any events? No, we had a meeting with the managers. They gave their ideas for increasing the work and profit. They proposed to increase production, but not to lay off workers, which I thought was a solid idea. I agree. We cannot fire anyone, at least not yet. With the help we got from Christian, everything will be okay for now, but we must do something to better the company. She looked at Christian and asked him, Baby, do you have any ideas? I'm thinking about it. I will make a plan and calculate the numbers, and I will tell you. Okay. David, did you bring me the reports? Yes. He passed her the reports and looked at her face. Thank you. I know that you might be tired, so I will let you go home and rest. I will call you tomorrow, and Uncle David, thank you for coming and helping me run this company. You are the best. She stood up, hugged him. I will go now. Good night. Have a great evening. Thank you, Uncle David. You too. He left the room when Mia spoke. He is a great guy. I do not know about that. What? Why? No, nothing. It is just a hunch. Do not worry. She nodded and looked at him. Let's go to our room. I have a surprise for you. For me? He looks surprised already. Yes. What is it? He asked. You will see. She took his hand into hers and took him towards their room. She had planned one of the most passionate nights in their lives. She wanted him, and she planned to show that to him this evening. Chapter 27 She took him to their room, and they made love. This time it was different for both of them. It was slow and passionate. Every thrust was an appreciation of love. Each rake of her fingernails against his skin, a reminder that she loved him. They care about each other and were careful about one another. A few days later, they had visitors. It was Anna and Scott. When she saw them, she could see the smirk on Anna's face. Anna, Scott, she nodded and asked. What are you two doing here? Well, sister, she wanted to hurt her, not realizing that Mia felt nothing toward the man standing next to her. She showed her the big diamond ring on her hand and said, We got married a few days ago, and we wanted you to be the first one to know. Congratulations, Christian said. But that is not all, Scott said. Oh, there is more? Let's hear it. I am pregnant. We are having a baby. Wow, I am so happy for you guys. She said and looked at Christian. He nodded. Anna, now that you told us the good and happy news, you can go. Why? We want to have lunch with you. Anna, what is going on? Why are you so nice all of a sudden? Do you have something to tell me? Anna had an unrecognizable look on her face. It was a mix of anger, jealousy, and rage. No, I just wanted to talk to my stepsister and to try and make things better between us. You, this baby, Scott, and Victoria are my only family. You have plenty. I have my husband and... Christian stopped her. 
I will tell Maria to prepare lunch. We can eat one meal together. Mia nodded, realizing that she might have told something, but Anna did not make any other questions, so she did not say anything more. The lunch was ready. They ate and left. When they were gone, Mia and Christian talked for a while. Do you think she realized what I said? I do not know. If she did, she did not show it. She nodded. What do you think about her marriage to Scott? She asked. I am glad she got married. If she is happy, then it is even better. I agree. I just hope that he will treat her better than he did me. I hope he will not cheat on her. What do you think Victoria said to them when they told her the good news? I have no idea. She has always liked Scott. She always told her to steal it from me. I think she even one time sent me somewhere just so Anna can stay alone in the house with Scott. I cannot understand how she can do that. She is your stepmother. She was never my mother. She was my father's wife. She told that on the first day she entered our house. I remember that like it was yesterday. She entered in a white elegant suit and a big hat on her head. She was beautiful. Her blonde hair was long and curly. She entered our house as she owned it. She looked at me and said, You must be her. I just nodded and she said, Well, I am your father's new wife. You can call me Madam. Madam? He had a strange look in his eyes. Mia nodded and continued. Then she said, This is Anna. She is my daughter. You can show her around the house. I did. And in the evening my dad said to me, Mia, because Anna is new to our home, and we must make her stay excellent, you will give her your room, and you can sleep downstairs in the guest room. I tried to say no, but he said loudly, this is an order, and I knew once he made his decision, there was no turning back. He was always on her side. I was his daughter. He could tell me anything he wanted. He knew I will always love him. A tear fell down her cheek. What happened then? Well, he was equal to both of us. We could go to the school or college we wanted, the toys and the cars we wanted, but I did not have him as a father. When he was not working, he was spending time with Victoria on some cruise or vacation. I was never too close to him. When I met Scott, I really thought I loved him. He was my ticket out of that house. And I think I said yes more to satisfy my father than because of love. Baby. He looked at her with a gentle look. I am okay. After that, I saw Scott and Anna together, as you know. And the rest of the story, you know. I will have to buy Scott a present. Why? She looked at him. Because he cheated on you. Now I have you for myself. He kissed her. Oh, is that so? Yes, he smiled. What do you think? Will they be happy? I hope that she will be a better mother than Victoria. This answer is only known by God. She looked at Christian with a sad look and said, Will I be a good mother? I never had one to show me how to be. I am scared. He took her in his arms and said, Baby, you should not be scared. You will be the best mother our baby can have. You will love him and protect him. We will take care of it, and no matter what, we will raise him the best we know how. I do not want you to worry about that, all right? She nodded. They went to their room. They did not make love that evening. They just slept together. He hugged her, and she slept on his chest. Before falling asleep, both of them had a thought on their mind. His only thought was that she is mine, with a capital M. It wasn't a request, a plea, or a hope, but a simple fact. Her eyes confirmed it, her body sang it, and her mouth said it. What has this woman done to him? He has loved her more than his life. He was willing to give his life for her. 
He knew that this was the real thing. This was what true love was. She looked at him, and she did not say anything, only thought that she was the happiest woman alive. She had an amazing husband, who loved her more than his life. She had a baby on its way. She would be a good mother. She promised that, and she will live her baby. The company was in safe hands, and nothing could hurt them. The thing that we do most often is that we always forget that there are people who want to harm us, especially if we are truly happy. This was the beginning of everything. They only did not know it. Chapter 28 The time flew very. A few weeks later, they went to the gynecologist's office to check on their baby. Christian and Mia walked side by side into the hospital. When they got to the reception, Christian spoke. Good morning. The nurse raised her head and said, Good morning, sir. How may I help you? We have an appointment with Dr. Davidson at 10 a.m. Of course, sir. You can follow me. I will take you there. They were taken to the ultrasound room, where Davidson was waiting for them. Good morning. Dr. Davidson greeted as soon as Christian and Mia walked into the room. She hugged Mia and shook hands with Christian. She was happy to see Mia looking radiant, which was great compared to how sad she was on her last appointment. She was happy he was here with Mia. Christian sat on a chair beside the ultrasound bed, while Mia sat on the bed as Davidson began to ask her questions about her health. How have you been, dear? Good, I guess. Morning sickness? It's not always the most fun part of my day, but... I've been able to cope with it. The vitamins you prescribed helps me reduce the nausea, but I feel dizzy once in a while. Dr. Davidson nodded. She scribbled something down on her chart. Any cravings? Spicy food and sometimes ice cream. But this man over here has been feeding me with lots of chocolate. She pointed at Christian, who suddenly became shy. They all chuckled. Any weird changes in your body? Dr. Davidson asked. For now, no, she answered. Davidson took Mia's blood pressure. Thankfully, it was normal, which showed she hadn't been stressing herself. She led her to the scale to weigh herself, after which it was time for the ultrasound. Mia removed her blazer and passed it to Christian, who was more than happy to hold it for her. She settled on the bed. Dr. Davidson raised her cami a little, right below her boobs. As far as Christian could see, Mia had a very flat stomach, and she still does. The thought of her sexy belly growing their child made him want to tear up. After contemplating for a while, he took a bold step and connected his right hand with Mia's left one. Mia smiled at him before turning her attention back to Dr. Davidson, whose attention was on the monitor. Christian and Mia listened attentively as she explained everything to them and they were happy to see their little peanut. It's so tiny. Christian awed with smiles all over his face, his eyes not leaving the monitor. Yes, but the perfect size for an almost three-months-old baby. In a few seconds, you will hear the heartbeat, she announced before punching a few things on the monitor, and soon enough, they were blessed to hear the most beautiful sound in the world. Oh, my God! Mia whispered as happy tears rolled down her cheeks. Christian wiped them off. With tears in his eyes, too, he gave Mia's hand a light squeeze, then kissed the back of her palm. He was blessed to be able to witness this moment with her. Mia, on the other hand, was grateful to be able to experience all of this. She knew this baby was going to change her life for the better. Everything seemed real now that they heard the heartbeat. Though she was new to the whole experience, she promised to be the best mom she could to her baby. Hopefully, she and her baby will have the same bond she and her mom share while she was little. Dr. Davidson gave the parents some time to enjoy hearing their baby's heartbeat while she went ahead to print out some ultrasound pictures. She came back to the room and handed the pictures, which were already in a brown envelope to Christian. Mia almost died of embarrassment 
when Christian placed a long kiss on her lower belly, not minding the fact that Dr. Davidson was there. He rolled down her cami, and then she sat up on the bed. Everything is going well. Your baby is growing perfectly, she said to them. The parents-to-be nodded with smiles on their faces. Keep eating healthy, avoid stress, and always stay hydrated, she continued. Dr. Davidson turned to Christian and said, I am counting on you to take very good care of them. Again, don't feed her with only chocolates. Let there be varieties. You can mix the chocolates with healthy food and drinks, and maybe a little bit of healthy sex to help your baby grow healthier. Christian chuckled and said, Noted, Doc. Mia's face was almost as red as the tomato, but gave her hand a light squeeze, indirectly telling her that there was no need to be shy about what the doctor said. Dr. Davidson handed Mia a meal plan and prescriptions of the vitamins she should get. I will see you guys at your next appointment. Thanks, Doc, they both said. Mia stood to her feet. Christian wore her blazer for her. She put the prescription, brown envelope, and meal plan in her handbag, then gave Dr. Davidson a goodbye hug. Christian and Mia made their way to the pharmacy section of the hospital to buy Mia's vitamins. Christian paid for them and handed them to her. Thanks, Mia mumbled shyly. He smiled at her and said, Don't mention it. They made their way out of the hospital. He turned toward her and asked her, Baby, do you want us to have brunch together? Yes, baby, she agreed. They walked down to a fancy restaurant, which was not far from the hospital. Mia and Christian were sat on a private table for two. Christian pulled out a chair for Mia before settling down opposite her. A waiter came with a menu. They went through it and both ordered what they wanted. Mia ordered three scoops of ice cream and a chocolate topping, and he asked for a chocolate souffle. Soon enough, their orders came and they dug in. The brunch was amazing. Mia looked at the souffle and said, I want to try it. May I? Of course, baby. As long as you give me a spoon of your ice cream. She passed the ice cream and tried the souffle. It was really delicious, and Christian could see the delight in her eyes. He waved the waiter, and when he came, Christian spoke. Yes, sir? We want two portions of chocolate souffle for taking, please. Of course, sir. Mia looked at him and had a gentle look on her face. I read your mind. I knew that you will make me come here later because you liked it, and I knew I have to order it. Thank you, she said. He held her hand, and they finished their brunch in quiet. They went home. Mia looked at him and said, I will go change and have a shower. You can join me if you want, she smiled. He nodded, and they went to their room. Chapter 29 As the months passed by, Mia was even more in love with her belly bump. Christian would kiss it and cherish it all the time. He was quite excited that he will become a father. Everything was going well for them and the companies they owned. Mia would feel fear once in a while, but Christian would make her believe that everything was going to be okay. There are moments in life when you know that what you are doing isn't what you should be doing. For example, when you are a kid and someone puts on a movie that is inappropriate. Everyone knows it's supposed to be bad but you don't get up no matter how uncomfortable it makes you. Or when you are batshit crazy exhausted and you know you should wash your face, but the bed looks so soft and inviting that you throw caution to the wind, only to wake up the next morning with your eyes matted together in leftover mascara and your pillowcase looking like a crime scene. Week 37 Your baby is likely between 17 and 19 inches long and five to six pounds. You may notice an increase in the number of contractions you experience. Many women experiencing Braxton Hicks head to the hospital, only to be told that they are actually experiencing a false alarm. They were both exhausted after racing to the hospital hours before, only to learn that Mia had been experiencing a bout of false labor. She was mortified that she had called the doctor 
and dragged her away from her family for nothing. Not to mention that Christian looked like he hadn't slept in days. And he likely hadn't because he insisted on sleeping with her. And Demia couldn't remember the last time she had gotten a good night's rest. Everything hurt from her tailbone to her ribs. She couldn't breathe, and heaven only knew the state of her lady bits because she could no longer see to shave down there. I'm glad we went and checked things out. Christian helped her out of the car and into the house. Even though it was a false alarm, it was better safe than sorry. He smiled gently at his wife. That is true. I do not know why did it happen. Is it possible all the first-time pregnant women have the same thing? I mean, to pass through the false contractions? I do not know, baby, but probably. She nodded. At least she knew her baby was all right. A week passed. Mia was finishing the last touches in the nursery, which was going to be with the finest of furniture which had been ordered, as well as two rocking chairs, a plush velvet overstuffed chair, and a massive turn-of-the-century French armoire. There were dozens of stuffed animals, a bassinet, and a swing. Three car seats had been purchased and installed already. There was a pain in Mia's stomach. She knew that something was different about the pains. She called Christian. Baby, can you come home? My stomach hurts a lot. I think I'm having contractions and we are having a baby. I think this is the real thing this time. Baby, I'll be home in ten minutes. We will go to the hospital. Lay down on the sofa and wait for me. He came home, saw his wife laying on the sofa, picked her up bridal style, and took her to the car. How far apart are the contractions? he asked. I am not sure. Pretty close, I think. Mia answered. She was holding onto the car door with a white knuckle grip. He waved to Benjamin to drive because he was too excited. Benjamin tore out of there and rushed through the streets towards the hospital. Another pain gripped her, and Christian barked instructions for him to take them straight to the emergency room doors. Christian called and left a message at the hospital that they were coming and to alert Dr. Davidson. The moment that they pulled up, Christian got out and helped Mia out of the car. Another pain gripped her, and she felt liquid running down her legs. With a cry, she looked at Christian in horror. An orderly had come out of the hospital with a wheelchair. Seeing that her water had broken, the hospital staff quickly got Mia into the chair and wheeled her into the closest examining room. I have to use the bathroom, Mia cried out. Right now, let me use the bathroom. The staff lifted her onto the exam table and flipped up her dress. It was seconds before they had removed her panties and the nurse cried out. The baby has crowned. Dr. Davidson came rushing into the room and got there just in time to help with the baby's shoulders, and with a final push, the baby had arrived. The most beautiful sound of a newborn's cry filled the air. Mia was covered in amniotic fluid, blood, sweat, and tears. She had one shoe on and wasn't sure where the other one had gone to. Dr. Davidson wrapped the baby and handed it to Christian. It is a daughter, and thank God we were able to get her here safely. Daughter. They had a little girl. Mia was a mother. The tears were clouding her vision. Is she going to be all right? She asked. Dr. Davidson smiled. She will be fine. You can give the baby to his mother. Christian passed her to Mia. She is perfect. He kissed Mia's forehead and continued. You did amazing, Mia. I love you so much. Mia unwrapped the blankets and looked at their daughter. She was red and wrinkly with dark eyes and the tiniest of hands. There was fine white hair on some of her body and a shock of black hair that she had gotten from her daddy. Mia's nurse helped her to remove the soiled dress, and then Mia placed her baby at her breast. It was a moment so surreal and beautiful that Christian knew he would never forget this day. This was the most amazing day in his life, and he was deeply thankful to his wife for it. Bella Grace King 
was born at 10.22 a.m., weighing in at 6 pounds and 12 ounces, and was 18 inches long. Sarah came to the hospital to visit her best friend, and she declared her to be the most beautiful baby that she had ever seen. She stayed with Mia for a few minutes, and when she left, Mia fell asleep. Christian held his daughter firmly against his chest while he watched the two women he loved more than anything else in this world. Who would have thought that one arranged wedding all those months ago could bring him everything that he had today? Call it fate, divine intervention, good karma? Christian didn't care, just as long as Mia and Bella were his to keep forever. The thing they did not know was that on the same day, but in the other part of town, there was another baby boy born. Anna was giving birth. The boy was born a few weeks before the term. Michael Stephen Carter was born at 11.52 a.m., weighing in at 5 pounds and 11 ounces, and was 17 inches long. Anna called him Michael because she wanted to do everything in her power to hurt Mia. That is why she called him Michael. A few days later, both of the women were released and could go home. Mia was happy and satisfied. She had everything she needed. Chapter 30 Mia was watching over her baby girl when the doorbell rang. Maria opened the door and she saw Anna with the baby stroller in front of her. Maria, who is it? Mia asked. It is me, my dear sister. We came to visit you. We? Mia stood up from the sofa, put Bella in the crib, and went towards the door. She was surprised to see the baby. She knew Anna was pregnant, but she did not know that she gave birth already. It was too early. Aren't you going to invite us in? Why? What do you want? She did not want her to get inside. Her baby was sleeping, and she did not want Anna to be able to disturb her. I want to talk to you, to show you your nephew. This is Michael. When Mia heard that name, she remembered her father, and it hurt her. But she did not say anything. She just nodded her head and said, What a lovely boy you are. Hello. She stroked his hair and his small leg. Such an angel. So, can we get in or not? Anna, I am tired. I would like to say sorry and to ask you to leave. You can visit us some other day, but please call in advance. Anna had an angry look on her face. She did not expect that. She had no choice. She turned around and left. Christian came home. He kissed Mia, who was holding their daughter. Then he kissed his daughter, too, and stroked her hair. How was your day? Christian asked. It was okay. She was very calm and did not cry at all. That is Daddy's girl. I had a visitor today. Oh, who was it? It was Anna. She has given birth to a baby boy. Isn't it too early? I thought it was. I do not know. But that is not the best part. Guess what is the boy's name? His name? I do not know. Michael. She called him Michael. Mia. I know that hurts, baby. But he was a good stepfather, and probably she wanted to remember him. That, or she wanted to hurt me. She smiled gently and continued. Anyway, it does not matter. The boy was very nice and he was sleeping, so I hope this motherhood will make her a better person. I hope that too, baby. Anyway, how was your day, baby? It was fine. I had a few meetings and I discussed with my lawyers a few things. What sort of things? What did you discuss? Well, baby, now we have a daughter and I want to set up a trust fund for her. Okay, but why? She is still very young. I know, baby, but I want to set her for life. We do not know what will happen in the future, and if we are going to have a lot of money then, 
as we do now. Anything can happen. Inflation, economic collapse, any type of disaster, God forbid. So I want to have my daughter set. All right, but she must not have access until she's 25. That way she will actually learn how to spend her money and she will be a grown-up. I agree. She should wait until she is 25 years old. But what about the amount? What amount should we put in the trust fund? I do not know, baby. That is something you have to decide. Well, I want to consult with you. What do you think about 25 million? Isn't that a little bit too much? Baby, 25 million is not too much. I will also buy her an apartment in the future. She smiled gently. Baby, I know you will, but let's not make any plans. For now, there is time. She is only a few months old. We can discuss this in twenty years. He smiled as well. I agree with you. Anyway, today I had a few meetings and I made an investment. The lawyers advised me it was a good business. Really? What kind of investment? Well, baby, I bought a hotel. You did what? I bought a hotel. All right. Where? Well, it is in your favorite country. You bought a hotel in Portugal? Yes, he smiled and continued. In Lisbon, to be precise. She was excited. She got up off the sofa, went to him, and kissed him. She sat in his lap and hugged him. Why are you so good to me? Baby, I love you, and I will always be this good to you. You and Bella are my life. So guess what the name of the hotel is? King? she asked. No, it is Bella. Hotel Bella. She smiled. But I also wanted to ask you something. What? Well, I need a favor. Anything, baby. Well, now that you are on maternal leave, I wanted to ask you if there was any possibility for us to go to Lisbon in the next couple of weeks. Yes, baby, of course. But that is not all. There is more? Yes, baby. I want to ask you if there is any possibility for us to meet with any of the interior designers you know. You want to renovate the hotel? He nodded and continued. I want to change it. I have a few ideas, and I want to implement them. Also, I want you to take part in it as well. I want to make it a family hotel, but also, I would like single guests to go there and have fun. I understand. What are your ideas? Well, I was planning on the first floor to have reception, and maybe, and maybe, an indoor pool, a spa, sauna, massage room, everything to relax the guests. Then on the next 33 floors, we can have the normal rooms. You know, one bed, two bed, three bed, and four bed bedrooms. How many floors does the hotel have? Well, it has 39 floors. I see. But how many one beds or more bed bedrooms do you plan to have? Well, I was planning nine or ten floors with one bed then also nine or ten with two beds, and six or seven floors with three beds, and finally also six or seven floors with four beds. Ahem, I understand. And what about a restaurant, or a dining room for the guests? An outdoor pool, or maybe a conference room? Stay with me, baby. I was planning, from the 32nd to the 34th floor, to have the suites. You know, honeymoon suites and the cheaper suites. Then, on the 35th floor, I was planning to put on four presidential suites. On the 36th floor, a casino. And on one side of the 37th, to put three conference rooms. And on the other, maybe a cinema. Okay, I like it so far. 
On one side of the 38th floor, we can have a club. Everything will be soundproof because I do not want the VIP guest to be disturbed. And on the other side, we can have the kitchen. And on the last floor, there can be one part the outdoor pool, and on the other side can be the restaurant, dining room, bar. I mean, everything in one place. I like this, but how many square meters does one floor have? Because I think that will be a small space to put on one floor. I do not know. A lot. Each floor is around 600 square meters. So trust me when I say it has enough place. How many rooms does it have? Well, each floor has 24 rooms. So you have 24 rooms on 30 floors. So you did the math. She takes out her phone from the table and makes the calculations. Wow, that is a lot. How many? He asked her. It has around 720 rooms, not to count the suites. Exactly. So it will be around 730 to 740 rooms, which is pretty amazing. I agree. I will have a big capacity. If your plan works, we can accommodate more than 1,000 people. I know. He smiled and continued. I was also planning to allow maybe people who are not guests at the hotel to have lunch or drink coffee in the restaurant. But that will only happen when the dining room is not full capacity. I understand, but you do know that this will cost us a lot of money. I know, baby, but I think it is worth it. Plus, we will have a place to go on vacation in the summer. It will be amazing. She nodded and continued. What about the prices? Have you thought about that? No, I have not. But to be honest, I do not want to cost a lot of money. I want it to be available for any type of people, family people. All right. Baby, maybe it will cost, let's say, one night stay around $100 to $150. But if they stay more than five nights, they will have some kind of discount. And maybe, for children under the age of 10, it will be for free. Something like that. And you said you have not thought about it. Well, maybe a little. And of course, we can make the suites more expensive, and also the VIP suites as well. We also have to hire a top chef, who is already well known and a good staff. Maybe we can pay for their training, because we will have a lot of staff, and I want them to be satisfied and perfect. Baby, you know how they will be satisfied? I know. Yeah, you will have to give them a good salary. Maybe you can also include in their contract a clause that will say if we pay for their training, they will have to work for us for a period of time. Maybe three years? I like how you were thinking, he said to her. I know. You love the businesswoman in me. He smiled and continued speaking. So, about the salary. We know that Europe is expensive, but from the three times I've been to Portugal, I know that Lisbon is cheap, so you can offer them a beginning salary of 1,800 euros, or around $2,200 monthly, and a bonus or some kind of reward. I mean, for example, the maids can have a salary of 1,800 euros, the waiters from 2,000 euros. The cooks and kitchen personnel can have 2,200 euros. The receptionists can have 2,300 euros. The casino dealers can have 2,400, 2,500 euros. Plus, all of them can keep their tips. And plus a bonus, so they can reach a yearly salary of 25,000 euros and more. I can agree to this, but we have to check the salaries in Lisbon. This is just an assumption. I agree with you completely, baby. We have to check all facts. I can have a talk with a friend from Lisbon. I will ask him everything. You are liking this, don't you? You are really getting involved. Baby, I know I can do this. I will also talk to James Martin. He is a great designer. 
We can hire him. Wait, what time is it? It is 9 p.m. I can call him right now. She took her phone and dialed James. Hello, James. Speaking. It is Mia. How are you? I have not heard you for so long. Girl, you are not calling me anymore. How are you? I am doing great. I just had a baby and I am happy. Really? Congratulations. What is its name? It is Bella. But how about you? How are you? I'm doing great. Working. Where are you now? I'm in New York. Why? Well, are you free tomorrow? We can have lunch, and we can talk about a project my husband invested in, and we have in mind. I am not free for lunch, but how about dinner? Of course. Where? Our usual place in eight? Of course. Make the reservation. I will, thank you. See you tomorrow. See you. She hung up. We have dinner tomorrow at the grill at 8 p.m., but you have to call and make a reservation. Will you be able to make a reservation? Of course. The owner is a friend. He smiled and nodded. Do not worry, baby. Everything will be okay. She kissed him and hugged him. Chapter 31 The evening came, and Mia was getting ready for dinner, when Christian came into the room. Hey, baby, are you ready? He asked her. Yes, but, baby, you are late. Why did you come home so late? Is there any problem? No, baby, the traffic was terrible. I will have a shower and get ready in fifteen minutes, and we can go. Of course, baby. He looked at her and saw sadness in her eyes. Baby, what is wrong? I feel sad. I can see that in your eyes. But I want to know why. I have never left Bella alone, especially not for so long. Oh, baby, please do not worry. The babysitters will take care of her, and if there are any problems, they will call us. I know. She nodded and smiled gently. He entered the bathroom, and she continued to get ready. They got ready and went to the car. While they were driving, they were talking as well. Baby, will Bella be fine alone? She asked. Baby, again, she is not alone. But if you do not want to go to dinner, we can't cancel. No, baby, it is okay. We can go. I am ready anyway. And I know if there are any problems, they will call us. They entered the restaurant, and the hostess took them to their table. James has not arrived there yet, so they decided to get settled, and to order drinks only while they wait for him to arrive. James was a few minutes late. I'm sorry I am late. He came near them and kissed Mia on the cheek, and shook hands with Christian. No problem. Do not worry. Mia said and smiled. Oh, you have not ordered yet. No, only drinks. We were waiting for you. They ordered dinner. Mia and James had steak with sidings, and Christian had a lobster, and they also ordered red wine. While they were waiting for the food, they continued talking. So, Mia, what is this project you mentioned on the phone? You got me interested, James said. Well, James. Christian bought a hotel in Lisbon, and we want to renovate it. All right, so you want my opinion and my designs? That is correct, Christian said. Do you have something in mind? James asked. So, are you accepting? No. He smiled and continued. But I want to see your thoughts, and if I like them, then I will agree. Why, you devil, Mia smiled. Well, James, the hotel has 39 floors, so... Wow, that is a huge hotel. He looked at Christian and continued. Sorry, please continue. I and Mia were thinking the ground floor should be the reception area and a lounge or a bar where people can have drinks while waiting. 
but only drinks and also a spa and an indoor pool. Okay, I can imagine that. After that, from the 2nd until the 31st, should be the bedrooms. One bed, two beds, three and four beds. From the 32nd until the 34th, should be the simple suites, like honeymoon suites. Then on the 35th floor, I was planning to put on four presidential suites. On the 36th floor, a casino. And on one side of the 37th, to put three conference rooms. And on the other, maybe a cinema. All right, but you said 39 floors. That is true. So we are planning a soundproof floor with a club or bar on one side of the 38th floor. And on the other side, we can have the kitchen. And on the last floor, there can be on one part the outdoor pool. And on the other side can be the restaurant, dining room. I mean, everything in one place. Okay, I understand. But now I have my other question. How much space is there? Each floor has 600 square meters. It has 24 rooms, and we want it to be perfect, Mia said. So, as I understand, money is not an object, am I correct? James asked. Christian nodded and continued. Money is not a problem, but I want style and I want commodity. I want my guests to feel amazing and to feel relaxed so they can spend money and come back. I can imagine something in my mind, but do you have photos of the place? I had them send me photos this afternoon, but they are on my phone. Even Mia still has not seen them. He smiled toward Mia and passed his phone to her. She saw the pictures and was breathtaking. The hotel looked amazing from the outside. She passed the phone to James. He liked it as well, but he did not like the inside. James spoke. I like the outside of the hotel, but the inside is a little bit dated, so I would like to design something for you, and I will send it to you. It will be rough, but it is only the beginning and I will send you that this evening, but you must know we have to go there so I can see the place. Of course I know that. So I was thinking to ask you when you are available so we can have a trip. Well, I have a house that I am decorating and a small apartment after that, but I think I will be done with the two of them in two weeks so we can go there. Mia smiled. She was excited. You have a deal. You can send me the sketches today. And I will send you a contract so you can sign tomorrow? I will tell my attorneys to do it. James nodded. They continued eating, and after dinner, they went home. The next day, James sent the beginning sketches to Christian, and he showed them to Mia. They liked them, and Mia could not wait to start implementing her ideas. Two weeks passed very quickly, so they went to Lisbon. The hotel looked amazing. But the lobby was old, and the reception desk was gold. The chairs in the lobby were dated, and the tiles were out of fashion. James began writing notes. What are you writing? Mia asked him. I am just making notes. What I want to discuss with the both of you. Because I want to change colors, and definitely tiles and furniture. Well, everything. She nodded and continued. I understand. Well... When we are done with the designs, we will close the hotel for a few months until the renovation is done. But I want you to make notes definitely on the floor. He laughed. They continued looking through the floors and in one room on each floor. Then they arrived, not the 35th floor, the one that should contain four suites. This space is too big. Each suite will be 150 square meters. I think it is too much. Maybe six suites? James asked Christian. He looked at James because he was thinking and continued. I think four because there can be a living room in each suite, and maybe a small dining room and, of course, a big bathroom. James nodded. They continued on the next floor where the casino should be. This floor is perfect for the casino. We can buy maybe slot machines on this wall. And blackjack tables there, roulette tables there, poker tables here, crab tables there, and a small bar here in this corner, so they can make drinks for the guests. 
Also, maybe a couple of tables there or maybe sofas so the guests can sit and enjoy watching the gamers. I like this idea, Mia said. So we can arrange that. They went on the 37th floor. Here, I would suggest we can close these rooms with walls. And you said you want a cinema. I could see that. But I would say not only a cinema, maybe a game room. For the children to be able to play. Maybe a pool table or some other games. I like that idea, Christian said. We can adjust that. Maybe a small playroom. Maybe 50 square meters playroom. I agree. They went to the 38th floor. They saw the view. It was amazing. Wow, I like this. Here you said it will be soundproof. But I also like floor-to-ceiling windows, but bulletproof windows. So no one would break them if they are too drunk or they want to jump or something, he smiled. Christian nodded his head while James continued. This part you said it will be a kitchen, and I can see that. I already have the perfect kitchen that I think Mia will like, to be honest. Are you thinking about the kitchen in the furniture magazine we saw a few days ago and we discussed it? Yes, he smiled. But that one will be too small. It is for a home, not a hotel. That is true. But I called the furniture company and asked if they can make it for a bigger space, and they agreed. Really? Oh my God. Christian, that kitchen will be amazing. He smiled and continued. We only need to see the top floor so he can give me ideas. They went to the top floor. Well, you said you want an outdoor pool here, so we will have to make a lot of changes. But we have to ask a piping company if it is possible for pipes to be put or inserted here. I asked a company. They said we can put outside piping on the edge of the hotel that people will not even notice, so it will not be a problem. Okay, now that this is settled, I have an idea about the restaurant. The same as the club, floor-to-ceiling windows so the guests can see the view, but also half of the room should maybe have a roof, and the other to be open so whoever wants to sit outside can do it. And in winter, you can put up a fence, or shingles on the roof so you can cover it. Christian nodded. I like your ideas. I told you he is the best person for the job. Mia said and smiled. I will make the drawings, and I will make a cost calculation. How much would it cost, and we can start to order everything? I want to see everything. Is that okay? Of course, sweetie. He kissed her on her cheek. Now, if we're done here, I want to go shopping. Mia smiled, and Christian and James smiled as well. If you excuse me, James said and continued. I will have to go to my room and maybe relax. Have a nice day shopping. James winked at Mia. Their day was amazing. Mia bought everything she wanted. She also spent a lot of time with Christian and Bella as well. When they were done, they were so tired they went to the hotel and relaxed for the time being. She was excited. She turned toward Christian and spoke. I feel so excited. I cannot wait to start the renovation process. I know it will last for months, but I think the end result will be worth it. I agree with you. I liked everything that James suggested. He made a lot of my ideas reality, and I think everything will be great. I agree with you, and I told you he is a great designer, and he is a real professional. I agree. He kissed her on her mouth and took her in his arms. They fell asleep immediately. They were exhausted. The trip ended, and they had to return to New York. But they agreed with James that as soon as his plans are done, they will start the renovation process. Everything was amazing. The designs were excellent, so they started the renovation. Christian took care of the renovating companies, and they were on a tight schedule. Mia gave her ideas and also helped James choose the furniture. She liked the dining tables, and also the beds they chose. They bought chandeliers and paintings so the rooms would look amazing. Everything was going great. Chapter 32 Mia was sitting in her living room with her baby in her arms. When David came to visit her, he wanted to give her a report about the company. 
He wanted to tell her that by the new reports this month, the company has averted the crisis and has now been saved out of bankruptcy. The bell rang. Maria opened the door and he entered. Hello, Maria. Good afternoon, sir. How are you, Maria? He asked her. I am fine, sir. Thank you for asking. Where is Mia? She is in the living room with Bella, sir. Very well, thank you. You do not need to show me. I already know the way. He entered the living room. Uncle David. She stood up with the baby in her arms and kissed him on the cheek, then continued. How are you? I am excited. Really? Why? I brought you this month's report. Is it good? It is excellent. My darling, we have finally done it. Our company started making a profit. Thank God. Uncle, please sit. Thank you. How are you, my darling girl? I am great. I wanted to ask you, have you heard any news from Anna or Victoria? I have. Anna has given birth. It is a boy and she is a single mother. Even though she is engaged to Scott, he rarely visits her and helps her with the baby. Victoria is upset. She left the country and went to Paris to live in Anna's apartment that your father left for her. I haven't talked to her. Well, maybe except when she calls to ask for the regular monthly check. I understand. At that moment, Christian came back home. He entered the living room. David stood up and shook hands with Christian. David, it is nice to see you. Christian, how are you? I am fine, thank you. How about you? How are you? I am fine. I came to bring this month's report to Mia. Christian nodded and continued. Well, how is the company going? Well, we started making profit. So I hope soon enough we will be able to pay you back. Do not worry. What is mine, it belongs to my wife as well. David smiled and nodded. I heard you are investing in a hotel in Portugal. We are. Actually, we are renovating the place now, so it is closed. But we hope in a few months the renovation will be done and we can open it. I understand. I hope everything will be fine. Yes. David stood up and said, Mia, I have to go, but I will visit you again. Christian, it was a pleasure. He left, and Christian and Mia stayed with Bella. She was sleeping. They continued discussing. How was your day? Mia asked. It was great. I phoned James. He told me that everything was going great, and that if this tempo continues, we will be able to open in eight months. Really? Wow, how exciting! Mia smiled. He also said you should call him. Did he tell you why? Call him. He smiled. She took her phone and called James. James? Hi, how are you? Hello, my beautiful girl. I am great. How about you? How is the most beautiful girl in the world? She is sleeping. She was tired. We played a little bit. Nice. Well, you are probably asking yourself why I told Christian for you to call me. I do. What's up? Well, I was planning to go shopping for some vanities and furniture that we had not chosen yet. When are you planning to go? Is tomorrow okay for you? Let's say around 1 p.m.? Yeah, see you tomorrow. She hung up her phone and turned to Christian. I will go shopping tomorrow with James. Is that okay? I will leave Bella with a nanny. Of course, baby. You need to go out and do something, so you should go. I wanted to ask you something. What? Will you be able to look at the report? Why? I do not know why. I have a strange feeling. Of course. I asked David if there was any news about Anna and Victoria. And? He said Victoria was in Paris, and Anne was with her son, and she is still with Scott. But he did not help her with Michael at all. Mia. I know, I know, but I'm sorry. Whatever she lived with me for many years, she is my sister. Mia, I know, honey, that she is your sister. But you must understand that she hurt you a lot, and not only that, 
She does everything in her power to hurt you again. I know, baby, but I want to help her. Not because of her, but because of the baby. He is not guilty of anything. Okay, would you like me to make sure she doesn't need anything? Will you be able to do that for me? Honey, I would conquer the world for you. I would give my life for you. You know you are the love of my life. I adore you. I love you too. They took Bella in the nursery and went to their room together, lay down together, he kissed her on the forehead, and pulled her into his arms. He held her tight as he listened to her synchronized breathing. He spoke. These months were exhausting. And I know it's hard, but you have to know that once this is over, we're going somewhere. Of course. I would really like to rest somewhere. You and me and Bella. Of course, baby. By the way, baby, these months were great for me. I honestly have fun with James. And I cannot wait to go shopping tomorrow. They fell asleep. The next day she woke, washed her teeth, took a shower, and got dressed. She went to the nursery to see her daughter, and then she went downstairs. It was just 10 a.m. She had enough time to do some work. She went to Christian's office, turned on the computer, and searched for news, strategies, competition of her company, and other things. When she was done, it was quarter past 12. She hurried and went to her bedroom. She changed her clothes. Check up Bella, who was with the nanny. Hey, madam, the nanny said. How is she? Did you change her diaper and did she eat? Yes, madam, she ate. She is a feisty little girl. We are having fun. Mia smiled and continued. I will have to go out. If there are any problems, you have my number. Call me any time. Also, you have Christian number. You can call him, too. Of course, madam. Please, do not worry. She is in good hands. I know. See you two later. She kissed Bella and left the room. She went out. James was waiting for her in the department store. Hey, beauty. Hey, handsome. How was your morning? Busy. Anyway, did you choose something? Yes. He showed her the samples, and she liked most of them. I like these three, and those two I do not like. And what about the dressers? Well, we have a few choices. Also, they are made in a few colors, so we have a lot of choices. I was thinking, the rooms with one bed, to be in white tiles, white walls, and maybe black or dark brown furniture. Okay, I can imagine that. What about the rest of them? Well, I want white furniture as well. So I was thinking, dark wood in the suites and white furniture. You know, white king-size bed and white oak dresser. I like your idea, definitely. We can tell Christian. I know he will like it. Yes, I was thinking as well, we can put, for example, small carpets on the floor tiles. Also, we should order the TVs and maybe the air conditioners. I will make a deal with the store manager to deliver everything in three to four months' time. They will have the store in Lisbon, so everything we order can be delivered there and we can buy it from there. I like the way you are thinking. Mia smiled. We just have to pay a certain amount of money, maybe half the amount. Do they accept checks here because I have a certain limit on my credit card? Don't you have a black credit card? Christian does, but I have never needed such a card. Ahem. I believe that they receive checks. At that amount, it would be crazy not to receive them. All right, thank you. Mia spent the day shopping and walking. It was 7 p.m. when she returned. Christian was waiting for her in the living room. Hey, baby. She kissed him on the mouth. Hey, baby. How was your shopping trip with James? It was fun. I had a good time. Where is Bella? She is in the nursery. She is sleeping. The nanny fed her, changed her, and gave her a bath. She is sleeping like an angel. Did you buy anything? Well... We ordered a lot of things, and I paid with a check. Why did you not take my credit card? Well, baby, I forgot, but it is done. We paid for a part of the amount. How much did you pay? I paid $500,000, but I think it will cost a lot more. 
Maybe one or one and a half million dollars? He nodded. Let's have dinner. I am hungry. They ate, talked a little bit more, and went to bed. Chapter 33 She woke up, saw that the weather is sunny, and wanted to go out, take a walk, and enjoy the sun. Christian was still sleeping. She got up, brushed her teeth, and started showering when she heard the bathroom door opening. In a minute's time, she felt his entering the shower and her body was next to her. He started kissing her on her neck. She wanted to turn around, but he did not allow her. Stay like this. I want to feel you like this. He continued kissing her slowly. He put her hands on the shower's tiles and said, Leave your hands like this and don't move. No matter what I do, don't move. She nodded. He smiled. He continued kissing down her spine. She could feel him. He slowly spread her legs and went between her legs. He kissed her gently on her clit, and she felt amazing. He put his hands on her butt cheeks and grabbed her so she could not move no matter what he did. He pressed her. She moaned. The feeling was amazing. He put one of his fingers in her. She moaned louder. He put another one and started to move. She felt excellent. He continued licking her and entering her body. She could feel her orgasm was near. After she squirted, he slowly pulled her down on him. She sat on him. As he entered, she was on top, so she was in the perfect position to drive him crazy and to make him moan. She began to move slowly. His hands grasped her hips, helping her ride his cock with steady strokes. Their mouths are open against each other, kissing and panting. He pulls himself up to sit straighter, knowing the added pressure against her clit will make it better for her. And he is not wrong. She comes down on him harder, faster, his hands digging into her hips. He kissed her neck and bends his head, licking his way to a hardened nipple. He takes it in his mouth, sucking and rolling his tongue around, making her hand fist in his hair as she moans. I'm not going to last. There's no way. I've waited for this too long, wanted it too much. He braces his feet on the floor and starts thrusting up, stabbing into her, pushing her hips down as hard as he can. It's bliss. Hard, deep, wet rapture. And he never wants it to end. She throws her head back and moans louder. Yes. Yes. Chris. He is cursing and calling her name both of them almost mindless, out of control, because it feels that fucking good. She screams his name, and he knows she is coming. God, he loves her voice, and then she's contracting all around him, her pussy around his cock, her legs against his thighs, her hands on his shoulders, all clenching taut and stiff, and he is right there with her. Mia! Mia! Fuck! Mia! He thrusts up again and again. Then he comes, long and hard. White-hot pleasure shoots through her body, unlike anything he has ever felt before. After the spasms die down, his arms come up around Mia, bringing their chests together and her head against his neck. I feel her heartbeat start to return to normal, and then she's laughing, low and satisfied. God, that was so... so... Now, he is smiling too. Christian spoke. I know. After that, they continued showering. They got out of the shower, got dressed, and went to the nursery where little Bella was sleeping peacefully. She looked so peaceful. Yes, my little angel. Mia smiled. Do you have any plans for today? Well, I want to go out for a walk with her. Why don't you take a day off and come with me? We will have a good time. What do you say? I will go in the hall to call my secretary, and I am all yours. She kissed him. He left the room and called his secretary. He took the day off. They got ready and went out. The driver took them to Central Park. They took the buggy, and they went walking around the park. The weather was sunny and amazing. The grass was green and the sky was clear. The greenery of the trees made it look magical. They had a great time and enjoyed spending time together. 
Central Park looks great. I'm very glad we are together. And this is great. Christian spoke. Yes, you are right. I am very glad that he took a day off. I would like to be like this more often. Look at how sweet she is. She enjoys looking around. She must be tired already. Mia smiled and continued. Yes, she will fall asleep a little more. He continued walking, and suddenly they saw Anna, walking with Michael and Scott. They came near them, and Anna spoke. Well, well, what are you doing here? I did not know that you liked to take walks. We can say the same thing about you. How have you been, Anna? She is great, can't you see? She could see the fear in her eyes, the small bruise on her upper arm, which was seen under the T-shirt, but she did not know if she should mention it. I did not ask you, Scott. I am asking her. I am fine, Mia. Thank you. How is Michael? He is such a beautiful baby. Anna smiled, but she did not say anything. You do not have to talk about our son. Anna, where is Victoria? She asked her. Anna had a deep sorrow in her eyes and answered. She left the country a few months back, and she said she is not coming back. She does not want to see her grandchild even. I am sorry. Why did you have to mention her? She has left us. She is having fun in Paris, and we do not need her, Scott said and pulled Anna's hand, so they can continue walking far away from them. When they were at a distance, Mia spoke. Did you see the bruise? Christian nodded and continued. Baby, they are together. They have a son. There is nothing we can do about it if Anna does not ask for help. She has to go to the police or to tell someone. She has to break up with him if he is beating or molesting her. I know, baby, she nodded. I can understand that, but I know in my gut that now is the time that I have to do something about it. I have to help her. Mia, please stay out of it. Or at least if you do something, please be careful. I do not want Scott to find out. We do not know how he is. He was pretending with you, but I guess he is showing his real color with her. I do not want for him to hurt you, because if he is the thing I think he is, he will do anything that is in his power not to allow you to help her. What do you think he is? Baby, I am not sure, but by his look, his calculations, and his attitude, I can say that he is a sociopath, and baby, trust me, when I tell you he is dangerous. Baby, that is even a bigger reason to try to help her. I know what I will do. What? What are you planning? She took out her phone and dialed Victoria. She answered. My, my, what do you want? Hello, Victoria. I wanted to talk to you. We have nothing to talk about. I do not agree with you on that. We have something to talk about. I am listening. Anna, what about my daughter? We just saw her with Scott in Central Park. Of course you saw her. She is with the man she loves. I do not call you about that. There is something else. I saw fear in her eyes, Victoria, and under her blouse. There was a small bruise that I could see. I think that he is beating her. What? That is a lie. Victoria, you do not have to believe me. You can call your daughter and ask her. I talk to her every day. She has never said anything like that. Maybe she thinks she deserves it. I do not know. The thing I do know is that your daughter is not fine, Victoria. And trust me, my recommendation to you is to come home as soon as possible because I do not know what is Scott capable of. Fine. She hung up the phone and continued talking to Christian. What did she say? He asked her. She said that she was talking to Anna every day and that she had not said anything strange. She also said that she will come home. Baby, your job here is done. You did the right thing. You called her mother. She will come back, and she will know what to do. I am sure that no matter what kind of a person Victoria is, she will not allow anyone to molest her daughter. I agree with you, baby. While we were living together, she always was very nice and generous with Anna. She was the light in her eye. She loves her a lot. And her not knowing that something is wrong? It is just strange. No, baby, 
It is not. She may talk to Anna every day, but I can assure you that Anna had not told her that something is wrong. And if they are talking only on the phone, she could not know. Why do you think Anna did not tell her? Mia asked with a surprised look in her eyes, and she continued speaking. They were very close. She is probably ashamed, and she probably does not want anyone to know that her relationship is awful. Plus, she has a baby with him. She probably wants to give her baby a father. Mia nodded. She could only hear that, but she could not understand it. She was sure that if Christian ever hit her, that she would leave him. No matter the love she feels for him, no man is worth that. I am so happy that you are the best husband in the world. I love you. I love you too, she said and they kissed. They continued walking around the park, watching at their daughter who was sleeping peacefully in the buggy. Chapter 34 A few weeks passed. Mia was sitting on the rocking chair in the living room with Bella sleeping in the cradle when Christian came home. He looked at his beautiful daughter, picked her up, and placed a kiss on her cheek. Then he went to his wife. He kissed her gently. He was calm. He looked at her and said, You are the most beautiful thing I have seen in my life. She smiled gently. How was your day, baby? It was exhausting. I had a lot of meetings, and to be honest, I am tired. I just want to relax. She nodded, and he continued speaking. Let's go somewhere. Relax a little bit and enjoy this weather. Excuse me? Where do you want us to go? I don't know, baby. You decide and plan it. We can go wherever you want. Do you want us to go to Lisbon? We can see how is the renovation going? Baby, that is work again. I want a vacation. For us to swim, sunbathe. We can enjoy the weather and have fun. Of course, baby. She was excited and looked happy. She took her phone and searched for a vacation resort online. She had a few in mind. She showed Christian a couple of them when she saw the most amazing resort she could find. I found it. Let me see, Christian said. She turned her phone toward him. Where is it? It is in Malibu, California. You can reserve it. We can go there this weekend if you want. Of course. She was excited. How many days? I do not know, baby. What do you think? Maybe three or four? She asked him. Four. Reserve it for four nights. I want to spend quality time with my wife and daughter. She reserved a room in the resort and could not wait for the weekend to come so they would go somewhere. Baby, what should I tell Maria to cook for dinner? Baby, how about we order in? Maybe Chinese food? I like how you are thinking. We can give the rest of the day off to the staff and we can enjoy the evening. He nodded. The evening came and David came to their home. He rang the bell. Maria opened it and took him to the office. He entered the office. Hello, Mia. Uncle David, what a pleasant surprise. She stood up and kissed him on his cheek. How are you? He asked her. I'm doing great. She was happy, and he could notice the happiness on her face. He spoke. Mia, what are you so happy about? Well, Uncle David, Christian, Bella, and I are finally going on a real vacation. On vacation? Where? When? He asked. In Malibu, California. I reserved a room in a beautiful resort, and we are going there this weekend. Oh, how nice. I am glad. What about you? How are you? I'm doing fine. I had a lot of work on my mind and on my schedule, but now it is finally over so I can rest as well. She smiled. He looked at her, but he had a thought on his mind. He gave her this week's report and left. On his way to his car, he saw Christian. They shook hands. David, how are you? I'm doing better than ever. What about you? He asked him. I am great as well. Yes, I heard the news. You did? Yes. Mia already told me that you were going on a vacation in California. Yes, finally. He smiled. I hope that you three will have a great time. Thank you. 
They shook hands again, and David entered his car, while Christian entered his home. When David saw Christian getting inside his house, he took his mobile phone out of his pocket and called someone. It is me. I have news. They are going on vacation in Malibu this weekend, so everything that we have put on hold, our plans, we can take care of it. The voice asked him something, and he answered. The money is not a problem. I want you to take care of the problem. Goodbye. He hung up his phone, started the car, and left the property. He had an evil smirk on his face, and a lot of plans on his mind. Inside the house, the phone rang. Christian answered it. It was his father. Hello, son. Hello, dad. Is everything okay? Yes, son. Do not worry. I just called to ask you, how are you? I wanted to tell you that I am coming to New York tomorrow, and I would like to see my grandchild. Of course, father. What time are you arriving at the airport? I can come and pick you up. At 1 p.m. But do not come. You can send the driver. Are you sure? Yes. Do not worry. It is not a problem. They hung up. The next day, Christian sent his driver to pick his father up at the airport, and they were waiting for him at the house. He arrived. He entered the house, shook hands and hugged Christian, kissed and hugged Mia, and went right towards the cradle. Wow, she is so beautiful. May I take her? With the tear in his eyes, he asked them. Of course. She fell asleep an hour ago, so we can wake her up and you can play with her. Bella woke up and was studying the unknown face, not the old man, who was holding her. She is beautiful, and she has her mother's eyes. Mia smiled and said, Thank you, father. He looked at her and was glad. He wanted her to feel him as a true father because he saw her as a real daughter. What is new, Mia? What do you mean? Well, I wanted to ask you, what is new with your company? Is everything better? Yes, thank you. Thanks to Christian's investment, we could save it. So now it started making a profit, and I am very satisfied. I am glad. Father, are you tired? Christian asked him. I am, but I do not want to leave this angel. I will rest later. Are you hungry? No, thank you. I ate on the plane. He nodded and continued. Maria made a great lunch, so when you become hungry, I want you to tell her so she can serve it. Please, son, do not worry. We can have lunch later. Or brunch. Now, let me have fun with my granddaughter. She is the reason I came here. Otherwise, I would not even come. I do not have any work in the city. I understand. Father, what would you like to drink? Mia asked. I would like a glass of water. There is a glass of juice if you want. Yes, sure, why not? But what kind of juice? Orange juice. He nodded as a confirmation, and she went to the kitchen. She came back with two glasses of orange juice, and passed one to her husband, and the other glass she left on the table in front of Aaron. Here you go, she said. Thank you, Mia. They continued talking for a few hours, when Maria interrupted them. I am sorry to interrupt you, but the dinner is served. They stood up. Aaron put Bella in the crib, and all of them went to the dining room. Bella was taken to the nursery, by the nanny. Wow, everything looks so delicious, Aaron commented. I agree with you, father, Christian said. Have a bon appetit, Mia said and smiled. They ate. When the dinner was done, Aaron stood up and wanted to say goodbye to them. I have to go, he said. Where are you going? Christian asked. I am going to a hotel, son. Why, that is nonsense. I do not want to bother you. Father, Mia looked at him with a gentle face and continued. Please do not say that ever again. You will never bother us. Please, you have to stay here. We will be honored. Mia, are you sure? He asked her. I will tell Maria to get one of the guest rooms ready. And while I do that, you and Christian can go to the office and discuss business, because I can see in both of your eyes that you cannot wait to talk about business.
so I do not want to stop you. They both smiled and went to the office. They discussed a few hours of business. When they were done, Christian showed his father the guest room and went to the nursery to check on Bella, and after he saw her sleeping so peacefully, he continued toward his bedroom. Mia was already asleep. He did not want to wake her up, so he silently went into the bathroom, put his PJ on, washed her teeth, and when he was done, he came back into the room. He laid next to her, took her in his arms, kissed her on her forehead, and they fell asleep. Chapter 35 They went to California. This was going to be the vacation they took together for the first time as a family, and they wanted to remember it. They reserved a beautifully big-sized room with an ocean view in the Malibu Beach Inn in Malibu, California. They had fun all weekend, but Christian had a feeling that someone was watching them or following them. Someone was following them, but whenever Christian turned around, he could not see or notice anyone. However, the feeling that someone was watching them did not leave him. After arriving in Malibu on Friday, they went to the hotel, accommodated themselves, and rested for a while. When they were rested enough, they went out for a walk along the ocean. The beach was beautiful, and the sand was scratching their feet. They looked around to find an interesting restaurant where they could dine. Christian carried Bella while she slept peacefully in his arms. They were a wonderful little family. After dinner, they went back to the hotel. They put Bella in the stroller so she could continue to sleep peacefully. Mia went to the bathroom, took a shower, brushed her teeth, and picked up the book she had read on the plane and continued reading it while Christian was in the bathroom. There was a knock on the door. She got up and opened the door. It was Jenny, the nanny. Good evening, madam. I came to pick Bella up. She is asleep. I will take her to my room. Thank you, Jenny. If there is any problem, you can come and call us. Of course, madam. Do not worry, please. Take her in the stroller. Yes, madam. Jenny took Bella and left the room. When she closed the door, Christian came out of the bathroom and asked, Who was at the door? It was Jenny. She took Bella to her room. Oh, nice. So now that we are alone, I can do this. He picked her up, bridal style. She laughed. He took her to the bed, put her on it, and started kissing her. He wanted to make love with her. Holding her face in his hands, he continued kissing her with everything in him as she raked her fingers through his hair. He bore down onto her with all my weight, covering her body with his. Through the fabric of his boxers, desperately ground my cock against her clit, over and over as she writhed under him. She was soaking his underwear with her heat, and the need to feel that wet pussy wrapped around his cock was unbearable. They were rubbing against each other like two oversexed teenagers. Her hips bucked. Without using words, she was begging him for more. He broke their kissing and looked into her eyes. I love you so much, he said and continued. I cannot hold it any much longer. If you keep that up, I'm going to come all over you when I'd rather come inside of you. Mia looked up at him and whispered, Come inside of me then. Baby, are you sure? He asked her, and she responded by pulling him harder into her and wrapping her legs around his back, as she worked to pull down his boxer briefs. Sinking into her was Euphoria, her tight pussy stretched for him, with every inch deeper that he moved inside of her. Unable to resist, he fucked her hard at a desperate pace. Open your legs wider, he said and continued. I want you to have the best pleasure here, now. She willingly obliged as she grabbed his ass to help control his movements. They were like two animals in heat, mating in the still of the night. He was overwhelmed. He made love with her all night, and when he was done with her that night, he held her tightly as they slept in a more intimate position than ever before. The four days vacation was done. They were driving back toward the airport when Christian noticed that a black sedan with dark windows was following them. He tried to drive without showing anything in front of his wife. When the car approached, he could not see anyone inside. He started to brake so the car can pass, but the brake did not work. He was surprised. 
Nia looked at him in the rearview mirror and could see the fear in his eyes. She asked, Baby, what is going on? Is everything okay? He looked at her and answered, I do not want you to be afraid, but the brake does not work. Oh my God! She started trembling. Baby, you have to be calm because of Bella. Put the seatbelt nicely on both of you. I will try to brake with the handbrake. Okay. She made sure the seatbelt is well connected. Everything is okay. Hold on. He disconnected on a small road and started braking with his handbrake. The car did not stop. It started to turn and ran off the road in a meadow. The car overturned on the passenger side. Mia, who was sitting on that side, banged her head out of the window and fainted. Christian was not injured, and neither was Bella, who was sitting behind him in the child seat and was the most protected of all. He spoke. Baby, are you both okay? No one responded. He turned around and saw her unconscious. He tried to get out when the car overturned again, but it was standing on the roof this time. He got out of the car, took out his daughter, and looked at her to see if she was okay. He put her on the meadow a few feet away from the car and returned to pull Mia out of the car. She was still unconscious. He took out his cell phone and called an ambulance. Explain to them where they are and hurry because Mia was unconscious. He took Mia out. She was breathing but did not react. He was terrified. He did not know what to do while he was waiting for the ambulance. The ambulance came. They put Mia in the ambulance car and took her to the hospital. She was put on a machine. The doctor said she had brain trauma and that she is out of danger, but he cannot know the consequences of the accident. He will have more details after she woke up. Christian had his daughter with him. The doctor looked at her, and she was fine. Also, Christian was checked, and he was okay. He was afraid of that, but he hoped that everything will be okay. Benjamin came in and took Bella. He took her to a hotel, so he will take care of her while Antonia was left with Christian. He was desperate about Mia and her condition. He waited for her to wake up for hours. When she woke, he was sitting and sleeping next to her. She looked at him and moved her hands. He woke up and was so happy she was awake. He kissed her and she moved. Baby, are you okay? He asked her and continued. Is something wrong? Who are you? I do not know you. Baby, it is me, your husband. I do not know you. Call Scott or my father, Michael Carter, please. He looked at her. Then he pressed the call button and waited for the doctor to come in. While they were waiting, he said, Baby, let's wait for the doctor. He will tell us what to do. I will call whoever you want. Please, do not worry, he smiled gently. The doctor came, looked at her, and she told him the same thing as she told Christian. She had no memory of him or anything in the past three years. The doctor spoke, Sir, your wife has a temporary memory loss. When the brain injury heals, we can start therapy or treatment, and she will probably have her memory back. Doctor, are you sure? Christian asked. Nothing is certain in these cases, sir. She might gain her memory back, but there is a possibility that she never remembers anything. That cannot be possible. I am sorry about it. We just have to wait and see. Thank you. Doctor. They shook hands. The doctor left the room, and Christian sat next to her and was thinking, What will he do now? They have a daughter together, on which his wife does not remember, and the woman he loves does not remember him as well. He was afraid and did not know what to do. But then he decided he will do whatever he can to help his wife, and he will make sure that she will fall in love with him again, no matter what. Chapter 36 A few days passed, but Mia's memory was still lost. She could not remember anyone before the wedding. While Christian was trying to make her remember, she was looking for her father or fiancé Scott. When she was physically well, he decided to tell her the whole story. They were sitting in the hospital room, and he spoke. Mia, I have to tell you something. Is my father coming? 
she asked with a light of hope in her eyes. Baby, that is the thing I want to tell you. Your father had a car accident a few months ago, and he died. She was in a state of shock. She could not say any words out loud. Tears started to fall on her cheeks, and she said, You are lying. Where is Scott? Why isn't he here? Baby, you broke up with Scott more than a year ago, and you married me. You love me as much as I love you. We are in love. I do not love you. I do not know you. Please do not lie to me. Baby, I swear I am telling the truth. We are married. I love you. Why did I break up with Scott? Can you tell me that? He was cheating you with someone. He did not want to give her any more information than necessary. He did not want to worry her. Her mind was still very fragile. With whom? Baby, that is not important. The important thing is that you found out and broke up with him, and later you married me. Where are my stepmother and my stepsister? Victoria is in Paris, and Anna is in New York. She has a son. Really? Who is the father? Is she married? No, just engaged. Please, baby, try to remember. She nodded, and she was trying to remember, but she still could not. I am trying, and I will try harder, but I still do not remember anything. He nodded and continued talking. Baby, in a few days you will be released from the hospital. In a few days. And I want to ask you, do you want us to go home or stay here in California? I do not know, Christian. I do not want to live with you. Please understand me. I do not remember anything, and in my opinion, I still have a fiancé, and I would like to go to him. Please. Please. Mia, Scott is engaged to another woman. Please? How is that possible? Baby, we have been together for three years. It is normal for him to continue with his life. He is a son, and I do not know if he is happy, but I believe he is. What is the name of his wife? Who is she? Mia, please, get well first. Then we can talk. She nodded and continued talking. I do not know why, but I think you are hiding something from me. I think there is something you do not want to tell me. Mia, believe me, there is nothing I do not want to tell you. But I want you to heal so I can tell you. It can be a shock to you, and I do not know how you will react. And I do not want to hurt you. Are you sure it is just that? I swear, he said. I can go to New York, but I want to have a separate room in the house. I do not want to sleep in the same bed as you. Why? Please understand me, she pleaded. He nodded. A few days later, the doctor discharged Mia out of the hospital. Before discharging her, he called Christian in his office. Mr. Christian, good afternoon. Good afternoon, doctor. They shook hands. Please, sit. Thank you. Christian sat on the chair opposite the doctor's. I called you here because I wanted to discuss your wife and her recovery. Of course, doctor. We will let her go to New York, but you must be careful not to say or to do something that might upset her like it did the last time. Everything you do or say, you must say it slowly or show it again slowly. She does not remember you or her life with you, but you must be very attentive and good to her. In a few weeks, the swelling of the brain will go down and there might be hope for her memory to come back. What if it does not? What will happen then? To be honest, I think this is just because of the trauma she suffered and the injury. The memory loss will not be permanent, but you will have to live with it if it happens to be, and you will have to make her fall in love with you once again. But doctor, what about our baby Bella? You can introduce her to Mia but I suggest you for now not to tell her that she is her daughter. Any stress might hurt her. We are not sure. Thank you, doctor. I will go and get my wife, and we will go to New York. I will send Benjamin to pay for everything. The doctor nods. Christian stands up and gets out of the doctor's office. He took Mia to the airport. But before that, he made a phone call to Jenny. Hello, Jenny? Yes, sir. 
You will stay in California with Bella, while we go to New York, and after that, I will send a plane for you too. Please take care of my daughter, and if there are any problems, please call me at any time. Yes, sir, of course, sir. Sir, I am sorry, but I wanted to ask you, how is Madam? She is fine physically, but I am afraid that she still has not regained her memory. I am sorry to hear that, sir. Thank you, Jenny. He hung up and put the phone in his pocket. He went to Mia's room, picked her up, and they went to the airport. Whose is this plane? she asked. It is ours, baby. I know that you do not remember now, but we are very rich, and we have a few companies around the world, and now we have a hotel in Lisbon that we are renovating so we can make it a family hotel. They entered the plane and continued talking. You said that we have a hotel in Lisbon? Do I like it? She asked him. Baby, you love it. You and James were the only ones that actually chose everything for it. It looks amazing so far. What else has changed in my life except marrying you and losing my father? Well, you inherited your father's company. Well, 55% of the company, actually. Really? And the rest of it? Who inherited it? Well, Victoria and Anna got 20% each, and David got 5%, but that is not all. There is more? She asked. Yes, baby. The company was near bankruptcy, but I lent you the money, and you succeeded in saving it. Thank you, she whispered. There is no need to thank me. I love you, and I would do anything in this world for you. She smiled and asked with a worried look on her face. What about the house near Chicago? Your father left it to you. He also left you a few more properties, but I do not want you to be preoccupied with that. She had a relieved look on her face, and she spoke. I really felt relieved. He left it to me. He loved me. Baby, he adored you. Near the end, you two had a good relationship. Really? She asked him. Yes, baby. You were happy. She nodded. Thank you. What about Sarah? How is she? Am I friends with her? Yes, you are. But now she is a big movie star. She is very busy and so are you. So you only speak on the phone. I understand. And what about my stepmother and stepsister? Well, the last thing I know about Victoria is that she is still in Paris. You spoke on the phone with her a few days before the accident, and she told you she will come back to New York, but I do not know if she did that or not. I do not have any information. Thank you. She was sleepy, but she tried to stay awake. Baby, you are tired. Please go to the bedroom. There is a bedroom? She asked. Yes, there is. Please go there and lay on the bed. I will tell the steward that he can start preparing dinner, so when you wake up, dinner will be served. I do not want to sleep a lot. Of course, baby. I'll wake you up in an hour. Is that okay? She nodded. Mia went to the bedroom, laid on the bed, and fell asleep. While she was sleeping, Christian told Patrick to prepare dinner, and then he started reading the reports in the companies that were prepared for him, because he did not have time these past few weeks to do anything than to take care of her. When the dinner was ready, he woke her up as he promised, and they had dinner. After that, he played a movie and they watched it. When she fell asleep again in the armchair, he took her to the bed again, laid next to her, held her in his hands, and they both fell asleep. A few hours later, they landed at John F. Kennedy International Airport. Benjamin was waiting for them on the track. He took them home. They were finally home. He was happy because he knew that for the first time in a few days, he felt relaxed and safe. Chapter 37 Christian sent the plane for Jenny and his daughter, and when they landed at John F. Kennedy International Airport, he decided to take them to an apartment he had bought a few years back. Jenny, you and my daughter will stay in this apartment, because Mia still does not remember our daughter and I do not want to stress her even more. Of course, sir. Anything you need. If there are any problems, you can call me. I will leave Benjamin with you 
so he will protect you and take care of you too. Jenny nodded. He turned around and he left. Benjamin stayed with her, and Jenny asked him, Do you think that everything will be back to normal? I do not know, Jenny, honestly. I hope so. He loves her so much, and you know that she loves him a lot as well. Yes, I know, I remember. I hope that her memory comes back, because I do not want this beautiful angel to suffer. He nodded. Christian came back home, and he saw a car parked in front of his house. David was getting out of the car. Christian honked, and he got out of the car. He shook hands with David. David, how are you? Christian, I am so sorry to hear about Mia. She will remember everything in no time, I hope. And the doctors were positive about that. I'm glad to hear that. What about Bella? What about my daughter? How is she? Does she miss her mother? She does. But I wanted to ask you, please do not tell Mia we have a child together. And why not? Well, I want to tell her. But the doctor said not to tell her any more new information, so we would not upset her. Also, I wanted to ask you not to tell her that Anna is engaged to Scott, and that they have a child together. That would also be a shock for her as well. I understand, so no child, and not to tell her about her ex-fiancé and her stepsister. That is correct. Tell me, Christian. Did you tell her about Michael? He asked him. Yes, I did. That was a great shock for her. She was very upset, and she had a terrible headache, and that is why the doctor recommended not to tell her news that will upset her. He nodded, and then they went inside the house. Maria welcomed them. Good day, sir. Good day, Maria. Christian looked at her and asked, Maria, where is my wife? Your wife, sir, is in her room. Please, tell her to come downstairs and come to the office. Tell her that David is here and that he wants to see her. Of course, sir, right away. Maria went to Mia's room to call her as the two men headed for the office. Maria knocked on the door, and when she heard Mia say as she entered, she opened the door and entered the room. Madam, I am sorry to bother you. No problem, Maria. Tell me, what is it? Mrs. Christian told me to tell you that Mr. David is here, that he wants to see you, and that they are both waiting for you in the study. All right, thank you. Please tell them I will change, and I will come down immediately. All right, ma'am. Maria left the room while Mia changed her clothes, and when she was ready, she went downstairs and went to the office. She knocked on the door and opened it. Come in, baby, Christian said. Uncle David, you are here. She hugged him and kissed him on the cheek. Of course, Mia. How are you? I was better. But how are you? I see you have lost weight. To try. But leave me. Tell me how you feel and how you adapt to the new environment. Well, it is not new. I think Christian said that we are married and that we lived in the same house before. Yes, that is right. He is your husband, as you know. She nodded and looked toward Christian and said, Christian, can you please leave us alone with Uncle David? Of course, baby. He got up and left the office. They stayed alone. Uncle David, I want to ask you something. Of course, my little girl, anything. She smiled gently and continued. Christian said that I love him a lot. He nodded and she continued. I know that now, but I wanted to ask you, what did Scott do and why did I decide to marry him? Mia, it is not my place to say. Please, Uncle David, you are the only person I can trust right now. He nodded and said, Mia, all I know is that he cheated you a few weeks before the wedding and you wanted revenge. That is why you married Christian. And later on, you said you fell in love with him. Before the accident, you two were very happy together. He even gave you a big amount of money for you to save your father's company. 
and we still have not returned the money, but we will. Is the company safe? she asked. Yes, it is, thanks to him. He trusted us, well, he trusted you, and he invested in it. Now the company is making a profit, and we are very satisfied with that. I came here to see you this evening, but I also came to bring you this month's report. Why? Mia, you told me that I can run the company as long as I bring you a financial report every month, and before I make any kind of decision, I have to talk to you. That sounds reasonable. Uncle David, Christian told me Victoria was in Paris, but he also said that I have talked with her a few days before the accident, and she decided to come back to New York. Do you know if she is here? Mia, I know that Anna had some kind of problems with the man she has a son with and she is engaged with, and I know that Victoria is trying to help her, but I do not know anything else. Is Anna okay? I cannot say. Not because I do not want to, but because I do not know. She was molested for a few months, and the guy also beat her, so we do not know what will happen. Who the hell does that guy think he is? She has to report him. Yes, she does. But the thing is that she thinks she loves him, and she does not want to do anything like that. That is the whole problem. What? How can she love a monster like that? Mia, I cannot answer a question to whose answer I do not know. She nodded and said, You should stay for dinner. We are having my favorite. Steak and french fries and Shopska salad. Shopska salad? Yes, it is a Macedonian salad. It is made with tomatoes, peppers, onions, and cucumber. Everything is chopped into very small pieces, and we put it in a big bowl. Then we add a pinch of salt and a little bit of olive oil and mix it all together. It is very delicious. I have never heard of a salad like that. I have not as well, until Maria, our maid, made it for me this morning. She is from Macedonia, which is a small country in Europe, and that was their national cuisine. She was eating it when I saw her, and she decided to prepare a meal for me, too. It sounds tasty. All right. Don't mind if I do. Excellent. They went to the dining room. The food was already served. Christian was sitting and waiting for her. Maria saw David, and she brought another plate with food. After they ate, Christian called Maria and said, Maria, that was very delicious. Thank you, sir. Yes, Maria, it was amazing, David commented. She smiled and said, Thank you, sir. She left the dining rooms and went to the kitchen. Mia got up, and before going to the kitchen, she asked them if they want something to drink. Both men said coffee, so she went to make and bring some. She served the coffee, and after David drank his, he got up and left. They stayed sitting in the living room and continued talking. Christian asked, How was your day? It was okay. And yours? It was okay as well, but I missed you a lot. She smiled. They went to their rooms. Chapter 38 A few days passed. Christian woke up, took a shower, washed his teeth, and got dressed. He could not make peace with sleeping without Mia in his arms and in his bed. He came to her room, knocked on the door, and waited for her to tell him to come in. After she said that, he entered her room, looked at her, and spoke. Good morning, baby. How did you sleep? She looked at him and answered. It was all right. What about you? Baby, I know that you do not remember me, but I cannot stand this anymore. Stand what? Baby, I want you to come to sleep in my room. We are married, and I want to hug you and make love to you. I miss the smell of your body. I miss my wife. Christian, please understand me. I do not remember you, and I cannot be with you. I understand you, and I can say all right. We do not have to make love. But I want to kiss you. Please, Mia, allow me to kiss you. She blushed and nodded. 
At that moment, he rushed toward her and kissed her. The kiss was gentle at the beginning, and after that, she opened her mouth a little bit. She could feel their tongues playing together, and she could sense the butterflies in her stomach, dancing on music that she had never heard before. What was going on with her? What was this man doing to her? How could she feel like this? She closed her eyes and gave in to the kiss, because it was the most beautiful feeling in the whole world, and all she meant was that he was hers. She did not have to share him with anyone else. He loved her sincerely, and they could be very happy together. At that moment, as a small flash turned in her head, she had a little memory of their wedding. She was in a wedding dress. He was in a wheelchair, and they were sitting together. He did not know if that really happened, but when Christian felt something was wrong, he opened his eyes and looked at her. Are you okay? He asked her. Yes, no, I do not know. What do you think you do not know? Christian, on our wedding day, were you in a wheelchair? Yes, Honey remembered. Finally remembered. No, I think so. But that's the only thing I remember. Just that little moment, that little memory. Mia, it is great. It does not matter how big the memory is or how long it is. The most important thing is that your memories start to come back slowly, and that means that I can finally relax. To relax? Why? Because the doctor was right. He said that they should slowly start returning to you. Yes, I remember that. But what do we do if this is the only thing I can remember? Baby, believe me. Now I'm sure your memory will come back to you. She smiled and nodded. A few days passed, but she had nothing new to remember. Yet Christian did not give up. While he was at work, he was sending all kinds of flowers. When he came home, he would bring her favorite chocolates or desserts. He really tried around her, but he could not understand that his work has paid off. With every attention he gave her, he devoted himself to her. She fell more and more in love with him. Slowly but surely, she fell in love with him, and wanted to be able to afford to feel that love with him, to experience that great love that everyone was telling her about. Starting with Christian, then David, the staff, Sarah, everyone. Her love was beginning to blossom, and she wanted to show it to him. She decided to give him a little surprise. She gave the staff a night off and made a wonderful dinner for Christian. She called him and said, Christian? Yes, baby. What are you doing? Nothing, honey. I just finished the meeting, and I plan to come home soon. Okay. Please come home as soon as possible. Why, Mia, you are scaring me. Is everything okay? He asked her. Yes, do not worry. Everything is fine. I just have a little surprise for you, and I would like to give it to you. Okay, baby. See you soon. They hung up the phone. They were both excited. She was anticipating what might happen, and so was he. He went home, entered the house, and said, Mia? I am here, in the dining room. Please, come here. He went to the dining room. She was there with the wonderful dinner served in front of her. But that was not all. She was wearing a nice red dress with a slingshot slit and beautiful black high heels. Her hair was gently made up and tied in a loose bun. Wow! You look great! Thank you. Please do not stand there. Come here. He could hardly move, for he was astonished at his wife's beautiful appearance. I cannot believe my eyes. You are the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. She looked at him and began to blush slowly. Thank you, she said and continued talking. Please sit down. Let's have dinner. He pulled out the chair so she can sit down, and then he sat down. She served him, and they had dinner together. While having dinner, they drank a wonderful red Cabernet wine. 
The wine and the dinner were wonderful. Thank you. This was an amazing surprise. She smiled and nodded. He took her hand and brought it closer to his lip. He kissed her hand gently. Christian, I want to tell you something. Of course, baby. What is it? In fact, it is more like a request than something else. Baby, you know that when it comes to you, my answer is always yes. She smiled and released herself of the feeling she had in her. She kept talking. I wanted to ask you to do this slowly. I want to be with you, but I'm scared and that is why I want to tell you whatever happens tonight between us, I want it to go slowly. He got up, came to her, and gently looked her in the eyes. He helped her up and kissed her. He picked her up in his bridal style and took her to his room. While he was walking, he spoke. Baby, waiting this moment was an eternity for me. I want to thank you that you decided to relax and allow me to love you. I will make love to you all night. I want to be in you, to be one with you, and I want to make you scream my name like the times you did in the past. This is the best present that I can get from you. I love you. She blushed and put her head in his neck. Chapter 39 When they entered his room, he put her down, and at that same moment, his lips were on hers before she could get the words out. Christian's body pressed against hers as he went in search of her tongue. She could feel his massive cock throbbing against her. Oh, God, she whispered. He lowered his mouth to kiss her neck. I'm going to go to hell for this. Why? By the way, I will be right there with you, she said. He moved back, his eyes traveling the length of her body. Take off your clothes, he said and continued. I want to look at you first. Her nipples stiffened as she took off every shred of clothing, paying no attention to where she threw the things on the floor. Nearly losing her balance, she kicked her dress off before slipping her underwear down her legs. Straining her shoulders, she stood before him totally nude, the peach fuzz on her legs stiffening. Christian stared at her for several seconds, his pupils dilated. The look of hunger in his eyes alone made her wet. She had never been stared at while naked before, but there was something so arousing about burying herself and watching someone devour her with their eyes. Her nipples practically turned to steel. They stayed in place for several minutes, facing each other. Her level of arousal was unbearable. Lie on the bed and spread your legs apart, he said. Her knees trembled as she moved to the bed and laid back, moving her knees as far apart as they would go. He tugged on his dick several more times before moving onto the bed to hover over her. How badly do you want me inside of you? he asked her. So badly, she breathed. She pushed his body deeper into her, wanting each and every ounce of his cum inside of her, never wanting to move from this spot. Christian continued to breathe erratically. He wrapped his hands around her face and said, I love you. She could finally be sure of her feeling for him, so she said, I love you too. He was not surprised, because he understood that. The way they made love was amazing. They made love a few more times after that. He held her for several minutes as the morning sun shone through the window. This felt like a dream, a wonderful dream. But he knew it was actually a reality. He loved every second of it. He was afraid of falling asleep because he did not want to stop looking at her. Eventually, they both fell asleep. The next morning, Christian called Jenny and told her to come to the house. He was ready to tell Mia that they have a daughter together, because he was now sure no matter what he tells her, she will love him forever. An hour passed when Jenny entered the house. Mia was coming down when she saw Jenny and the baby. How may I help you? she asked. I am looking for Mr. Christian, she said. At that moment, 
Christian came into the hall. Whose baby is this? She saw the baby and looked at Christian. He looked at her and spoke. This is our baby, mine and yours. You are a mother. The words rang in her ears. She did not know what to say when she suddenly felt like the world was spinning, closed her eyes, and fainted. He fell to the ground and hit his head. Christian ran to her and started waking her up and shouting for Mary. Mary came and immediately called an ambulance. By the time the ambulance arrived, Mia was regaining consciousness. Christian, what is happening? Why do we have paramedics in our house? Baby, he fainted and hit his head. I'm fine, it just hurts a little. Where is White? Is White good? She asked with a worried look. Bella, baby, do you remember everything? Do you remember Bella? Us? Christian, tell me if Bella is okay. Baby, she is fine. You were the one who lost her memory and who did not remember anything. Really? Yes, baby. Please give me Bella. I want to see her. Jenny handed Bella to her. She took her in her arms and hugged her tightly. My dear, Mommy is here and I promise I will never leave you again. You are my little angel. As he held Bella in his arms, she grabbed her hair and laughed. Suddenly, a word was heard, an unknown voice. It was Bella. She said, Mommy. Everyone was too excited. Bella said her first word, and it was Mommy. Mia slowly cried with happiness. Mia, are you okay? Please, we have to go to the hospital. Why do I have to go to the hospital? She asked. I want the doctors to check you. Let's make a CT of your head. Maybe you have a concussion. Christian, I am fine. Please, baby, do this for me. I want to check if everything is okay. She nodded and handed Bella to Jenny. Please pay attention to her, and if there are any problems, call us. She nodded as Christian and Mia went to the hospital. All the examinations were fine. She had nothing. The doctors concluded that her memory had returned due to the excessive emotion and the blow to the head. She was released from the hospital and they returned home. Finally, they were happy and everything was in place. When they got home, they went straight to their nursery to see their daughter Bella. She was sleeping. Jenny was sitting next to her and watching her. Sir, how did it go? Is Madame okay? Yes, she is. Thank God. She fell asleep a few minutes ago. She was very tired and upset. She seemed to feel that something was wrong with her family. It must be so. Did she eat? Yes, if she ate. We were playing and rocking in the swing. She fell asleep on my arms. Okay, Jenny, thank you. You can go to bed. I will stay with her. Mia, baby. Christian spoke. Please, let's go to bed. You have to rest. We have to talk. I want to tell you everything. Everything that happened, and tomorrow you can be with Bella all day. All right. Let's go to our room. Chapter 40 They went to their room. She went to the bathroom, took a shower, washed her teeth, and put her PJ on. He did the same thing. She was waiting for him on the bed, and they laid there. Christian started speaking. Mia, I was so worried about you. You scared me a lot. I am sorry, baby. I did not want that. I know, baby. Nobody wanted or planned that. I just wanted to tell you that. She nodded, and he continued speaking. Do you remember everything that happened? Until the accident, I do. After that, everything is black, I do not remember. What happened? Well, when the accident happened, you were unconscious. Your head hit the car window, and due to the impact, there was swelling of the brain, and you lost your memory. The doctor said that after the swelling subsided, your memory might return but I did not believe it. I was scared. 
I did not know what could happen until he told me that your memory began to return and that you remember our wedding. Really? She asked. Yes, baby, but that is not all. Is there more? Mia did not even remember our daughter, and according to the doctor's instructions, I cannot tell you that she exists. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Christian, look, I know that I was not right in hiding the existence of my daughter from you. Believe me, that was not my intention. I just did not want you to be hurt, and I knew that if you do not remember her, it will hurt you a lot. You are right. She was pensive, but she said, Go on, please. In those days, I did everything in my power to fall in love with me again. I wanted to show you my love, and no matter what, no matter what happens, I love you. You are the love of my life, and never will to leave you. I know, Christian. After we made love, and you told me that you love me, I knew that this was the moment when I could meet you again with our daughter, not thinking that if I had done it earlier than the excitement, maybe your memory would come back. No, Christian, please do not think so. We cannot be sure. Maybe if he had brought our daughter to me earlier, my memory would not have come back. Maybe I would have thought that you were lying to me or that you were deliberately bringing her to her and all this just so that you could manipulate me. Mia, you know he never did that to me. She kisses him gently on the mouth and continues. Baby, of course I know that. But please remember, at that moment, it was not me. I did not know you, and I had no memory of it. Yes, I understand you. Christian, please tell me why the accident happened that day. What was the problem? Mia, when I pressed the brake, it did not work. I was later informed by the police that the cable carrying the glycerin from the engine to the brake had been cut and the brake did not have enough glycerin to stop it. Please, but why? Who would do such a thing? Mia, I do not want to blame anyone, but I have doubts. Who? The police are still looking for the people responsible for that crime, but I think that person is much closer to us than we think. Who? Who would have the most profit if something happened to you? On me? Why me? Because my father is the heir of everything to me and you two. There is no one, and your heirs to the company are David, Victoria, and Anna. Do not you think that they are capable of doing such a thing? Yet we lived together for many years. If Anna and Victoria wanted to hurt me by now, they would have done it. Mia, didn't they harass and insult you while you were living together? Yes, but do you think that those two are able to organize it? I do not know, but they are not the only people who profit from your garbage. No, Christian. I assure you that Uncle David could not hurt me. Mia, you think so. But baby, believe me, people do a lot of abnormal things when it comes to money. Yes, I know. But I grew up with him. He was always on my side. He was my father's best friend. I know, baby. But I wanted to be honest with you. I understand. Mia, if it is true that they are guilty, what will we do? If it is the truth, baby, I have to send them to jail. They try to hurt my daughter and you, and you two are my holiest thing. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you agree with what I did. In which? What did you do? I hired a private detective agency to monitor them, to eavesdrop on their calls, and if there is any evidence, some involvement to catch them. All right. Christian, can we go to bed? I just want to sleep with you. I'm too tired for today. This was a busy and exciting day. Yes, honey, I know that you must be tired. He hugged her, kissed her on the forehead, and so they slowly fell asleep together, finally together and finally calm to each other. The next day came. Mia woke up and saw Christian still sleeping relaxed in their bed. 
She got up, went to the shower, washed her teeth, took a shower, and came out. Christian was still sleeping. She got dressed and went next to him. She kissed him, and he slowly started to wake up. Good morning, sleepyhead, she said. He smiled gently and said, Good morning to you too, my love. How are you feeling? he asked her. I am great. It is a new day, and I want to spend it with you and Bella. So please, get up, take a shower and get dressed. I will wait for you downstairs, and we can have a small picnic in the back garden. All right. Come on, hurry up. I will go now to prepare the food. She went to the nursery, woke up, and took Bella in her arms. And then she went downstairs to the kitchen. Maria was there. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, madam. How are you? I am doing great, Maria. Thank you for asking. How are you? I am good, madam. I am glad, Maria. I wanted to ask you if you could help me prepare some food and take it out to the backyard. Christian and I would like to have a picnic. Yes, madam. I will prepare everything right away. It is a beautiful day for a picnic. Yes, I agree with you. The sun is shining, and it will be great. Can you tell Christian when he comes downstairs that we are waiting for him in the garden? Yes, madam, of course. Thank you. She took her daughter, and they went outside. Bella was clapping with her hands and was excited. Mia put her down and was holding her hands to try or to let Bella, maybe to try walking. Bella did not know what to do at first. But in a few seconds, she started moving slowly. She wanted to go everywhere and to touch everything. Mia was smiling and was happy. At that moment, Christian appeared at the door, and he saw the most beautiful sight, the love of his life and the most precious thing he has in his life, were there together with him. At that moment, he was sure that he will do whatever is in his power to try and protect them. His phone rang. He took an hour of the back pocket, saw the unfamiliar number, and answered. Hello? Mr. Christian? That is me. Who am I speaking to? This is Detective Rhodes, sir. From the investigation agency you hired, sir. Oh, Rhodes. How may I help you? Is there any news? Yes, sir, there are. We were following the people you said and tapped their phones. We could hear a few conversations between Mr. David and a person in which Mr. David accused him that he did not do his job. His job? Well, they were talking about the accident, sir. I think that Mr. David was the one that hired someone to cause the accident. Do you have the proof? He asked. Yes, sir. We have the tapes in our office. You can come to take them whenever you want. Thank you. I will be there in an hour. All right. Bye. Goodbye. He hung up his phone, and Mia could see that his happy expression changed. He came near her, and she asked, What is wrong? Who was on the phone? It was the investigation agency. They have some proof that I have to listen to. I have to go there. I will come with you. No, baby. I will bring the proof home. Please, stay here with Bella. And no matter what you do, do not go anywhere alone. Why? What is going on? They have proof that David was trying to kill us. So, Mia, this is an order from your husband. Stay home and protect our daughter, and I will come back soon, and we can go to the police then. She nodded. She knew that he was right. She had to do anything that is in her power to protect their child. So she went upstairs and stayed there, waiting for him. Chapter 41 Christian went to the detective agency, and as the driver drove him on, he thought about the current situation, which was happening in his and his wife's life. He could not understand why the man who raised his wife, who attended her education, who was present at her wedding, who was her father's best friend, and whom she loved as her own uncle, had a need or desire to kill her. Why are people so eager for money? 
Why is it more important for them to be able to run large companies than to have a family and be happy? He recalled a time in his life when he did not trust anyone around him except his family. But that did not stop him or make him give up the search for someone special to him. For a person he would love with all his life, for whom he would give everything, and he knew that Mia was his life, she and their daughter, Bella. Arriving in front of the detective agency, he opened the door of the car and went inside the big glass building. The lobby was enormous, and he wondered how many clients and employees does this agency have. Why is it so big? A beautiful young girl was standing at the reception. Good day, sir. How can I help you? Good day. I am here because Mr. Rhodes called me, and we made an appointment. He told me to come to his office. All right, just a moment. Who is looking for it, please? Tell him that Christian King is here to see him. She picked up the phone and rang the secretary of Mr. Rhodes. Madam, there is a gentleman who said he had a meeting with Mr. Rhodes. What is his name? the secretary asked. His name is Mr. Christian King. Yes, they do. Let him go upstairs, she said. Okay, madam. She hung up the phone and said, Get in the elevator, sir, and go to the twelfth floor. All right, thank you. He entered the elevator and in a few seconds was already up. The elevator door opened, and he came out in the front lobby of Mr. Rhodes' office. There was a huge sign saying Rhodes, Jameson, and co-workers. He opened the door and went inside. The secretary looked at him and said, Good afternoon, Mr. King. Good afternoon. I am here to see Mr. Rhodes. Go right in, sir. Thank you. After greeting him and directing him to Mr. Rhodes' office, he knocked on the door and went inside. When he entered in, he saw an older man, probably in his fifties, with gray hair and a tailored and expensive suit sitting behind a big glass desk. The man got up and headed for Christian. They shook hands. Mr. King, please sit down. He pointed to the chair opposite of his. He nodded and sat down. How are you? asked Rhodes. All right, but to leave the formalities aside, please. I am here because you contacted me with information related to the accident and with evidence that a person close to my family organized the accident. Exactly, sir, he agreed. He handed him a USB and continued talking. You have all the evidence and information on this USB, sir. All right, thank you. He took the USB and put it in his pocket, then continued. Tell me if this is strong enough evidence for me to file a complaint. Yes, sir. You could file a complaint to clear up the case, and this is the evidence you need, but I would still like to tell you, wait. Why would you wait? Because, sir, according to the way they conducted the conversation, I think this was not the first time he tried to hurt you or any of your family. Why do you say that? asked Christian. Because there was a part that is still unknown to us, but David told the stranger that this time it failed, and that you will have to do your best. This time? That's right, sir. That made me think. If they failed this time, it means they succeeded the previous time. Millions of thoughts began to spin in Christian's head. Thinking of Michael's misfortune, of how he so tragically lost his life, how easily he disappeared at one point, when at one point a voice brought him back to reality. Mr. King, are you okay? Yes, I'm sorry. I was just thinking. My wife's father died a year and a few months ago, and I was wondering if that was possible. It is possible, sir. Everything is possible. But until we find the person who caused the accident, we will not know for sure. He nodded. All right. Thank you very much, he said. Then they shook hands and left. He had his mouth in his pocket, but it felt like fire was burning in him. He was too nervous and too angry. He wanted to go to the company, 
enter David's office and kill him. He did not know how to control himself. But at that moment, fortunately, his phone rang. It was Mia. When she saw her name on the screen, she called immediately. Hello, baby. Baby, where are you? Were you at the detective agency? Yes, baby. I just got out of there. All right. Will you come home? Is everything okay? Christian? He was pensive and did not know how to tell her the information he had. He did not know how she would handle it all, but he knew she must know the truth. I will come home shortly, Mia, and we will talk. Please do not worry. Baby, I will wait for you. Please come soon, she pleaded him. All right, he agreed. They hung up the phone and he got into the car right away. He told the driver to drive home. He did not know how to tell the news. He thought and devised a way to do it. When he came home, he entered the house and went to look for Mia. She was waiting for him in the living room. He entered and saw her, cuddling with their daughter and singing a lullaby. She looked at him and said, She is almost asleep. We can take her to the nursery, and you can call Jenny while I am doing that. Then we can go to our room, and we can talk. He nodded. He called Jenny, they took Bella to the nursery, and they continued walking toward their room. Before they entered there, he remembered that he did not tell Benjamin anything about the new information, and that he will need to hire more security, because they are not safe. He looked at her eyes and spoke. Baby, please go ahead. I will come in two minutes, he said. Why? What did you forget to do? She asked him. Nothing. Please, wait for me there. He went downstairs and looked for Benjamin. When he found him, he spoke. Benjamin, please come to the office. I have something to talk with you. Of course, sir. Are there any problems? We have to discuss something. Yes, sir. They entered the office. Christian closed the door, showed Benjamin to sit on the chair opposite his, and spoke. I forgot to tell you before, but I want you to hire a few more people. May I ask you why, sir? Benjamin asked. I have new information that says David is trying to hurt me and my wife because he wants the company, so I have to protect them. Also, I do not know how many people he has, but probably a lot, and he can pay for a lot more, so I want to be sure about the security and the protection of my house. Money is not a problem. You know that. Benjamin understood the situation and only nodded. After they were done talking, Christian went to their bedroom to tell the news to Mia. He entered the room and saw her sitting on the sofa and thinking, Hey, baby, what happened? She asked him and continued, What did they say? Mia, I am afraid I have bad news. What? She asked. Well, baby, David is the one responsible for our accident, but I am afraid, baby. That is not the only thing. Wait, what? Are they 100% sure? Yes, they are. But Mia, baby, as I said, there is something else I have to tell you. More? Baby, in one of the conversations they had, they talked about another car accident. And David told that person that the accident we had was not as successful as the previous one. No. No, please. Tell me that is not what I am thinking. Baby, I want to say it is not, but I cannot be sure. Your father's accident was strange as well. But because they thought it was an accident and there were no survivors, they declared it as an accident. But maybe it was not. We cannot be sure. I know. She started crying. She could not believe that her uncle David was capable of doing something so horrible like killing his best friend. She looked at Christian and spoke. Why do you think he did something like that? What are the reasons for him to do so? Why? Baby, money or maybe some kind of personal revenge. We cannot be sure. But the detective told me that the USB drive I have is a piece of sufficient evidence to give to the police so they can start an investigation. 
We have to give it to the police. He has to be arrested, she said. I agree, baby, but the detective said he thinks we should wait. Why? Why would he ask such a thing? Baby, he is thinking with a straight head, and I am starting to think that he might be right. Really, you do? Why? Well, if we wait, he will find more evidence and then we can go to the police and put him in jail. Also, we can find out the truth about your father's accident. We can find out who else knows about it, and maybe who was his accomplice. I understand all that, baby, but at this moment, I feel like going there and strangling him. He betrayed his best friend by trying to hurt his daughter. I cannot understand how he could do that. I know we have to wait. But please, let me know that it hurts me. I know, baby. I know it's hard. But please, we have to be patient. Especially you. You have to have patience. You know that he will continue to come here, bring you reports, and make you a friend and a close person. No, no, I cannot stand it. He will realize that I do not want to see him again, that I know the truth about him and the way he treated my father. No, baby, if you want him to rot in prison, you will have to pretend you know nothing. She nodded and continued talking. Is money the only thing in life that someone would be completely happy with? I think I know people do illogical things for money, but I cannot understand why you would hurt someone for money, let alone murder. There are all kinds of people, baby, he said. Yes, that is true, baby. He betrayed the trust that my father had in him. He betrayed my father. I just do not know if Victoria and Anna knew about that. What do you think? I do not know, baby. I cannot say that. Maybe they didn't know anything. I told you before. Your father was still a good husband and father. I do not believe that Victoria or Anna hated him to such an extent that they pretended to love him in order to kill him and take his money. I do not know. They are capable of many things, but I hope not of committing a murder. However, they were sure that my father had left them everything. The company, the houses, the apartments, the cars, everything. They are greedy, Christian, and as much as I want to believe that they had nothing to do with my father's death, I cannot be sure. I know, baby, and I completely understand you. However, to distract you from this, I would like to take you down to the kitchen. I would like to open the champagne and strawberries we have in the fridge. Maybe the whipped cream. And winked. And do some naughty things. She blushed at the very thought and spoke with a smirk. What things are we talking about? Well, I could tell you. He approached her and kissed her on the neck, and they continued. Or I could show you. He kissed her on her mouth. She smiled and hugged him. He picked her up bridal style and took her to the kitchen. He put her on the island in the kitchen and commanded her, Sit here and do not dare to move. He commanded her, Or what? She smiled with a naughty look in her eyes. Or you will be sorry. He winked and opened the fridge. He took out the whipped cream the strawberries in one hand, and took the champagne and two glasses, and passed them to Mia. Then he picked her up again. She was laughing and asked, What are you doing? Where are you taking me? She asked him, with an intriguing look on her face. You will see, he told her. He took her to the home office, opened the door, and took her in. He put her on the ground and locked the door after them. She put all of the things on the desk. I want to make love with you, right here on my desk. I want to make love to you, in every room in this house. I want to make you mine, everywhere. So when I would go in any room, I would have the memories of us making love. Making love with you is one of the most amazing things. She smiled. He continued kissing her and hugging her. He went near his desk and tossed all the paperwork off the desk, transferring the strawberries, champagne, glasses, and cream to the small table in front of the sofa, 
What are you doing? she asked. What I told you, he said with an evident smirk on his face and an interesting glow in his eyes. She smiled gently as he started kissing her, slowly placed her on the desk, and made love to her. He wanted to make her his own in every way possible. He wanted to remove all doubts and worries. He wanted to be happy and satisfied with life, and he promised himself that he would do everything in his power to punish David for all the crimes he had committed. Chapter 42 A few days passed after Christian and Mia found out about David. She still could not believe the information, but she wanted to know the truth whether Victoria or Anna had anything to do with her father's accident. Did they want to hurt her father too? She knew that the only way she could find out was to invite everyone to dinner and ask the question in a room in the form of a statement. That way, he could find out from their character if they both had anything to do with it. She picked up her phone and called Victoria. Hello? Victoria answered her phone. Hello, Victoria. It is Mia. I know Mia. Tell me, how can I help you? Well, Victoria, David told me you were back in New York. Is that so? Yes, I'm here. But I do not know what my arrival in New York has to do with you. Of course, it has nothing to do with it. But I would like to invite you and Anna to dinner. I would like to discuss the company and some other things. For what other things? she asked. When you come, I will tell you. Please, also tell Anna to bring Michael. I would like our children to play together. Mia, you know that you and Anna are not sisters, and you will never be close, right? Mia felt a sharp pain caused by Victoria's statement. A tear fell on her cheek. She took a deep breath and spoke. Let Victoria know that what you are saying is true, but that does not mean that our children cannot play together tonight. All right, when is dinner? Tonight at 8 p.m. Does it suit you? All right, see you at 8. They hung up their phones, and Mia went to the kitchen to tell Maria that she planned to have dinner tonight and prepare some more food. Madam, how can I help you? Maria. I came to tell you that I am planning dinner tonight for a few more people, so I would like to ask you to make more food. Of course, ma'am. Did you see my husband? Yes, ma'am. The gentleman went with Benjamin and Antonio to the company. He told me to tell you that they are there, and if you have any need for him, to call him. Thank you. She left the kitchen and went to the living room. She rang Christian. Hello. Hey, baby, how are you? What are you doing? She asked. Nothing, baby. I'm talking to Benjamin and the new candidates for our security. What candidates? Baby, I told Benjamin a few days ago that I would like to strengthen and increase our security, and because of that, I asked him to find me a few more well-trained people like him. Okay, baby. Enough for work. Tell me why he called me. Did something happen? He asked her. No, baby, nothing bad is happening. I just wanted to tell you that I want you to come early today, because we have guests for dinner. Guests? What kind of guests? Well, baby, I called Victoria and invited Anna and Victoria to dinner. Mia, are you sure this is a good idea? Christian, you know I have a million doubts. And I want to find out the truth. I want to know if they have anything to do with it. Do you think they will tell you if they have? No, baby, I do not think so. But at least I know that the way their faces will look will give me their answer. If they do not know, they will be amazed and astonished. But if they know, we will notice. All right, baby. What time should I get home? Dinner is scheduled for 8 p.m. See you in order. Do not worry. I will come home by 6 p.m. Thank you, baby. I love you. I love you, too. She hung up her phone and went to their room.
She bathed, dried, and straightened her hair, then dressed casually and went downstairs to the office. She wanted to check some reports and consider some future projects and claims. She turned on the computer and started working on it. She did not even think about anything else. She worked automatically while her mind was focused only on dinner and the way she would tell them that the police had called her and told her that there was new evidence to suggest that her father's accident did not it was an accident, but it was a murder, and that they also think that a person close to him is responsible for that. She wanted to know if that information would encourage any behavior in them, how they would react. Knock on the door interrupted her thoughts. Come in. Christian opened the door and entered. Mia, baby. Baby, what are you doing here? It is still early, looked at the clock. It was already six and fifteen. It is not early, baby. You have only two hours left to get ready. Yes, I have to put on makeup and change, and you also need to take a shower. She kissed him, and they went to their room. While he was taking a shower, she put on makeup and got dressed. He came out of the bathroom and looked at her. She was dressed casually, but looked gorgeous. Are you ready? He asked her. Yes, she nodded. He kissed her, and he said, Do not worry. Everything will be fine. Let's hope, baby. And because, if I notice that they know or had something to do with the accident, or any way they are related to David, I do not know if I can control myself. I think I might show them everything. Baby, let's agree like this. If we notice that they already know something related to that, we will take all the evidence to the police and further let them find out. We will point out the main culprits. Yes, I think that will be the best thing. All I want, baby, is for you not to worry, and not to worry about anything. Tell me, is Bella ready, and where is she? Bella is in the room with Jenny. She is ready. I hope Anna will bring Michael so they can meet and play. Yes, maybe that's a good idea. I agree with you. But what if they are to blame for everything? I do not know. We will think about it later. But of course, we will go to the police tomorrow. I cannot wait any longer. I do not want to wait any longer. Okay, baby. We will fix everything tomorrow, I promise. We will go to the police and everything will be all over. Thank you, baby. I know I said it today and I know I do not say this very often, but... I wanted to tell you I love you very much. How big is that much? He smiled with a smirk. She smiled as well and continued talking. To the moon and back. You are my life and the air that I breathe. I cannot imagine my love without you. He kissed and grabbed her and lifted her into the air. He turned her around and said, And I love you the most in the world. You are my soulmate and I do not know what I would do without you. Chapter 43 There was a knock on the door. Maria opened the door and saw the five of them. Please enter, she said. They entered the lobby, and Maria spoke again. Please wait for them here. I will go and tell them that you came. All right. Maria went upstairs and knocked on the door. Enter, Maria, she said. She opened the door and said, Your guests are here, madam. Thank you. Christian, let's go. The three of them went downstairs, but they were surprised. Victoria, Anna, Michael, Scott, and David were there. Mia was surprised and she spoke. Good evening. I did not recall inviting you all, but please do come in. You are most welcomed. Mia. My mom told us that you have invited us for dinner, so I asked my fiancé to come with us. And I came to bring you the report, so I will be on my way out. No, Uncle David, please stay. We have enough dinner for all. Let's enter the dining room, Christian spoke. He took her hand in his, as support, and all of them entered the dining room. Please, sit, 
he said. The Sat and Maria served the dinner. They started eating and talking as well. Mia, what is the reason for this lovely dinner? Victoria asked. Well, Victoria, I invited you here because I have some new information about my father's accident. News? David asked. Yes, the police called us yesterday and said that there is new evidence that our father's accident was not really an accident, but it was a murder. A murder? Anna asked with a surprised look in her eyes, and she continued. Who would like to kill Daddy? Who would do such a thing? We do not know. Mia said and continued talking. But the police said that the brakes were cut, and it is because of that the accident happened. That is nonsense. Who would have done that? Your father did not have any enemies, David said. Well, I guess we did not know him. Apparently, he had some enemies, Scott said. Maybe it was an enemy disguised in a friend, Christian said. I am sure that is not true. I will go to the police station tomorrow and I will find out what is going on. Please, Mia, do not worry, David said. I do not, uncle. I know that no matter what, you are here to protect us. Mia, if there is evidence, why did the police not call me? I am his wife. I do not know, Victoria. Maybe because I am his daughter. Mom, please, it does not matter who they called. The important thing is that if it was not an accident, there is someone who killed Dad, and we have to do anything that is in our power to catch the criminals who have caused the accident. Oh, Anna, please do not worry. I intend to catch them and make them pay for everything. They continued eating, but looking around for some indications or evidence on their faces. They could see the difference between all of them. Mia was surprised that only Anna showed surprise and she was the one who actually said the right words. The rest of them looked as they already knew everything, and that they had something to do with it. She was the most surprised about Scott. He was here even though he hit her. She thought that Victoria came back from Paris to try and stop that, and now that he was here was even worse, because she was actually allowing him to hit her daughter. But maybe he changed. Maybe he was okay now. Maybe Victoria made him change his mind. Maybe now he is better. She decided then that she wants to tell Anna the truth, or at least a part of it. The dinner was over. They sent the guests off and went to their room. Mia took a shower, took her makeup off, and laid on the bed. Christian was waiting for her on the bed. They started talking. What do you think? she asked. I do not know. The only one who was actually surprised was Anna, and I think the three of them are in it together. I was also surprised by Scott's reaction, or better yet, of his coming to our house. He was not invited. I do not know why he came. Maybe Victoria told him about this dinner, so maybe they wanted to see you, or maybe they wanted to know if we knew about our accident. I really do not know. By her facial reaction, I think your stepmother was involved in your father's accident. I agree with you. So now we have to give all the evidence to the police, because if David goes tomorrow to the police, he will know that we lied and that we know everything. I know, baby, but I am planning to talk to the police commissioner first thing tomorrow morning and to tell him everything so he can cover for our story. Thank you. She kissed him, and he hugged her. They fell asleep. The next morning, when Christian woke up, he took his phone and dialed the police commissioner. They were friends since university and had a good relationship. Hello, Patrick, he said. Hello, Christian. How are you? I'm doing okay. What about you? I'm okay as well. Patrick, I called because I have a favor to ask. And here I thought you called because you wanted to drink coffee or buy me dinner. We can do that later. But for now, I have a favor that I really need from you. Of course. Tell me what I can do for you. You sound very serious. Look, bro. I have evidence that my father-in-law's accident was not really an accident, but it was murder. 
Murder? Yes. Where did you get this evidence? Brother, I hired a private detective agency to follow my wife's partner in the company, and the detective called me a few days ago and told me that he has the necessary evidence that our accident in California and my father in law's accident were not accidents actually. The brakes of both cars were cut, and it was made to look like an accident. I have a USB drive that actually has recordings of David talking to a man responsible for the accidents. He told them that this one was not as successful as the previous one, and that he will not pay him any more money until the job was completed. Christian, you will have to bring me those recordings. Also, I will assign a few police officers to your house so you can have the protection you need. I do not need any police officers to protect me. I hired enough security, but thank you. Please do not mention it. But when can you come to my office? I can come in half an hour, but that is not all. There is more? Well, you might receive a call from David asking about the accident and the evidence, because last night we had dinner with him and my wife's stepmother and stepsister, and we told them that the police called and told us about the evidence. Christian, you cannot say that. I know, but you are the only one that knows this. We wanted to be sure, and to be honest, we are sure now that he and Victoria were involved. Brother, I am waiting for you in my office, and we can talk here. See you later. Chapter 44 He went to the police station, and he brought the USB with him. The guy sitting at the front desk looked at him and asked him, Sir, how may we help you? Well, I have to see Patrick Henderson. Does he know that you are coming? Yes, he does. All right, go right ahead. He went to Patrick's office, knocked on the door, and opened it. Patrick was sitting on his desk and was looking at some files. Hey, brother, Christian said. Hey, Patrick replied and stood up. They hooked hands and hugged at the same time. Please, sit down. Patrick showed toward the chair, and he went to sit on his chair. He continued talking. Did you bring me the USB? Yes, here it is. He took the USB out of his pocket and gave it to Patrick. Wait, before reporting this, I have to see what is on it. Of course. He put the USB in his computer, and in a few seconds, he had David's voice and the voice of an unknown person echoing in the office. Wow, Christian, the detective agency did a good job. It is very clear that David wanted to kill you and Mia, and that he might be responsible for your father-in-law's accident. I told you on the phone, but now I want to ask you, what do you think we should do? First. I want to ask you, do you have any other evidence, and did you make a copy of these files? No other evidence, and yes, I did. All right, now I will submit this with a report made by you, in which you report that David is responsible for the attempted murder, and then with the help of this evidence, we will be able to request a search warrant signed by a judge, and also for tapping his phone. Once the search warrant is approved, we will go to his home and his office at the same time, so that he is not warned and cannot destroy evidence. Okay, but tell me, what are we going to do with Victoria? We have no evidence for her that she knew or that she was involved in the crime. But Patrick, you should have seen her face when we told her that the police had found evidence that Michael's accident was not actually an accident. Her face was full of fear. I understand you, but you do not have incriminating evidence about her. She can say that she was actually scared, but not because of that, but because maybe the same person could do the same to her. Can we somehow find her? If David reports it or points it out, we can. All right, let's file the report. Patrick got out of the office, and in a minute or two, he came back with a few papers. He passed the papers to Christian and said, State your name, surname, date of birth, address, 
and nationality on the report. Then you have to write what exactly happened to describe the event. I know there is a report in California, but we will do it by saying that there is additional information about the case, which has come to light now. Christian began to fill in the required information as he wrote it, looked at Patrick, and said, I did it right. Now what next? Now we will describe the events, and as a conclusion, we will add that we have evidence of someone involved in the accident. Then you will list the name of the suspect and his connection to you and your wife. Then I will take him to verify the report and make an appointment with the Attorney General. While you provide the information, I will call Brandon. All right. Christian filled in the rest of the data while Patrick talked to Brandon. Brandon, how are you? Okay, thank you. Patrick, how can I help you? Brandon, in my office is Christian King. He is filing charges against a person close to him, and there is evidence that the same person wants to harm him and his family. Who is that person? I am afraid that this cannot be done by phone. But believe me, the evidence is solid, and we can submit a search warrant. All right, Shatri. I'll be in my office in half an hour. I'm waiting for you there. See you later. He hung up the phone and said the words to the Attorney General. While Christian wrote everything, he ordered coffee to drink until it was time to go up to the Attorney General's office. While all this was going on, on the other side of town, Mia went to Anna because she wanted to talk to her and tell her the truth about Michael. When she got out of the car, accompanied by three bodyguards, the sun was burning on her face, and she felt like she was burning. She did not know what was happening to her. The heat caused her some courage, but also some fear. She did not know how she would react to the news of Victoria's involvement in her father's death. Mia entered the tall building, which looked beautiful. The lobby was huge, and the doorman greeted her. Good day, ma'am. Good day. How can I help you? he asked her. I am here to see my sister Anna. She lives on the 18th floor. Has she been informed that you are coming? Because we have no confirmation from her that you are coming. No, she does not know. I will ask you to inform her that I am here. All right. The doorbell rang, and after a short conversation, in which Anna approved Mia's entrance, he hung up the phone and continued to talk. You can enter. Thank you. Mia shook her head, and her bodyguards followed her. She did not know if Scott was there, and if they were in any danger. They went up to the 18th floor, and she knocked on the door. Anna opened the door, but something that stopped Mia from breathing was not Scott's presence, but the black bruise on her left eye. What happened? How did this happen? Are you okay? Please, let me in. Anna reopened the door and let her in. Mia looked at her and asked, Is Scott home? She shook her head in denial. Mia turned to Antonio and the other two bodyguards and said, Stay here. Only the two of us and the baby are inside. If Scott comes, don't let him in. All right, ma'am. She went inside and slowly closed the door. He continued to move towards the living room, saw Michael, and approached Anne. She could see the glass of wine and a few bottles on the table. She did not like the thought that Anna was drinking while she was alone with the baby. Anna, please tell me what's wrong. Everything is fine. You must be happy. You were saved from Scott. But here I am. Anna, please do not talk nonsense. I have never wished you such a thing. Even after everything you and Victoria did to me. Why are you here, Mia? She looked at her sadly and could see the hatred and anger in Anna's eyes. He knew he might not believe her when he told her the truth, but she had to know her, and hoped that after hearing her, he might even agree to help her. Anna, I came here because I want to tell you something. I know you may not believe me, but I have to tell you this, and I hope that after listening to me, you will understand everything and help me deal with the situation. What is? asked Anna. 
Last night, I told you that we have information from the police that her father's accident was not an accident, but a murder caused by someone. Yes, and? Anna, we know who ordered the murder. Who? Mia, if you know that, you have to tell the police. I want the person responsible for that to suffer. That's David. Please? No, that's not true. I cannot believe it. Please believe David is responsible for that. That's not all, is it? No, no. I'm 100% sure that Victoria is involved in everything. Is that possible? She loved your father. You may not have shown it often, but in some way, I believe she loved him. I do not know, Anna. So I called you last night to see if you know and if you are responsible for it. The only person who reacted properly was you. The others seemed to know everything about it. That's why Scott was nervous last night. He hit you, right? Yes, but that was not all. My mother was here and did nothing to protect me. She just watched him hit me and was silent. I'm sorry, Anna. You know, a few weeks ago when my mother came back from Paris, she was sure she would do everything in her power to free me from Scott's grip. But after talking about him and coming back to me, her hope was shattered. She was gone that combativeness and determination in her eyes. To this day, I do not know why she suddenly changed, why she allowed Scott to harass me like this. But now I know. Now everything is clear to me. Anna, please, you must not say a word to her. Why? We have to face her. She has to tell us the truth. Yes, I know. But Christian said he would take care of it. His friend is the police commissioner, and he said that will help him. Mia, what will happen to us if she is guilty? How will I live without Scott, alone with Michael? Anna, if they are guilty, I promise I will help you. Even if they are not guilty, I will help you. Just decide that you want to leave Scott, and that you want to get rid of him. You must not allow Michael to live in such an environment, to be beaten and abused. I do not want to think what would happen if he hurt Michael. Mia, I'm afraid. I'm afraid for our lives. Anna, do you want to leave Scott? I do not know. Please decide. If you want, I will help you. How? Pack the most necessary things. I will take care of Michael and we will go to our house. Do not worry. There, we will think and sort everything out. Mia, I have nothing of my own. Scott made me transfer the shares of the company to him, because he said that he would take care of my interest, and the apartment in Paris was put up for sale. Even if it was sold, I signed a power of attorney which says that Scott can invest the money from the sale in some stock. All right, please do not worry. I have money, and I will do everything for you, and Michael does not miss anything. I just want you to be safe and happy. Thank you, Mia. I did not know that you were such a good person and that you will forgive me for everything and you will want to help me despite the fact that I was like that to you all these years. Anna, does not worry about the past. That is exactly the past. You have forgiven me everything. Let's pack up and get out of here until Scott comes back to make trouble. All right. She nodded and went to the bedroom to pack quickly. While Mia waited for her, she gathered Michael's toys and some of his belongings and the bag on the bed. She knew there was no need to pack anything else because they would buy everything they needed. Anna came out of the bedroom with a small suitcase and her bag. I have everything I need, she spoke. All right. Mia took Michael in her arms and they headed toward the door. They opened the door, and the bodyguards took everything they had, and all of them continued toward the car and toward Mia and Christian's home. While they were driving in the car, they spoke. Mia, do you think this will be over soon? I do not know. I am not sure. Why do you think David did that? Money, I guess. I know that my mom would have done that for money, but I do not see David betraying his best friend for money. 
I know that they were very close, and I also know that they knew each other since they were teenagers. Yes, David was friends with my father, even from the time he was dating my mother. They even joked around that the night my father and my mother met, she was on a date with David, and he interrupted them. And when my mother saw my father, she fell in love with him right away. He was my father's best man at his wedding with my mother. I never knew that. I also know that your father was introduced by David to my mother. Really? I never knew that as well. There are so many things that we do not know. We have to find everything out. I agree with you. They continued driving in silence. They arrived at the mansion and entered inside. On the other side of town, Christian and Patrick went to the district attorney's office. He was waiting for them there. Good afternoon. He spoke and shook hands with Christian. Good afternoon. Please take a seat, Mr. King. Patrick told me you have some evidence, and also you filed for a report that someone is trying to hurt you and your wife, and has also caused the accident of your father-in-law. Yes, sir, that is true. I gave the USB evidence to Patrick, and he brought it with him. Patrick passed the USB drive, and they played it again. They could hear the whole conversation, and the prosecutor was sure that with this evidence, they have the right to ask for a search warrant, and that the judge would approve it. I will contact a judge for two different search warrants, one for David's house, and one for his office. Thank you, but do you think that will happen, and do you think that we can find the necessary evidence that he could end up in jail? I believe so. If we can find any kind of payment or any kind of money trace, we will put him in jail for a very long time. I might get a confession from him, so he could give out his accomplices. That way, we would be able to put them in jail as well. Me and my wife, I have a doubt that somehow her stepmother is involved, and maybe a guy named Scott Turner. Why do you say so? Well, last night we had dinner with them in our home and we lied to them that we got some new information from the police that says they had new evidence that the accidents were not accidents, but an attempt of murder on all of us, and they acted as they already knew that. You should not have done that. Now you have warned them, and they will try to destroy anyone or anything that can show their involvement in this case. We had to learn if they are guilty or not. We understand you, Christian. But from now on, you must stay away from this case. You have to allow us to do our jobs. I will do anything that is in my power to help you solve this case. And I am sure that Brendan is thinking the same thing. I agree with Patrick. Thank you, both. Now, if you excuse me, I will go home to tell my wife the news, and to tell her not to worry anymore, because she is not only angry, but also afraid for our family's safety, he said. Christian, I told you I can send a couple of police officers to your house. No, thank you. I told you I have a lot of bodyguards hired, and they have licenses to carry and shoot from a gun, so I know I am safe. But thank you. He thanked Patrick. They shook hands. He turned around and left the office. He found Benjamin and the rest of the bodyguards and went to their car and went home. They were arriving at the house when he saw a man was having a fight with one of the security guys. Chapter 45 While Christian was parking his car, he saw a man fighting with security in front of his house. He recognized that man as Scott. He did not know what to do, but he knew if he was here and he was fighting with his security, there must be a reason for it. He stopped the car and got out of it. He looked at Scott and asked him with a steady voice, Scott, what is wrong? What are you doing here? And why are you fighting with my security? Christian asked him. You bastard! I know that you are hiding them here, he answered. What the hell are you talking about? Christian was stunned and asked him with a nervous look in his eyes, My wife and my child! I know they are here. I came to take them home. Scott, there is no one here, only my wife and child, Christian said. 
You are lying! Scott yelled. No, I am not. And if you do not stop behaving like a madman, I will call the police and my security will throw you out. Oh, yeah? He asked with an angry look on his face. Yes. Now leave if you do not want to end up in jail with an attack and disturbance of peace charge. Scott was furious, but he knew that there was nothing he can do right now. Christian was also starting to get any. He wanted this man to leave his house right away. He did not want his wife to witness this bad scene anymore. He did not want her to get upset, or even worse, maybe his daughter could hear his screams and yell, and she could get upset. He saw that Scott decided to leave and watched him enter his car and spread away from his house. When Scott was exiting the ground, the front door opened and Mia got out. She hugged her husband and said, Thank you. Thank God you are home. He was here for half an hour, and he did not want to leave. I did not know what to do. Christian looked at her with comfort in his eyes and spoke. You should have called me sooner. I would have come right away. I know, baby, but I could not. I was afraid, and also I knew you have better things to take care of at the police station. How did it go? Well, I spoke with Patrick and with Brandon. He is the district attorney, and I think that it went great. He said that he will do anything that is in his power to put David and his accomplices in jail. He looked at her and asked, Anyway, how was your day? What did you do today? And why does Scott think that his wife is here? She looked at him with a naive look and spoke, Well, she is here. Mia! He looked at her with disbelief. Please, listen to me. I went to her apartment to tell her everything, but then I saw her face. She has a bruise on her face and her body as well. So I felt sorry, and I took her here. I also told her that we will do anything that is in our power to help her and to protect her from Scott. Please, baby, she has no one that can help her. Even her mother cannot help her. He looked at her with a gentle and sympathetic look and said, All right, we will help her, but only because you asked me to. She nodded and smiled. I also told her the truth about my father's accident and who might be responsible. And? Well, she said she wants to help, and she also understood why Victoria did nothing to protect her. Oh, baby, let's go see her. They went inside. Anna was sitting on the sofa and drinking a glass of wine. She was trembling, and they could see the fear in her eyes. Anna, how are you feeling? Christian asked her. I am scared. Christian, I am all alone with my baby. There is no one who can help me. How will I survive? How will I be safe from him? She started crying. Anna, please do not cry. Mia started comforting her. Oh, Mia, it is so difficult. Christian looked at the sad picture in front of him, and at that moment he decided he will never make his wife suffer like this, and that he will do anything that is in his power to help this helpless woman. He spoke. Anna, please do not worry. You are not alone. You have us. We are your family, and as I am sure Mia has already told you, you can count on us for support and everything else you need. Really? After everything I did to you, Mia? She looked at the with a sad look. Please, Anna, do not worry. You are my sister, after all, and I will help you, Mia said. Thank you. You are so kind, both of you. She was finally relieved and smiled a little bit. Mia looked at Anna and spoke. Go upstairs in the guest room and please wash. After that, come downstairs so we can have dinner. Do not worry about the babies. The nanny is taking care of them, and I and Christian will go upstairs to check them. Anna nodded, and all of them went upstairs. Anna went to the guest room, and Mia and Christian continued to the nursery. They opened the door and saw Jenny sitting on the chair and singing a lullaby to both of the children while they were sleeping quietly. When Jenny saw both of them, she stood up 
and went near them. She spoke. They just fell asleep. Michael was a little bit nervous and had a problem falling asleep. But after singing the lullaby, he fell asleep right away. They ate. He was hungry and I changed his diapers. He is good now. Also, I fed Bella forty minutes ago, and she is doing great, smiling and playing with the stuffed toys. Thank you, Jenny. You are an angel, Mia said. Christian nodded in agreement and spoke. If you are hungry, you can go downstairs and eat something. We can stay here with them. Jenny nodded and went out. They stayed here and continued looking at the two most beautiful and calm faces that they have seen so far. Jenny came back upstairs in a few minutes. They kissed the babies goodnight and went out. In front of the door was standing Anna. She was wearing a floral dress with long sleeves, so she could hide the bruises on her body and arms, and also she had makeup on her face, so she could cover the black eye. Can I enter and say goodnight to him? She asked them. Of course you can. It is your son. You can enter there whenever you want. Yes, Anna, you should not ask us that kind of question. This is your house as well. She nodded and smiled gently. Thank you, both of you. She thanked them and entered the room. They waited for her, and a minute later she got out. They all went downstairs to the dining room to have dinner. The table was served. They sat and started having dinner and talking at the same time. Anna had a lot of questions to ask them. She wanted to know everything and she also wanted to know how she can help to catch the murderers of her stepfather. She spoke. Please, Mia, tell me how I can help. I want justice for Michael. Mia nodded and started talking. Well, Anna, I want you to feel safe here, but I would like you to call Victoria and tell her that you are here, and that you are want to talk to her. Tell her to come here. Then you can tell her that you have doubts about her father's death and that you think that she knows who the responsible person is. You can also tell her that she should go to the police. What if she does not want to listen to me? Or she does not want to come? Or even worse, tell me to go back to Scott. Anna, if she says any of those things, you will know why that is, and that she does not care as much as we think, and you will have our support to continue living with Michael here. Also, if she refuses to come, you can say goodbye to her and tell her not to look for you, because she will never see you again. We can take you to live anywhere in the world. You only have to choose a country. Thank you. She let a tear slip her cheek, and Mia could see the sincereness in her eyes. She was grateful. At that moment, Anna's phone rang. Mia looked at Anna while Anna took her phone out of her bag. Who is it? Mia asked her. I do not know. It is an unknown number. It is probably Scott, she said. You do not have to answer it. Mia was her support. Anna knew that no matter what, Mia is here, and she needed her to face Scott, so she answered the phone. I would like to, because you are here now, and you will support me, no matter what. Answer it and put it on speaker. She answered the phone, and they could all hear Scott's voice. Anna, where the hell are you? Return home right away, or you will suffer the consequences. Scott, please stop calling me. It is over between us. Please leave me alone. You can have all my treasure. Just leave me my son and me alone. What? What did you say? Never. I will never leave you alone. You took everything from me. Because of you, the love of my life left me. Because of you, I have a child I do not love, and I have to stand you. So you will have to suffer as well with a man who does not love you, and I will never allow you to be happy. Anna started crying. Mia was furious. She took the phone out of Anna's hand. Stop calling her. She hung up the phone and hugged Anna. Please do not cry. He is not worth it. Remember, you have Michael, and you have to take care of him and live for him. You do not need Scott. He is a piece of shit. Anna looked at her with tears in her eyes and responded. 
I know that, Mia, and I love my son from the bottom of my heart, but I also want to have someone by my side, someone to take care of me, someone to love me, someone to respect me, and of course, to protect me, someone who will take me to events, trips, and picnics, and who will not be ashamed of me, Anna said with sorrow in her voice. Anna, you will find that guy, trust me. We are very young. We have time. Maybe it will not work now, but that does not mean that you will not find true love in the future. Mia assured her. Mia, who will love me? I have a child, and who would love someone else's child? Anna was sad and worried. Anna, there are a lot of men who would love you and your child. Please do not say that, Mia said. Mia. Scott always said that no one would love me or his child the way he does. Mia laughs and says, That is true. The next man you have will not offend you, beat you, and maybe try to kill you. You are right, and I would say that is great that someone would not love you like him. When Anna realizes what Mia said, she has a small smile on her face. She looks shyly at Mia and says, Do you think... I will be happy? Do you think I will have a good life with my son? Mia looked at her with gentleness in her eyes and spoke. Yes, I do. I promise you that you will be a happy person, no matter what happens. Even if you do not find the perfect guy and you are alone, you will be happy because you already have the best man in your life who will love you no matter what. And when he grows up, he will help you and protect you. Your son is your biggest treasure. Anna nodded her head. I agree with you. I will make sure my son is not like his father, and to love and protect me and his wife. Chapter 46 I will go to my room. I am a bit tired, but in an hour we can have dinner. And like I said, Please do not worry about anything. You are safe here, Mia said. Anna nodded, and Mia stood up and left the room. She went to her room. Christian was waiting for her there. She went to him and hugged him. She was disappointed and tired of everything. She wanted everything to be finished and okay. Nothing bad to happen again. Baby, are you okay? He asked her. I love you so much. I do not know what I would do without you. You were my life. I love you too, baby. So much. But please, tell me why this tenderness suddenly. I just remembered that I do not tell you I love you so much. And I wanted to tell you. I see Anna and how unhappy she is. I mean, I understand what you mean. And I just wanted to say thanks to God that he put you in my life because you are the best gift I can have. And thanks to you. To me? He asked with a surprised sound in his voice. Yes, to you. Because you love me, respect me, take care of me and your daughter, love us and protect us. She kissed him and he returned the kiss. Their lips clash and move over one another, angry and wet. He cannot stop touching her. His hands are everywhere, her face, her hair, down her back, grasping at her hips, pulling her closer, desperate to feel more of her, wanting her to feel exactly what she is doing to him. Needing air, he rips his mouth from hers and attacks her neck. He feasts on her like a starving man. And that is exactly what he is. Ravenous. Or her. He inhales as he licks, sucks, and nibbles his way, from her jaw to her ear. She is whimpering incoherently, but he gets the idea. Her hands are on his chest now, rubbing, scratching, moving down his abs, until one brushes against the front of his pants, and he hisses in pure agonizing pleasure. Before he can inhale, she is stroking his dick through his pants, and he thrust forward. Any semblance of control or finesse is gone. 
His hands come up to her breasts, and she arches her back to bring them closer. He squeezes, and she moans again. He skims across where he knows her nipples are, frustrated by her blouse and bra. He wants to tug and pinch those beauties, until they are two sharp peaks. Her mouth is on his neck, kissing, as he raises his chin. He lifts her at the waist, and her knees rest on either side of him. He holds her up with one hand, while the other pushes the lace between her legs to the side. He dips two fingers inside her. Jesus, he thought. She is ready, too. He slides his fingers all the way in, and they both moan loudly. She is wet and hot. She molds snugly around his fingers, and his eyes close, knowing just how incredible she will feel around his cock. He pumps his fingers in and out, and she starts riding his hand. She is whimpering, moaning, gasping, music to his frigging ears. He cannot take it anymore. He pulls at her lace panties. He wants her bare, nothing in the way. With a rip and a snap, he tears them off. Her dark curls and shiny lips beckon him, and he swears to God he will give them all the attention they deserve later. But he cannot wait. He takes her face in his hands and brings her down to him. He cannot kiss her. She rises up, pulling him almost completely out, before smoothly sliding down, taking him back inside. His eyes are on hers, and he knows that he loves her the most. They made love all evening. All the troubles they had were left outside of that room, or at least outside of their minds. At that moment, they were trying to enjoy themselves, be relaxed, love each other, and show that to the person they are making love to. Mia was feeling amazing. She knew that he was the man of her life, and she also knew that she will be with him forever. She was sure that he will love her always, and no matter what, they will be honest and faithful to one another. While they were lying together in bed, hugged, she spoke. This was amazing. He smiled and said, I'm glad you enjoyed it. You did not? I did, baby. Trust me, I did. It was amazing for me, too, he said. I am tired. I want to sleep here, in your arms, and relax, she said. Sleep, baby. Everything will be okay tomorrow. What are you going to do tomorrow? she asked him. I plan to call Patrick and to see what are their plans, he answered her. What if they decide not to help us? I mean, not to look for any evidence. What are our plans then? If they decide not to help us, we will continue with the detective agency, and we will try to find more evidence. Or maybe I can face David and tell him that I know what he did. No, you cannot do that. It will be too dangerous. Maybe he will hurt you or even worse, kill you. No, baby. He is too scared. He will never hurt me by himself. He will hire someone else. But that will be even better because we will catch the person responsible for the accident and make him testify against David and his accomplices. I do not like this plan. Let's think about another option. Maybe tell everything to the press. Or play the tape. That can be our last solution. That way, the police will have to do something. But I do not think Patrick will disappoint me. I know him. He has always wanted to come to the bottom of things, and he will not leave this case unsolved. I hope you are right. We have to catch David, no matter what. Maybe if I go and tell him that I know what he did. No, don't even think about it. Why not? You thought about it. Yes, baby, but I am a man, and I do not say to disrespect you. It is just because I can protect myself, and I can protect you. You are a female, and if he attacks you, I do not know if you can defend yourself. That is why I am worried, and I do not want you to even think about it and not do it. Fine. Mia, I am not joking. Baby. You can put yourself in great danger, 
and I do not want you to be hurt. You do realize that if he hurts you, I will be hurt anyway? Yes, baby, but I can take care of myself. I do not know why we are discussing this when we agreed that no one of us will confront him. We will let the police handle this. Yes, baby, they can handle it. I will call Patrick tomorrow to see what they have decided. Will you go to work tomorrow? No, I will stay here and help you take care of Anna. I could see she was upset. Yes, she is. Very upset. It is understandable. Everything has changed for her. She found out the whole truth about Michael, her mother, her fiancé, also the father of her child. Everything was very overwhelming, and I do not blame her. Yes, that is true. I do not know what I would do if I was in her shoes, and I could have been. Baby, please do not think about it. I do not want to see you like that, he said. Yes, but, baby, that is just it. I could have been in her shoes, if it was not her and his cheating, and you, of course. Of course. He smiled gently and continued. But it is not. You are my wife, my love, and the mother of my child. So I am one lucky man that I have you. No, baby. I am the lucky one. You are amazing as a father, as a husband, and as a person. He kissed her gently on her forehead and hugged her even stronger, because he did not want to spend any moment without her in his arms. They were tired, and they slowly drifted away in the land of dreams. Chapter 47 The next day came. They woke up, went to the bathroom. Mia washed her face and teeth, and Christian entered the shower. When he was done, Mia got in the shower as well. He dried himself and got dressed. Mia did the same thing, but he was waiting for her to be done. When she was all dressed up and ready, they went to the nursery to see their child. Bella and Michael were sleeping peacefully. Good morning, Jenny, Mia said. Good morning, madam. How did they sleep? Did you have any problems? Mia asked. No, madam. Both of them woke only once. I gave them something to eat, and Bella went to sleep right away, she answered. And Michael? He was awake a few more minutes. We watched a few songs, and he went to sleep. Both of them are angels. I am glad to hear that, Jenny, Christian said and continued. Please know that we will pay you for those hours that you are taking care of Michael as well, and we will find another nanny for him in a few days. It is not a problem, sir. I can handle these two for now. I love children, and the more the merrier. Especially these two. They are amazing. He smiled and said, I am glad to hear that. Thank you, Jenny. She nodded her head as a sign of respect. They left the nursery and went downstairs. Maria was preparing breakfast, and Anna was helping her in the kitchen. She was cutting the vegetables and had a small smile on her face. Mia could see that she was finally a little bit relaxed and relieved about everything. Good morning, Mia said. Anna turned around and smiled gently. She was ashamed. Good morning. We are preparing breakfast, Maria said. We can see that, Christian smiled. Maria, how is your assistant doing? She is great, sir, she answered and continued. She knows a lot of things and recipes. Anna smiled gently and took two cups of coffee and said, Please, sit down. This coffee is for you. She gave them the cups of coffee, and the coffee smelled delicious. Anna, please, you do not have to do this, Mia said. I want to. This is to say thank you for everything you did for me. Every good sister would do that. Please do not worry, Mia said. I know that, Mia, but I was not a good sister to you, and I thank God that you are a better person than me, because you are showing me love and respect that I do not deserve. 
and this help and support is something that I will always be in debt to you. There was a tear rolling down her cheek. Please, Anna, everything is and will be okay. I will always be here for you and Michael, and I think it is about time for you to understand that. I will never leave you alone. Maybe you are right. Everything is going to be okay. Thank you, Mia. You are my guardian angel. At that moment, her phone rang. It was Victoria. Answer it, Mia said. It is Victoria. I do not know what to say. I do not want to argue with her, and I do not need any of her lectures. She is not the smartest person in the room, and I cannot stand her. At least not now. If you want, I can answer it, she suggested her. Can you? Anna asked. Mia nodded, and Anna passed her the phone. She pressed the button and answered the phone. Hello? Anna, is that you? No, it is me, Victoria. Mia. Mia? Why are you answering my daughter's phone? May I help you? I asked you a question. Answer me. I answered because her phone is here and she is in the bathroom. But how can I help you? Why do you want to talk to your daughter? It is none of your business. Tell her to call me when she comes back. Do you understand? I do, but I am afraid she will not call you, because she does not want to talk to you or anyone else. She wants to be left alone. She cannot do that. She has her husband, and she has to return to him. Why? So he can beat her up again? He does not have a punching bag anymore. Mia, you do not understand. She has to go back. He loves her. Excuse me? No, Victoria. I think you are the one that does not understand. I will never allow Anna to return to him if she does not want to. And the way I see it is that she does not want to. She does not want to have anything with you or that supposed family. She will leave the U.S. with her child, and you will not see her or talk to her again. So this is the last time I say this. Do not call her again. She hangs the phone. Oh my God, Mia, you are so brave. I would have never talked to her like that. She is scaring me. Please, Anna, she does not scare me anymore. Plus, there is not anything that she can do to us, any more than she already did. She killed or at least knew that our father was going to be killed, and she did nothing about it. She is not the one who should tell you what to do anymore, and she is the one that has to be afraid now. We have to do something about it. I agree with you. We have to stop them or make them confess so they would go to jail. I do not know what to do. We talked with Christian, but he does not want me to take any risks and I do not want him to take any risks, and I also tell him that this is a job for the police. We should stay aside. No, I do not agree with you. I think it is our duty to your father to revenge his death. He was my father as well, and I want the killers to go to jail. I want to make them pay. Anna, are you talking about putting your own mother in jail? Do I have to ask you are sure? I do not want you to regret this decision. Later on, she is still your mother. I agree with you, but he was my father, and I have an idea in mind. I am listening. I was thinking of going to the company and tell David that I know what he did, and I want him to pay me so I can leave Scott or something like that. Maybe I can say that we had a fight, or I accidentally heard him and Scott talking, and I know what he did and I would tell you to if he does not pay me. Anna, you cannot do that. I can, and I will. Plus, you and Christian will be with me and will protect me. Plus, my son is here in this mansion, so no matter what happens, I know that you two will always take care of him. I will have to think about it. But please, while I am thinking, do not do anything stupid. I do not want to lose you. Now that I finally am close to you and we are beginning to look like sisters. Of course, please do not doubt me. I will wait for you to think about it and I give you a week. After that, I will do the thing that I told you and there is no one that will change my mind. 
Anna said. Fine. We will see. I still have a week, Mia said. Mia smiled gently. She wanted to save Anna and not allow her to make any mistakes or irrational things. But she knew that this may be one of the only ways to make David confess, because he knew that she hated her, and that she would first do anything that is in her power to save her skin, and escape Scott, and later on, maybe help her. She had to think about it, a lot. Analyze everything, and talk to Christian, and then decide. She would also have to get into consideration his opinion, and also listen to him and his advice. She knew that Anna would be in great danger, and she did not want to expose her to that, and she did not want Michael to be without a mother, if, God forbid, something was wrong. Chapter 48 The day passed very fast. Mia was still thinking about what she was going to do. How was she going to convince Anna not to do anything? While she was thinking, Christian came in and looked at her. Hey, baby, what are you doing? Nothing, baby. I was just thinking. About what? He looked at her and could see that she was thinking about something, and she did not pay any attention to him or anything that he said. Baby? Penny for your thoughts. Oh, yeah, baby. I am sorry. I had a talk with Anna, and I was thinking about that. What was your conversation about? I told her everything, and she wants to help us. Catch David. Excuse me? Yes, she wants to help us. Did you tell her that it is very dangerous to even think about it, not to do it? I told her, but she did not pay any attention. She gave me a week to think about it. But she was determined and said no matter what she was going to do that. She would tell David that she heard him and Scott and that she knows the truth, that he was the one that ordered my father's murder. Mia, you have to tell her not to do that. I know, baby, I told her. And I also told her that it was very dangerous to do that. But she did not listen to me. She did not even pay any attention to me. She wants to catch our father's killer. I even told her that her mother may go to prison. And she said she did not care, that it is time for them to take responsibility, and that it was time for them to pay for their mistakes. She is determined to make them pay, no matter what. Yes, she is. Baby, maybe it would be a good idea to let her catch them, or him. I do not know. Baby, what if something bad happens? It will not. I will ask Patrick's help, and also I can hire security to protect her. Maybe we can do something more, maybe record the conversation. I do not know I have any idea about this. I do not know Baby as well. But I can talk to Patrick, and he can give me some ideas and try to make them a reality. Can you call him now? Maybe tomorrow it is better to call him. Maybe. I did not see the time. You are right. Tomorrow is better to call him. But, baby, I wanted to say thank you. Why? Because, baby, you do not have to do this, and you do not have to help my sister, and you are doing it. I know, baby, but I want to. I want you to be happy, and I know that if we catch your father's killer, it will make you very happy. She nodded and smiled gently, then soaked with tears in her eyes. You are right. If we catch them, I will be happy, because my father can rest in peace. I love you so much, Mia. You are my whole world. You gave me the most precious gift a man can ask, and I wanted to tell you that your every wish is my command. I will never do anything that will hurt or disappoint you. I know. She smiled and gently nodded. I love you, too. You are my light, and you and Bella are my reason to live. The next day came. Christian called Patrick and asked him what they should do, if they should take the risk or not. Hey, Patrick, how are you? Hey, Christian, I'm fine, thank you for asking. How can I help you? Well, bro, 
I was calling to ask you if there is any new information about my father-in-law's case. To be honest, there are not. After we got the USB drive from you, there were no strange movements or phone calls of David with anyone. Maybe he is using a burner phone, or maybe he is too careful. I do not know what it is, but honestly, there is no evidence that he did something bad now. I understand, but I and Mia have a plan. Well, better said, a suggestion. What kind of plan? Well, Anna, Mia's stepsister, suggested for her to talk to David and tell him that she accidentally heard Scott and him talking and that she knows the truth now and that she wants him to pay an amount of money. No, Christian, that is too dangerous. I know. But that is the only thing we can do. There are no new evidence and no advances in this investigation. So we have to do something. Mia is beginning to be desperate, and I do not know what to do. I called because we are friends, and I wanted to warn you, or give you a heads up. But we are doing this with or without you. So please, help us. I will see what I can do. Please do not do anything until I call you back. You have 48 hours to contact me, or we are continuing with the plan. Fine. Be patient, please. I will see what I can do. When he was done with the conversation, he went to the study. Mia was sitting there and was looking at her laptop. She had a lot of work. She wanted to check everything that has happened in the company while she was on maternity leave and also to check if everything was okay with the finances, because she knew if David wanted to hurt them, it must be because of money. Christian entered the study. He looked at his beautiful wife. The sun was making her hair look almost golden. Her face was smiling when she saw him, and she was beautiful even though she had only mascara and lip gloss. You look amazing, he spoke. She smiled. Thank you. You are amazing, too. He came closer toward her, sat on an armchair opposite of her, and asked her, What are you doing? I am checking the financial reports of the company, the ones that David sent to me, and also the reports I had Steve, an employee at the financial department in the company, to send to me. So, you are comparing them. She nodded and continued, I did not know what to do. I had to do something, so I decided to check it. We must know the reason David is doing this. I know it is money, but I wanted to know how much money. I want to know why he would betray my father like that. And what amount does he need to be satisfied? What amount of money did my father's life cost? Mia, you should not do that. I understand, but you will only hurt yourself. He did it. We know it. And now it's time to catch him. Did you talk to Patrick? He nodded and she continued. What did he say? Please tell me. He said that there is no news so far. He has not made any movements, any strange phone calls, and he has not done anything that would make him a suspect. But we gave him everything he needed to arrest him. Yes, but that is not enough, baby. We have to give him more or them to find more concrete evidence, because we are not supported by the legal system in this country. This is too complicated. I want them to arrest him. I want that too, baby, but for now, we have to wait. Did you tell him about our plans? About Anna telling him that? I did. And? Well, he said not to do it, that we should wait. I do not want to wait any longer. I know, baby, but we should. Let's be realistic. You cannot tell Anna to do that. Even though she has suggested that, you cannot tell her. Because if something bad happens, you will be responsible. You will blame yourself, and your conscience will not allow you to continue with your life. And imagine if she died. When Michael grows up and realizes that his mother died because she wanted to help us, I do not think that he will ever forgive us. I know, but I want to do something. I know, baby, that you do, but for now, we have to wait and believe in Patrick and his ability to solve this case. She nodded, 
lowered her head, and continued checking the reports. I cannot focus. I cannot do this now. I have an idea. He looked at her with a smirky smile on his face. Really? Yes. I know how I will take your mind off these reports and off David. How? She asked him. He got up, took her hand, and took her with him. Chapter 49 They go to their room, enter inside, and he locks the door. He rushes toward her, and his mouth presses against hers, and his tongue begs for entrance. But when he tries to roll them over so he is on top, Mia has other ideas. She pushes him on the shoulders until he is on his back. Then she moves her mouth over his jaw and down his neck, burning a trail down his chest and stomach. He swallows hard. She takes his cock in her hand and pumps slowly, and he is already stiff as steel. He was hard the minute she started kissing him. Jesus, Mia. He keeps his eyes open and watches from above as she wets her lips, opens her mouth, and slides him in. Fuck. He feels it when she comes, every scorching wet inch of her tightness blissfully around him. And it's so good, so savagely intense. He wants to fucking weep from the pleasure. He buries his face in her neck, inhaling her, devouring her. And then he is coming with her within her, bathing her insides with each carnal thrust. Sweet electricity races through him as one word falls from his lips over and over again. Mia. 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 It is miraculous. After several moments, their bodies still. The only sounds in the room are their rapid breaths and pounding heartbeats. At that moment, they knew they were perfect for each other. They had forgotten about their problems, worries, and they were happy and relaxed. They knew that everything would be all right. No matter what happens, they are together and will be a happy family. Chapter 50 After the amazing sex they had in their room, they go to the bathroom and take a shower together. Mia kisses him. He kisses her back. He hugs her and says, I love you. No matter what happens, I want you to know I love you. I love you too, baby, and I know that. They got out of the bathroom, and Mia got her hair dried, while Christian was putting on his clothes. She got dressed, and he was looking at her amazing body. We have to check on Bella and Michael, she said. He nodded and said, We should also talk to Anna. We should tell her that we do not want her to do anything, and that we will take care of it. She should not get involved. I agree. Let's go. They go to the nursery to check on Michael and Bella. They are sleeping peacefully, and Jenny is watching over them. Hey, Jenny, Mia says. Madam? How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are they? Christian asks. They are amazing. They had lunch a few minutes ago and then played a little bit, but they were tired, so they fall asleep. Did they make any problems? No, madam, but I wanted to ask for your permission if it is okay to take them out today. The day is beautiful and sunny, so I think it will be great for us to play on the grass in the garden. Of course, Jenny, that is a great idea. You can ask for Maria's help if you need it. I will be in the study, so when you go out, I can also come and play a little bit with them. I will let you know when we are in the yard. Thank you. They turned around and left. Downstairs, they saw Maria. Maria, have you seen Anna? Mia asked. Yes, madam. She went into her room. She said that her head hurts. She drank a pill and went to her room to lay down. Oh, of course. Maria, can you please tell her to come to the study when she comes down again? Yes, madam, of course. They went to the study. Christian took his laptop, sat on the sofa, and started working. Mia did the same thing. She sat on his desk and continued looking through the company files and searching for irregularities. While they sitting in the study, there was a knock on the door. Come in, Christian said. 
Anna opened the door. Sorry to bother you both, but Maria told me that you wanted to see me. Yes, Anna, please come in, Mia said with a smile on her face. She entered and sat on the armchair opposite her. What is going on? she asked. Well, you made me a proposition yesterday, and I wanted to tell you that Christian talked to Patrick, and he said not to get involved in this, that there might be some good news about the case, and that David is not making any moves or decisions. But as soon as he makes them, they will arrest him. So, in other words, you want to say that he has done nothing and he is still free. I am afraid so. She looked at Christian and then again turned toward Mia. Mia, we have to do something. We have to catch him. As I said yesterday, I am ready to talk to him and to blackmail him. Either he will admit and try something, maybe pay, or he will say he did nothing wrong. But we have to do something. We owe this to Michael. I agree with you, but I also do not want to put you in danger, and I am also thinking about your son, who needs his mother. I am afraid that something might happen to you. I have to think about our lives and family. Look, Christian, can you please invite Patrick over dinner? I want to talk to him, and maybe he will agree to help us. Christian nodded, and he took out his phone and called Patrick. Patrick answered the phone. Hello? Hey, Patrick. I know I called you yesterday, but I wanted to ask you if you have any plans for tonight. No, I do not. Why? Well, I wanted to invite you over dinner. Well, me and my wife. All right. I can come, but only under one condition. What is that? I want you to promise me that you and your wife will not discuss the case with me. And will not make me do anything that is against the law. I promise you, me and my wife, he looked at Mia, will not say anything about her father's case. Then I will see you later? What time is dinner? Is 8 p.m. okay for you? I will see you at 8 o'clock. He hung up the phone and he looked at Mia. We cannot talk to him about the case. I made a promise, and you know I am always sticking up to my word. Anna looked at him and said, You made a promise about you and Mia, but you did not promise him that I will not talk about the case and suggest him. He smiled wickedly and nodded. You are right. The evening came. Mia and Christian were in their room, ready for dinner. She was wearing a blue dress with low sandals, and he was dressed comfortably. They were not too ready, because Patrick was a family friend and they knew there was no need to be too tidy in his presence. Someone rang the bell. They left the room. Mia was very excited, because she knew that Anna had a plan to do about discovering her father's real killer, and she also knew that Anna would do everything in her power to convince Patrick to help her. That was the only thing that worried her. Mary opened the door, and Patrick was standing with flowers and a bottle of wine in his hands. Good evening. Patrick greeted them. Good evening, said Christian. They shook hands. He handed the flowers to Mia and the wine to Christian. How are you? He looked at Mia. Good, thank you. He said and continued. How are you? At that moment, a small click of heels was heard on the tiles on the upper part of the house. Anne was coming down the stairs. Patrick looked at her, and at that moment, he could see the most beautiful woman he had ever seen in his life. She wore a red dress with straps and beautiful black sandals. Her hair was gathered in a loose bun, and she did not wear too much makeup. Anna knew that this look showed her as a gentle young lady, and wearing the red dress showed her the beautiful curves that she had, and that she did not lose despite her pregnancy. Good evening. He held out his hand to Patrick. Good evening, and kissed her hand gently. I'm Patrick. Patrick, this is my sister Anna. I am glad to meet you, Anna. Also, Patrick, let's go to the dining room. Dinner is ready, said Christian. It really was like that. 
The dinner was served and ready. It looked too tasty. They sat down and began to dine. The night was quiet. After dinner, they slowly moved to the living room. Patrick could not take his eyes off Anna. She was also not too indifferent, even though she did not want to show it. They started a conversation. Anna, tell me something about you. Well, Patrick, I'm not working at the moment. I take care of my son. Do you have a son? Yes, his name is Michael, in honor of his father and Mia. He was also my father. Although he was only married to my mother, he treated me like a real father. Everything I wanted, I was getting. I know this does not sound good, but I can say that he gave me his love and treated me like his daughter, if not better. Sorry, I am going to check what happened to the dessert, said Mia. I will help you, said Christian. I think I made her sad, said Anna. Who, Mia? Yes, her father paid more attention to me than to her. She was his blood, but he treated me better. It must have hurt her a lot, and maybe even now when she remembers that. Yes, for sure. Especially now that she knows that her father is dead and cannot improve things and he did not get to meet his grandchildren. She said that with a sad look on his face. Look, Anna, if you want to convince me of something, I did not come here to discuss her father's case. Patrick, I am sorry, but you asked me. I just answered your question. All right, please, sorry. But when Christian called me this afternoon, I told him I did not want to discuss the case. I understand you. I just answered what you asked me. But if you do not want to talk about, it is okay. I thought you wanted to get to know me better. You are right. I want to get to know you better. Then should I continue? Please, you told me you had a son? To have a son? I am not married, if that interests you. I got out of a bad relationship, and at the moment I am not really interested in men. But that does not mean that one day I would not want to meet and be with someone. I used to work for Michael's company, but after I got pregnant, I decided to take care of myself and the baby and stay at home. What happened to the father of your child? Honestly, he is a very bad person, and I suffered a lot from him. That's why we are no longer together. And you? Tell me something about you. Well, I work in the police. I do not have a wife or girlfriend. I am still single. Really? Why? Well, I think I have not yet met a woman who could fit in with my schedule. I work too hard. I understand, but I am sure a lot of girls are courting you. Well, not really. I think I am not very good company. I am too close. At that moment, the bell rang. Mary went to the door. He opened it and saw Scott. He was standing with flowers in his hands. He spoke. Maria, is my wife here? Mia approached the door and said, Maria, who is that? Mr. Scott, madam. Christian and Mia came into the hallway. They looked at Scott. Patrick could see the fear in Anna's eyes. She felt uncomfortable and nervous. Scott, what are you doing here? asked Mia. I came to see my wife. This is for her. Please go away, Mia said and continued. She does not want to see you. How do you know that is so? Scott, please leave. Nervousness could be felt in him. He addressed them in a high tone. Call my wife or else. Christian tensed. People could feel the tension in the air. Or what? Anna! 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 He shouted. Anne got out of bed, and with Patrick's help, they went out into the hallway. When Scott saw her walking towards him with another man, the anger in his eyes could be seen. His face was red, and suddenly he threw the flowers on the ground. So here you are, with another man. Scott, please go. 
I am not with anyone. He is just a friend. Scott, if you do not leave, I will immediately call the police, said Mia. Come on, call. Let me see how you explain to them that my son and my wife are here, and you do not let me see them. Here, you see your wife, said Patrick. I am not your wife, cried Anna. You, do not interfere. Anna, please come home. I want you and Michael to come home. What do you miss? Do you miss your favorite punching bag? Anna asked. Please, Anna, you know that is not so. I want you back. I want you to come home. Scott, please go. Christian called security to remove him from the house. After Scott was thrown out, Anna turned to Patrick and said, Please, apologize for the fiasco you had to attend. I did not want you to see this. He is my ex-boyfriend, Scott. David's partner. Sorry, please. I would have retired to my room. Turned to Mia. I was glad to meet you, she told Patrick. She went up the stairs, with tears in her eyes, and Mia followed her. I'm sorry that you had to see that spectacle, said Mia. Patrick nodded and allowed them to go. He turned to Christian and he said, We have to talk. All right. Christian agreed and continued. Let's go to the study. Chapter 51 They went to the study. Patrick sat down on the chair as Christian approached the small table with various bottles of alcohol. He looked and showed the bottle that had an inscription, Jack Daniels, on it, a wonderful scotch whiskey. He poured two glasses of whiskey, handed one to Patrick, and then he sat down. Christian, we have to talk. I want to know everything about Scott. And about Anna? Of course, for Anna as well. I want to know everything. All right. Just please listen carefully and do not interrupt me. I also do not want you to have a bad opinion of Anna, because she is a good person and she has suffered a lot. All right. Talk. As you know, Anna is Mia's half-sister. They lived together, but they were never close. I can say for sure they were not on good terms. All right. Well, Mia was supposed to marry Scott. Mia? Yes. Those two have been together for years. At rehearsal for the wedding dress, Mia saw Scott and Anna kissing in front of the wedding shop. And you can imagine how bad she felt. Oh, poor Mia. Well, then she decided to take revenge on Scott and marry me. Many things happened after the wedding, and we fell in love. But Scott and Anna continued to see each other. Whether he wanted to hurt Mia because of everything, or he wanted to give it back to Anna because Mia left him. I do not know, but... But? Patrick looked at him strangely, as if he knew what Christian wanted to say to him. But he started harassing Anna. I do not know when it all started. I just know that after Michael was born, the bullying became more frequent and she had bruises all over her body. Oh dear. I want to kill him. Exactly. It all took a long time. Mia tried to do something and told Victoria, Anna's mother, and she hoped it would help that way. But it seems Victoria could not do anything, because the last time Mia went to visit Anna to talk, she had a big bruise on her face. She took pity on Anna and took her to us with her son. Christian, Michael is also his son. He will want to see him. He can see him, but we are afraid that he will do something to him. He is very violent, and I do not want to hurt him in order to hurt Anna. I understand you well. What does Anna plan to do? he asked. Anna has never been married to him, so it is not so difficult to leave him. But it seems that he is involved in Michael's accident, and now Anna and Mia want to find out the truth and that is why I would like to ask you to help them again. All right, I will help you. However, everything we do, we will do under my conditions, with the full support of the police, 
and I do not want any of you to be exposed to the slightest risk. At that moment, there was a knock on the door. Mia opened the door. He looked at the two men holding a glass of whiskey and serious looks on their faces. Please apologize for interrupting you. I just wanted to apologize again for everything. Please, Mia, do not worry. How is Anna? he asked. Bad. She feels too ashamed and bad. Until now she was crying. She is ashamed because you saw and heard everything. She did not want to leave a bad impression on you. Please, tell her to relax and do not worry. It can happen to anyone, and tell her that I would like to call her tomorrow to go out for a cup of coffee. Thank you, Patrick. That would be great, and I am sure she would like to go out with you. All right, I have to go now, but I will call her tomorrow. Well, I will call the house. I can give you her number if you want. Of course. He took out his phone, and she told him her number. It is 555-3775. Thank you. I got it. He got up and left. Mia turned to Christian. He accepted, he told her. Thank God, she replied. I hope they will get along well with Anna. I think he likes her. I hope so, too. He deserves to be happy. But I do not know how Anna will react when she finds out you gave him her number. Well, she likes him, too, so I think she will be happy. You little devil. He kissed her gently. She smiled. She grabbed Christian by the arm and dragged him toward their room. She spoke. You never told me how you knew Patrick. Haven't I? Yes, you have not. Never. I know nothing about him. He had a sad life. Really? Yes. His mother died when he was very young, and his father a few years later. He grew up with his grandparents. They now live in a small house in Miami while he lives here. And a woman? Children? He was never married. He had a girlfriend, but she was not good. I think she had addiction problems. And after he was about to be fired because of her drug problem, he had to leave her, although I can say for sure he loved her very much, maybe more than his own life. What happened later? What did he do? She threatened him, persecuted him, harassed him. One night while he was at work, she broke into his apartment, became too addicted to drugs, overdosed herself, and died in his bathtub. Oh, God. Exactly. He was heartbroken. He was depressed. There were times when he did not go to work, not sleep a lot, not eat. I do not know how he managed to overcome that. I think he still loves her. I do not know if he would be good for Anna. Mia, believe me, he would be perfect. The two of them could heal their wounds. He would love Michael as a son and protect Anna from everything. I would not allow anyone to hurt her. Trust me. Maybe you are right. I hope we could be together. I do not know if Anna is ready for such a step to trust someone again, but I sincerely hope she will give Patrick a chance. They would be a good couple. Did you intentionally organize this evening for that? I do not swear to you. The plan was to convince Patrick to help us with the investigation. Everything that happened later had nothing to do with us. All right. I want to see Bella. Will you come? Of course, my dear. I want to kiss her daughter a goodnight kiss. She smiled gently, and they entered Bella's room. She and Michael slept peacefully. Jenny also fell asleep slowly. They did not want to wake them. They kissed the children gently and slowly left the room. They entered their bedroom. She slowly took off her dress and went to the bathroom. He changed his clothes and went into the bathroom to brush his teeth. After doing everything, they both laid on the bed and they were hugging. They just wanted to be next to each other. They wanted to leave everything else out of the room. Today, I did not finish looking at all of the documents. I have to check them out tomorrow. All right, honey. I will help you with everything. 
thank you. I do not know why, but I think I will find some evidence that David is stealing from us. In fact, from the company. Maybe. I cannot say anything. We know that he is capable to do anything. I think he has done something else except that. Maybe he is planning to take over the company or something. Yes, you are right. With him, everything is possible. I do not trust him even a bit. I know, baby. But what do you think about Scott? His coming here to our house? I do not know. He brought flowers, but I think everything was a facade. Maybe. We know that he is capable of doing a lot of harm. So everything is possible. Her dream came very quickly. She was too tired. He turned to Christian, kissed him gently on the cheek, and said, Good night. I love you. Good night, my love. I love you too, he said. They fell asleep. Chapter 52 A few hours passed since Patrick was at their house when the phone rang. Maria answered. King Family Mansion, Maria is speaking. How may I help you? Maria? It is Patrick. Yes, sir, Patrick. How can I help you? I just wanted to talk to Anna. One moment, please. She put her hand on the phone and turned toward Anna who was sitting with Mia, the children, and Jenny in the garden. They were sitting on the grass under the big shade of the willow tree. The children were playing on the grass, and they were drinking tea and talking. Maria came toward them. Miss Anna, phone call for you. Who is it? Anna asked. It is Mr. Patrick, she answered. Mia smiled, while Anna's face turned red. Give me the phone, please. She smiled gently. Maria passed her the phone and left. Anna spoke. Hello? Hello, Anna? Yes, Patrick. Hi. How are you today? I have been better. What about you? How are you? I am not okay. Why? What has happened? I could not sleep. I was thinking about you all night. She smiled with an ashamed look on her face. She liked what she was hearing, but she was still afraid of the attention this handsome man was paying to her. I am sorry to hear that. Oh, please, don't be. Oh? Well, I wanted to ask you if you would like to have dinner with me tonight, or maybe a drink. One second, please. I have to ask Jenny if she can take care of Michael, so I can go out with you. Mia made a thumbs up and nodded her head. Anna understood what Mia was trying to say. She wanted her to go out with Patrick, so she was ready to take care of Michael herself. Anna smiled and nodded her head. All done. It is arranged. I can go out. How about 8 p.m.? Yes, of course. All right. I will pick you up at eight. See you. They hung the phone, and Anna was so excited. He will come at eight. Mia, what should I do? What should I wear? First, calm down. I have a lot of dresses that you can borrow and wear. We have to do your hair and makeup. You cannot go like this. Both of them started laughing. I know. Let's go. I have to take a shower and... I will wait for you in my room in one hour. All right. Anna ran out of the room and went toward her room. Anna did not know what to wear. She was too excited because this was a date like the one she did not have or go to in a long time. Although she was in a relationship, Scott was not exactly the type of man who wanted to go out very often. He preferred to sit at home, watch TV, play computer games, or drink. There was no need to take out his girlfriend, his son's mother to dinner, to the cinema, to a coffee shop, or anywhere else. He also wanted to go out with friends, do anything. The activity did not matter, as long as it was not related to Anna or to their son. That is why she was excited. She knew that finally besides her, 
There could be a man who would take her everywhere with him. He would not be ashamed of her, and he would not hide her from his friends or family. A good man, a smart man, and a hard-working man. A man who is with her because she is good, smart, sensitive, kind, and not because of deception and blackmail, not because of money and power, as she was with Scott. She kept looking at herself in the mirror as she tried on her dresses. Someone knocked on the door. Come in. Mia opened the door with a smile on her face. Hey, aren't you ready yet? Don't you know what to wear? Yes! She shouted in a shrill voice. I do not know what to wear. Everything looks bad. Mia smiled gently. All right, let's help you. Wear the emerald dress with the black Louis Vuitton heels and the small black leather bag. Do you think I will look good? She asked her. I think you will look great. That dress fits your body too well and emphasizes your figure. The black heels will make you taller, because, of course, Patrick is taller than you for a whole head. And now you will fit perfectly. Anna smiled at that very thought. She liked Patrick. She put on the dress and looked gorgeous in it. He outlined her curves, just as Mia had told her. You are right. It looks great. Now, let us think about what hairstyle you will wear, and also what kind of makeup. I do not know. Please help me. I am thinking of a loose bun, with very gentle makeup. Maybe just mascara and lip gloss. All right. You will help me make the bun, right? Sit down so I can do it for you. Then we will make you up a little, and you will be ready. We have to hurry because I do not know how much you have noticed, but you were not here for one hour, but a little bit longer, and that is why I came upstairs. She looked at her watch and could not believe it. It was seven o'clock in fifteen minutes. Oh, it is quarter past seven. I do not know if I will get ready. I will be late. We will be ready. Please do not worry. You will be ready in forty-five minutes. Just in time, waiting for Patrick. Mia comforted her. Anne looked at Mia with great tenderness and enormous gratitude in her eyes. Thank you, Mia. Why? What for? For everything. Thank you very much. I know I did not tell you very often, but I am glad that you are my sister. I do not know what I would do if you did not help me with Scott. I do not know if I would be alive or not. Do not think of bad things, please. Think that tonight you will enjoy yourself, and you will have a good time. Think positive. Yes, I think Patrick is a good man. Yes, and I want to ask you something. Well, better, plead you something. What? What is it? Please, do not play with him. If you do not like him, tell him, or do not want to go out with him anymore, tell him, because he has a lot of suffering in his life, according to Christian and I, and even he thinks that he does not deserve to suffer, but both of you deserve to be happy. Mia, I know that I was not a good person before, and I played with men and their feelings, and you have the right to think that I want to play with him. But believe me that after the whole situation with Scott, I have changed and I do not want to hurt anyone. I really like Patrick, and I would like to give this a chance to see where it goes if something more could happen between the two of us, if there is a chance for a romance at all, she said. Mia smiled at Anna's words and nodded. I hope it will be. I hope you both agree and you will be very happy. After everything that has happened in both of your lives, you deserve it. She hugged her gently and continued to style her hair. When she finished her hair and makeup, Anna looked gorgeous like a little doll that just came out of the box, as a beautiful model that no one can stop while walking on the catwalk. Gently, yet so firmly, so firmly. She was beautiful. Her dress looked great 
and her makeup was open enough. Mia knew she was trouble, and that when he sees her, Patrick would definitely fall in love with her. Chapter 53 She was ready. They went downstairs where Christian was waiting for them. Then the doorbell rang. It was exactly two minutes to eight o'clock. Patrick has arrived, said Anna. It seems that way. Maria opened the door and Patrick entered. He was wearing a beautiful black T-shirt that outlined his beautiful abdominal muscles, and the T-shirt was short-sleeved to show off the beautiful tattoo he had. He was wearing black pants and black shoes. He was impeccably dressed. His hair was slicked back, and he looked great. She immediately imagined putting her fingers in his hair. Good evening. Patrick greeted them. Good evening, Patrick. They shook hands with Christian as he kissed Mia and Anna on the cheek. You look beautiful, Patrick told Anna. Thank you, and you look good as well. He smiled gently and said, If you are ready, we can go. Yes, I am ready. Christian and Mia looked at them. Have a nice evening said Mia. Let's go, and he took her hand and carried her to the car. She had a beautiful smile on her face, and she could see the beautiful light radiating from her. She felt great, and she knew this night was going to be wonderful. She knew she was not making any mistakes going on this date, and she knew that maybe Patrick would be the very man who would make her happy. They got in the car, he turned on the radio, and soft music started playing. I hope you like this music. Yes, yes, it is good. If you want to change it. No, I do not like it. How was your day? Good. Honestly, with children, it is always fun and interesting. I am so glad. And yours? What was your day like? How was work? Well, boring. Every day is the same song searching for evidence, catching criminals, and devising good strategies to get them to confess that they committed the crime. Off. I hope everything went well. Yes, we will talk during dinner. I hope you have good stories, she smiled. Yes, I have a lot. But I also hope you have, because I would like to get to know you better. She nodded and replied. Ahem. I will try to please you with my stories. Do you promise? He asked her. She nodded. After two or three minutes, he spoke again. We arrived. He got out of the car, opened the door, and held out his hand. Thank you. They entered the restaurant. The waiter placed them on a table close to the fireplace, where there was a small but sufficient light in which they could have enough privacy so that no one would mind and the table was a little further away from them, so that they could talk freely and to share various information or stories from their lives. He pulled out her chair and adjusted it. Thank you, she said. No problem. Welcome, said the waiter, handing them a menu. Thank you, said Patrick, and continued. Let's take a look, and I will call you. All right. They opened the menus and talked while watching them. What about a bottle of red wine? To be able to, I would like. The food here is wonderful. I like the steak and curry sauce the most. Mmm, it sounds very tasty. Did you decide what to order? Yes, so we can call the waiter. He waved his hand and called the waiter. Welcome. What would you like to order? I would like a red wine, and I would like a steak and curry sauce, and the lady. I, too, would like the curry sauce and steak. He praised the steak and curry sauce, so I would like to try it. She smiled gently. All right. The waiter left them alone. While they were waiting for the food, they talked. Was there an unpleasant situation with your ex again? He asked. No, thank God today there was not. 
What is the matter with him? What is happening? Well, they must have told you. I mean, Mia or Christian must have told you. Honestly, yes, something. But I would like you to tell me. I would like to understand you. It is a long story. I have it all the time in the world. All right. But you promised me you would not misunderstand me. I promise. You probably know that Mia and Scott were in a relationship. He nodded. While they were in a relationship, at first there was nothing between me and Scott. But a few months later, he started texting me. I ignored him at first. But after he started telling me that his relationship with Mia is bad, but he does not want to leave her because she was threatening him with suicide, I started to feel sorry for him. We started talking almost every night. He was very kind and disappointed in his relationship, which over time I wanted to help him. I did not notice when I fell in love with him. He always wanted to leave Mia. I begged and forced him to tell her the truth. She would understand us. She would surely be angry. But I was sure that she would pass. But he did not even want to hear about it. What happened next? When I finally thought he would tell her, he asked her to be his wife. Oh, Anna, please do not feel sorry for me. She looked at him gently. Sorry, that was not my intention. All right, she nodded. Please continue, she nodded and continued. When I realized what he was doing, I was already too much in love with him, and he used it. That is why I told Victoria everything, and she was sure of what she suggested. What? What did she suggest? She said that it would be good to tell Mia, but since she and I did not have a good relationship, we knew that Mia would not believe me in that, so I had to show her to see the whole truth. We were certainly not close, and I knew that no matter how angry he was, he would not do anything to me because of Michael. And after Mia saw you, she canceled the wedding. Yes, she decided to accept Christian's offer and marry him, and Victoria was too happy about that. Scott never forgave me for that and was never the same kind and gentle man he had been before. Then I realized everything, that he was just using me to have a good time, while he really loved Mia. Anna. She did not know what to say to her, how to comfort her. Do not worry, I am fine. I just think I told you too much about the first date. Do not worry, even though it is the first meeting. I feel very connected with you. Me too. Please continue. So when I realized I decided to leave him, and in fact I left him, he begged me and sent me flowers, messages, but I did not want to go back with him until I realized that I was late. Then the morning sickness started, and I had to go to a doctor who told me I was pregnant. I understood that as a sign from God and called him. I told him I wanted to see him, and we went for coffee. I told him the news, and he accused me of deliberately getting pregnant in order to marry him and tie him to me. I told him that it was not so, that I did not want to marry him. And fortunately, he believed me, and we did not get married. There was no pressure for that. Yes, it is good because now you do not have to go through that divorce process. Yes, that was the best decision he made about us. You were lucky. Please continue. When Michael was born, he changed. He started to get very nervous, until one day he came annoyed by the company and a little drunk. Michael was two months old when he first hit me. Then he apologized to me for days. I forgave him because I thought I loved him, and we have a son together, until something else annoyed him and he repeated the same procedure, hitting, apologizing. Finally, when Mia came to my door, I gathered courage and left him. That is it, my story, my past, 
Then I started living with Mia and Christian, and the rest you know. He smiled. At that moment, the food arrived. The food was and looked too delicious. Chapter 54 During dinner, Anna looked at him and knew that he was a wonderful man. What is your story? Tell me. Are you sure you want to know her? Well, I told you mine. Yes, but mine is much scarier than yours, and I am afraid you will run away when you hear it. You did not run away from mine, and I promise you that I will not run away from yours either. All right, he nodded and continued. As soon as you finished college, I met a beautiful young girl. She was great, with beautiful blue eyes and long blonde hair. I fell in love with her at first sight. When I finally gathered the courage to approach her, I realized that she was waiting for me to approach her because I was like her. But she did not know how to tell me. We started having fun. She became my whole world. She was still in college, fourth year, and got a new roommate. During one of our quarrels, her roommate offered her marijuana. She tried and made her feel wonderful. Then she always wanted to have the same feeling. When they offered her heroin and told her that she would feel great, she accepted. By the time I discovered it was too late. She was deeply mired in the drug world. I tried to help her get rid of her addiction. She neglected college, and I neglected my job. I was a newly employed police officer. I tried in every way to help her. I even reported her to a drug rehabilitation center, and she was clean for several months. But I do not know why or how she succumbed to the drugs. This time she made me a big problem at work because she was arrested with cocaine. I tried to save her and cover her, but the commissioner caught me in the act. He forgave me, but said that if I did not leave her, she would fire me and I had to choose here. I wanted to choose her, but you realized that it would ruin my life if I stayed with her. Oh, Patrick, I am so sorry. Thank you, but that is not even close to the end. I am listening to you. Please continue, she said. She was looking for me, and I was bored for a few months. Then she suddenly disappeared. I thought she was dead, overdosed. I was looking for her, but I could not find her. I blamed myself that I did not do enough to save her. In the end, I had no way out, and I reconciled with fate. Until one morning, a few months later, when she appeared at my door. It was good. It looked good. He asked me to stay with him. She swore to me that she was clean. I believed her and let her stay with me. He wanted us to be together again, but I rejected her and said no. I was too afraid that something might happen, that she would disappear again, that she would succumb. I left her at home that day and went to work. I did not even think that she could harm herself. I was sure that she was clean or that she loved life too much. But I seemed to be wrong. When I got home, there was water everywhere in the hallway. I thought a pipe broke. I shouted for it, but there was no sign of it. I immediately went to the bathroom. The door was locked, and I broke it. But the smudge I saw after that changed my life. She was lying naked in the bathtub with a needle in her hand and a message on the sink. He wrote, If I am not with you, I do not want to live anymore. I do not belong to this world. I collapsed. I did not know where I was. The next few hours or days may be like a fog. I do not remember very well anything. Everything is somehow blurry to me. After she finally finished, the funeral, the confrontation with her family, the insults from them, and of course the accusations. But you are not guilty of anything. She would only ruin your life, and you were careful not to do that. Yes, but her parents did not see it that way. They blamed me. They thought I was guilty, and worst of all, I thought so. I started drinking, not much, but enough. I started working all the time, just so I wouldn't think about it. I got bogged down in work and knew nothing else. Luckily, I had friends like Christian who were by my side, 
and who helped me in everything, and I overcame that. Yes, Christian is a good man. Anne agreed with him. Exactly, he is great. He was here for me, and now that I need him, I cannot help him even though I love him. I have to obey the law and work according to it. I understand, but please understand us and you. Michael was our father, and we loved him. And if someone really killed him, we would love for him to be behind bars. I understand. But please, let us change the subject. He pleaded her. She nodded. Curry sauce is very tasty. He was right to recommend it. You must come here very often. Not as much as I would like, but let's say enough. The food here is great, and I love it. I agree. Now that I know about this restaurant, I would like to come here more often. We can come here as often as you like. She smiled. He raised his glass and said, Cheers to a great friendship, and I hope for something more in the future. I will toast to that. I hope something more as well. He smiled and continued. Everything depends on you, if you want it. I know. I already told you I am not ready yet. But I promise you I will be. Maybe not right away, but I will be. He nodded. He was satisfied with her answer, and he knew that she will think about it. He will be able to conquer her if he puts his mind to it, because she was open to love. She wanted to love and to be loved again, and he knew that. He did not know if he was ready, but he was also willing to try. He knew that this fragile woman is something that he wants to keep and protect, and that no matter what, he will not allow anyone to hurt her. She was a brave woman, a mother, in which voice he could hear or feel that she would do anything for her son. He knew that she had been hurt before, and he was not planning to hurt her again. After dinner, he paid and took her home. On the parking lot in front of the mansion, he said goodnight to her. Good night. Good night, Patrick. Hey, Anna? Yes? Thank you for the wonderful evening. I had a really nice time. Thank you, too. I had a nice time as well. He kissed her on her cheek. At that moment, she wanted to turn her head and for their lips to meet. But she was too afraid of getting hurt, and she was not ready. But his kiss was something amazing. She felt the skin under his lips burning, and her cheeks were red. He made her feel butterflies in her stomach, and she was excited about that. She opened the door slowly and entered. He went to his car, and she watched him leave through the window. Mia was waiting for her. How was your night? she asked her. It was amazing. He is a real gentleman. He even kissed me on the cheek, and he did not try anything else. He said he would wait for me to be ready. Oh, so nice. Yes, I told him everything about my life. Anna. It is okay, trust me. He told me his story as well, so now we know and understand each other better. Now I know that he will never judge me, and if something happens, he will love me for me, and he will not hurt me. I am glad that you feel like that. I am happy for you. I am so tired. Let's go to bed. You should rest. We have a long day in front of us tomorrow. We do? Yes, you are going to help me with the documents. I have to see if there are any irregularities, and I have to solve them. Actually, find them. I will help you. They hugged and went to their rooms. Chapter 55 The next day came. Mia woke up, showered, washed her teeth, got dressed, and went toward Anna's room. She knocked on the door. Anna opened the door. Good morning, said Mia. Good morning, said Anna. How did you sleep? It was great, and you? Nice. Christian went to his office, so we are alone for the day. We will have time, and also quiet, to look through the files. All right. I wanted to go to the nursery. Do you want to come with me? Yes. Wait for two minutes. I just have to put on my flip-flops. 
They went together toward the nursery. Bella and Michael were sitting on the floor and playing with some Lego blocks. They looked adorable. Good morning, you three, Mia said. Bella raised her head at her mother's voice. Mia picked up Bella and kissed her on her cheek a few times, while Anna did the same to Michael. Mia came next to Anna and kissed Michael on his forehead. Both of them turned toward Jenny and Mia spoke. How were they, Jenny? Are they good? Did they do something? No, madam. They ate and now they were playing a little bit until the food goes down, and I am planning to put them to bed so they can get rest a little bit. All right. Thank you, Jenny. Good job. Thank you, madam. They put Bella and Michael on the ground and left the nursery. Are we going to the study? Anna asked. I was thinking of going to the kitchen and asking Maria to make us some coffee or tea, and then go to the study, maybe to eat something as well, because we have a lot of work to do. Of course. They went to the kitchen. Good morning, Maria, Mia said. Good morning, madam. Miss Anna? Good morning. Breakfast is ready and served on the terrace in the backyard, madam. Nice. Thank you, Maria. How are you? Has the cold passed? Yes, madam. I am feeling much better now. Thank you. If you need the afternoon free to go to the doctor's office or to rest, you can do it. You know that. Yes, madam. Thank you. But I feel much better when I work. All right. They went to the back terrace. The breakfast was served, and it looked amazing and very delicious. Mmm, it looks delicious, Anna said. It does, but I am sure it tastes delicious as well. Those Nutella cream pancakes look amazing. Yes, but I think the whipped cream next to them is even more delicious on top of them, with the cherries or strawberries. You are right. Let's eat then. We have a lot of work to do. They ate, and after that, they went to the study. I am full now. The breakfast was amazing, and I think I ate too much, Anna said. There is not too much when you eat breakfast like this, Mia smiled. I think I have to run for about ten kilometers to lose the calories. I agree, but you will have to stay here and work with me. They started looking at the finance files and a few hours later there was a knock at the door. Come in, Mia said. It was Maria. She opened the door and said, Sorry to bother you, madam, but the lunch is ready. Thank you, Maria. Can you please serve it here on the table? Yes, madam. They served the lunch on the table, and after lunch they continued working. I cannot find anything, Mia said. We might as well give up. I think I found something. I am not sure, but the numbers here do not add up. I think someone messed with them. Where? The November 2017 report, also May 2016, April 2017, and there are not a lot of numbers changed, only one or two a month, so we could not notice it. Let me see. She passed the documents, and Mia could see them clearly. Every month there was a sum of money missing, but not big enough so someone would notice it or make a problem of it. It was probably some expense needed for the company, so no one would complain. But when you see the pattern, you'll notice that there was a sum of about five to $10,000 missing each month. Can you see the pattern? Anna asked. Yes, I can see it clearly now. If someone asked, he could say some cost was paid, or something aside of the sum of money spent. Maybe a machine or an investment, but there are no cover-ups for the money. There are no accounts or trace of the things that money bought or paid. That is right. It is not a lot, but enough to spend it well. I agree with you. We have to tell Christian. If he is doing this, we can catch him for embezzlement and stealing. 
so we can send him to jail. She takes her mobile phone and calls Christian. Hello. Hey, baby. What are you doing? He asked her. Baby, we were looking with Anna through the financial files, and Anna noticed something that we did not before. Really? What? She noticed that every few months, a small amount of money is missing from $5,000 until $10,000. Oh. Yes. When are you coming home? I want to show you this. I have a little bit of work to do here, but as soon as I am done, I will come. Okay, baby. See you. They hung the phone up, and Mia and Anna continued talking. I did not ask you a lot yesterday, but I think now that you have slept, and now that you are rested, I can ask you something. What is it? Anna asked. How was your date with Patrick yesterday? Anna smiled and spoke. It was great. We talked a lot, as I told you, but we shared a lot of private information, deep information about us, our pasts, and I think that I finally found someone to understand me and to like me, for me, not for money. Oh, Anna, I am so glad for you. She caught her hand and smiled. He is a great guy. He is not judging me, and I think that he understood me. Everything about me. I am glad. Mia, I have to tell you something. I mean, I do not want to risk that our sisterhood or friendship will be destroyed, but I have to tell you this. What is it? Anna, please do not worry. Nothing will destroy it. Have I never talked to you about Scott and how everything began? Anna, you do not have to tell me that. I know, but I want to. Is it okay? Of course. Right when she wanted to talk to Mia, her phone rang. It was Patrick. Sorry, I have to take this. It is Patrick. She said with a smile on her face. Answer him. I will leave you alone so you two can talk. Mia, I want to talk to you. I will be in the garden. Answer him, and when you are done, come and find me. She nodded and answered her phone. Mia slowly went out of the room. Hello? Hello, Anna. Hey. How are you? I am great, and you? Great, now that I hear your voice. She smiled on the phone, and he continued speaking. I am sorry that I did not call earlier, but I had a lot of work and I was very busy. It is okay. Do not worry. Is everything okay? Yes, yes. I am just too busy and tired. We had a murder in our hands, so now I have to research for evidence and to find the killer. Oh, I am sorry. I hope you find him or her. Yes, I hope that too. But enough about me. What did you do today? We searched through some files and found some evidence, but until we are not sure, we are not telling or showing them to anyone, including you. All right, but you have to show them in the future, and whatever you do, please do not tell anyone about those files. I do not want you to get hurt, and you will especially if David or Scott find out about them. That might be the proof that you or we are searching for. No, please do not worry. We are not showing it to anyone. Okay, Anna. I'm sorry, but I have to go. I will talk to you later. Is that okay? Of course. Talk later. They hung the phone, and that Anna remembered that now she has to do the more difficult part and face Mia. Tell her the truth, or at least part of the truth. She had to admit everything and she knew that there might be things that she will be angry at, or she would not like to talk to her after them, but she was willing to take a risk, because she did not want any more secrets. Chapter 56 Anna went outside to the study and went to look for Mia. She was sitting in the garden, just like she told her. She was waiting for her, 
and she was watching Jenny and the children playing on the grass. Hey, Anna said. Mia looked at her and smiled. Hey, Mia, can we talk? Yes, I was waiting for you. But before we start talking, I wanted to ask you what did Patrick want? He wanted to know how was my day. She smiled and continued. He said that he is busy at work. They are solving a murder, but that he wanted to hear my voice. Oh, so sweet. I am glad for you. He is a sweet and gentle man. Ahem. Mia nodded and continued smiling. If you say so. Mia, I know you want to avoid the subject, but I want to tell you everything. I do not want to have any more secrets between us. I am not avoiding anything, but I am afraid that it might hurt me or damage our relationship. But I agree with you, there should be no more secrets. Okay then, I can tell you everything. She nodded, and Anna continued speaking. It all began a few months after you and Scott started dating. He started talking to me, then he found my number, and he wrote me a message in which he tells me that that is his number. And if it is okay, he wants to talk with me about you. In the beginning, I told him no because we were not close, and there was not anything that I needed to know or talk about you. Then what changed your mind? He continued writing me messages, and he started talking to me about your relationship, how it was bad. That he did not love you anymore, and he wanted to leave you, but he was afraid that you might hurt yourself. Anna, you know me. That is not true. I did, and I do now. I told him that. You would never hurt yourself for a man, but he was sure, and he even showed me messages in which you claim you have hurt yourself. But I have not. Wait, I have. You have? Yes, I remember that. I wrote to him that I have hurt myself because I was sad and was not careful. But in the second message, I tell him that it was my leg that I hurt by hitting it on the staircase. Well, he showed me only one message. I still remember the words it said, Baby, I am sorry that we had a fight, and because of that I was so sad today that I hurt myself. I love you. Yes, I understand, but I explained everything later. Now that you are telling me, I know. I mean, I understand. But he did not show me the second message. I started believing him and started comforting him, talking to him. We could talk for hours, and I started falling in love with him. I do not know what to say. Please, listen. She nodded. I started falling in love with him and wanted him for me, to be with me, to be my boyfriend, my love. He was with you, but I wanted him to be mine. I did not know what to do. When I thought that he was finally going to leave you, he asked you to marry him and you said yes. I did not know what to do or how to react. I tried to break it off, but he convinced me that he is doing this because you are not mentally well. Mia. I am sorry I believed him. She touched her hand as a consolation and nodded her head so Anna could continue talking. When I could not take it anymore, I told Victoria everything, and she made a plan on how we can make you find out everything. That day, he came to see you at the wedding store. I came as well, and I kissed him. You saw everything, and later on married Christian, and thank God you found a man that will respect you and love you. Yes, that is true. Because of that event, I decided to get my revenge and to marry someone else because I thought that Scott loved me and that it will hurt him. But that it is. It did hurt him. He was devastated. He was unhappy and sad. Maybe I can say even miserable. He loved you. No, he did not. If he was able to cheat on me with my sister, he never loved me. Not truly. Anyway, after you got married to Christian, he changed. He was not the sweet and gentle man anymore. He would yell at me for small things, and he would drink and go out with friends. He did not hit me at the beginning, but he would yell and scare me. He first hit me right before I found out I was pregnant. He was drunk and came home. I yelled at him that his behavior was not okay, and that either he will change or I will leave him. 
He was so furious that he hit me. I got up and I left. He called, begged, and called again, but I did not want to get back to him. Because of all the stress and the death of our father, I did not notice that my period was late, and when I found out, I told Victoria. She was angry, and I still do not know how he found out. He started writing me messages that he loves me and that he loves our baby. He wants to get back to me, and I should not leave him or leave my baby without a father. That he was changed and that he will never hurt me again. It was true. While I was pregnant, he did not hurt me or hit me. The torture came afterward when Michael was born. I would take care of the baby. And if he cried, he would yell louder. And if I protested or yelled back, he would start insulting me or even hit me. I could not leave him. He said I would have nowhere to go, or no one would take care of me and love me. I was so afraid. Oh, Anna. Then Victoria came back from Paris, and I thought I was finally safe. But I was wrong. She was so strong when she came to visit me the first time. She went to the company to take care of Scott, but when she came back again, she said that I should stay with my husband, that he was my choice, and that I should face the music and not escape from it. Anna, I do not know what to say. A tear came falling from Anna's eyes. Mia was holding Anna's hand tightly. Anna got the strength and continued. He did not want to allow me to leave. And when you came to the apartment that day, it was like God sent me an angel to save me and my son. I was sure that no matter how much I hurt you, you were here to help me and save me. So when you said, "Pack your bags, I am taking you with me," it was like singing music to my ear. You are the person that saved me, and I am eternally grateful to you. We are sisters. That is what sisters do for one another. She nodded and smiled. Mia was hugging her and did not want to let her. They heard a loud laugh and scream. They turned around and it was Bella and Michael smiling and playing with the toys. They were not borrowing toys or something. All of them were happy and finally a good family. They are so cute together, Anna said. Yes, they are like siblings. I think that no matter what, Michael will always protect his sister. I agree with you. Mia, I have to ask you something. What is it? Promise me that no matter what, you will love Michael like your son, and that if something happens to me, you will take care of him. Anna, please, nothing will happen to you. I know. I just want to be sure that you will always protect him and love him. So can you please promise me that? I promise, but do not worry. We will always be here for them. They got up from the chairs and went toward the grass. They sat there and started playing with Bella and Michael while Jenny was watching them. Chapter Fifty Seven. The next few days passed very fast. Anna was nervous and excited at the same time. She was talking to Patrick every day, but they did not have the chance to go out again. He was quite busy at his job. And she felt a little bit neglected. She wanted Patrick to call her. She knew that he was going to call her, and that was true. It was nine a.m. and he called. Hello. Hi, Anna. How are you? I am great now, hearing your voice. He said. She smiled. What are you doing? Nothing much. I am getting ready. We have plans with Mia to look at the finances of the company. Nice. And what are your plans for tonight? He asked her. I have not planned anything. Why? Well, I wanted to invite you to my place for dinner and a movie if you want. At your place? Yes, to be honest. I want to stay at home this evening, and I want to spend my time with you. So, if you would like to come to my place, I would be very glad. And I promise the dinner will taste amazing. Will you cook it? She smiled. Yes, I will. Okay, you have a deal. But the movie is my choice. All right. Do you have anyone in mind? I wanted to watch The Notebook or You Before Me. Oh, romantic movies. 
Yes, is it okay? I can handle them. With you next to me, I can handle a few tears. They smiled. Okay, I will pick you up at eight. No, do not worry. I can come to your home alone. Are you sure? Yes, yes, do not worry. Okay, see you at 8 p.m. I will send you the address. They hung up the phone. At that moment, Anna received a message. The message said, Madison and Square, number 19, apartment 8. XOXO, Patrick. She read the message and was excited and happy. She went upstairs to take a bath, get her hair and makeup done, and get ready for tonight. She decided when she was done with the bath to call and ask Mia to come with her for some shopping. She did not have a nice dress and underwear that was nice. She took a bath and got dressed, then went to Mia's room. She knocked on the door and went inside. Come in, Mia said. Hey, Mia, are you busy? No, I'm not. How can I help you? Well, I need a favor if it is okay. Of course. What do you need? Can you come with me to the shopping mall? Yes, of course. But why? I need a new dress because Patrick invited me to his home for dinner, and I need to buy something new, and I also need new... She was quiet. A new what? Well, new underwear. Mia smiled. All right. Let me get my shoes and purse, and we can go. Thank you. They were ready, got inside the car, and the driver took them to the shopping mall. Anna wanted to buy a beautiful dress, but also she wanted to buy new lingerie because she really liked Patrick, and she wanted to make love to him. She had not made love to anyone in a long time. Maybe not so long as far as saying, but she can say it was not as good as it was in the past. While they were looking for a new dress, they saw Victoria's Secret Shop. So they entered there. For those of you who do not know, Victoria's Secret is an American lingerie, clothing, and beauty retailer known for high visibility marketing and branding. Starting with a popular catalog and followed by an annual fashion show with supermodels dubbed Angels, it is the largest retailer of lingerie in the United States. Mia and Anna looked around and found what they were looking for. Mia bought an everyday pink bra made with playful cotton eyelet lace and push-up padding and the same color, a barely there thong cut complete with raw cut edges, a delicate pink floral cross dye lace that defines this essential demi bra, covering the cups and creating a gorgeous back and strap lace accents, and a pink lace thong, a stunning teddy features a delicate lace front with a bold geometric cutout, plus a flirty exposed back, and a base layer for any and every occasion. This classic push-up delivers the lift you crave, with panty features, a barely there thong cut, complete with raw cut edges, the same print as the bra. Mia also bought some swimsuits, a pink Havana push-up halter top, a pink timeless one-piece that gets a stylish update with braided straps and a crisscross neckline and a white Lagos cutout scoop top. Opposite Mia, Anna bought a push-up bra featuring floral lace cups and a matching tea bag, and an all-over lace thong that has a discreet yet flirty lace-up detail at back, a lightweight pick, an ultra-soft and comfortable lace bralette, and a no-show floral lace back hip-hugger panty, a red push-up bra, featuring floral lace and sheer mesh, and a daisy red lace V-string panty. Also, she bought some swimsuits, like a shine, light green strap, Montanita plunge, one piece, a black Lagos cutout scoop top, and Malta smocked bandeau swimsuit. When they were done shopping in Victoria's Secret, they continued to the other boutiques. They liked Dolce and Cabana, and for you who did not know, Dolce & Gabbana is an Italian luxury fashion house founded in 1985 in Legnano by Italian designers Domenico Dolce and Stefano Gabbana. Mia bought Digi Amore pink gold sunglasses and white lace sunglasses. 
Anna bought the pink Mother of Pearl Devotion sunglasses, green and gold slim combined sunglasses, and black DG crossed sunglasses. They continue their shopping towards Duar. For the ones that do not know Christian Duar, S.E., commonly known as Duar, is a French luxury fashion house controlled and chaired by French businessman Bernard Arnault, who also heads LVMH, the world's largest luxury group. They searched for a nice fragrance, and Mia bought Eau de Parfum Infinissime, and Anna bought J'adore Touche de Parfum. The next shop on the list was Louis Vuitton. The ones that do not know, Christian Louis Vuitton is a French-Egyptian fashion designer whose high-end stiletto footwear incorporates shiny, red lacquered soles that have become his signature. The red sole is protected as a trademark in several countries, and litigation has taken place in various disputes in which Louis Vuitton claimed infringement of its rights. Litigation generally also involved discussion of the validity or the scope of protection of the trademark. To be honest, once you enter a Louis Vuitton shop, you cannot go out with only one pair of shoes. That is impossible. Mia bought a modern style. The hot chick stiletto pump is made of patent leather in a black to red color gradient. It had pointed toe and curved openings. The pink Kate is the essential stiletto with a timeless slim heel. This pump features an alluring pronounced arch and a revealing low-cut vamp with a pointed toe. The Ariza pump demonstrates the Mason Christian Louis Vuitton taste for innovation and is notable for its asymmetrical upper that accents the foot with its daring low cut. The yellow So Kate is an iconic Mason Christian Louis Vuitton pump and stands out for its bold arch. It sits atop a 120 millimeter heel and it is clean lined upper accentuates the foot with an iconic low cut. The pink Galatevi P. Strass is a classic pointy flat with a touch of glamour. The blue Galatevi pump follows the lines of a classic stiletto with a daring Mason Christian Louis Vuitton twist, showcasing Christian's love of transparency. This pump features a fishnet upper revealing a hint of flesh. The Corniel pump, crafted in black veau velours, the Sandal du Desert Alta is singularly daring with its mix of textures and colors, featuring a yellow Terret de Marcel capsule motif scarf to tie around the ankle. It is mounted on a striped wedge sole with a 130 millimeter heel dressed in a houndstooth print. The Choka is a structural twist on the classic Espadrille, taking it to new heights in terms of both heel and sophistication. This towering model features a 150 mm slender stiletto heel and has a slim strap across the toes, thick straps crossing over the top of the foot, and a buckle fastening around the ankle. Crafted in a timeless nude kidskin leather, the sophisticated and refined Rosalie sandal is notable for its thin black calfskin strap that undulates around the foot. This urban and modern model is set on a 100 mm heel and symbolizes the know-how and creativity of Mason Christian Louis Vuitton, a minimalist shoe delicately enhanced with discreet and detailed finishes. Opposite of her, Anna was a little bit more modest. She only bought five pairs of shoes. She bought Elegance Meets Glamour in the Luby Queen, one of Mason's most iconic sandals. Inspired by 1950s pinup girls, this season's iteration is crafted from leather in Cintronade, a stunning shade of yellow. The delicate ankle strap teeters over a 120mm leather wrapped stiletto heel, while the asymmetrical front strap perches atop a wearable platform sole. The daring lines and architectural construction of the Pompidou sandal are what makes it so seductive. Set on a 100 mm heel and zipped at the back, this Mason Christian Louis Vuitton shoe is designed in black calfskin leather embossed to resemble the scales of snakeskin. It features two straps trimmed with natural raffia, one of which surrounds the ankle for a modern style. 
The Pyrocloof sandal recalls the designer's Egyptian inspiration and is characterized by the row of silver studs that surrounds its 110 mm wedge sole and dress its delicate brown calfskin straps. This canvas and linen model features the Terre de Marcielle capsule motif, the colors of which are echoed on the braided sole. The Ariza pump is an asymmetrical model demonstrating the savior fair of Mason Christian Louis Vuitton and features timeless urban elegance via the refinement of its classic lines. Set on a 100 mm heel, the vamp, crafted entirely in nougat brown calfskin suede, is distinguished by a sophisticated pointed toe, a shoe with a daring low-cut vamp and delicate finishes that gracefully enhance the foot. The planet ball is a classic infradito sandal inspired by Mason's iconic SS06 Planet Beach. This flat thong sandal is built on a wide sandal last with a Napa leather insole and features a post-style ankle strap, ensuring comfort and support. It is exquisitely crafted from calf Jurassic Creative Leather in Bianco with a leather trim wrapping around the sole. Iconic Louis Vuitton styling comes in the form of round leather button embellishments. Chapter 58 When they were done with that store, Mia turned toward Anna and said, I'm tired. Do you want to drink a cup of coffee? Yes, I do. But I want to finish shopping for a dress as well. We will. Do not worry. It is 3 p.m. We still have two more hours. Yes, I agree. How about we drink coffee at Starbucks? What do you say? I could definitely drink a mocha and maybe eat a chocolate donut. Anna smiled. They gave the bags to the driver so he can take them to the car, and they would be free to continue their shopping after drinking their coffee. While they were at Starbucks, Mia's phone rang. It was Christian. Hey, baby. Hey, sweetie. What are you doing? He asked her. Nothing, baby. Shopping with Anna. And you? How is work? It is boring and busy. I have a lot of work to do. But I was thinking, after I am done here, I can pick you up and take you to dinner. Yes, baby. I have a new dress that I can wear. All right. Is 8.30 okay? Yes, we will be done here shortly, so I can be ready. What else did you buy? I bought some shoes and bags, and also new sexy lingerie. Oh, really? Uh huh. She smiled. Do I get to see that? I will think about it. Depends. Of what? I will tell you later. She smiled wickedly. Okay, baby. I have to go. My conference is starting. I love you. Love you, too. She hung up the phone when Anna looked at her and spoke. You were sex chatting. No, I was not. Yes, you were. You told him about your underwear. I told him it was new, not anything else. She smiled with her cheeks burning red. Then why are you all red? Because I am uncomfortable talking about that. Anna smiled and continued. I am not talking about that any more, but you have to promise to help me for tonight. I promise, do not worry, I will help you. They drank their coffee, and after that, they continued shopping. They entered Versace. For the ones that do not know Versace, it is an Italian luxury fashion company and trade name founded by Gianni Versace in 1978. The main collection of the brand is Versace, which produces upmarket Italian-made ready-to-wear and leather accessories. Mia bought a Tresor de la Mer print, midi dress, and a Medusa black-ribbed knit dress. Anna did not like anything there, so they continued toward Prada. For the ones that do not know, SPA is an Italian luxury fashion house that was founded in 1913 by Mario Prada. It specializes in leather handbags, travel accessories, shoes, 
ready to wear, perfumes, and other accessories. Mia did not buy anything, but Anna bought a brushed leather round mini pouch. When they left Prada, they were tired but did not give up. They had to find the perfect dress for tonight's dinner. They continued toward Gucci. For the ones that do not know Gucci, it is a luxury fashion house based in Florence, Italy. Its product lines include handbags, ready to wear, footwear, and accessories, makeup, fragrances, and home decoration. Mia bought a wool silk skirt with a slit from Gucci. But Anna did not buy anything, and Anna was about to give up when Mia made her go to Armani. They continued to Armani. For those that do not know Giorgio Armani, SPA, commonly known as Armani, is an Italian luxury fashion house founded by Giorgio Armani, which designs, manufactures, distributes, and retails hot couture, ready to wear, leather goods, shoes, watches, jewelry, accessories, eyewear, cosmetics, and home interiors. There it was, a garment characterized by a feminine tapered silhouette crafted in interlocking stretch viscose. This dress is enhanced by center slit and front draping for added movement. Long sleeves, a straight neckline, and concealed zip complete the look. They left the Louis Vuitton shop, Givenchy, Zara, Hermes for next time. They already had what they were looking for. It is 5 p.m. Thank goodness we are done. I am tired. Yes, I have to take a shower and get ready. Will you help me? Of course I would. I think this will be an amazing evening for you. Anna smiled gently. She felt ashamed, but at the same time, she felt amazing. They both returned home. The first thing that they both did when they arrived was to see Michael and Bella. After that, Anna went to her room and Mia went to hers. Anna took a shower. She washed her hair using Momo shampoo for oily hair, and she shaved her legs. When she was done, she waited for Mia to come to her room. Mia knocked and entered. She was wearing a small makeup cosmetic portable case organizer. Are you done? No, I just showered. But I do not know what to do with my hair or with my makeup. Sit on the night dresser's chair. I am going to put some makeup on you, and I will do your hair. What style are you planning? Anna, for the hairstyle, I was planning just to lay your hair. We can straighten it with a hair iron, but that is the only thing, or maybe make it a bit wavy. I want it to be free. While we can use minimalistic makeup, I think it will go great on your face. I brought my makeup and we can begin. Do you want me to tell you what I will use? Can you, please? Sure. For the foundation, I will use Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation, Mont Blanc, better known as NARS. She put the liquid powder on her face. When she was done, she continued speaking. Now I will put Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer C7. She applied that on Anna's face, and she continued speaking again. Now I will put some powder. To be precise, Peach Perfect Mattifying Setting Powder, Peaches and Cream Collection. Now I think I will do your brows. For them, I have Bobbi Brown Brow Kit, Medium, or Bobbi Brown Brow Kit, Dark. But in your case, we will use the medium kit. I want you to be still now, so I will not do any mistakes and your brows can be even. Mia draws her brows nicely and continued speaking when she was done. Now comes the mascara. Benefit Roller Lash Mascara, black. This mascara will separate, lift, and curl your lashes, and they will be amazing. I think you only need the highlighter and the lip gloss. You can see yourself in the mirror if you want. No, I trust you. When you are done, I will look. Okay, now let's put some highlighter. 
I really like hourglass ambient strobe lighting powder, euphoric strobe light. I think it will also look amazing on your skin as well. All right. If it is nice, I will buy it next time. You know, today I had a really nice time shopping with you. We can go again tomorrow or maybe Monday. Yeah, sure. I had a nice time as well, so we can go. But I want to go to not-so-known boutiques. Why? Well, I do not have a lot of money, and I do not want you to pay for all of them. Anna, please, it is not a problem. I know, but it is just, I could not find a dress for me there. And you did not buy a lot of clothes. That you are right. We can look at other shops. Thank you. So, Monday? Yes, Monday it is. Now close your mouth and let me put you some Kylie Jenner exclusive Ultra Beauty Lip Kit. Now you can look at the mirror. She moves away. Anna opens her eyes, and she is amazed. She looks gorgeous, and her minimalistic style makeup looks amazing on her. Oh my god! Thank you, this looks amazing. I am glad. Now dry your hair while I get a shower, and then I will come back so I can straighten it. All right. She dried her hair. Mia came back, and she straightened Anna's hair. She looked amazing. She got dressed and was done. Mia was surprised. Her sister was very beautiful. Wow, you look great. He will fall down to his knees when he sees you. Oh my God, Mia, are you sure? It is not too much, is it? No, honey, you look amazing. And it is definitely not too much. Thank you. She kissed her. Hey, that is what sisters are for. Chapter 59 Anna was ready. She left the house, and the driver Richards and Martin drove her to Patrick's house. As soon as they left the house, their car was intercepted by Scott's car. He got out of the car and started shouting, Where do you think you are going? Anne slowly opened the window, halfway and looked at Scott. What are you doing here? Where do you think you are going? Martin, please do not go out. I don't think that's your job, Scott. If you are strong, open the door. Scott, go, please. I have the right to continue with my life. Anna, are you listening to me? Open the door. No. She turned to the front seat and spoke again. Richards. Please go. Yes, ma'am. He started the car, and they continued. While Scott ran after them and immediately got into the car and started following them. Fortunately, Richards used to be a professional car racer and was able to avoid following Scott. They arrived in front of Patrick's building. She was too upset and did not know what to do. And a message came from Mia, which read, Don't let Scott ruin your night. It's not worth it. Be courageous and have fun. Patrick is a great guy, and he really likes you. Love you. She smiled and looked at Martin. He smiled at her and said, I had to tell Madame Mia. I know you should not, but I think you needed it. Thank you, Martin. Her message is what I needed. Those few words give me the courage to do what I do next. You do not have to wait for me. I'll call you when I'm done. All right, ma'am. She got out of the car and headed for the door. Ring. Anna? Yes. Who else would it be? Come on in. It's unlocked. Eighteenth floor. All right. She entered the elevator and pressed the button on the eighteenth floor. Patrick was waiting for her at the door. She smiled, and when he saw her, he was stunned. She looked amazing. Wow, you look amazing. Please come in. He opened the door widely. Wow, you have a beautiful apartment. He turned her around and said, You are beautiful, and I was waiting to do this all day. He kissed her. 
The kiss was amazing. When their lips touched, the electricity it made inside of her body was excellent. She felt like she was not in her body, like she was flowing and could see everything that is happening. She had butterflies, and she could not make them go away. He moved his head and looked at her. First, I want for you to try my food. I cooked it especially for you, and then for dessert? I am planning to show you an amazing evening. Of course, if you allow me. It depends. She smiled. Really? He looked at her and smirked. Yes. Of what? Of the food. Depends on the food. She smiled and kissed him on his cheek. Then I am not afraid. Let's eat. You can sit here. What would you like to drink? Do you have red wine? Of course. He took her to the dining table and brought two glasses of wine. He put the glasses on the table. She took one of the glasses and drank a zip while he brought the food. I hope you like it. This is my spaghetti bolognese. The food looked amazing. The delicious pasta meal, spaghetti bolognese, was served on a white plate. A portion of traditional Italian food with Parmesan cheese, minced meat, and a basil leaf on top. It looks amazing, and the taste is spectacular. I've had spaghetti with bolognese sauce, but this taste is to die for. I made it while I was thinking of you. She smiled and was satisfied. There was a man willing to give her compliments and willing to make her feel special. She was finally satisfied, and she felt that there was still hope for her to fall in love again. The one thing she did not know already is that she was in love. She really loved Patrick, and this was her happy ending. Or so she thought. On the other side of town, while Mia was waiting for Christian, Jenny approached her. I am sorry to bother you, madam, but I wanted to talk to you. Yes, Jenny? What is it? Madam, a few weeks ago, Mr. Christian offered to hire another nanny. Yes, I remember, but you said no. Yes, madam, but to be honest, the children are growing up so fast, and I do not think I can handle them. If it is okay with you. No problem, Jenny. We can hire someone. I will call the agency tomorrow. Actually, I have someone in mind. Do you? Yes, if it is okay with you, madam. It is my roommate. She is great with kids, and she does not have a job now. Does she have experience? Yes, she does. She has worked for a family for three years, but they went to live abroad, and she was left without a job. Okay, Jenny. I cannot talk a lot right now, but tell your friend to come tomorrow after 5 p.m. and to bring her resume. We might do something for her. Thank you, madam. She smiled. Mia did not notice because she was too excited waiting for Christian, but there was something wicked in Jenny's smile. What was it? Mia was picked up by Christian and was taken to one of the most exclusive restaurants in the city. They were sat in front of the fireplace, and it felt amazing. The waiter gave the menus and asked them, What would you like to drink? A bottle of red Cabernet wine. Of course, sir. While the waiter went to take the bottle of wine, they were looking at the menus, and they were thinking what they would like to eat. Mia was thinking of pasta with lamb ragu, and Christian was thinking of ordering lamb a la salaise. The waiter came back with the bottle of wine. Is it good? He asked while he put a little bit of wine in Christian's glass. Christian smelled the wine, stirred the glass, and took a sip of it. It is fine. You can serve it. The waiter served the wine and then spoke. Did you make up your mind? What would you like to order? I would like pasta with lamb ragu, Mia said. And I would like to order lamb. A la Salace, Christian said. The waiter took the menus and spoke. Of course. While they were waiting, Mia spoke. Today Anna had a bad situation in front of our house. What kind of situation? Well, while she was going to Patrick's house over dinner, 
Wait, what? Anna is at Patrick's house? Yes. He called her this morning, and they agreed to have dinner at his apartment. Nice. So, you were saying about Anna's situation? I do not know the details. Martin wrote me a message. Okay. Well, the message said that Scott interrupted them while they were going out of our house, and that he stopped them and started yelling at Anna. Like, where is she planning to go? How dare she? Things like that. And? Well, when she arrived at Patrick's house, she did not know she wanted to go inside. But I wrote her a message, and I guess she went inside, because Martin did not write or called me back. What kind of message? That she should not allow anyone to destroy her evening. Nice. Oh, and I also wanted to tell you that while I was waiting for you, Jenny approached me. What for? She told me that two babies are too much work, now that they are growing up. All right, we can hire someone. She suggested her roommate. Oh? I told her to tell her roommate to come to the house after 5 p.m. and to bring her resume. We can have a talk with her. I agree. We can see her. And if she has good recommendations, we can hire her. We told Jenny a few weeks back that if she needs help taking care of the two of them, that we can hire someone to help her. I know. Taking care of two kids is a big, full-time job. And I want Jenny to feel okay. I want for her to take care the best way she can. And if she feels tired, maybe it is time to hire someone. I agree. The dinner was served. This looks delicious, Mia said and continued. I wonder if it tastes as delicious as it looks, she smiled. I am sure it is. Everything in this restaurant is delicious. I really like it here. You do? Yeah, we usually take the business partners or other businessmen here for lunch. And you have never taken me here, she smiled. Baby, I did not know if you would like it. I usually take you to more exclusive restaurants. I know, baby, but this one is exclusive as well. I can say that. In the food review, it is said it is one of the best restaurants in the city. They deserve that title. Mia tried the food and spoke again. On that one, we can agree. The food tastes amazing. I really like it. I am really glad, baby. When they were done, Christian called the waiter. Yes, sir. Can you bring the check, please? Of course, sir. Right away. Thank you. The waiter brought the check. Christian paid the bill, left a tip, and they left the restaurant. They went home. Chapter 60 Anna was having fun talking to Patrick and learning new things about him. She was excited. She wanted him to take her and make love with her all night. But she did not want to show that right away. She wanted to make him wait a little bit longer. When they finished dinner, she got up and went to the sofa. She wanted to watch a movie. We can watch a movie if you want, she said. Of course. I have the best movie prepared. I think that you are going to really like it, he said. You do? She asked with a curious look in her eyes. Yes, I do, he answered. He turned on the TV and played How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days with Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson. I hope you like this movie. With a smirk on his face, he said, I do. It is one of my favorites. But how did you know? She asked him. Well, every girl likes these types of movies, and I also might have had a little bit of help from your sister. He answered with a shy smile on his face. She smiled. That girl, Mia, she said. She is a great woman he said. Yes, she is. She is the best. Anna smiled. He sat next to her, hugged her, and they started watching the movie. In the middle of the movie, he started kissing her on her neck. Anna was looking at him when she should have been watching the movie, and he knew that was his signal. 
She was giving him silent permission to start what she knew it would happen. Once she came here, he felt like a teenager, so excited about the prospect of feeling her up for the first time. Turning his body toward her in his seat, he held the back of her head as he brought her lips to mine and growled into her mouth as he began to kiss her hungrily. There was something wildly erotic about testing the limits with her. With each lick of his tongue against hers, he wanted more. His hand slid up her thigh and under her dress until it landed on the elastic of her underwear. Her hips wriggled beneath his hand as he slipped his finger underneath. Her panties were drenched. She was so aroused, and it made him wonder if she had been like that all night. He closed his eyes in euphoria as he pushed his index and middle fingers in and out of her wet pussy. It was all too easy to imagine what it would feel like wrapped around his painfully hard cock. He knew without a doubt he couldn't go much longer without knowing what that felt like. He yearned to suck on her breasts, but her dress wouldn't allow him access without unzipping it from the back. Instead, he lowered his mouth to devour them through the fabric before kissing his way back to her mouth again. He whispered in her ear, I can't wait to fuck you. She ran her fingers through his hair as she kissed him harder. He continued to finger fuck her while massaging her clit with his thumb. When she tightened repeatedly against his hand, he knew she was coming. It hadn't taken much. There was nothing sexier than watching her scream out in silence as she climaxed. I couldn't wait to hear what she sounded like when she came with him inside her in the privacy of his bedroom. When she stopped moving, he slipped his finger out and took it into his mouth, savoring every bit of her taste. He had started out just teasing her. As she lay back on the bed with her black dress hiked up to her waist, he kissed up and down her thighs and over her stomach. Her breathing was heavy, and it was hard to tell if that was from anticipation or nerves. There was only one way to find out and that was to press his tongue against her clit. The moan that escaped her was all the confirmation he needed that she was more than okay with this. With each movement of his tongue, he wanted her to know how badly I'd wanted this, how good it felt to finally taste her. His cock was beyond ready to explode as he drove his mouth into her while she moved her hips beneath him. He pulled her thighs toward him to bring up her body closer against his face, and inhaled her. It felt so good to give her pleasure that he had almost forgotten it was not supposed to be about him. This was about getting her to come so hard against his face that she had no choice but to be relaxed tonight. Yet, he was the one with a rock-hard erection and an insatiable need to keep devouring her to prolong this. He had always loved going down on women, but he could honestly say that never before had he felt like he could come from the act alone. With Anna was different. Giving her intense pleasure, watching her bodily sensations override the thoughts in her mind, was truly as arousing as it was fascinating. Aside from a thin landing strip, she was mostly shaved. He knew she'd feel the effects of his stubble rubbing against her tomorrow. He came up for air long enough only to lick his fingers before sliding them inside her, while he continued to eat her out. He loved the feel of her hands, gripping his hair for dear life. If that didn't mean she was enjoying it, he didn't know what did. When he sensed she was close, he slowed down his pace, only to have her push his head deeper into her. Apparently, he was a fool for thinking he was the one in control. Applying more pressure, he felt her beautiful pulsating pussy climax against his tongue. He kept at it, unwaveringly, until her hips stopped moving. Patrick had maneuvered out of his underwear without breaking contact. 
and his rigid cock was hot against her skin. She could actually feel it throbbing against her stomach. Spreading her legs underneath him, he shifted into position, and then held her eyes as he slowly pushed inside. Every inch he eased in, her heart opened wider. This was it. It felt so unbelievably incredible to finally have the last part of him inside her. He had been in her heart since the first time he met. Now, it was the physical connection at last. She realized that this was what it truly felt like to consummate a relationship. Patrick moved in and out gently, taking his time to stretch her body to accept his girth. It was beautiful and sweet, but she could tell he was holding back. Encouraging him to let go, she wrapped her arms around him and dug her fingernails into his ass. His pupils dilated. Fuck! he said. That did the trick. His head lowered and he bit down on her right breast, hard, as he sped up his pace. It was definitely going to leave a mark, and she wanted that, to be marked by him in every way. Fuck! Fuck! He groaned as his mouth moved to her neck where he sucked and bit, while winding fistfuls of her hair in his hands. She moaned when he tugged at it. Everything else in the background faded away except the sound of our jagged breathing and wet bodies slapping together as he thrust deeper and deeper inside of her. He pulled his head back to look at her, and that was all it took. Her body had already been humming along, but her orgasm hit her head on. She called out his name over and over as her muscles pulsated around his thick cock. Just when she thought her pleasure had crested, Patrick drove into her faster and deeper, letting out a sexy groan as he released inside of her, which in turn sent her body riding a new wave of pulses as we came simultaneously together. Catching her breath, Patrick kissed her gently on the lips. Chapter 61 On the other side of town, Mia and Christian were living from the restaurant when he spoke. I want to show you something, he told her. I thought we were going home. I want to make love to you. I am very horny, she whispered in his ear. You are killing me, baby, and I want that too. But first, I have to show you something. She nodded her head and entered the car. They drove for a few minutes when he entered a very tall building. He got outside of the car and went toward her door. He opened the door and gave her a hand. Madam? He gave his hand to her. Thank you, sir. She smiled and caught his hand. They went toward the elevator, and he pressed the button for the fiftieth floor. I want to show you something. I think that you are going to like it a lot. Really? What is it? Tell me. Close your eyes. Why? She asked him. Please listen to what I am saying. It is a surprise, and I want you to be surprised. Do not make me tell you. All right, then. She closed them. They got out of the elevator. He was holding her hand and took her toward the apartment door. He opened the door and they went in. Now you can open your eyes. She did, and the view was amazing. They were so high, even though the lights were not turned on, she could see everything with the help of the moon and the stars. What is this? This is the apartment that I bought for us. I know that you love our house, and I do too. But this is an amazing place, and I did not want to miss the chance to buy it. It is amazing. Yes, it is. If you want, we can also give it to Anna, so she can move her and be more independent. Do you want her out of our house? No, baby, please do not say that. I just think that now that she is dating Patrick, she will need her privacy. Thank you for thinking of us. 
and thank you for being honest and caring. It was the last thing she said before she placed her fingers on the bow at her neckline, slowly untying it. Well, fuck. This was apparently the reward for his honesty. She undid the buttons and her satin blouse fell to the ground. When she unsnapped her black lace bra from the front, her tits sprung out. Even though it was dark, the lights of the city let in enough illumination for him to see her nipples pucker from the cold air. What are you doing? I am giving you a reward, she smiled. Are you sure? Yes. Letting out a shaky breath, he said. Let me warm you up. He bent down and sucked her breast mercilessly into his mouth. She let out a moan the second his lips touched her skin. Mia dug her fingers into his sweater, tugging on it, and pulled it over his head, pressing his bare chest into hers. He took her tongue into his mouth and sucked on it slowly. His cock, now fully hard, was bursting through his pants against her stomach. Then, the feel of her little hand sliding over his crotch obliterated the last bit of control within him. She suddenly dropped to her knees. He was done. His heart seemed to be beating faster than it could handle as she unzipped him and took his cock out. It felt like time stood still as she looked up at him and slid her tongue ring in a slow circle around his crown that was already wet and ready for her mouth. His head seemed to fall back involuntarily from the sensation that could only be described as absolute bliss. This was heaven. When she suddenly lowered her jaw, taking him fully, his balls tightened in a desperate attempt to keep from coming instantly down her beautiful throat. He realized that he was in bigger trouble than he ever imagined, because there was no way I could ever let go of her. Now that he knew what this felt like, all he could think about was how much he could not wait to be inside of her, how he wanted to claim every inch of her, every orifice. He wanted to own her, but the truth was, she already owned him. He was so fucked. Slow down, baby, he said. When he pressed his lips into hers, it felt different from any of the other times he had kissed her. More passionate, almost desperate. It felt like he was releasing all of the pent-up tension in his body into her. What started off slow and sensual soon turned wild and frenzied. No longer able to control the need for him, she made a conscious decision to let go of all of her insecurities. Even if just for this moment in time, here in this bed, she felt safe. That was all that mattered. As if he could read her mind, Christian climbed over her, pinning her down with his arms on each side of her body. He hovered over her for the longest time, just staring into her eyes. He seemed to be holding back, seeking permission. So, she silently nodded, letting him know that she was game for whatever he had in store. He closed his eyes for a moment, then opened them again. He never took his eyes off her as his large hand worked to slowly slide her underwear off. He cupped her right between the legs as she throbbed, so wet and ready for him. He clenched his jaw. Fuck, Mia. I need to be inside. Now. With his box of briefs still on, he ground his cock against her. She squeezed his ass, pushing him against her clit, so incredibly aroused. He pulled off his underwear, and now his bare cock felt hot against her stomach. Spreading her legs as wide as they could go, she couldn't wait for a second longer. Gripping his shaft, she led him into her opening. Unprepared for his girth, she gasped before slowly easing him in. Oh. Fuck. You feel... Fuck. He muttered against her mouth as he moved slowly in and out of her. He pulled his face back to look at her, in her eyes. 
His pupils were dilated as he continued to stare into her eyes, almost hypnotically with every thrust. No man had ever looked at her like that during sex. He was making love to her, body and soul, and she just knew that this was going to ruin her forever. The room was completely still. She could hear nothing but the sound of our wet slapping arousal as he fucked her as deeply as he could. His hands were pulling at her hair harder, and when his breathing became uneven, she knew he was losing control. I am going to come so hard, Mia. He gritted his teeth. So fucking hard. Those words were all it took as she felt her muscles pulsating around his cock. He could feel her orgasm and finally let himself go. His hips buckled as he fucked her harder, letting out a loud groan before coming inside of me. Collapsing, he gently kissed her neck over and over, staying inside of her for the longest time. When he eventually pulled out, she could feel his hot cum streaming slowly down her inner thighs. I had never known what that felt like. She had a few relationships before Christian. She was no virgin. But somehow, since she became his wife, and was with him, it felt like her first real time. Far more intimate and intense than anything she had ever done with anyone. It felt like she should have wanted to run to the shower. But it was just the opposite. She wanted the remnants of him to stay inside of her. He kissed her softly until she slowly fell back asleep, wondering if anything she could ever conjure up in her dreams would top the reality of what she had just experienced. Chapter 62 The next morning came. Anna was still in Patrick's apartment. She woke up, but he was not in the bed. She could hear the shower running. She got up and went toward the bathroom. She saw him. He was handsome. She opened the shower door and entered inside. He turned around and spoke. Hey, sleepyhead. He kissed her, and they made love once again. When they were done, he took her home. While they were parking on the lot, at the same time, Mia and Christian arrived. Good morning, Patrick said. Good morning. They shook hands. Mia smiled at Anna. How was your night? Anna started turning red while Patrick smiled and answered. I know that she is going to tell you everything, so I can only say amazing. And now I have to go to work. Excuse me. Mia smiled, and Patrick kissed Anna on her lips. I will call you later. All right. Ladies, let's get inside. They started walking and entered the mansion. I will go take a shower, and then we can have breakfast together. Wait a minute, where were you two? And why are you wearing clothes like those? Did you return home last night? No, we did not. Mia smiled. Christian was going up the stairs toward their room, and Mia followed him. She was so excited she wanted to be with him all the time, but she knew that he had to go to work and that he was very busy. When she bathed herself, she went downstairs because she wanted to have breakfast with her sister Anna. She wanted to ask Anna how was her evening with Patrick. Did she have a good time, or was it bad? She wanted to ask her everything, and how Anna is feeling right now. Was he a gentleman? Mia went downstairs and found her sister in the dining room. She was having breakfast and was waiting for her. She wanted her to tell her everything as well. Hey, sweetie, how was your evening with Patrick? Did you have a good time? Mia asked her. Oh, my God, Mia, it was amazing. I had the most amazing time in my life. He was so tender, gentle, and paid so much attention to me. I have never been so satisfied before in my life. Oh, sweetie, I am glad. You deserve all the happiness in this world. 
and if it is with Patrick, I am glad. He is a good man, and he will love you and cherish you. I agree with you. He is a great man, and I think he will make me very happy. But what about you? Where have you been? You came this morning, and you were wearing the same clothes that you were yesterday. So can you tell me where you were? Oh, Anna, I was with Christian, and he took me to dinner, and we had an amazing evening. Later, he showed me the apartment he bought for us on the 50th floor in a building downtown. Wait, you are moving? When did you decide that? We are not. Do not worry. He just wanted to show it to me. He also said that if you want it, you can take it. It will not be a problem, and it is not that we want you to leave this house. It is just that you will have better privacy there. Patrick can come there whenever you want. Whenever he wants, he can visit you. It is not the same as living in this house as living in the apartment that we bought, in which you can live alone with Michael. Thank you, Mia, but I think I would like to stay in the mansion for now. I feel safer here, and I think it would be better for me to stay here, if that is okay with both of you. She hugged her and said, Of course it is okay. You are more than welcome to stay here as long as you want. My house is your house, your son is my son, and I know that my daughter is your daughter as well, and you will take care of them the same way I would take care of them. Thank you, but what are your plans for today? Jenny talked to me yesterday, and she said she has a roommate that would like to apply as a nanny in this house because Jenny said that this job is actually becoming too difficult for her. And to be honest, I understand her. Two kids are too much. Anna smiled and nodded her head. I agree with you. Definitely, it's too difficult to take care of two children by yourself. But we have to interview the shoemate, and we have to see her resume. Can I sit through the interview, please? Of course. I told Jenny to tell her roommate to come after 5 p.m., because Christian will be home as well then and all of us can sit and interview her together. A few hours passed. Anna and Mia were waiting for Jenny's roommate. Her name was Blanca. It was 5 p.m. Someone knocked at the door. Maria went and opened the door. It was a girl with red hair, nice face, slim body. She looked nice, and she was very young. She had blue eyes and a nice smile. Good afternoon. My name is Blanca, and I have an appointment with Miss Mia and Mr. Christian. Please come in. They're waiting for you in the living room. Follow me. Thank you. And I wanted to ask you, is Jenny here? Yes, miss, she is here. She will probably come later. She is busy now with the children. Okay, thank you. She entered the living room. Mia, Christian, and Anna were sitting in the living room. They looked at her, and they liked what they saw, but they had to see the curriculum. Her resume, if it was true, and if she was good with children, she would have been their first choice. Blanca, please sit down, Mia said. Thank you. Please make yourself at home, and we can start. She sat on the armchair opposite them. We would like for you to tell us something about you, Christian said. Well, you already know my name is Blanca. I am from Boston, but they came to New York to study. In my second year, I decided that I want to work because my parents did not have a lot of money to support me. So I started working as a nanny. And then I also found my roommate Jenny, and she recommended me with my previous employers, the Lewis family from New York but they went to leave abroad. They told me that I can come with them, but I did not want to leave New York. To be honest, I did not want to go to Europe. For me, the USA is my life. I mean, New York is the city that never sleeps, so I think that here I will have a better chance at a good career. And of course, I see myself as something more than a nanny in my future. We understand you completely, Anna said. Can you please pass your resume? Mia asked. 
She passed the resume. They looked it, and Christian took out his phone. He called Luis, the previous employer. Hello, Luis? Yes, Christian. How can I help you? How are you? I hear you have moved to Europe. Yes, I have. I moved my business here, so me and my wife decided to change scenery and come to live in London. I am glad. You were lucky she accepted. She wanted the change as well. He smiled and continued. Anyway, how can I help you? I am interviewing an ex-employee of yours. Really? Which one? Her name is Blanca Rojas. Blanca? She is a great nanny. We are very satisfied of her. She is an amazing girl, and she took care of our son like a mother would. She loves children. I am glad to hear that. Thank you, Christian said. You are most welcome. So, whenever you come to London, do not hesitate to call me. Louise told him. I sure will, buddy. Say hello to your wife. Thank you. You too. Say hello to your wife. They hung up the phone. After a good ten minutes' discussion, Blanca was warmly recommended by him. It was said that she was the perfect nanny, and that if we did not hire her, we would be sorry. So that was the end of the interview. Blanca was hired and was welcomed to the family. Chapter 63 Anna was sitting in the living room. They were drinking coffee and were talking to Mia. Mia, what are your plans? What are we going to do? Are we going to tell David that we know everything that we know? What he did and that we know that he caused the accident? I'm waiting for Patrick to approve, and then we can actually go to his office, actually to my office, and tell him we know everything. I do not know what to do, to be honest. I am very worried, and I want to make him pay for everything he did. I know, I understand you, I feel the same way. Anna was thinking, she did not know what she wanted to do, but she knew that she had to do something. She went to the nursery, kissed Michael and Bella, and then she took the car and went out of the house. She wanted to clear her head, or to make a plan. She started driving, and before she realized, she was in front of the company and was parking the car in the parking lot. She went to the receptionist and told her she had a meeting with David. I want to see David. I don't have a meeting, but I think that he would like to talk to me. Can you please call him and tell him that Anna is here? Sorry, miss. Can you tell me your full name? Carter. Anna Carter. One of the owners of this company. I am sorry, madam. I did not recognize you. Please go in. Thank you. She entered the elevator and pressed the button to go to the top floor to her stepfather's ex-office and to her sister's office, what was actually now David's office. She saw David's secretary, and she said to her, I need to talk to David right now. I am sorry, miss, but you do not have an appointment. I do not know I need an appointment to see an employee in my company, she replied. I understand, madam, but he is at the meeting and she cannot see you. I do not care. She entered the office and saw David talking on the phone. When he saw her, he was a little bit angry, but did not allow the anger to come out. He spoke. Anna, darling, please come in. Sit. She sat in the chair in front of him. David, I came here to talk to you about Michael's accident. I know it was you who ordered it. Anna, are you okay? How can you say that? David, I know the truth. I heard you and Scott talking about it. You cannot lie to me anymore. I want you to tell the truth. I want you to convince me not to tell Mia. You do not have any evidence, he said. Are you sure? she asked him. I am. So you admit that you have done it. 
I still have evidence, and I will give it to her. Or you can convince me not to. And how can I do that? He smirked with some anger in his eyes. Well, I want you to tell Scott to get the hell out of my apartment and to give me back the shares he stole from me. Anna, you know I do not have that power. I cannot tell him what to do. But what else can I do for you? For now, I want only that. But in the future, that does not mean that I will not need enough money to get out of this country for good. I have to think about it. But I am sure we can have some sort of an arrangement. I will talk to Scott. Do not worry. I will see what I can do. Thank you. Please see. That is all I am asking from you. And I hope that you will think about it and you will give me the support I need. I really, really admire you, and I do not want to see you end up in jail. Anna, please do not make any threats that you cannot keep. But I can. I am living with her now, remember? I can just leave a hint, or maybe evidence near her house or in the mailbox. Maybe a letter that actually names you as a suspect. You know that she actually has doubts about the accident. She still does not believe it was an accident. She thinks someone killed him. And imagine her surprise when she receives a letter saying it was you who ordered it. You would not dare to do that. If you do that, I swear. You swear what? I am not afraid of you. She could see the anger in his eyes. She got up, looked at him, and said, I give you forty-eight hours to make the necessary arrangements. She turned around and left. When she left the office, David took his phone and called Scott. We have a problem. What is the matter? Your ex-lover, your ex-girlfriend, the mother of your unwanted child, she is our problem. What do you mean? I do not understand you. You heard me. She is our problem. Explain. She came to my office and said she had heard us and we were talking about the accident, and she had evidence that we actually order it and someone made it on our behalf. She does not have any evidence. Are you sure? I am. If she had, she would already use them. She wants me out of her life, and she wants me to return everything I stole from her. So, if she had, she would have already gone to the police. So stop worrying. You are annoying me. Well, she said she had them, and she is using them now. She is threatening with sending me to jail if you do not return her shares, apartment, and if I do not give her a certain amount of money. I am not giving back the shares I have worked so hard to get them. But I can give her back her apartment and you can give her a sum of money, but that is all she is getting. And if she is not satisfied with that, then she can turn you in. You can go to jail. I do not care. How can you say that? He asked him and continued. I am your father. You are my blood. Yeah, right, if you say so. The father that never cared about me. Thank you. I do not need a father like that. I am satisfied with my life as it is. Scott, how can you say that? He asked him. Well, that is the truth. You never cared about me. You only found me when you needed a favor, or someone to seduce Mia or Anna, so you can get rid of Michael and you can keep his company. That was in the beginning. But you know how it's not the same. I really, really appreciate you as a son. Too late now, father. If I go to jail, I will sing like a bird. I will tell the truth. You would not. But I would. You said it yourself. I do not love you or need you. The way you do not need me. If you want me to go to jail, I can say everything I have on you and on Victoria, so both of you can go there to rot with me. 
Have you told her that Victoria is our accomplice? No, I have not. Do you think that she will change her mind if we tell her? I do not know. Maybe she will, maybe she will not. Victoria did not help her when she found out what I have done to her daughter, so maybe she will not care that Victoria was involved, and maybe she will send us to jail just to retaliate against her. Oh, my God. We have to take care of her. Fine, do not worry. I will make sure that Anna does not get her way. I have a plan, and trust me, she will regret threatening you. What are your plans? What are you going to do? He asked him. You will see. Now, trust me, he said with a reassuring voice. He knew that if Scott had something in mind, he would make anything that is in his power to make it happen, and he was scared because of that. Scott scared him. He was too evil. There were a lot of secrets that he knew about Scott and what he had done, and because of that, he was scared of him. Chapter 64 Anna went home. She did not know what to tell Mia, so she decided to be direct. Mia, we have to talk. What is going on? You are trembling. I went to see David. You did what? I went to see David. Why? What did you do? I threatened him. I told him that I know the truth, and that if he does not make Scott return my shares, my apartment, and does not pay me a certain amount of money, I will tell you the truth. Oh my God, are you okay? Did he do anything to you? No, he did not. He asked me if I had evidence of what I just told him. And what did you tell him? That I do, and that I am not afraid of him, and that I will use them. Anna, you should not have done that. I know, but I was getting frustrated that he was free and her father was dead. At that moment, her phone rang. It was David. She showed Mia her phone. Answer him and put it on speaker, and I will mute my phone and record the conversation. Okay. She answered him, while Mia muted her phone and started recording. Hello, David. What can I do for you? Anna, I am calling to tell you that I have thought about it, and I decided to accept your proposition. I am glad. Did you ask Scott? Yes, I did, and he accepted. By the way... I have a question to ask you. What? she asked him. If you decide to send me to jail, or Scott, what do you think will stop us to tell the truth and to put your mom in jail? Victoria? Anna was furious, and Mia could see the anger in her eyes. Yes. I would say go ahead. I do not have a mom. She knew what is Scott doing to me and did nothing to stop it. I do not care about her, as much as she did not care about me. But thank you that you told me, so I can go to the police. Anna, do not be a fool. You cannot do that. She is your mother. She loves you. She tried to save you, but she could not. I do not care. When will the meeting be held, so I can get my shares and my apartment back? In three days. Is it okay for you? Fine. Send me the time and place. She hung the phone up. Oh, my God, she said. Mia stopped recording. Anna, I am so sorry. Why? Because I was not sure that Victoria had done anything. But now that he admitted everything, I am sorry. Please do not worry. I am okay. Anna, are you sure? Mia, trust me. After I realized that she knew about Scott and she did not do anything to help me, I decided I do not need her. She is not a good mother. She does not care about anyone else than herself. I am sorry that you realize that. Do not worry about it. I have you. You are my sister. And I love you. I know I know that I do not say it very often, but I really love you. Thank you for everything. I love you too. At that moment, Christian and Patrick came through the door. 
Hey, baby, Patrick said and kissed her on the lips. Hey, baby. How was your day? he asked her. While they were talking, Christian looked at both of the women and knew something was up. He knew his wife, and she had that looking for eyes that were saying that something happened. He wanted to ask her bad. He did not know if he should do that in front of Patrick. He decided to do it. Mia, what is going on? he asked. Nothing. Why are you asking? Now I know that something is happening. You have never answered me with a question if something is not happening, so now spill it. Mia, what is happening? Patrick asked. Well, I and Anna did something bad today. I mean, not bad, but irresponsible. Oh my God, what did you do? Patrick asked. I went to David's office and I faced him that he actually was the one who ordered the accident that killed Michael. What? How did you do that? You were so irresponsible. I am sorry, but I had to do something. You could not do anything, and the police could not do anything. There was not enough evidence, and I had to do something. I threatened him. I told him that I will go to the police if he does not make Scott return everything that he stole from me, my shares, my apartment, and I told him I want him to give me enough money so I can live nicely. What did he do? Did he agree to anything? He called right before you came here, and he said that he actually accepts Anna's offer, and that he will make sure Scott returns everything to Anna, Mia explained. I am scared that he might actually do something to ask you or to your son, so be careful, please, baby. He said that she will send me the time and place, so can you help us now, Patrick, please? Do you have any evidence? Did you record him? Yes, we did, Mia answered. Then I will see what I can do. Please be careful. What are you planning to do now? Do you want us to do something together? Anna asked him. I am free and I am available. We can do what you want. If you want, we can go out to a restaurant. Maybe Mia and Christian would like to join us. We would love to. Mia answered. Where do you want us to go out to? Christian asked. Maybe that you Chinese restaurant downtown if you would like. Yes, please. I haven't been to a Chinese restaurant for ages. We can go there and eat. Okay, go get ready and we can go. Let's tell Jenny and Blanca and then we can go out. I think that they need to know and know that if there are any troubles with the children, they should call us. I will tell Jenny, are you go upstairs and get ready, Christian said. They went upstairs, each one of them to their room, while Christian went to the nursery. He opened the door and saw Blanca watching over the children, and Jenny was talking on the phone. When Jenny saw him, she hung up the phone right away. He spoke, you do not have to hang up. It might be an emergency. No, please do not worry. How may we help you? she asked. I came here to tell you that we are going out to dinner, and we wanted to tell you if there is anything that you need or if something happens, not to hesitate to call us. Of course, sir. Please do not worry. Have fun, she said. But her eyes could reveal some kind of evil that Christian could not know or see yet. The boys had waited for a few minutes until they got ready, but when they were done, they looked amazing. Both of them were dressed casually, and their hairstyles were only straightened hair or wavy hair. They do not put any makeup on their face, only mascara foundation and lip gloss. When Christian and Patrick saw them, they were amazed at how fast they were ready, and actually how beautiful they looked. Wow, both of you look amazing. Thank you. Anna and Mia smiled gently. They went to the Chinese restaurant. They wanted to have a good time, but they did not know that what will happen next will change their life. They left their home unprotected, and they did not imagine that someone might get hurt, or even worse. Chapter 65 While they were out at the restaurant, something happened, and then home. No one noticed anything, but Blanca and Jenny went out, and they carried big bags with them. 
What was going on? When they came home, they went to the nursery to kiss their children goodnight. But they weren't any children, and there weren't any nannies. Where were they? What was going on? Mia started calling Jenny, and Anna started calling Blanca. But their phones were off, and no one was answering. Their phones are off. They are not answering. Oh my God, what is going on? Mia asked. Mia, please relax. We will find them. They have never done that. Why have they done it? Why have they not called us? And why have they not told us where they are going? Oh my God, something is happening. Anna said. Anna, baby, please be calm. We will find them, Patrick said. What if this is David? What if he is trying to send me a message? What if he has kidnapped our children and he will do anything to hurt us? Maybe he will kill them. I am scared, Patrick. Anna, please do not say that. This is not a movie. This is real life. The children are fine. They will appear shortly. Christian said, "We have to find them. I will call the police, baby. To do not worry." Patrick took out his phone and he called the police. In half an hour, the police and with the help of the district attorney, the FBI came to their house. They started looking for the children, but there was not any trace. It was like they had gone underground. At that moment, Anna's phone rang. She saw that it was Scott, and she knew that he had something to do with this. She answered while the police were listening to the conversation. "Hello, I have the children with me. Scott, what do you want? Please do not hurt my children," Anna said. "I am not planning to hurt them, not yet, anyway." "What do you want?" she asked him. I want the evidence you have against my father. Your father? Yes, David is my father, the one that never cared about me, the one that never loved me. I am sorry, Scott. I know that hurt you a lot, but our son and Bella are not responsible for that. I will give you the evidence, and I will give you whatever you want. Just bring the children back home safely. I told you what I want. And I also want an amount of money, a big amount, and do not call the police or else. No, we will not. Please. He hung up the phone, and Anna started crying. He will hurt them, Patrick. No, he will not. I will stop him. Please do not worry, baby. I will never let him hurt our son. He hugged her and kissed her. He told the police and the FBI everything, and the next day the FBI went to the company. Hello, we have a warrant. We want to search the company records and finances. I am sorry, sir. You will have to talk to Mr. David, but he is not here right now. If you would like, you can wait for him. Call him. He needs to come right away. At that moment, the elevator door opened and David entered the lobby. Gentlemen, how can I help you, Mr. David? Yes, I am Agent Colson, and this is Agent Jared. We have a warrant to search your office, your phone records, and your finances. And while we are doing that, you would have to come with us to the police station. Why? What is going on, sir? We have evidence that you might be involved in the kidnapping and also murder. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Bella King and Michael Carter are kidnapped by a person who is claiming he is your son, Scott. He is not my son. He is an insane person. If he is insane, how did you know that we were talking about Scott? I did not. I just assumed. He tried to get out of the mess, but he could not. David was arrested and taken to the police department. He was put in a solitary while he was waiting for his lawyer. He wanted to talk and tell the truth that Scott made him do it, that all this was Scott's fault, but he could not. 
He still had faith in his son, and he knew that Scott will do anything that is in his power to save him. He just did not know if he would be able to hurt his own son. One of the agents entered the room. He spoke. Sir, we have called your lawyer, and he said he will be here in ten minutes. All right, then I do not have to talk to you, and I will wait for him. Of course, sir. But I wanted to tell you that if you talk to us right now, that will be better circumstances for you at court. How do you mean? David asked the agent. Well, if you tell us the truth, we can talk to the judge and tell him that you cooperated with us in finding the children and saving them. So instead of a life in jail, you can go on probation in 15 to 20 years. You would not have to spend the last years of your life in jail. I think that you do not have any evidence, and that is why you were asking me to tell you where my son is, something that I do not know, and even if I did, I would not tell you. As you wish. Please, when my lawyer comes, tell him to come here. The ancient got up and left the room. At that moment, Mia came in. Mia? What are you doing here? Uncle David, is it true? She asked him with a sad look on her face. She had to pretend that she is on his side, in despair or in hope that he might tell her where Scott is. No, Mia. It is not. It is a lie. I have nothing to do with the kidnapping of your children, or the accident of your father. I am only Scott's father. I do not know what he had done. Please, Uncle David, if you know where Scott is, you have to tell the police. They have to find my baby. She is scared and alone. She is very little. Mia, she is not alone. I know that he has been dating Jenny for quite a long time so far, and that she's helping him to do this. Well, she and her roommate. What? Yes. He is paying Blanca a good sum of money, and he seduced Jenny. At first, it was because he wanted to know everything that you did. Later, he wanted to control Anna and to know a lot of information about her. He wanted to make her pay because she left him. But until the FBI came to my office, I did not know what he had done. Uncle David, do you know where he is? I do not, but I think that someone else might know. Who? Victoria. What kind of thing does she have with this? Well, she is our accomplice, and she planned everything. I think that she might know where he is, or she might even be hiding him. The FBI was listening behind the glass, and the agent said, Did you hear that? Ask for a search warrant for Victoria Carter. We are going to her apartment. They might be there. Uncle David, Mia said and continued, Why did you do this? My father was like your brother. No, he was not, Mia. I hated him. Excuse me? Why? Because he stole the love of my life from me. He stole your mother from me. She loved me first, and when I introduced her to your father, my business partner, she was madly attracted to him, and he seduced her. She broke off our relationship, and she married him. I never forgave him. He was my best friend my brother, and he stole her. They fell in love. Do not give me that shit about love. You wanted to know why I did what I did, and I told you. So now you can leave. Mia stood up and went to the door when David spoke again. Mia, I hope they find Scott, and I hope your children are safe. Because he is evil, and I do not know if they are alive. I will pray for them to be. I am once again sorry. Please, I hope that one day, you will find strength in your heart to forgive me. I am sorry, Uncle David, but I am not God. He is the only one that forgives every mistake that people do. Not me. 
I do not think that I will find it in my heart to forgive you. At least, not for now. She opened the door and left. David was sitting there, and he could feel a small tear roll down his cheek. Chapter 66 The FBI went to Victoria's apartment. They heard a loud scream. It was a baby's cry, and they realized that the babies are there. They knocked the door down and entered the apartment. They saw Jenny laying on the sofa. Blanca was nowhere in sight, and Scott was under the shower. Miss Jenny, you are under arrest for the kidnapping of Bella King and Michael Carter. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak to an attorney, and to have an attorney present during any questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be provided for you at government expense. Scott was under the shower. The FBI agent read to Scott his rights. Miss Scott Turner, you are under arrest for the kidnapping of Bella King and Michael Carter, and for causing the accident of Michael Carter. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak to an attorney and to have an attorney present during any questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be provided for you at government expense. I have nothing to do with the murder of Michael. It is all David's and Victoria's fault. And where is this Victoria Carter? She left about 15 minutes ago. She said that she would go and buy some baby food. She was done taking care of the children. She could not stand them anymore. We will find her. For now, we have both of you. They arrested them, and the babies were finally safe. They took them to the police station. There was no trace of Victoria. Where had she gone? What happened to her? Scott was taken to the interrogation room. Mr. Turner. You are under custody, and while we are waiting for your lawyer, is there something that you would like to confess? The agent asked him. I want to confess a lot of things, but you do not have any evidence. We do. We have plenty. Jenny has testified against you, and it will be best for you to tell us everything. Fine. He started talking. I will tell you my whole story, so better listen up so you can understand why I did everything I did. I was born in a small city. My father left my mother before I was born. She was a secretary in his company. When he found out she was pregnant with me, he fired her and made her leave New York. She hated him, and she hated me, because I reminded her of him and the mistakes she made. While she was alive, she treated me awful. She died when I was ten years old. I was left on the street and was sent into a home. There I was until the age of eighteen. When I was old enough, I left the home and went in search of my father. I wanted to make him help me. I found him. He was a rich businessman who lives in a big mansion and had a lot of money. He invited me to his house and said that he will pay for my education and for everything that I need. Only if he chose the college I will study at, and that I have to make him a few favors. But nothing illegal, only a few small favors. I was happy. I have found my father. He was also willing to help me and love me, so I agreed to anything he asked. He chose the college, and he told me that I have to seduce Mia. It took a lot of effort, but in the end, I have finally done it. She was finally mine. We dated. But I made a few mistakes. How the fuck did I know that she would find out? When she left me, he told me that I have to continue my romance with her stepsister Anna, which I hate profoundly. But I had to keep the appearance and make myself available and loved her. But that was not the end of it. Her mother Victoria had the hots for me. So I started a relationship with her as well. She was my lover. But to be honest, when she went to live in Paris, I was relieved. I was finally free, at least of one of them. 
Then Mia had to call her and tell her about my relationship with Anna, and she had to come back and try to stop it. But here I had the help of my useless father. He helped me. I have to admit that. He convinced Victoria that I really love her daughter, and that if she did not give up, he will go to the police and will tell everything that Victoria did and planned. They heard his story. The FBI agents were stunned by how a person, a mother, can be so cruel with her daughter. How can she be with her daughter's husband, boyfriend, fiancé? She had no morals, and she had no compassion. She was a real villain, and she was a person who had no scruples. On the other side of town, the children were taken safely to their parents. When both of the mothers saw their children, they started crying and smiling at the same time. They were relieved that their children are safe. They hugged them and kissed them. They did not want to let them go. Oh, baby, you are finally here and you are finally safe. She kissed her daughter. Christian hugged his daughter as well and said, Baby, you have to let her go. She cannot bread. Patrick was holding Michael, and Anna was hugging both of them very strongly. She was relieved and happy. She kissed them both. Thank you. Oh, my God, thank you. I am so relieved. My son is safe. He is finally back home with me. Thank you, baby. Thank you. What for? That you found him and saved them. Mia raised her head and spoke. Thank you. Patrick, you are a lifesaver. You returned my babies, and you are the best. You have made my life perfect. Christian let go of his wife and daughter and went to Patrick. He shook his hand and said, Thank you, Patrick. I owe you my life. No problem. You gave back the meaning of my life with your trust in me, and this is the least I can do for you and your wife. You will also be my family one day, after I married Anna, of course. Anna started blushing, and Mia started smiling. Mia knew that the babies were too little to remember anything, but she wanted to make them smile and to hug them, to protect them from the world. She wanted to love both of them until the end of time. They were safe, and they were happy. She hugged Michael and her stepsister Anna and said, I hope that one day we will be one big happy family because we deserve that. My father would be very happy to see us getting along like this. He would be satisfied in the afterlife as well. But Patrick, what happened? How did you find them? Where were they? What is going on? Mia, it is a long story. One that I am going to tell you about, all of you. But I think that first we should go to the living room, and I think that both of you should sit, because the thing I have to tell you, it is not a little bit nice or beautiful. Patrick, you are scaring me, Anna said. Please do not be scared. It is something that has passed, and you are fine and safe now. All right, then. Let's enter the living room so you can tell us everything. Chapter 67 They entered the living room. Maria was glad that everything was okay. Mia turned around toward Maria and spoke. Maria, can you please take them to the small children's area and watch them? It was an area in the corner of the living family room that they used for the children when they were drinking coffee. So the children can sit there and play with their toys, and they were still next to them, and they could watch them. Of course, madam, Maria said. She took them there, and when they saw them that they were out of their reach, and they could not hear anything, Christian turned to Patrick and spoke. All right, Patrick, we are sitting, and we are alone. You have to tell us everything that is going on. It is a long story, and you have to promise me that you will not get stressed. We promise, both of them said. All right. We arrested Scott and Jenny. 
They were hiding in an apartment together. Blanca was not with them, but also was not Victoria. They were in her apartment, well, actually the apartment Victoria was using when she was in town. They listened to him carefully as he continued. When we arrested them, Jenny was lying on the sofa and was watching TV. The babies were crying and Scott was having a shower. Oh, my poor babies, they must be hungry, Mia said, and she turned toward Maria and continued. Maria, bring them bottles of milk so they can eat a little bit. Yes, madam, Maria said. Mia, please do not worry. A female officer already fed them. They should not be hungry for a couple of hours. Are you sure? You can try to feed them, but I assure you they are not going to eat, and if they do eat, they will vomit later. We can try, I think. Okay, as you wish. Mia, let Patrick continue the story, please, Christian said. Okay, so we took them to the police station. They were suspects, and actually, they were the people who have done it. The culprits, so we had all the evidence that we needed. So when we told Scott that he is going to spend the rest of his life in jail, he started confessing everything, and the things he said are pretty twisted. What did he say? Anna asked with a sad look in her eyes. Well, he said that when he was in his mother's womb, his father fired his mother and made her return to her home city. Her mother gave birth to him, but she never loved him because he reminded her of David. That is a thing we knew, or we supposed. Then he said that his mother died when he was ten years old. He was left on the street and was sent into a home. There he was until the age of eighteen. When he was old enough, he left the home and went in search of his father. He wanted to make him help me. He found him. He was a rich businessman who lives in a big mansion and had a lot of money. He invited him to his house and said that he will pay for his education and for everything that he needed, only if he chooses the college he will study at, and that he has to make him a few favors, but nothing illegal, only a few small favors. He was happy he has found his father. He was also willing to help him and love him, so he agreed to anything he asked. He chose the college, and he told him that he had to seduce Mia. He said that it took him a lot of effort, but in the end, he has finally done it. Mia was his girlfriend. His exact words were, Mia was finally mine. He told us that you two dated, but he made a few mistakes. He said that he had to have a relationship with your stepsister because David wanted to hurt Michael. And what is the best way to hurt a man if not through his daughter? When Anna was profoundly fallen in love with him, she decided to tell Mia. He did not stop her. But Anna did what she did, and Mia found out everything. So when Mia left him, he was furious, and he wanted revenge. So, and this is the hardest part to tell you to, but he knew that Victoria had the hots for him, so he seduced her. Oh, my God, that cannot be true. He is lying, not my mom, Anna cried. I am sorry, sweetie. But he said that she was his lover, but when she moved to Paris, he said that he was relieved, because she would have never come back. But when Mia called her to tell her that he was molesting Anna, she came back to try and stop it. Your mom tried to protect you, but he had a lot of help from David, who threatened her about telling the police about Michael and his accident. Later on, Scott convinced her that he loves you and that if she did not give up on saving you, he would have gone to the police and blamed Victoria about everything. He said that Victoria was the mastermind behind everything. But is she? Mia, of course she is not! Anna continued crying. I am sorry, Anna, but I have to know. I have to know everything. Mia, for now there is no evidence that she was behind everything. Patrick turned to Anna and continued speaking. But baby, you must be ready, because it is possible for her to did that. 
I think that all of us can admit that there is a possibility that Victoria was capable to do that. I know that, baby. She turned to Mia and said, I am sorry, but please understand me. I cannot believe that the person who gave life to me, who should have loved me, took care of me, and protected me was a cold-blooded killer and a stone-blood bitch. That she did not care about her own daughter or her daughter's feelings, and she was the lover of her daughter's boyfriend, because I truly loved Scott. He was someone very dear to me, and she knew that. I am sorry, Anna. Mia hugged her and continued speaking. I know it is a lot, and I know that it hurts. But you have to be brave and strong. You cannot allow something like this to ruin your life or to make you weak. No matter what he said or what had happened, you have Michael, you have Patrick, and you have me and my family. You can count on us, and you can live a good life with us. You have to continue your life and be strong. I know, Mia, and I can say that I will try. But you all have to understand that this was a shock for me and that it hurts me a lot. So no matter what happens in the future with Victoria, and even if sometimes I yell at you, please do not be angry with me, because this hurts. It is like someone cut my body, took out my heart, and smashed it on the ground. This is something painful for all of us. Mia turned to Patrick and continued speaking. What will happen now? With what? With all of them. With David, Victoria, Jenny, and Scott. We have to find Victoria first. She will be arrested and taken to court. Jenny will go to jail. Usually for kidnapping, she can get a five-year punishment from a judge. We will know the date of her trial, and you will have to come and testify. David will be pursued for ordering, planning, and abetting murder, as same as Scott. The only difference to Scott's conviction will be added the kidnapping punishment or crime. If Victoria was the mastermind behind everything, she will spend a long time in jail, probably 20 to 25 years in jail. I think David and Scott will have the same punishment as Victoria. Well, more or less. Good. They deserve it. Mia said and turned to Anna. With a sad look and gentle voice, she said, I am sorry that I said that, but that is how I feel. Anna did not say anything. She just nodded her head. She did not know what to say, because she knew that Mia was right. She was feeling the same way. She was angry and furious at her mother. But in the end, she was her mother. And no matter what, she loved her. She gave her a good life, and she took care of her. So no matter what, she was still that. Her mother. Her blood. Chapter 68 The next few days, everything was calm. There were no new leads, and there was no new trace of Victoria. She was hiding, and she was planning her revenge. She wanted to destroy Mia. The love relationship between Patrick and Anna was making a good way, or better said, good progress, and he was really in love with her, as she was with him. She truly loved him, and he could feel that. A month later. When he closed the door of his apartment, Anna turned to him nervously. He was smiling at her mischievously. Patrick, I cannot really kiss you here. I just want to hug you and sleep tight with you. For you to hold me and protect me, Anna said. He stepped closer to her and tilted her chin gently so he can look into her eyes. Without giving her a chance or warning, he bent down and gave her a thorough kiss on the lips. That kiss swept her off her feet. Once it started, it was so hard to stop. He ignited the fire that has been threatening to light since this morning when Anna first saw him. Anna kissed him back 
with just the same passion. He nuzzled her neck. Anna pulled him to her. Patrick, please stop. Anna begged him. We shouldn't be doing this, Anna said, but Anna could not make the effort to push him away. I know, he whispered, but I cannot seem to help myself. He went back to her lips and kissed her savagely. Anna could not help responding the same way. Anna was hungry for him. Anna wanted him with every bit of her feminine being. At the back of her mind, Anna could not help but thinking how complicated we are making things. They have already slept with each other. They were in a relationship. What was going on in her head? Anna wanted him a lot. Why did Anna tell him we have to stop? Think, Anna, think. He wound his arms around her waist and lifted her off her feet. Anna clung to him. Neither one of them dared to break the kisses. Anna landed on a soft mattress. He landed on top of me. Patrick. Anna took a deep breath. We have to stop. He kept kissing her. Good luck with that, he said in a low chuckle. Then he nuzzled her neck again. Damn it! Anna cursed and pulled his neck and kissed him on the lips. She started pulling his jacket off him. Anna didn't care anymore. All Anna cared about was how good Anna feel whenever Patrick's lips land on any part of her body. Anna wanted him. Anna knew Anna could not afford to keep him for good, but it did not matter. What mattered is now. He took his shirt off. She took off hers. He nuzzled his way down from her lips to her chest. She could not contain it any more. Anna felt thirsty and hungry, and Anna wanted Patrick at that very instant. But then he stopped. He stared at her and then kissed her gently on the lips. We both know where this is leading to. Yes, she replied. And he started kissing her again. She lost all her clothes except for the black bikini panties she was wearing. Patrick was only in his boxers. He kissed her again. She could not contain the fire threatening to consume her anymore. Patrick was teasing her, prolonging her agony. Finally, she could not take it anymore. She said to him, Patrick, please, just put the rubber on and take me. He stopped kissing her all of a sudden. She opened her eyes, worried about what made him stop. He was staring at her curiously. What? Why? She asked. He shook his head. I don't, I do not have protection here, Anna. What? You don't keep one in your apartment? He shook his head. I do not bring women here. What would I need it for? Don't you have one in your wallet? Now you know not all guys bring condoms in their wallets, he chuckled. Then what are we going to do? If you're worried about pregnancy, then I can withdraw, he suggested. I want you, Anna. Not in the make-believe games that we play. I want you. For real. I kissed his jaw. And everything Patrick wants, Patrick gets. He stared at me deeply, and I thought I saw a shadow behind his eyes. He shook his head. Not everything. And then, without another word, he lost himself in me. That was one of the most amazing nights that she had. She was finally free to love and to be with whomever she wanted. She did not have to worry about what would Scott say, about what her mother would say. She knew she wanted that man. She wanted to be his, and she wanted to have his babies one day. She thought about having his babies then and there. But then she remembered that he might not be ready. Maybe he was the one who wanted to wait. She knew that no matter what, they would end up together. She had to wait a little longer. When she woke up that morning, 
She was naked and wrapped in Patrick's arms. She felt comfortable and safe, adored and protected. She heaved a sigh. It had been an exhausting lovemaking. She was almost afraid it would consume all of her. She lost herself to Patrick last night, all of her. She did not think, she did not speak, she just felt. She felt him inside her, his heart beating under and above her, his breathing and making her feel amazing. And now it makes her want to stay locked in his arms forever. She stared up at him. He was still sleeping. She knew he had a lot of work this past week, and that he had a long day yesterday. He might want it to sleep most of the day today. She has imposed too much on him. But he was brilliant. She propped up on her elbow and watched him sleep. He had a handsome face, with his chiseled features, his perfect nose, the slight cleft on his chin, his long lashes. He was perfect. He slowly woke up. When he saw her, his face descended towards hers, and he kissed her thoroughly again. He only needed to do that, and she would do anything and go anywhere with him. You are everything I dreamed my prince would be. Maybe even more. You are wonderfully surreal, she said. He chuckled. I am glad that you still believe in fairy tale romances. She stared up at him. Then she kissed his lips. Of course I do, she said. I am in one. I am the evidence that tales and happy endings exist. And with one happy smile, Patrick said, I love you very, very much, my sweet princess. Thank you for choosing me to make your ever after come true. I promise to make you happy, now and for the rest of our lives. Then he bent down and gave her a thorough kiss on the lips. She closed my eyes and kissed Patrick back. She thought that if this was what was in store for her from the very beginning, she would gladly go through all those heartbreaks again because she knew she would never have traded her life with Patrick for anything else. What she had with Scott was a good thing for a while, but what she has with Patrick now is a blessing, a reward, a present, a miracle that she would treasure forever. She would not have lost hope. She would have had the courage, because this man in her arms now, her prince, her knight in shining armor, is absolutely worth everything she had been through. And she would thank God every day that this time, no more headaches, no more pains. This time, she gets to spend the rest of her life with Patrick. This time she truly gets to keep him in her ever after. He turned around, and he took a box from his nightstand. He turned toward me and opened the box and said, Will you marry me? She looked at him, and then at the ring, and again his face. The ring, his face, the ring. She was stunned. The ring was white gold and had a cushion-cut diamond on top of it. Well? He asked her while he was looking at her face. I will. I will. She kissed him. Thank goodness. For a moment, I thought you would say no. He smiled mischievously. Chapter 69 Anna and Patrick returned home to Mia and Christian's mansion. She was wearing the ring on her finger. It looked beautiful, but she did not want to show it right away. She wanted Mia to notice it. Hey, guys, Patrick said. Hey, Patrick. Christian stood up and went to shake hands with Patrick. Mia saw her smile, and she knew that something was happening. But she did not know what. She looked from top to bottom, and then she noticed a small light on the floor. It was coming from Anna's hand. At first, Mia thought it was a light from the sunshine on her watch. 
But then she noticed she was not wearing a watch. But the light was still there. She knew there was something. Hey, Anna, show me your hand, please, Mia said. Anna smiled and showed her hand. Oh my God, what is that? It is a ring. Anna chuckled. I know it is a ring, but it is a diamond ring on your finger. Did you two? Anna smiled and said, Yes, we are engaged. He asked me to marry him, and I said yes. Ah! Mia screamed and hugged Anna. Congratulations. Christian smiled and hugged Patrick. He continued, You did the right choice. You two are meant for each other. Anna, Patrick, I am so glad for you two. Patrick. Mia kissed him on his cheek and hugged him. She continued speaking. Congratulations. Thank you, Mia. Mia continued speaking and said, I wish you two a lot of happiness and everything that your hearts desire. But I have to ask you two, when is the wedding? Have you two set or even thought about a date? No, we have not set a date, but we are not in a hurry. Well, to be honest, baby, I wanted to set a date for us. A small family gathering, just us, our families, and our closest friends. And if you agree, we can organize it within a month. Maybe Mia can also help you organize everything. Of course, you can count on me. Anna, if you like, we can start right away. Well, I would like it. But I want to ask you, are you sure that we can organize everything? Do you think that is possible? We can try. I am sure that we can make it, and our wedding will be the most amazing one. We can start today. So let's go to the study and start calling everyone, and everywhere we know about, that celebrates weddings. Planning a wedding can feel pretty overwhelming at times. They went to the study. There, Mia sat Anna on the chair against her, and she started talking. There are a few rules that we should consider when planning a wedding. First, you should consider hiring a wedding planner. You should know that you will have a large budget for your wedding. Consider hiring a full-time wedding planner. Your wedding planner will help you make a budget, book vendors, and keep you on schedule. If you're worried about budget concerns, consider hiring a part-time coordinator to help with wedding details or day of coordinator to help at the wedding. If you don't want to hire a planner, find a comprehensive wedding checklist online to help you stay organized. Second. We do not have to care about the budget, but we should make a list of what things we can include in our budget. The number of guests you and your fiancé will invite. How much to spend on invitations. How much to spend on bridal wear and groom's wear. How much to spend on flowers, including the bride's bouquet and groom's boutonniere. Where the wedding ceremony and reception will take place and how much to spend. How much to spend on the meal and or wedding cake? Whether or not to hire a professional photographer? How much to spend on entertainment? And how much to spend on the honeymoon? The third thing we have to take care of is the guest list. The fourth thing is the wedding venue. And I also have to ask you these questions. What time of day is the wedding? I do not know. Maybe in the evening? What do you think? I would like the reception to be in the evening, but you have to decide, both of you. Evening. Definitely evening. Then we will have to call a few venues and ask them a few questions like, Does the venue look nice at that time? Is the venue a full-service venue? Will they provide chairs, tables, and linens? Is this venue big enough for my entire guest list? All right. Let's finish our list, and then we can start searching on the Internet. We have to see what kind of wedding invitations we would like to send, Mia said. We have to talk to a printing shop or go online to find wedding invitation services. Include the date and time, RSVP information, the ceremony location, 
if separate from the reception, and the dress code. Some people also like to include their registry information and to send them six to eight weeks before the wedding. But because we said we have a month, so we can just call them and tell them the date and time. How do you know all this? I wanted to organize my wedding with Christian before he hired a wedding planner. So I had to read a lot, and later it was easy to tell my opinion about everything. Wow, you are so brave, and I admire you. Thank you. Baby, shall we continue? Ahem. She nodded her head. The sixth thing is to find an officiant. The officiant is the person that will lead your wedding ceremony. Usually, a religious leader or justice of the peace would fill this role. However, it's become popular to have a close friend or family member officiate the wedding. But I think it is better to find a priest. Now that we have everything, we can start with our work. All right. Do you have any venue in mind? Ahem. I loved 620 Lofton Garden. It is on Fifth Avenue, and it is amazing. The stunning rooftop garden is located in the heart of New York, as you know. It has extraordinary views of Fifth Avenue and St. Patrick's Cathedral, and when I called them, they said the classic loft space is entirely customizable, so we can put chairs for the wedding, and then we can put high-end tables for the reception. How many people are you planning to invite? Maybe 50 tops? All right, I will call them. Mia called the place, and they said that on the 16th of July, Saturday, they are available, and they can arrange everything. Also, the only thing they had to take care of was the wedding dress, the florist, the music, and the photographer. Christian called his friends, John Legend, as a surprise for Anna. Then Mia arranged the photographer and florist, and they went shopping for the wedding dress. They went shopping in Pronovias. When Anna entered, she liked two dresses. Both of them were entirely different. They were taken to a fitting room, and the dresses were brought to them. Both of them fitted perfectly. One was a ball gown wedding dress with a wraparound neckline, drop sleeves, and the lace field of flowers embroidery elevates this classic ballroom style dress to a thing of beauty. With a full skirt and structured bodice that features a low back and off the shoulder allure, and the other was a mermaid wedding dress with sweetheart neckline, an open back and the head to toe guipure lace makes a romantic statement in this stunning mermaid gown, featuring a corset bodice, plunging back, and semi transparent skirt ending in a spectacular chapel train. I cannot decide. I want both of them, and I cannot choose. All right, we can buy both of them. One for the wedding, and then you can change, and the second can be for the reception. Oh, Mia, I do not know. I do. They are amazing, and you look like a princess in both of them. But they are expensive. Please do not worry about money. When you get back your shares, if that is your wish, you can pay me back. But until then, this is a gift that I want to give you. I never had a nice wedding, but I think that you deserve one, please. Also, I can use your wedding to choose a nice dress for me. You found one, didn't you? Yes. Will you mind if I ask them to bring it here so I can try it on? Mia, of course not. Ask them. She did, and they brought the dress she liked. It was a long flared yellow cocktail dress. It was a light as a feather FSA dress in floaty chiffon, with a deep V back and neck in semi nude side inserts, featuring a charming ruched bodice and brimming in fresh youthful elegance. Mia, you look amazing in this dress. You have to buy it. I do, and I am. Can you please wrap this dress as well? Of course, madam. You make deliveries, don't you? Yes, madam. You have to give us the address and the date that you need the dresses. 
Well, my address is 5th Avenue, and the date is the 13th of June. 13th of June? Anna asked. Yes, it is better to have them two to three days before the wedding, so if there are any problems, we can solve them. That is a smart decision. They paid for the dresses and left the shop. Anna looked at Mia and said, I have to make an appointment with a hairstylist and a makeup artist so they can come to our home on the same day. That is right. We can make the appointment from home. Chapter 70 Every bridal look shows off the bride's personality and taste in makeup and fashion. This is why every bride works hard to look her best on her wedding day. One of the things that shows off a bride's style is her bridal hairstyle. Whether you are looking for a simple hairstyle or a hairstyle with a tiara, make sure your hairstyle goes well with your wedding dress neckline. No matter what hair accessories are trending for brides, the bridal tiara is a classic and luxurious choice that has been worn by brides for ages. Bridal updos that are decorated with a luxurious bridal tiara are perfect for brides who want a bridal look that makes them feel like a queen or princess. Bridal hairstyles change every season and every year, and some hairstyles become more popular than others, but a bridal tiara is perfect with most hairstyles and hair lengths. So if you have short hair, then you should choose a hairstyle that keeps your hair loose and add a beautiful tiara for a fancy touch. But make sure to choose a smaller sized tiara to suit your short hair. As for brides with long hair, you can choose any hairstyle you want and any size of the bridal tiara for your hairstyle you find fit for your bridal look. The day of the wedding came. Anna was in her room. She had the most beautiful hairstyle with the tiara. For a Manhattan bride with ultra-smooth and voluptuous chignon, which was unquestionably chic, her makeup was done as well. Her makeup artist used Face Products Laura Mercier Perfecting Primer Makeup for Every Reboot Foundation Y365 a Cosmetics No. 7 Brush Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Concealer 2W Sigma F03 Brush Nude Sticks Bondi Bay A Cosmetics No. 7 Brush Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter No. 2 Smith 103 Brush Makeup Forever H104 Powder Sigma F35 Brush Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder, Sigma F35 Brush. By Terry Hyaluronic Tinted Hydra Powder, 200, by Terry Brush. Makeup Forever, S116 Powder, Smith 112 Brush. Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow, Sigma F35 Brush. MAC Cosmetics Peaches Blush, Sigma. F40 Brush Morph Continuing Setting Mist Eye Products Benefit Cosmetics Precisely My Brow Pencil No. 3 Benefix Cosmetics Gimme Brow No. 3 MAC Cosmetics Painterly Paint Pot Tarte Cosmetics Man Eater Palette Smith 232 Brush Rimmel Nude Scandal Eyes Liner Tarte Man-Eater Mascara Kiss Medium Individual Lashes Duo Dark Tone Glue Lip Products KKW Beauty Nude 0.5 Lip Pencil KKW Beauty Nude 2 Lip Pencil Tom Ford First Time Lipstick Laura Mercier Baby Doll Lip Gloss Mia entered the room, and she was amazed by what she saw. Anna was astonishing. She spoke. Anna, you look amazing. That makeup is great, and the hairstyle is excellent. Not to mention, 
It looks absolutely exquisite with the back of that Pronovia's dress. Wow, Patrick will be left without words. Do you think so? I know so, baby. Please do not put any stress on you. You look amazing. You look amazing as well. You have that special glow, and your eyes are shining. What is going on? Are you okay? Anna asked. Yes, baby, I am. I just think... You just think what? Well... Mia, spill it. You are worrying me, and also you are scaring me. I think I am pregnant. Oh my God, Mia, that is amazing. But wait, you think? Yes, I think. You are not sure? I am not. Why? Well, I bought a test yesterday, but I still have not done it. What are you waiting for? Well, I wanted for your wedding to pass so I can make it. I was not sure when was the last date that I had my period, and all the symptoms that I had were because I was too tired. Mia, where's the test? It is in my room. Please bring it here. You will make that test now. Anna, we are going to be late. I do not care. I want to know. And I know that you want to know if you are pregnant. And this is my wedding, so I am in charge and they have to wait for me. They cannot starve without me. She smiled and gave Mia the courage to go get and do that test. She went to her room and got the test. She came back and spoke. Here it is. She showed her the test. Do not show it or give it to me. Go in the bathroom and do it. She went into the bathroom and peed on the stick, then she got out. She put it on the side table. Now we have to wait. It says to wait five minutes. While you were in the bathroom, I googled. And while we are waiting, I want to ask you what kind of symptoms do you have? Well, I do not know when my last period was, so I am sure I am late. As well, I am tired and sleepy all the time. My breasts are swollen and tender, and of course I had nausea, but the strange thing is that I did not vomit. I think that I am not pregnant. It is all because of the stress because of your wedding, the preparation, and everything. I need rest and everything will be okay. We will see. I hope that you are pregnant. No matter what, it will be nice. How long has it passed? I do not know, maybe three or four minutes? Turn it around. Let us see it. She turned it around, and there they were. The two lines. Oh, my God! She was stunned. Anna went toward her and hugged her. She spoke. Mia, you are pregnant! Oh, my God! This is amazing! This is one of the best days of my life! You are going to be a mother, and Bella and Christian are going to have a small brother or sister. I am so excited. Mia, you have to go to the doctor. You have to tell Christian. You have to think of a name. Wait, for no do not think of a name, you will think of a name with me. You have to the all the necessary checks. Mia, are you listening to me? She waved her hand in front of Mia's face. Mia, Earth to Mia. Yes, what? Are you listening to me? No, I'm sorry. I was not paying attention to what you said. I was thinking about the baby and everything. I have to tell Christian. I cannot tell him today. It is your wedding day. I will tell him tomorrow. You have to get ready. I mean, we can choose names when you come back. I also want to ask you, do you want to be my baby's godmother? Oh my god, Mia! Yes, of course! She hugged her again. Thank you. So now, are you ready? We have to go. You will be late for your own wedding. No, no. Let us go. 
I am so happy. This, I think, will be a great day for us, for all of our family, and I think that we will finally be happy. I do not know. I have a strange feeling, Mia said. I do not know why, but I think something bad is going to happen. Maybe not today, but these days. Why do you say that? I do not know. It is just the feeling that I have. Do not listen to me. Probably my hormones, and probably I am thinking wrong. I hope so, because I do not want anything to ruin this day. I want everything to be perfect and everyone to be satisfied with everything because I am getting married to the love of my life and I want to cherish that love until eternity. Well, if you want there to be a wedding, we have to hurry up. Otherwise, we will be late and maybe Patrick will change his mind. We do not want that, Mia smiled. No, we do not want that. We can go. We have to hurry because I cannot be late for it. Mia looked at her and said, Thank you, my sister. You are my best friend, my sister and my sole support. I do not know what I would do without you. Thank you for organizing everything and for making my true dream wedding come true. This is the biggest reward that you could have given me. There was a knock on the door. Christian opened the door and spoke. What is taking so long? We are going to be late. Why are you not coming out? We are coming, and we can drive a little bit faster so we can get there in time. The groom is the one that works in the police, so when we tell them that we are hurrying to the wedding, I am sure that they will help us. Let us not check that. They went downstairs and went in the car. <laughs>